Now Muncy with the bases loaded, sends a fly ball to left center field, way back there, grand slam! Max Muncy's breakout game, and it comes in San Francisco yet again. Joe Davis on a call for Spectrum Sports. He didn't want to play sad Dwayne Kuyper and Mike Kruko. It's all good. Max Muncy with the grand salami. He nutted that thing. Oh, did he ever? Did he ever? And the Dodgers roll over the Giants. What was, what was the final? 9-1? 9-1? Here was the final. Most of us were in bed by 9-15. Hey, you know what, though? These games are flying by. Aren't they? They're flying by. You can watch a full game, an entire game. So Max Muncy... He goes three for three, two home runs, seven runs batted in. And you know, Max Muncy after the game told a reporter, they go, they asked him why he hit so well in San Francisco. And Max Muncy replies with, I can't answer that because I don't like this place. It's cold and windy all the time. It was raining the entire game tonight, but I do hit good here. I don't understand why, but I'm not going to complain about it. Well, I'm not going to complain really too much about the Giants. They've lost three or four at home. But Logan Webb, you know, you can talk about the bats all you want. We'll get to the defense and athleticism. We will get to a lot of Golden State Warriors. Believe that. Believe that because it hit me last night just as I was going to bed. We could be embarking on the last run. And I don't want people to take that as a negative or have this negative connotation. But it could be the last run for the Golden State Warriors, Shasky. Could be the last of Bob Myers. Could be the last of Draymond Green. Could be the last of Steve Kerr. We have no idea. But I want everybody to embrace it and enjoy it. We'll get to that later. But the Giants, man, hey, ugh, that was a rough one last night, buddy. You want to start with Logan Webb? You can start wherever you want to start with the Giants, buddy. Well, like the Logan Webb thing's interesting. You know, he had such a monster 2021 season. And you see this a lot from pitchers. Um, a guy... Has really, really, really good success. A couple of really nice months, but that doesn't mean that's who he is. Like we we throw these words around like ace, so and so is dominant. Right. Like okay, Verlander has had twenty years of success. Kershaw, who they're going to face on Wednesday, has had almost twenty years of success. You know that those guys are like top of the top. You right. know what I mean? We talk about Hall of Famers, right? And then you look at guys that have like five to seven years of success. I would throw Lincecum into that into right. that mix. Do you know how many guys have a great three months? <laughs> a lot. Right? A lot. A lot. All right? And I'm not taking away from his great three months. What I'm saying is, is like, when people just throw the term ace around flippantly, like, Sandy Alcantara is an ace. Multiple Cy Young Award level seasons under his belt. Jacob DeGrom. De ace. Jacob DeGrom, when healthy, right? You know what I'm saying? Max Scherzer. Those ace. are aces. Okay? Garrett Cole, who you've seen. And even Garrett Cole, there are a lot of people that would push back and say, He's not even on that level, right. but I, I think I, he is. Yeah, I have pushed back with Garrett Cole, but he is still he's has, a level he above. still has dominant stuff. Exactly. He's a level above. Just because I say that doesn't mean you can't be a good. But like when he's your number one and back to back years, you have lost a guy who gave you ace production in Gosman and Rodon. You're asking a lot from Logan Webb to carry the rotation. Well, and what I mean by carry the rotation, when I gave Lincecum the ball. Every five days, I knew he's getting me into the sixth. Back then, it was even more, the seventh. He's getting me into the sixth, and I'm going to have a chance to win that game either right. two to one, three to two, yep. four to two, yep. something like that. Yep. Right now, Logan Webb's 0 3. The ERA's ballooned. It's early in the season, but he didn't have great stuff last year. No, he didn't. He and I didn't. thought he pitched better than the stuff that I saw on television. Well, the stuff last night was not good. No. He's catching way too much zone with the sinker, way too much zone with the slider. And look, these are three straight aces he's had to face Gary Cole, Dylan mm -hmm. Cease. And Julio Arias. Who led the National League in wins when last wins. year. And Arias is really good, but he's, he can be hit. He's, he can he be hit, good. but he's legit. And I wouldn't he's even legit. know I wouldn't even know if I put him in the ace category. No, he's a he's, solid number two, exactly. number three. He's it, not your top of the rotation guy. You could have trouble you. if he's your top of the rotation exactly. guy. Walker you know Bueller what? was their ace. You know what, though? He He's good. No, he's really good. Logan Webb right now looks like a 3-4. And... It's interesting because everybody talked about the money. What are they going to do with Logan Webb? I asked. Extension, extension, extension. Well, push back on that. We make it to a point this season where it's like, do you trade the guy? I know. And I love the guy. He's from Sacramento. I know. The streets are starting to call him Long Long Logan. Mm, They're starting to call him Long Long Logan because he's giving up home runs. Uh, he's getting hit in the zone. He's not walking anybody, but 
guys in the box feel very comfortable against him. It, is it too easy, B? And and you you tell me if I'm being like too baseball nerdy. And, and I don't even know if I believe this. Is it as simple as, well, he had a Hall of Fame catcher with one of the greatest minds ever who was helping him call games, and now they clearly have below major league level I catching. I don't know how much I put into the catcher that, that, position. Right? I can't. I, is your stuff good enough? The stuff last night, I like, don't care if Carlton Fisk was catching him. <laughs> you're going to get hit when you're st- – He's just catching too much of the zone, and I it's agree. not like he's throwing with velocity. No. He throws 92, 93. No, he's a, he's a hit-your-spots kind of right. a guy. He's more Greg Maddox than he is some of your Kurt Schillings yes. or power pitchers yes. that you've seen yes. uh, oh, in the past. So, Logan Webb, like again, long ball Logan right now, uh, giving up the home runs. Has four so far in three I starts, know. and he's 0 for 3. And he's not setting the tone, so we know the hitting is going to be hit or miss. And last night, I'm thinking, all right. Match Urias. This needs to be a 1-1 game. This needs to be a 2-1 game. You couldn't even get there. Max Muncy and Mookie Betts owns him. Mookie Betts owns Mookie Logan Betts Webb. is awesome. He is awesome, but he owns he, Logan Webb. Yeah, so, he does. So you know what? Logan Webb's not off to a good start. But athletically, on the defensive side, <laughs> so I was watching, so it was funny. Dude, Shasky, dude. Uh, uh, it was funny. Lump, uh, Lumpman's on the phone with me. We're going over the show or whatnot. And it got to the point where I'm not even... I, I thought we were past it, right? We're just on the phone. And we're on the phone in real time with Wilmer Flores. Can't even pick up a grounder from move. first base. He can't move. It was that the four, third different first baseman I was asking you right before the show. How many first basemen so have they played? In spring training, they tried right. out Jock, and they, they tried out Lamont Wade at first base. Lamont has played first base. He has played first and base. And he's already made an error. Okay, J.D. Davis game. has played first base. J.D. Davis plays first base. And, and- I- I like J.D. Davis. If he had a position, J.D. Davis would play every day on this team. All right. But, so, and then and then you have Wilmer Flores. So, oh, and don't forget, by the way, if they haven't tried Jock yet, but they will at some point. And you got to believe Darren Ruff, who they signed in the minor leagues, is coming up to play first base. Well, that's the problem. So I'm your platooning you. got first base. Your platooning got second base. Your platooning got third base. <laughs> your platooning in the outfield. <laughs> Damn it, can I just get a first baseman? Can I get one first baseman? No, no. Can I get one second baseman? Can I get one third baseman? Let these guys know what their roles are. Instead, they got to pick up different gloves. Oh, one day I'll play in second. Yeah. One day I'll play in first. One day I'll play in third. That's not how you win Le- high-level baseball games. But with all that Le- said. Lamont played three positions in one game. Yeah, that's that's a joke. That's a joke. The There's nothing to be Aaron. proud of. I know. There's nothing to be proud of if you're the Giants. So give me some everyday guys. With all that said. They're going to compete for a wild card spot. I know, because there's not a lot of talent. There's not a lot of talent. In the National League. But in terms of competing for the big stakes. They're so out of it. That's just not good enough. Yeah. They're, athletically, they're so far behind. Even Crawford going to his left. So he's we lost some rage. He he's looks, lost some he rage. Slow. Throwing the ball in the dugout. I, I mean, know. it's just not good enough. So I'm watching this team, and I'm thinking, damn, that'll stack up with the big boys. Now, it's a rough game. You lose to the Dodgers. You get embarrassed. But what's embarrassing now is... Dodger fans feel like Oracle Park is Dodger Stadium North. They've officially taken that stadium over. We have a Dodger problem. They come to flood Oracle Park, and they feel like they're at home. They kick their feet up on the seat in front of them. They cheer. You hear the beat LA, You hear the beat SF chants louder than the beat LA chants. So, they have taken over that stadium. And that, to me, I, I was sad. I know. That was the saddest part but, of yesterday. But why did like... Here, here's what I would say is like, you know, I, I watch Giants fans go out there on opening day and I was out there and, and we have a rabid fan base. Like there is, there are a lot of diehard Giants fans who will forever be Giants fans because of what happened in the early 2010s. And and a lot of them were even before that, right? I, I want to give Giants fans credit. Monte, you've assembled a team of guys that no one has any attachment to. And then you tell us, like, trust us, trust us, trust that player, well, trust this guy. Well, we have no familiarity with any of them. Well, that's the problem. I was thinking about this. I don't know if we talked about it or what. I, I Over the weekend, I was just thinking about it randomly. The reason why I love Clay, the reason why I love Dre, the reason mm. why I love Steph, they've embraced this community. And, well, and they've won. And they've won, but they've embraced this community. Yeah. They've been here for a long time. How can I lock in on one of these Giants or, or start to love one of these Giants players outside of Brady Crawford, what, these guys are on one- and two-year contracts. Yeah, I, know. I can't grow with these guys. Well, My, Conforto. Baby Chez, baby Chez can't grow with these guys. You know what I'm saying? Well, Conforto got signed, right? And I, I'm watch, I've watched Conforto every game, and I go, all right, I see what they saw in Conforto. Like, there's a ball player in there. Now, I don't know if he could stay healthy or well, whatever. Well, that's the problem. He but, was a good ball player with the Mets, yeah. but he can't stay healthy. But, like, okay, well, let's just say he has a good year this year. Not even a great year, B, a good year. 
He's opting out. He's opting out. And he's like going to leave. Like Carlos Rodab. Exactly. So I can't grow exactly. and start to love these guys. These guys, they're here for six months, and boom, they're gone. They're let out of the community. And then, With the Niners, you know Nick Bosa's is going to be here a while. Well, George Kittle's been here a while. Fred Warner Jr. has been here a while. You've been able to like grow with these guys and grow to love these dudes. Stick like with Debo the Warrior Stanley. analogy for a second. Dante DiVincenzo, right? right? He's the fifth or sixth most important warrior. Maybe. Maybe. Like, like, but I'm just saying, like... May- Maybe he's a rental. He's for, important. Just say he's important. Okay, he's very important. He's a one-year rental, right? Like, we, we, we love him. But, again, fourth or fifth or sixth. Conforto's like their second or third most important right. player. And so if he doesn't play or he doesn't play well, like, that hurts them. Simultaneously, if he leaves, that's a huge blow. Right. And it's, like, nice knowing you. So, like, last year, Rodon was arguably their top two or three player. Right. Gosman the year before. Arguably their top three or four player on the yeah, team. He faded down a stretch, but he was solid. He was really years. good. He yep. was really, really, really good. So in back-to-back seasons, you lost very, very important players, right. and you didn't replenish them, nope. and you didn't retain them. So I look at like the Warriors situation like, okay, they lost Otto Porter Jr. All right? Well, psh, they brought in Dante DiVincenzo. It's a pretty good makeup. No, but you still had Steph Curry. Right. You still had Draymond. You still had Clay Thompson. You had pillars of the organization. Exactly. Jordan Poole feels like he could be a warrior for a long time. Pillars of the organization. We've seen him grow, and they've given him exactly. a shot to play. Wiseman didn't work out. He'd move on. Kamiga finally getting a shot to play. Feels like he's going to be a warrior for a mm-hmm. long, long time. Draymond Green got his shot earlier. People forget he was off the bench early in his career. David Lee gets hurt. He gets his starting starting lineup. He never looks back. What's harder? Let me ask you this. I, I'm being serious here. Is it harder for a basketball team to find not heir apparent, but young, controllable assets, or a baseball team? Because I look at like what the old Yankees, they would bring up an Alfonso Soriano, a Robinson Cano. Yep. They would find these these they young guys. Dudes. And then you like the Warriors. I think what the Warriors have done is even more difficult. Yep. Trying to find a Jordan Pool, a Kaminga. Because they're drafting low in the draft. Like, Kaminga was a lottery pick. I get it. But, yeah, but Moody lower, was 14. A lower lottery. Jordan Poole was low in the first yeah. round. Yeah. Kavon Looney was late in the first round. When Festus got drafted, he was late in the first round. Uh, who else do you want to go look at? Uh, Jacob Evans didn't work out. Do you move on? They bought picks in the second round to get those type of exactly. dudes to kind of fill holes here and there. And then they used their mid-level exceptions and said, okay, our one- to two-year option deals, exactly. we're going to use our veterans who can help us but they could also complement the pillars that we have here, the foundation of the team, which is Steph, Clay, and Dre. The Giants have no foundation right now. Bonte, That's the problem. It's five years, and they don't have one player that other teams would covet on their big league no, roster. None. And like I look over at like Arizona just played the Dodgers, okay? Yep. They stole 18 bags over the first however many yep. games. They're running like yep. Corbin's a baller, Thomas is yep. a baller, Rojas Vargas. Marte could play. Good Marte. They've got Christian Walker at first base. They've got this pitcher yep. who you're going to see Jameson that Joey and I were talking about. They've got a ton of talent and I'm like, "Man, they're still a couple years away." Yep. I'm looking at the Giants and I, I'm dead serious. I think teams would like Doval. I don't think they would covet him. Like, that's a different word. He'd be their, what, seventh? He'd be the seventh inning guy. He may start for a number of clubs. He's got closer stuff. Maybe. Maybe. I don't he's know. He's got closer stuff. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I, I agree. He I'll, does I'll have great that. stuff. I think he's probably one of your best players, but you can't get to him. And when you get <laughs> exactly. to him with the pitch clock, he hasn't adapted well, and you may get some rocky starts. That's just, that's just what the closer business but how is. Do they, not, they can't. Like, I, honestly. You have a million draft picks. You've got all these levels. You've got uh, of of minor leagues. You've got international free agency. You can't find one everyday player. But it's it's all about foundational pieces. Now I, I see Howard on YouTube. You know the Warriors analogy is pointless. It's revisionist history. Well, think about it. No, I'm trying. They to... found fight. No, we both. Yeah. What I'm saying is, and the whole point of this exercise is, they found foundational pieces and built around them. And help develop those foundational pieces as well as develop around them. And built around Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, and Draymond Green. They did a great job with that. They get credit for that. Yes. They've had pillars in the community and guys we've been able to grow with. That's why you see all the Steph Curry jerseys. The Niners. You want to go to the 49ers? Say what you want about Jimmy Garoppolo, but he was here for six years. I know. You know, say what you want about George Kittle. He's Jimmy, been here forever. Jimmy Ward was like a nine-year niner. Exactly. And we tried to run him out of town. Eric like, Garfstead has been here for a long time. Eight years. Nick Bosa has been here for a long time. Yeah. Frank Warner Jr. Yeah. The list goes on. point. I mean. And that's the NFL where the turnover is way higher. Way higher because it's of the salary cap. Your, yes. And the Niners have been able to retain yes. pillars and foundational pieces and help build around them. The Giants, all we're saying is 
the Giants don't have any foundational no. pieces. They don't have one guy where I'm saying, hmm, four years from now, that he's going to be but he's going to be our rock. I think my biggest problem is that they have forced themselves because there's no young talent coming in that they have to go in free agency. And I don't blame them for for signing a Mitch Haniger for a three year deal. Like that that's all that's out that's, there. Yeah, that's, that's the best can you do. can do. Like I don't blame you for signing Michael Conforto on a one year deal. The bigger problem is not those free agent signs. Yep. It's the lack yep. of young controllable right. players coming through. Not one. Well, well, this is how long runs start, Howard. And Howard, thanks for uh, uh, understanding this. How did the Giants run start it? Because they drafted, they developed, yes. and they built around their foundational pieces, yes. guys who were going to be yes. here for a while. Matt Cain, Tim Lincecum, Matt, Matt Even Madison Bumgarner, Johnny Jonathan Sanchez they, was an they important. They squeezed the lemon on him. The core four in yes. the bullpen. You had those guys yes. together for four years. That never happens. Well, and and let's let's talk about Joey Barr for just a split second here. Like I don't think Joey's any good, right? And 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 I yeah, hope I, I'm wrong. I, I, I hope I'm glasses wrong. out, but I I do want to see him play. I do too, but I hope I'm wrong. But I don't think he's very good. But Part of being a great GM is identifying yep. who can and can't play. Do you remember these two names? Madison Bumgarner and Tim Alderson. Yep, Tim Alderson. Okay. All right, Tim Alderson was what happened? He was their number two prospect pitching wise. Mm -hmm. And they were in the mix and they traded him for Freddie Sanchez. Yep. Now, we've never heard of Tim Alderson since then. No. Nah, you know why? Ever. Because Brian Sabian discernibly said. Madison can help us, Alderson cannot. Yep. And I look at the Joey Bart thing and I say, all right, two things. You failed on multiple things. Number one, the prior regime identified probably the wrong guy. And that happens in the right. first round. Okay, fine. Number two, you didn't develop him. All right, that can happen too. Right. Maybe he's just not good enough. Right. But then the third part is... You have the ability to move off of that guy while they still have value well, and you didn't I, do any of those I don't those think things. Joey Bart has any value. No, now Honestly, he doesn't. Honestly, I, I don't think he has any value. But I also think you need to let the kid play. Part of the problem is you didn't let the kid play. You didn't give him a yeah. shot. And, and credit, he's got he's to gotta be better. But just say, hey, in the month of April, Joey, you're going to get all the at-bats. You're going to get day offs on day games after night. But you are going to play. No, instead, they were playing a guy who's 34 years old who had exactly. a shoulder injury and batted 130-something yeah. last year in Perez. And it's just like, what do you – like, you reference first base. First base, there's probably going to be five or six guys play first base this year. Catcher, I'm I'm calling it now. You're going to see Gary Sanchez at some point. You're right. gonna. They already have played well, four guys at catcher. You're going to see five or six. Well, you know, and I'm looking at the 209 Comcast business text line. My wife and I were watching the game. She kept this saying, my wife. who the hell is this yep. guy on the Giants? And as soon as the grand slam was hit, we checked out. Well, the problem is you need to get younger and more athletic. It, so why is he Casey Schmidt on his roster? Why aren't we seeing Ramos? The hell... Where's Luciano at? Double A? You know what they, they Where's do? Luciano in double yeah, A? Yeah, double A. But get him in the Major League Club by May. They do this thing where like, well, you can't have X amount of at-bats over, you know, this. Do you know how many Volpe? Volpe had like a less than 100, or excuse me, less yeah. than 20 at-bats at triple A. I don't give a damn about yeah. triple and well, double A and this season. And this. Uh, the big league team is just not fun. They're not fun. So bring up all these guys. What? Wh why would it hurt to bring up? Because you're trying to win with these veteran guys who aren't going to win you anything. Let's face it. I know. These guys aren't going to – they can't compete with the Dodgers yeah, and the Padres. Yeah. Wait till the Diamondbacks come in town. They think there's nobility. I do believe that the Giants themselves think that there's nobility in – just competing while you're developing. That's not, that's not good enough. I agree with that's you. That's not good enough. You're I talking would much about rather two, you just admit who right. you were and just, just bottom out. Everybody gets on the Warriors for the two timeline thing. What about the Giants and their two timeline thing? It's a joke. It is. And then you took an entire draft's worth of pitchers one year, and I'm sitting here, I'm like, and none of them can make the big leagues? Uh, it's it's, it's not like you have pitches. Sean Jelly's one of your higher rated prospects. I, what did I text you guys last week? He's Nothing not good, good happens when Sean Jelly is in the baseball game. He's not game. good. He's a Nothing big Nothing good step. happens. And I'm rooting for the guy, but like... You're not a prospect at 26. All right, here we go, man. This segment you know was what they brought are? to you by Go it's to State. It's a bunch of Brad Wanamakers. Uh, Brad, this segment is brought to you by Go to State, serving the Bay Area for three generations. I just wanted to say Would Brad. Would you Wanamaker. succeed? We succeed. Why would you want to say Brad Wanamaker? Visit go to say lumber.com. Shout out to YouTube, Twitch, and the Comcast business text line. Uh, what's coming up on the game? Sponsored by Fremont Bank, full service banking, no compromises. We've got Dave Fleming, 8 o'clock. Rod Adams, defensive guru with the Go to State Warriors. Here, join us. At 8.30, and then our main man, Mark Medina, will give us the lay of the land down in L.A. with the Clippers taking on the Suns and tonight's playing game between the Lakers and the T-Wolves. We'll get into some hoops on the other side here on the Morning Roast on 95.7 The Game.
and we're doing numbers, man. Good job, Morning Roast. Sock it to me. Hey, 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 hey. Yee! Bonte. Deli Boy's trying to do some producing this morning. Giants are 4-16 and 16 in their last 20 games against the L.A. Dodgers and have been outscored 108-56. to 56. <laughs> That's dominance. That's dominance. As I say, oh, baby. Hey, good morning to everybody out there. What up, Deli Boy? Good morning to everybody. Getting off the graveyard shift. Good morning to everybody on the Comcast Business Text Slide YouTube. What is up with you guys? If you're at work, what is happening? If you're getting ready for work, good morning to you. Good morning to everybody out there. You know the drill. Students in their cars, uh, parents driving their kids to school, you know, bakers, firefighters, cops, you name it. Good morning to Logan Webb, who had a rough one last night. And the streets told me, man, might have to start calling him <laughs> Long Ball Logan. He keeps giving up home runs. Long ball, Logan. 0-3 to start the season. Not good. ERA 6-3-5. Not good. 18 innings pitched. 22 hits given up. Not good for Logan Webb to start the season. By the way, do you want to be a chase hitter for the Warriors' first home I playoff do. game? Woo, check this out. We're giving away a pair of tickets to game three against the yeah. Kings all day long. Make sure you're listening uh, on Thursday. Thursday all day, not today, but Thursday all day for a chance to win tickets to go see the Kings and Warriors in game number three. And look, the Kings are filling themselves. Kings are filling themselves. They are. Kings fans, that is. James Hamm, who does a great job, formerly of NBC Sports California, now with ESPN 1320, covered uh, up in Sacramento, covered the Sacramento Kings, joined Steiny and Guru yesterday. And I don't know if you checked this out, but I thought it to be fascinating. Here's what he had to say about the Kings offense. You know, we talk about how great this Warriors run has been, and I, I covered it for many years. As soon as my King season would end, I would jump right on with uh, with Monty Poole, and I would work with him on the Warriors beat all the way through the playoffs. You know, I, I was in Toronto. I've been to Portland covering this team. I was in locker rooms when they, they won. So I know how great they are. I'll tell you, the Warriors offense has always been incredible. They never did what the Kings did this year. The Kings' offense this year was better than the Warriors' offense in any of their great years. And that's saying something. Like, whether it translates to the, the postseason, we'll have to see just because the Kings haven't been there before. But they're such a finely oiled machine on the offensive end, and it's really wild because most of their rotation is new. All right, so James Ham looking at the metrics offensively. And the regular season metric says the Kings have one of the best offenses in history. They won 48 games. Do you know the Warriors finished four games behind the Kings despite everything that happened? You would have thought Sacramento won 55 games this year. They were 48 and 34. I mean, 48 and 34. And so to say that this year's Kings offense is better, just use your eyeballs. And I like James Ham. I'm a James Ham guy. That's my guy. But use your eyeballs. Kevin Durant, Clay Thompson, Stephen Curry. We're sitting most fourth quarters. Like, legit. Like, I went to all those games. There's no better offense in the last 15 years better than that offense the Warriors had. Imagine sitting here like, you know, the 2021 San Francisco Giants were better than the 27 Yankees by the metrics. Right. (laughs) Most people would be like, shut up. You know what I mean? Like, that's what most people would say. But this is where I, like, I understand where he's coming from, and and I get it, and... But this is where the over-reliance on data drives me nuts, Bonte. Like, and it's not just basketball. It's not just... It's every sport. We, like... Do, do your eyeballs not count? There's no, I, I don't care what the metrics tell you. No offense with Steph Curry and Kevin Durant is inferior to a, a, a Sabonis, right. Aaron, De'Aaron Fox right. offense. Like, come on. We're it's, talking about two of the top 11 players of all time in most people's rankings. I mean, it, it's just... It's laughable because the Warriors will go and behind by Thompson, fifteen. Like well, Clay, you, I, I mean, I'm just... I'm sorry. Well, it, the Warriors will go behind... drop Fall behind by come, 15. Come on. And they dropped 40 point burgers like it was nothing. 40 point quarters, I should say. 40 burgers. Like it was nothing. They would be chilling in the fourth quarter. How many times I've seen them drop 140, 145, 150, 130? They should I have mean, been undefeated <laughs> in the playoffs. They were 16 Think to 1 in 2017. 16 to 1 in 2017. So the metrics, sure. And we're going to see both because the Kings do have offense. I mean, they're top 10. Who believes that, honestly? <sighs> Look, the data in the regular season, the data will tell you that the Kings had the best offense. <laughs> okay. 
But if you put the Kings on the court with those great Warriors teams, they lose by 15 every single night. They get swept in a seven-game series because that offense with the Golden State Warriors was scary good. Why did everybody in the NBA get mad at Kevin Durant for joining the Golden State Warriors? Because they team. knew he joined Steph Curry and Klay Thompson to form one of the most dangerous and most lethal offenses we've ever seen. I mean, we were comparing that team to the Bulls of the 90s, all right? People think that the 2017 Warriors can beat the Michael Jordan-led Bulls. Legit. So, you know, that's where we're at with Sacramento. They believe they have the best offense in history, and it's better than the Warriors teams. Like that, I like James a lot, man. That, that was pretty funny, though. That was funny. I got a kick out of that one. Because I mean, Kings fans are dr it's, it's, they're drinking the Kool-Aid. Of course they are. I don't blame them. <laughs> That's what they're supposed to do. But they should be happy. Like here, I think the misnomer in yesterday, because you know, I laughed a little at the end of the show. We get into the fourth hour and I get a little tired and hungry. And, you know, I start clapping at people and whatnot. But like Bonte, the reality is this. It take a step back. I'm happy for Kings fans. They had a monster year after wandering the desert for 20 years. I know what that's like. I'm a yeah. Warrior fan. I remember when We Believe came around. We were all elated. It was the most incredible thing that we've ever seen. When they won their first championship, right. even after being in the playoffs the two years prior, I sat on the couch after they won it all, and I said, my Golden State Warriors won a championship over LeBron James. Yep. I couldn't believe it. Yep. I was in stunned disbelief. So I know how giddy my team winning it all or being really good, how that made me. That first year when they went on that run, I'm talking about the Steph Curry year, 2012-2013, right. that was the most fun to that point that I had ever had watching a basketball team. Right. Like it was it wasn't even close. Basketball Nirvana. It was unbelievable. And so I remember that that the feel of that first time and how we were the underdogs and no one thought we could beat the Spurs right. and we were up twenty in game one. And it was, oh my God, if Kent Bazemore could just close out on Ginobili. Right. Uh, just it was incredible. Harrison Barnes going for twenty Richard points Jefferson. as a twenty year old. Richard Jefferson. Richard Jefferson uh, not dunking and then smoking two late uh, free throws. Oh my gosh. Was, right? Was, but like I, I, I'm not mad at Kingston. This I think this this turned into like like, we're dumping on them. No, we are a four-time champion who's been to the final six times since 2015. You're allowed to be arrogant, okay? Part of being a sports fan is when your team is really, really, really good, and I mean yep. dynastically good, yep. you're allowed to be like, no, we're the top dogs. If you can't be cocky and arrogant now, you're never allowed to be cocky and arrogant. It's sports. Have fun. Lean into it. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. I'm looking at the Kings, so they average nearly 14 three-point makes a, a, a game, which is fifth in the NBA. The Warriors are number one with 16 and a half, so there's going to be a lot of three-point shots. Warriors number one in the tips, Sacramento number six in the tips. Uh, when it comes to percentage, Warriors number two in percentage with 38 and a half percent for the three-point line, and the Kings at 37 percent, uh, 36.9. We'll round it up. So they're ninth in the league. So both teams can shoot the ball really well. They do have a we believe feel to them. I agree. The Sacramento Kings. Yeah. And that crowd's going to be energetic. And it should be ha they had a hell of a season. A hell of a season. And Kings fans are going to be arrogant. But more so, I think, coming out of this, no matter what happens, we've got a new rivalry board in Northern I, California. I agree with that. It's going to be we've great. We've got something here. Yeah, for I'm, I'm with you. Future. And if they were to knock the Warriors off, think of what that does to a generation of Kings fans. Oh, my gosh. They could end the Chaps' reign. I know. This I could wanna, be the last run. I want to get into the last run portions of well, this. Well, yeah, no, and I, I thought about this last night. This could be it, Warrior fans. This could be the last run. Now, I don't think it will be. I hope it's not. But we could be embarking on the last run. How are we going to embrace it? How are we going to embark on this journey together, folks? 888-957-9570 as it's a Tuesday morning. <sighs> Can't wait till Saturday. Saturday, 1, 5, 30 p.m., go to one center. The Giants definitely didn't make us do anything to make us not think about the game, uh, game one on Saturday. They got rolled 9 to 1. But could this be the last run for the Go to State Warriors? We'll get into that coming up on the morning roast. Brought to you by Fremont Bank, full service banking, no compromises. If you're considering remodeling your home in 2023, talk with your architect or designer about utilizing Golden State Window and Door for your upcoming project. Each location across the Bay Area features beautifully planned displays. You'll be surprised.
Take it away, Bonte. Well, King fans are all the way up. They are turt. Turt up. Shout out Fat Joe. Shout out Steph Curry as he gets ready for this playoff run. Warriors making the playoffs tonight in the last 11 seasons. Truly remarkable what this core has done. And I don't think we've taken the time to appreciate them. And, you know, 888-957-9570. What if this is the last run? What if this is? What's going to be your favorite memory to take away? Is it the championships? Is it the 73-9 and nine season? Is it all the records they've broken? There's so many memories that this core has helped develop. Whether it's Steve Kerr, Bob Myers, and of course the players on the court, Steph Curry, Jerry Margarita, Clay Thompson, Andre Godala also been part of the process, although not so much this season. Of course, he's only played eight games. Uh, he's out with the wrist injury. But, you know, we, we discussed the Jerry Margarita contract incessantly. We discussed Clay Thompson coming in on the last year of his deal next season. You know, the emergence of Jordan Poole. Andrew Wiggins has an extension. Jonathan Kamigo, where does he fit in? Moses Moody, where does he fit? Will Dante DiVincenzo opt out? But last night, Shasky, it was just stinking, man. It's like, what if this is the last run? Let's get ready to embrace it. Because it could end in two weeks. It could end in two months. Could end in the NBA Finals. We have no idea. But this could be it. This could be the last. And it's not a negative. I'm mm-hmm. not even putting that out there. Um, but the reality is, we may not see Bob Myers as the basketball pro- uh, president of basketball operations yeah, next season. No, there's no doubt. You know, it's it's interesting. Um, let's go to just the players for a second. Like when we look at some of the other dynasties, like the A's in the '70s, there were a lot of moving parts. Right, there wasn't a lot of of carryover from the first championship to the end. You look at the 49ers. Joe Montana was a constant. Bill Walsh was a constant. Ronnie a lot on defense, but it didn't feel like Ronnie and Joe because they were never on the field at the exact same time. You wouldn't consider them like a pairing. You know what I mean? Just because of the way football is. Jerry was only there for two of the championships. Right? right, or actually, technically three. three. I'm talking about with three. Joe. I'm talking about Joe. with Joe. So right, two back to back. Right, Bengals. Dwight Clark was only there for two of the championships because yep. he wasn't there in '88 mm-hmm. and '89. Um, I look at the San Francisco Giants and like Lincecum wasn't really prominently featured in the 2014 World Series. Matt Cain was out with an injury. It was really Buster and you know Bum. and Bumgarner, but like Bumgarner was so young in the first one. He had the 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 two star or I guess the one start in Game Five. And then I look at, like, Brandon Crawford wasn't on that 2010 team. Belt wasn't on that 2010 team. Like, this is a very unique dynasty in the fact that these three main co- main cogs, I mean, three of the five guys on the floor, 60% yep. of the players on the on the floor, are there from start to finish. Right. I mean, it's, it's crazy. So, like, when I contrast that to the other dynasties in this area, in this market, it's so unique. So I think that this one, not only is there's this built-up familiarity – each of those guys, it feels like more contributed to the team's successes right. and the failures and and the winning and all that than even those other dynasties that I look at. And so I think that people are even more attached to Clay, Dre, and Steph than they are any of these other dynasties. No doubt. I mean, and it just, you know, we're at the end game. We're at the end game now. Maybe it lasts another three years. Maybe it lasts another two years. How how will this run play out? Like, if they lose to the Sacramento Kings, the run's over. I think it's safe to say the run will probably be over. They go on this long run, this journey. You know, you, you hope that it's not the end of Bob Myers because I love seeing Bob Myers and what he represents. Talk about a guy who's from here, a guy who embraced this culture, a guy who's just a good dude. You hate to lose good dudes in your organization. Draymond Green. See what you want about Draymond Green. You don't win those championships without Draymond Green. He brought the nasty to this organization, the nasty to this team. Stephen Curry, the culture, right? The franchise player, the guy who said, hey, Warrior fans, don't give up. We'll figure this thing out. And boy, did they ever. Four banners in eight years. Clay Thompson, who loves the Bay, who jumps in the Bay, who loves his coach, who drives the boat. Like, all this stuff, and I'm just thinking, like, damn, I hope this isn't it. So that's why when I embark on this journey with this Golden State Warriors team, Every single game, I'm going to enjoy the hell out of it. I'm going to enjoy every moment 
from here on out, not take it for granted because maybe the maybe the run has passed everybody by. Maybe we have taken some of the years for granted, the KD years. You know, last year, Game Four, seeing them celebrate on the parquet floor after Game Six at TD Garden. The KD years for granted a little before you, you keep going. I, just I do think it, a little. I do. I, I do. I think we're going to look back and appreciate the KD years more down the line. Why do you take the t- KD years for granted? Because I think we're in the middle of it, and I think there's a denial factor of, oh, we'll find the next KD. Like, oh, he was just a mercenary. And, like, I don't think we've really stopped and appreciated what he did coming here and how unique that was. I I really do think, and I don't think it's everyone. I think it's probably a smaller number of people than even I'm willing to admit. But I don't think we we sat and appreciated those years. Like, they were... They were the height of excellence in the, in the sport. Uh, well, you know what was funny? I remember talking to uh, the BSNG days, uh, Stardy Guru Abate, and we went back and looked at Katie's playoff run, his last season with the Golden State Warriors. Sweet. And I don't think people realize how good he was during that postseason run before he came up with the cash race slash Achilles. Oh, against the Clippers? I mean, think about what he was doing against the Rockets, yeah. right? So he started off slowly. The first two games against the Clippers, 23 points and 21. The games one and two. Then he turned it up. That's game slow. three. I love how that's slow. Right, that's slow. You know, like he scored like six. Right. 21, 21, five, 21, five and five, nine turnovers, 23, four and three. All right. So it's one, one going to LA. Then he drops 38, seven and four. Then he drops 33, seven and six. Then he gave five. He drops 45, six and six. Then he gave six. He drops 56 and five. Oh, you want some of this, Rockets? Oh, I'm going to drop 35 on your head in game number one. Then I'm going to go 29, 5, and 4. Then I'm going to go 46, 6, and 3. Then I'm going to drop 34, 7, and 5. And in the game five of that series against the Rockets, in 32 minutes, I got 22, 5, and 4. And then I get hurt. This guy was about to go on a dirk like run in that postseason. When he looked at Nick Fresnel, he looked at J.D. McCollum, he told everybody there at the Racket Tip Performance Center, <laughs> I don't know who I am. Kevin Durant. That was the ultimate flex. He was so talking like, to Nick. Oh, no, I didn't, I he was talking to all of them. Uh, give me, give me it to me. Give it to me. Oh, so no, Kevin Durant. You know who I am. Like I, I'm now imagining Nick for the, <laughs> Oh boy. Yeah, exactly. Man. So all I'm saying I'm is, and I, and I get. I, I don't think we appreciate right, it. But you know what? I, and I get why cer- certain fans right now on YouTube or the Comcast business text line said, "Why are you guys talking about this?" No, we're just you guys are, I. I think it's a moment as before we start. We reflect. Going back and reflecting on what this core has done and to get us back to this point to where now we're thinking, boy, can they win at number five? Can they win at fifth? Let me ask you this one. Uh, You're probably too close to the team because of your job duties and whatnot, so maybe you're not the right person to ask. Do you think we as a fan base are more connected to Clay, Dre, and Steph than any other Dynasty in terms of like the 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 familial connection. Well, I think social media has a lot to do with that. That's a good point. When you add the social media aspect and the way these three guys has embraced the Bay Area, yeah, which is why you know I get a little turked up when people talk about Clay because like if we can't love this guy, how can we love anybody who comes through mm-hmm. this region? Like he's embraced the community just as much as Stephen Curry. Mm-hmm. Draymond Green is a fixture in his community. Mm-hmm. I mean. All the Philmonians down there love Draymond Green. Mm-hmm. He's done a lot with Thank them. Thank you, Willie Hen. Money making, money making Mibs. Uh, shout out to money making Mibs out there. Washington Eagle. Not you know Chris him and Mills. Donovan. True, true, uh, true SF uh, shoe store. Those guys. Draymond Green rolls with these. Like Draymond Green is their homie, their guy. So like when I think about what these guys have done in the Bay, yeah, we are connected to them because of social media mm-hmm. because they've embraced the community. Mm-hmm. They live here in the community. Mm-hmm. They're all about the Bay Area. But uh, through it, through it, they've been here for over a decade. That's that's the thing, and they've won all four of the championships. Have been with those guys as the key catalyst for an organization that was an afterthought. So as I look at the Sacramento Kings, yeah, I do see the Warriors in them. I do see the young baby Warriors in mm-hmm. them saying, "What about us? We've been away for sixteen years. Remember us? Remember we're in the NBA, and it felt like that. You know, we believe in 07, 08, and of course." In 2012, 2013, when they went back into the playoffs against the Nuggets, it was like, hey, remember this night? Remember this organization mm-hmm. in the Bay Area? Hey, we've got a great fan base out here. And so I, I, well, it's going to be a lot of fun. As I, not to like compare and contrast, but like we believe it was like lightning in a bottle. Right. Because you, 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 you didn't know who was going to stay and how long. And, and 
You just were in the moment. Whereas that first run with Steph, Clay, and Harrison Barnes, and Draymond, and 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 uh, David Lee, it felt like it was the beginning of a long journey. Right. That's what it felt like to me. It was right. different. And now I'm not. I love We Believe. It's one of my. Oh yeah, it felt like favorite. it had a shelf life. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And like it felt like we were building towards something. Right. You know. And so it's interesting though the the connectivity between the Kings and the Warriors. No one is saying that De'Aaron Fox is going to be Steph Curry, but a young, ascending, drafted point guard. They make a shrewd trade for a power forward right. that uh, breathed life into the rest of the roster, you know, similar to how the Warriors yep. did with David Lee, and they've got Sabonis. Uh, they've hit on some draft picks. Uh, they made a couple of trades to free up some some playing time for other people, getting rid of Buddy Heald and getting rid of Halliburton. Right. And, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it well, does feel like they're on a nice little run. But De'Aaron Fox, what he is to that community in Sacramento mm -hmm. is similar to what Stephen Curry became in this community with the Bay Area. Mm. Darren Fox has embraced Sacramento like DeMarcus Cousins did. They mm -hmm. embrace Sacramento. And Kings fans are saying, do not talk about our boy. That is our golden child. This is a guy who wanted to stay in Sacramento. The guy who wanted to build in Sacramento. And so he does have a Curry-like impact mm. off the floor for that fan base, I believe. And he, on the court, they could be complete. They're completely different players. Yeah, Dara Fox will go to the rack and duck on your head. You know what I'm saying? He will run you. He will run that pick and roll to depth and get into the paint and hit that floater. Stop from 15 feet. Pop it. Mm. Drop it. I mean, this guy's an ultra. He's the ultimate package at the point guard position, and he's got plenty of speed. Speed, and he ain't no punk. So De'Aaron Fox is he's a hell of a player. Hell of a player. This is why the series is fascinating, though, because it is the young baby kings who said we got shooters. We've been consistent all year. We took the regular season seriously. The Warriors, they're old. They don't play any defense. Wait till you come up to go to one. We have the better arena. We have the better fan base. And right now we have the younger legs. So that's why I'm 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 really jacked up about this. But I do wonder for the fan base, how are you approaching this uh playoff run for the Go to State Warriors? Are you happy? Are you optimistic about a championship berth? Are you looking at it at as some Warrior fans saying, hey, this may be the last run. This may be the last row with this group. Well, I'm on a, I want to soak in whatever happens throughout the entire playoffs. I want to be able to bask in it every single game. Because to your point, B, it could be it. I mean, Draymond has the opt-out. Yep. You know, Steve Kerr, who knows? Bob Myers, who knows? And who knows if Dante DiVincenzo and, you know, will stay here. Who knows if Wiggins is here or, or Jordan Poole right. or, or whomever. Whoever you want to put on the roster. Who knows if they're here next year? I, I do believe that if they were to bow out at any point, a lot of things could be different. So you have to be able to appreciate yep. it. Uh, 415, Comcast Business Text Line. Bonds, hey, I'm going to say it. It doesn't end here no matter what. Steph Curry's an all-time great. He has two more championships in him, whether that's with Clay and Draymond or some other iteration of the Warriors. I'm telling you, Steph's got two more coming. That's J.D. in the city. J.D. in the city. Uh, let's go to Antonio in Oakland. Antonio, what's happening? You're on the roast. Yeah, you know, I think the Warriors got a couple more myself, man. I, if they can get six, try the Bulls, that'd be great. But as far as the Sacramento, man, they got an excellent team. Their home record is not very good, though, 24-17. and 17, And that hasn't been talked about enough. And the Warriors going to win yeah. two games. And, uh, yeah, man, we're going to just win another title this year. And I'm ready for another parade in San Francisco. There you go. <laughs> you asked me what my lasting image was of this core. I think it's them in Boston. And, you know, Clay after everything he went through. Steph Curry after everything he went through in terms of, you know, the scrutiny. Draymond Green getting the last laugh on everyone. I think that's my lasting image of them and with their families uh, at the – at the center stage in Boston right. Garden. That, to me, I think is the lasting image. Ooh. And there's going to be tons. But right now, in my head, that's the one I'm thinking of. Mm. Do you know which one I'm talking yeah. about? What's that? Sorry. I've got coffee and stuff spilling all over here. I'm trying to find a legal. Got everything going on over here. Repeat that, Shasky. Sorry. No, I was just Show saying that you asked me what my, my image of the Warriors was. Oh, yeah, was, yeah, 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 yeah. And I was Sorry. saying. That lasting image? It, the lasting, right now, the lasting is image. Is that Boston is, one? Yeah. Because it felt like I was watching an entire group of boys turn into men, yeah. and now they have their own families, and they've accomplished the thing that everyone thought they couldn't, which was win another one post-Durant. One of the moments I loved last year in Boston, and an image that's been sticking with me a lot. No shoes with Bob Myers and no, no, by you? No, that, that was great. Well, not by me, but Mully, Festus, Do You Right To, Damian Lee, Jonathan Kuhn. You Kuhn. were there. Yeah, I was there, but it wasn't just You had me. shoes on, though. I had shoes. I was holding... Uh, 
Bob Myers, what was it? Not the glass, but uh, what did they chalice? call this? Uh, chalice. I was mm-hmm. holding his chalice. He was like, here, Bonte, hold this for me. I was like, and I was holding the dirty old. You interview. look like Little John. Hey, there it is. Uh, the image that I have, I don't know if I look like Little John. I'm not the trans oh, or anything what? like that. But, uh, no, the image that I have, though, okay. is two images. It's two images. Steph Curry's first championship. When they didn't know how to pop champagne in Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, okay. And it was like the first championship since 1975. And the baby face assassin, he's just like, what? I got the Larry O'Brien. This is incredible. And then you fast forward that to Boston. And he's in a locker room. And Jordan Poole looks at Steph Curry and said, Steph, how do I open this? It's Steph, mid-celebration. It's just, I, I think it's composure at its finest. This is why Steph is Steph. I, I swear to God, it's an underrated moment. Mid say he's celebrating, he's got the gun. Hold on, this is what you do. You point it like this, you pop it like this, and he's showing a young Jordan Poole how to pop champagne. Now, obviously, he has a lot of experience. But to fast forward that, and I thought it was just such a cool moment where Steph is going crazy, and Poole's like struggling, like, how do I hope? I don't even know what to do. And Steph's like, hold on, this is how you do it, young man. You pop the champagne, you pull it over, pop, you pop it. And I was just like, this guy's incredible. And You've, caught, you've rewind back to that first championship where they didn't know how to do that. Those two images, to me, looking at Stephen Curry, I'm like, that's pretty cool to me. I don't know. Maybe I'm a sucker. No, I love Maybe it. Maybe I'm a geek. By the way, you are listening to 95.7 The Game. KGMG FM and HG1 San Francisco. Always live on a free Odyssey app. Download the Odyssey app and favorite 95.7 The Game for the best and most up-to-date sports coverage. Um, let's go to Philbo Mike in the city. Philbo, what's happening? Hey, man. What's up, man? Y'all sound good. Thanks, you know what I mean, I, mean, I always say good. Uh, uh, come y'all on, remind me that. of uh, what's that show that the Brown Sugar when they had the black and white dude rapping? Oh, oh, y'all remind me of man. All right, come on, man. We're not singing on Tom Basie's song. Don't play us like that, Philbo. Those dudes are trash. You know that. Why are you gonna no, do I'm that? Jo- dude? I'm, jo- I'm joking. I know. I know. You're not. I, I was. I was joking. I'm joking, man. Now, for real, for real. anyway, though. Hey, man. I just want you to know. See, we the same age almost. You feel me? We, we kind of millennials. So, like, Chef, you said it earlier. We was 20 years deep, not even getting to the playoffs. Like, we were a complete afterthought. Yep. And just the fact that we, 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 we here, we made it. You said, man, I, I just sat on the couch and was looking at LeBron James and the Warriors won the championship. Like, bro, like, right now, we're, like, spoiled. I know. This doesn't happen all the time. So it's like, I be sitting back almost like literally, bro, like pitching myself. And I look at youngsters and their perspective on the Warriors is a completely 180 degree from us. And it's just such a trip just to see yeah. where we were to where we are now. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. I be thinking like, damn, we really were in the right. depth how, of the Phil, NBA how, and now we're at Phil, the top of it. Filmo, how hard is it to bask in it and just kind of just sit back and realize what they've done over the last decade? I mean, it's been an unbelievable run. It's it's uh, that's I was just gonna say it's just unbelievable, bro. Like on on some real talk, bro. Like we sucked. The like the one thing I can say about the Warriors, we had an awesome fan base. The fan base was loyal yep. to their soil. You feel me? Yep. But Fillmore. as far as like, I don't even believe it. I'll be like, yeah. how? Football, when you think about the core getting older and older and older, does your mind start to venture like, man, does it is this the last run or is next year the last run? Because I'm not looking at it negatively. I'm just thinking if it is the last run, I'm going to embrace every moment, think back to every moment that these guys have produced, whether it's Game 6 against Oklahoma City, whether it's the NBA Finals, Game 7 against Houston, last year in Boston. That's where my mind goes. Where does your mind go when you think about this core group? My my mind goes to you will never see this again. Mm. I'm pretty sure we'll never see this again. So it's like my mind be going to like, the, the, the depth of it, and then to, to to where we are now, honestly. Like, we'll never see this again, and I just want people to be grateful for this moment in time because, again, who's this happened to? The Bulls, the Lakers, and the, and the Celtics, yeah. and the Warriors. In modern... That's crazy! You know, it's crazy. a great point because, like, call, in football. modern sports, or, or, like, I'm talking the last 50 years. Let's go 50 years. Have there been multiple dynasties for one franchise? Any sport. Multiple. Multiple dynasties. Multiple I'm thinking dynasties. off the top of my head. Maybe the Yankees 
The Yankees. But they didn't win it all throughout the 80s. They won in the 70s. Yeah, I know. So they like, won back-to-back in the 70s. The they Lakers had a good run. And, the, and, the, and them. Right. Like the Yan- Lakers have obviously the 80s, Lakers have and multiple. they have the, the O's. So you got Yankees, Lakers. I don't know if you could put the Cowboys in there. They did win a couple of the 70s. They won, obviously, I, three in the 90s. They went to like four or five Super Bowls right. in the so 70s. So if you want to throw them so in I'll there. throw them in there. Red Sox, 2000s, then 2010s, if you want to do that. I, all, it's all one dynasty. I, that's yeah. a, but different iteration. I get three, it, though. Yeah. Different three, decades. Three championships. Yes. I mean, eh. I, I got them lower on that total pole. Yeah. That's it. I mean, like, the Patriots were so different from one one end of the spectrum till the end. It did feel like the first three versus the second three were very different. Yeah. Because of how long it went. But don't we all file that under one dynasty? Yeah, we do. So, like, I mean, uh, he's right on the – we're never going to see this again. And then, like, on the young player, uh, the young person thing, you know, I'm out at practice yesterday with the 12-year-olds, and I'm like, oh, Kings Warriors, and everyone's like, sweep. Right. That's what a twelve-year-old thinks. A twelve-year-old well, warrior a, fan is like, "Yeah, we're we're of sweeping. Of course, up. we're we sweeping. can't lose. Of course, we are in the it's, finals." I, I do wonder. I do wonder. It's funny. because now that now that we're here, Comcast Business Text Line nine five four. Bonte, you were so hyped yesterday. What happened? You spent fifteen minutes talking to the Sack Radio Station. Now you're worried? No, I'm still hyped up. I can't wait for Game One. But I also like to look at the other side. This is where journalism school or the what comes into place. Got to be objective. So I want to ask the fan base, is there any Warrior fan out there worried about the Sacramento Kings? You can't, there's not one Warrior fan. Well, I'm worried about them. Not one Warrior fan worried? Well, we always, you're always worried. Yeah, you, I mean, of course you're hour to hour. You I talk that talk. bravado yesterday, but that's... Oh, it feels fake bravado? Well, for the moment. And then once the game starts, you know I'm going to get all anxiety filled. Oh, man. Uh, that's how I watch, though. Anybody, anybody out there think there's a chance? A Warrior fan. I want to know from a Warrior fan. Any Warrior fan legit concerned about the Sacramento Kings? We'll get to Uncle Gene on the other side. 888-957-9570. Because I do hear a lot of five, four, five, six games in which the Warriors are going to dust off the Sacramento Kings. But do they have a potential to lose? Is there a potential that they could lose to the Kings if fully healthy? Oh, boy. Any Warrior fan concerned? I, I I can't find a Warrior fan who's concerned about the Sacramento Kings whatsoever. No, 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 no. 888-957-9570 is the number. 888-957-9570 is the number. Uh, what's coming up on the game? Brought to you by the law offices of Robert Goldstein. More Warriors talk. Uncle Gene, you'll come up on the other side. We have Dave Fleming at 8 o'clock. Rod Adams at 830. Defensive guru of the Go to State Warriors. And Mark Medina at 920. That will all be brought to you by the law offices of Robert Goldstein. If you have IRS or state tax problems and don't know what to do, contact the law offices of Robert Goldstein because resolving tax problems is all that they do. Call 1-88-TAX-EXIT, 888-TAX-EXIT. Chance are here. The playoffs. Our run is not done. Our, Our time is still now. Coming. Get locked, get locked, get locked, get locked. For the first time ever, the Warriors and Kings will meet in the postseason. The once dormant Northern California rival.
Hey, and the Warriors getting ready for the Sacramento Kings Saturday night, 5.30 p.m. Go to one center. We'll get to the lines in just a second. Gene, Kevin, David, Mike, you're all on deck. Let's just talk a little dubs. And uh, look, this is going to be a fascinating series. I, I do think the more and more I think about it, the more and more I watch Sacramento, the more and more I think Steve Kerr is going to go away from the two-big lineup. He may start with it, Draymond Green and Kevon Looney, but I don't think we'll see both on the court too much together. That's just my guess. You'll see a lot of small ball five in the series, a lot of up and down uh, basketball here. So that's one of the strategies there. I think Mike Brown will try to force Steve Kerr's hand to play those two bigs. And I think Mike Brown will know he's going to sag off of Draymond Green and Kevon Looney. And that makes the offense a little congested in the half court. Not a lot of spacing there, but let's get to the lines here. 888-957-9570. A lot going on here. Uh we're talking about your favorite memories with the core. Does anybody believe the Warriors actually have a shot to lose this series? And if they do, how? Why? We want to hear from you here on the Morning Russell on 95.7 The Game. 888-957-9570. Let's get to Uncle Gene in Oakland. Uncle Gene, what's happening? You're on the roast. Morning, fellas. Morning. So, first of all, you know, <clears throat> I'm two two months away from turning 77, so I'm pretty damn sure I'm not going to get to see this again. I'm going to enjoy it for all it's worth as I have through these... Uh, you know these what these years from nine from 2013. Mm -hmm. You know I I for one um, suffered through 18 miserable seasons with this team uh, when they won in '75 and and teased us through the uh, early '80s. I thought you know they're gonna they're gonna win one they're gonna win one and then '93 came they got rid of Weber and that was the beginning of the end for you know all these years except for the two uh, we believe teams. So I appreciate. This team, I would say even more than I appreciated the uh, my Boston Celtics teams I grew up with. Wow. Um, boop, yeah, really. And my oh. lasting moment, and as ironic as it sounds, was last year when uh, when Draymond Green showed up that Boston crowd mm -hmm. in game in Game Six. That was pretty legendary. Um, <laughs> Uncle Gene, is it? I enjoyed that so much. Uncle Gene, before you go, yeah. any way the Warriors could lose this series against Sacramento? You have any concern whatsoever? No, none. Why? Preacher Why? Bonte turned me around two weeks ago, man. I uh, totally believe we're gonna we're gonna win this whole thing this year, Whew. and I think we take care of Sack in five or six. I love it. I love it. Uh, <laughs> by the way, I'm looking at Draymond Green podcast, Chasky. Oh, I saw and heard. Did you see his T-shirt? Uh oh, yeah. What a warning shot! Don't let us win another effing championship this year. He's kind of been saying that all year. <laughs> He's right. Don't let the Warriors win another championship. He also had some things to say about Gobert. I'm not sure if we pulled the sound. Oh, we have it. We I have listened it. to the we'll whole get thing. There. It's we'll, a good 30 minute listen. It, we'll get there. We'll get there. We're Rudy Gobert. What I will say about Draymond's podcast very briefly is that I like that he has not um, sworn as much on it. I think it's a lot it's better. better. The first couple episodes, he swore way too much. And you can make your point. Um, 
without having to to cuss every other word. And so I, I appreciate how much he's changed and evolved. And the show has actually gotten a little more measured over time. It's not just him, you know, liquid hot magma. It's mm-hmm. good. It's a very good show. Mm-hmm. No doubt. Uh, let's go to Mike in Oakland. Mike, what's happening? You're on the roast. Good morning, Mike. What's up, fellas? What's up? This is this is my first time calling, and I've been listening to you guys for, from the get-go. Thank, Thank you, you, brother. Appreciate really that. appreciate that. Well, I love you guys. Um, yeah, I don't think that we're going to lose for sure. I'm, I'm almost with – I'm with Gene there. I'm, I'm going on 55 coming in May, and uh, I've seen some bad warrior years. That eight, Them 18 years were bad, like mm. you said, and I, it, it, I just don't take this for granted. And I just know that we're gonna we're gonna handle our business when it comes to the postseason because that's what we hear that's what we're here for, man. No doubt, these, these boys don't play. Do you believe there's any shot the Keys could beat the Warriors in the series? I'm looking for a Warrior fan who is actually legit concerned. Hey, man, I respect the Kings for sure. I mean, I don't look past anybody, but I, I think that we'll handle our business. It might be close. I'm looking at five or six, and uh, yeah, I mean, I think that I don't. I'm not worried about the road. I'm not worried about any of that nonsense in any of our series that we play in the postseason because we've shown that we can win anytime, and we got the we got everybody coming back. If we're healthy, and they know they know that they're they ain't going to take it for granted either. So here, here, I'll, Bonte, I'll, a good call, Mike. I will, I will, I'll play the game with you, and I will, I will admit where we're at here, and just my opinion, and you can tell me if I'm wrong or if I'm yep. right. Take the 15-win season out because they didn't make the playoffs. Take the play-in game where they lost out because they didn't make the playoffs. Of the teams that have made the playoffs in the Steph Curry era uh, since winning a championship, 2015, I think this is their most vulnerable team in the in the sense that I don't think it's their their best version. Right. I don't think uh, – and, and we're ranking them, you know, right. obviously. Do I think the path – is as difficult as some of the other years? No, I do not. Yep. But I do believe this is their most vulnerable team by a long stretch. I mean, we haven't even had two weeks of good basketball from this team at any point all year. So, if I'm being fair... Let me, let me push back for just a second, because I do agree they haven't played good basketball for two weeks. But outside of Milwaukee, Philadelphia, Brooklyn with KD, mm-hmm. Boston, what team has played good for two two weeks straight? Well, the Kings a, have had a great year. Right. They've won 48 games, though. Okay, but that's not... 48 not... wins? They're a three seed. You brought up the We Believe team I mean, earlier today. Some great games uh, the, against the Warriors in particular. The, the year after the We Believe season, the Warriors won 48 games and didn't even make the playoffs. Uh, uh, believe me, I know. And Baron Davis missed a game because of a birthday party with Kate Hudson. 48, 48, 48 wins. The Kings received. And they won but 48 games. Relative and they're to three what's going on now. You know? Like, so, I, I hear you. That, that's what... My my thing is not the West is loaded. No, I I admit on the front end. The like, West I, is vulnerable. I've never seen the West is vulnerable. Well, I agree with that. But the Lakers you, have a legit shot to go to the finals. But forget and they're the a West. Play-a-team. But forget the West. That's why, I, as I said, put that to the side. This isn't about the most difficult road. I'm asking you about is this their most vulnerable team? Probably. Yeah, I think so Probably. too. Right. So if you're making if to me if you're making the argument why the Kings could should would win. It would start with the the Warriors being at their most vulnerable. Right. That's what that's where I would start. It wouldn't be oh look at our record and look what right. we did this year. And right. but I mean they, I just saw a stat yesterday. There were fifty seven players who averaged twenty or more points in the NBA this year. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. That is wild. I mean, it's just to show you how points have been up through the league through the league. The, and I also think that this regular season. Maybe it's just me being in the middle of it. Right. This feels like the most lackluster, kind of crummy, diluted regular season of all time. It, it's been a rough one. It's been a rough one. Again, the Kings are a three seed. They won 48 games. You look back at Western conferences from years past, yeah. 48 wins will get you then, a seven seed or a six seed. And then let me elaborate on, on the vulnerability of the Warriors real quick. I think the biggest area, if I was going to shape an argument about Warriors versus Kings, it would start with the lack of size to be able to defend Sabonis. I think that they've got a bunch of small guys. Not that De'Aaron's not going to play well. He's going to play well. But they've got about four guys that they could throw on him. 
I've only really got like off my off my particular opinion, like two guys. It's Draymond yeah. and, it, and it's Kavon Looney. Yep. I don't think you could throw Kaminga on S- Sabonis. I don't know if you could throw Clay Michael on Green. Sabonis. I don't know if you could throw JMG on Sabonis. So if one or two of those guys gets in foul trouble, you're really like you're searching. Yeah, it's a problem. He's a legit seven footer who's two forty and can move like a guard, no doubt. He's going to be difficult to handle, and he's strong. Very strong down on the block, and he led and, the league in rebounding. Uh, Demonis Sabonis, so they are vulnerable down in the front court, but they were vulnerable last year. Agreed, they were vulnerable last year through that postseason. And, and Jokic run. is a very skilled big player, but I would right. say that I think De'Aaron Fox is playing at a level much higher than anyone on the Nuggets were last year. They missed Jamal Murray. Yes, they didn't have Michael Porter Jr. The, the other part of this is, and I think this goes in tandem. Although they have a GP two. And Adante and Wiggins and Kaminga, who they could throw on De'Aaron Fox. The one thing that's really killed them this year, staying in front of your man, just basics. Point of attack defense. Yeah, and so when you let a guy as fast as him get into the lane, now you're scrambling defensively, and they do have shooters that can knock down shots, so that scares me as well. Over the last two weeks, the Warriors have been a top-10 team when it comes to the defensive metrics. I would love for Alex and Atlanta to break that down. But also at home home this season, the Warriors 33-8. and They're a top 10 team defensively at At home. home. Okay. So can it translate to the road? I think they will have a lot more focus here uh, heading up to Sacramento. Let's go to Kevin in Oakland. Kevin, what's happening? You're on the roast. Hey, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Just wanted to to point out and talk about, as I reflect on the Warriors, you know, I've been like the previous callers, been uh, been through the tough years and whatnot, but uh, just thinking about that they drafted all these guys and that they didn't draft him in the top five and how unique that is in today's day and age. Um, and I don't think we're going to see that again where you draft. And that, they were drafted, you know, and you can throw in Looney in there. He was drafted in the bottom of the first round. You can throw Poole in there. None of these guys were top five picks, and a lot of them were in the low end of the first round or the second round for Draymond. How unique that is in, in sports today. I think that's, right. that's just amazing. Nah, no doubt. It is very unique. Let's go to David in South City. David in hey, South David. City, what's happening? You're on a roast. Hi. Good morning, guys. Morning. The main concern, the main concern is not is not on the Kings. It's on the Warriors. It's on the Warriors. If they can minimize their turnovers and grab rebounds, they'll win the series. If Wiggins gives us at least 10 points and grabs 10 rebounds, Warriors will cruise to the next round. He's right about the turnovers. A I thought he goodbye. had more to go. Yeah, yeah, no, abrupt goodbye. But it's all good. Um, turnovers are an issue. Oh yeah. I mean, live ball turnovers. I mean, dead ball turnover. I mean, it's a problem. Bad shot selection is a problem with the Golden State Warriors. Twenty four turnovers last Friday night against the Sacramento Kings. Now the Kings weren't able to take advantage of it. They only scored seventeen points off those twenty four turnovers. But that was their B squad. You know what I'm saying? Maybe not even their B squad. Maybe their C squad. So you got to be a little bit better at taking care of the basketball. David's right about that. And that's what could do the Warriors in. If they do not take care of the basketball, there's a possibility they could blow this series. There is. Let's go to a Kings fan down in Palo Alto. This is fun. Jay Good. Jay Good down in PA. What's happening, man? You're on the morning roast. Morning, fellas. Appreciate you taking the call. Anytime. Morning. As a Kings fan... My concern for the Warriors is you guys being on the road, having to come to Sacramento and dealing with the best fans in the NBA. You guys are going to get that cowbell and that Arco Thunder. We used to have that back in the day, and we're bringing it back to Golden One Center. Reminds me of the Oracle days. My X Factor in this series is Davion Offnight Mitchell. I appreciate you taking the call. So, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, Jay Good, Jay Good. Why is he the X Factor, Davion Mitchell? Is he the Steph stopper in this series? I don't think anybody can stop Steph, but if anyone can slow him down, it's one of the best perimeter guards in the NBA, Davion Offnight Mitchell. If you don't know about him, look him up. He got that name for a reason, one of the best guards in the NBA. All right. Well, he's now entering the Warriors Invitational, which is the playoffs. How many guys have been the quote unquote Steph stopper over he's, the years? A, a, and Jacob didn't say that. No, I know, but Jay I'm just Kidd asking you. I know, no, I know he didn't say that. Matthew Della Vadova, who ironically is on the Sacramento Kings. 
Marcus Smart last year. I mean, I'm just thinking like just Matt, last year Matt, alone. Matthew Delladova, he had to go to the hospital after defeating Steph Curry, gave three of the finals. Well, he was done after that. Steph almost had to go to the hospital too because he like karate chopped them yeah, like well, 80 he was, times. He was hacking the hell out of him, but off night. I think it's going to be an on night for Steph Curry if Davion Mitchell is trying to guard him. And we've overrated the road thing. Like, yeah, this year they stink on the road. Historically, they've Throw been amazing away. on the road. Throw it away. They'll be fine. Kings also aren't very good at home. By They're the like 24-17. Yeah. You want a prediction? Yeah, 24, 17. If the Warriors win it all, they will have to have more road wins in the playoffs <laughs> than they had during the regular season. <laughs> well, yeah, they don't have home court advantage at all. Just like the Houston Rockets in 94-95. And look, we watched Davion Mitchell last Friday night for the Sacramento Kings. Guy couldn't <laughs> hit. I could leave him in an empty gym, and I'm not sure he can make five uh, straight uh, threes. Go look, at his, go look at those numbers here. Let me even pull up that game off because I – it was like him and Terrence Davis were atrocious. How many timeouts did Mike Brown call? He airballed in that two threes. Uh, he was two of 13. Two of 13, one of six on the three-point line, five assists, three steals, five points. Off night? Come on, man. That's not going to happen. Let's go to Sean in Oakland. Sean, what's happening? You're on the roast. Hey, morning. Morning. Morning, morning roast. So I got three points in terms of what would give me concern that the Warriors will lose the series. One. one. I think it's been touched upon earlier is uh, the turnovers. If they become sloppy... Uh, more than 20 turnovers a game, then that becomes a problem. Two, uh, if that ball becomes stagnant, if they stop moving the ball and it becomes hero ball and a lot of isolation, then that's going to be a problem. And then three, which I hate to bring up, but if there's a serious injury to the top seven, then that puts some other things in jeopardy. And then my bonus point, if the Kings don't win game <laughs> one, oh, people, they're going to start getting tight and it's going to get ugly. So it's a must win game one for the Kings. Must yeah. win for the Kings. I like that. Is it so, a must win for the Kings? So, can I, can game just, one? That was a good call. He came in. No, I know. One, I know. two, three, I, four. Had his four take. points. His bonus takes. It was quick. It was like concise. It. That was a great call. It's like the bonus fry at the bottom yeah. of the bag. Nah, it was better than the bonus fry at the like, bottom of the bag. Really, like, that was a hell of a call. The whole road thing, though. Like I, I, I can't get a... This team has won so many historic road games, and we're now worried about Sacramento. I don't think anybody's worried about Sacramento. I'm not diminishing their, their home court advantage. I think like, Kings fans are using that to say, hey, you guys have sucked on the road. I think Warrior fans are saying, dude, these are the playoffs. What do you think the toughest road series that they've had? Oklahoma City. More than Boston? Yeah. Oklahoma City. Okay. Kevin Durant, Russell More Westbrook. Houston. In that, yeah. Houston's home crowd. Come on, man. It was pretty ruckus. It was, the Dude, it was, a, lot of, it was a lot of fans. Paul it was a lot of Warrior fans. Yeah, come on. Dude. Travis Scott in the front row. Come on, man. Grizzlies. Nobody, nobody was worried Multiple about times. Houston. Man, the Grindhouse is tough. Yeah. Grindhouse is Multiple tough. Multiple times. FedEx Forum. But they were they down 2-1. They've won a lot of big games Tony here. Allen, we well, won't guard you. 2-1, and then they won two straight games in Memphis. I know. All right? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying. Like, right, I, for me, it's OKC. Oklahoma City with Kevin Durant and Ibaka in that crowd okay. on top of you. That's the only thing in town, the only show in town. The last time they were relevant. I mean, they got blown out in game three and four in that series. And it was like, oh, you got to go back to Oklahoma City. In game six, there were so many moments in that first half. <laughs> I remember at halftime, they were down by five. Yeah. And I looked at Igor and I said, boy. <laughs> They're lucky to be down five. I said, how are they down five? Because Oklahoma City had so many moments in that first half where they were hitting the dagger shot. They would be up 11 with the ball. And it's like one more shot could put the Warriors away. And they would miss. The Warriors come down and hit a bucket. Like, whew, all right, cool. Down nine, not down 14. I love how we don't even think about Cleveland in this equation. Yeah, Cleveland. No. Nah. Nobody. Because Cleveland, their home crowd, they go into a game. Was it Chesapeake Bay? No. No, that's, no, that's, that was Oklahoma City. So what's City. theirs? Theirs now is Rocket Mortgage Arena, Rocket, but it may have changed. Yeah, he used to yeah, own Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, Dan Gilbert. Yeah. So, yeah. but at the time, what was it called? Quicken Loans. Quicken right? Loans. Quicken Loans. Quicken Loans Arena. The Q. The Q. The Q. See, their fan base, Cleveland, the Q. their fans go into the game thinking that they're losing, that the worst is going to happen. So they're on pins and needles. They're like you watching the game. They're anxiety riddled. They're sitting there like, oh, God, here we go again. And it's like the first three minutes of a basketball game. They're freaking out. <laughs> they're kind of like you. First three, oh, my God, what are they that, doing? That'll be me tonight in the play-in game, so don't worry. Yeah, I'll, dude, I'm disturbed on the text thread today. I love I how you watch games boy. like you're Gabe Kapler. You're just sitting there, just the most watch it like confidence it. No, in the world. No, 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 no. Shades I don't, no, on, no, no, beard no, no, looking no. perfect. That's wrong. That's incorrect. I chill knowing that it's a 48-minute game. <laughs> that knowing that it's a game of runs. Everyone's different. Everyone's different. I hate watching my team. I, 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 I used to be like that.
I used to be like that. But your boy matured. Oh. Knowing that, hey, I got Steph Curry in the wow. back pocket with Klay Thompson. I'm going to sit back and relax knowing that, hey, these are key moments in the first half. Hey, but I'm not confident I necessarily. Can't I can't wait to meet this more mature Bonte one day. Mm-hmm. I'm really, I can't wait. I chill, man. I, I'm telling you, man. I love I, you. I, 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 I watch games differently. I like to watch them by myself because I can't stand anybody talking or saying, oh, my God, for I need to be locked in. I lock in on a game knowing that, hey, all right, it's a lot of ball to be played. It's not the end of the world. Not the end of the world. Is that side of the Giants? By. I, I was laughing. Hey, love it. How was I watching the Giants? Get get on here. We'll get back to the calls in a second. Slep Rock. By the I, way, Slep Rock with the greatest nickname he's ever produced. Anybody's ever produced in a long, long time. Love it. Get on the phone. I mean, get on the uh, microphone. Who's on the phone with me last night? Okay. How would you assess me watching the Giants game last night with you on the phone? Oh, we were both like cackling over just the comedy of cackling. errors. That... What does cackling sound like? Like loud ha! laughing. Ha! <laughs> Well, hey, hey, Anna, did you see this? Anna, take this play out by Wilma Flores. Like two 1920s, like, prohibition gangsters. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can't, like, I can't, I can't, I can't repeat this? what I said on air, but yeah, there was a lot of laughing, a lot of, a lot of <laughs> verbalizing of emotions. Hey, now, and we're just, I'll make you an offer you can't see now. Huh? Yeah, you see, you're watching these Giants. They're, they're, they're putting the ball over the, the place. Like? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're losing our minds here. Watching the Giants, hey? Yeah, just a little bit of that. <laughs> I like that. So, well, I, I lay down, now I chill. What's going on here? The time to go crazy during the game is the third and fourth quarters. That's when you stand up because it's muddy time. It's nutcracking time. You start wobbling back and forth. But in the first half, I'm going to chill. I'm going to relax. I'm going to see how the game's played out. I'm looking at the strategies. I'm looking at the adjustments teams could make. I'm looking at, okay, who's in foul trouble? What are the coaches doing? Oh, this is how they feel about that team. Oh, they think this team can't stop the run. Oh, okay. Interesting. And then in the second half is when the game starts. So from here on out, when I'm watching Niner games with Bonte, and I'm going to start hey, i tell you right now. Uh, oh, here we go. Before, we ain't never watching a Niner game together. Philadelphia, we watched it together. You were good against Philly. I was more optimistic than you. No, oh, I knew. You was... kept going, Josh Johnson to the game. Yeah, the game was over. Yeah. <laughs> the game so was over. In that scenario, first quarter game but over. But I wasn't even yelling. I was just like, gosh, Josh Johnson to go to the Super Bowl. Yeah, this ain't happening. Review that. Review that. You screaming in my ear well, to because, review that. But it was. That was the first drive of the game. But I thought Shanahan should have reviewed. He should have reviewed it. I was waiting for the reviewed it. Monte to come in. He should have reviewed it. Hmm. He should have reviewed it. It was to play the game. <laughs> Changed everything. Devontae Smith way too confident in that running back to the line. Yep. And I was just like, hey, review it. Review it. Hey, shut it here. Review it. Review it. It was a little more up deep than that, but yes. You did call that. Look at his reaction. Look at his reaction you right have away. To review it. And then what happened when you got to your cell phone? Oh, everyone was telling me how it was just should have been reviewed. There My boy go. Della is texting me like, ball hit ground. We couldn't see. They didn't show any replays. I mean, you want to adapt just Philadelphia. Don't uh, even start me. Let's go. Don't even start me. Yeah, I, you know, it's okay to be nervous. It's okay to be nervous. It means you care. It does. I still get nervous doing this show when the clock ticks down and I hear the intro. I'm like, oh boy, here we go. Four hours. Let's go. The butterfly still float in my stomach, believe it or not. Uh, let's go to. But you sting like a bee. <laughs> not really. <laughs> Severance, Berkeley. What's Severance. Happening? Great show. Apple Plus. <laughs> Severin, but you're close. Thank you. Oh. So, what is it? Oh, What's your name? Hey, hey, Jeff, you, uh, hey, I want to comment. I was calling my, with my concerns about defense, but I have to give it to the uh, previous caller who said about how game one is a must win for Sacramento and then they might get tight. I, I'm, I've been waiting all year for the Warriors' defense to be consistent. It hasn't happened. I'm worried, but I'll tell you, I do think that with GP2 with Wiggins coming back and Kuminga's new fire. I I think we might have it, but if there's anything, it's defense and turnovers. That'll be my concern. Yep. Good call. Good call. We'll get to Slap Rock in a second, but I want to read this text from the 510 on the Comcast business text line. Biggest concern with the Kings is how well Mike Brown knows to go to State Warriors. It's a concern. He does know the Warriors inside and out. He knows the weaknesses of all these players. He's been around them for a long time. Does that concern you at all? You're giving me a look that that doesn't concern you whatsoever. No, I, but I've seen a lot of people like, he knows all their plays. Everyone knows everyone's plays. Like, that's, you, yes, you might have something in the bag, but like, okay, what what is Mike He Brown? knows tendencies, right? Yeah, he might understand tendencies, absolutely. Like, And I'm not saying that familiarity isn't a, a factor, 
I just don't think it's like a deciding factor. Like I think it, at the end of the day, guys have to execute. You could tell right. a guy all the time he likes to get to his left. He likes to get right. to his left. The great ones still get to their left. No doubt. You know what I mean? Like it's so like yes, there there is a little slight schematic advantage maybe, but the players still have to execute. They have to execute, no doubt. But he does know. Hey, I know what Draymond Green doesn't like to do offensively. I also want to see how you could cheat. Because now you know what you yeah. start to see. In these games here, the last couple of weeks with go to say Warriors, I saw this with Jamal Murray. I saw it a couple of times last Friday night in Sacramento. With Draymond Green has the ball at the top of the key, and he's waiting for Stephen Curry to come off that curl. Teams are cheating, yeah, and they're jumping it, knowing that Draymond Green is not going to shoot it, and they're getting into the open court, they're getting to the fast break, and they're hitting layups. That is a concern of mine, yeah, because teams are starting to jump that, knowing that Draymond Green is hesitant to shoot that rock. And I want him shooting. I want him to be aggressive. I like it when he shoots. I do too. He's the offense. He's he hoops, and well, so and then it opens up the floor for him to dribble drive. Exactly, exactly. And he's had and some big pass. games. He gets he's had some big games against the Kings as well, uh, especially earlier in the year. They met three times in the first three weeks of the season. Pretty funny. Uh, it feels Warriors like all those games. Not that they're meaningless, but it's hard to draw. It's hard to gauge conclusions. Because, yeah. The team's so different. Sacramento's D'Lo told us yesterday, Debbie and Barley, that when the Warriors beat them and the whole two minute report came out, a lot of people thought Clay fouled Red Velvet. Kings won seven in a row, changed their season. And I had forgotten they started 0-4. I had forgotten all about that. Uh, let's go to Slut Rock. Slut Rock, Oakland, what's happening? You're on the roast. What's going on? Let Day Day shoot. Here's the thing. Here's my concerns. I want to see Draymond bringing the ball down court a lot more. I haven't seen that a lot lately. Uh, lack of statistical passes, cross-court passes, those got to stop. And I got to see Clay. I got to see... Uh, 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 pool and of course Curry score. I'm going to say six. I'm going to say four to six more points each in the paint. And if they don't score, with they're going to the line. And that caller, that Kings caller from uh, Palo Alto, that said the uh, <laughs> they're going to bring it back to the, the Golden Chase or whatever that that arena is called. Don't you have to have something first to be able to bring something back? They ain't had anything. <laughs> They've had nothing other than the California Classic. Got a couple of summer league banners, which is pretty cool. Um, good for the Kings. Good for the Sacramento Kings. 888-957-9570. Dave Fleming will join us at 8 o'clock. The voice of the Giants. He was at the Masters this past weekend. A lot going on. I was reading on the Masters uh, yesterday just from awful announcing how CBS veered away from getting deep into the live golf guys. Like Phil Mickelson mm -hmm. shot a 65. And they were like, you know, when he had the PJ, when he won the PJ Tour or the PJ Open out in South Carolina, yeah. PJ Championship, yeah. is that what it's called? PJ Championship. Phil Mickelson won it in South Carolina. You know, they were all about Phil. Uncle Phil, mm -hmm. Uncle Phil, Uncle mm -hmm. Phil. They couldn't get enough. Now that he's with Liv, and he shot that 65. It was like, uh, he just shot a 65. Covers is definitely slanted towards well, the PJ Tour guys, but he also backdoored, um, and so like he wasn't in contention the whole time. He he took like a late charge, so all of a sudden, boom! You look up and oh, he's in the mix now because some other guys fell back, and so there there was a lot baked into it. But look, the live PGA thing. I'll keep it short and sweet. I miss all these guys playing on one tour together. I think it's killing the tour. Well, no, well, it's killing both products. Like we we need more Brooks and Phil. Phil's look, right. he, he's a lot of things. Compelling and fun on television is one of them. And people lean forward when he's on. You may hate his guts, Whoa. but it makes it more watchable. You can't. You know, Brooks Kepka, it's a more watchable product with him on, on television. Right. DJ, more watchable. I hate Patrick Reed. Patrick Reed's a, a, a good villain. You can't have a bunch of good guys. You got to have a couple bad guys in there to mix it up. You know, Phil is a lot of things. But you can't shoot yourself in the foot with some of the decisions he's made. I mean, he looks like a real clown. Well, that's obvious. He I mean, he's become a clown. I mean, he's a guy that bet away his entire life savings right. and then needed a huge payday parachute. Yeah, he, and that's he, what he did. He now, is. Brooks, I don't know if you saw the Brooks thing. Brooks admitted, had he not had the knee, the serious knee injury, he might not have taken the live money. He took the guaranteed money because right. he thought his knee was shot. Mm. I can't knock him for that. I can't knock him for that. I, I, th I have a feeling he actually defects. Let's go to uh, LaVon in New Jersey. LaVon, what's happening? You're on the roast. LaVon going once. Going twice. Gone. 
So like Max far. Muncy's home run yesterday. Oh. Seven RBI. You know that? Grand slam. He, 23 home runs versus the Giants, yeah. and that's 10 less than Nolan Arenado. Yeah, no. And then on top of that, if you were to extrapolate – uh, or you know, prorate all of his home runs throughout a, a 162 game season against the Giants. He would average almost 50 home runs. Yeah, it's great. And the guy comes in ice cold. He could be like 0 for his last 50. He comes in eh, seven for 11, couple knocks, couple home runs, like seven RBIs. I don't care what the guy's in a deep freeze last year. Deep freeze, batting under 100, home run, home run, home run. It just Max Muncie. Uh, Ooh, we're going to Alex Conker to just. If I put together an all time giant killer lineup, it'd be Goldschmidt, Arenado, Max Muncy, all the Harristons. Who else? Uh, I don't know. I'll get back to that in a second because I was looking at Steph Curry's numbers against Sacramento. Oh, what are they? 33 points in the first game, five rebounds, 50% shooting from the floor. Game number two, he dropped 47 against the Kings, eight rebounds and eight assists. Third game, 27 points, 52, 53% shooting, four assists, six rebounds. And then last Friday night, 25, six and seven. And that's the thing that we keep discussing. Who's going to slow down Sabonis? Who's going to slow down De'Aaron Fox? Well, who the hell is going to slow down Stephen Curry? One of the 10 best players in NBA history. Why is that not a talking point? That should be the number one talking point. How is Sacramento going to keep Steph Curry from shooting 50% from the three-point line like he did against them in the regular season, <laughs> great, 20 of 40. It's a great question. Because right, you, you, you let him go off and detonate, then this might be a quicker series than we all thought. Who the hell is going to select? Davion Mitchell's your answer? If it is it Red Velvet? Who the hell is going to slot out Stephen Curry in this series? You know who loves Red Velvet? Who? Steiny. I love I like I love him too. It's all those Hawks, you know, yeah, connections no. he's Red got. Red Velvet's good, man. Red Velvet's a good two guard. Is he selling his Hawks stock? Oh yeah, that's done. Travis Slink is no longer running the show. Steiny's off that train. Mm. I don't think we'll ever see Steiny wear Hawks gear ever again. Got rid of it. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Of all the people that I associate with Atlanta, he might be last. Who's that? Steiny. Why? He just doesn't scream Atlanta to me. Well, oh, no, it's, it's Travis Schlank. Yeah, no, I understand that. Oh. I'm talking about the cultural fit. Oh, yeah. I mean, you said that Stardy wouldn't go down to Magic City. Have I'm just saying Trey Young doesn't Pepper seem Pepper like lose. his type of player. Yeah, he loved Trey Young. Oh, he loved Trey Young. I'm a man of nuance. He's, by the way, Trey Young. Really? He loved him because he's such a ball hog. I no, would think no, he wouldn't he like him. thought he was a better playmaker than Steph Curry. Did he? At the stage of his career. Wow. We talked a lot about Trey Young, but speaking uh, of Trey Young. Steiny's got some explaining to do. Uh, he doesn't have to explain anything. Nor Big will he. homie's going to be If you fine, ask Steiny to explain something, he will never explain it to you. He'll do the complete opposite. Uh, speaking of Trey Young, did you see John Collins and what he said here today about Trey Young? What did John Collins say about Trey Young? I can definitely say for sure that he's a way better playmaker than Steph. Oh, God. And he's a better isolation oh, scorer. But obviously, there's different things that he does better if Steph does better. What are you talking about? Yeah, I, I look. Is John that Co- Francesa? Yeah. That's a, yeah, it's a, it's that's so a hell of a hell of a teammate right there. John Collins will have your back 100% we, no matter what. We know he's not made out of wood. Yeah, he's lying through his teeth. that nose would be so long oh, right man. now. He Pinocchio, is, come on. He is lying through his teeth. So they're playing the Heat tonight in the Eastern Conference play, and you, the Celtics are hoping the Hawks win that one, right? Because no the doubt. Celtics do not want to grind, even if it's a five-game series. That'll take a lot out of you oh, in the first round against the Heat. Miami could take them to six or seven. Yeah. Well, Jimmy Butler, physical as all hell. You're right. He also turns into a god in the playoffs. Yeah, he, does. Reason. he does. He does. Bam Very out of bio. Games. Oh my lord, Bam out of bio. Yeah, that's that's something else. I would like to see but I actually would like to see Miami lose and take on the Bucks in the first round. That would be interesting to me. Very interesting. Let's go to Alex and Concord. Alex, what's happening? You're on the roast. Good morning. Uh good morning, guys. How you guys doing? Good. Good, Alex. Hey. I'm rooting uh hard for you guys today, uh today, man. Well not today, but I'll be rooting for you guys on Saturday. And I need you guys to beat the Kings, whether it's in four games, five. What are you a fan of? Just handle the Kings. Why? At, why? Um, well, the Lakers, we, we're going to handle the Wolves today. <laughs> we'll handle Memphis for you guys in the first round. And like I said, I want the Warriors in the playoffs, man. I want to uh, end this little dynasty. Uh-huh. And what better than LeBron and AD to do it? Huh? What do you guys think about that? I, I mean, I thought it was... 
pretty predictable call. The second I started hearing you call us you guys, I was like, he's got to be a Laker fan. Why? Like, honestly, Laker fans, you're the worst. Like, you're the worst. You're everywhere. You don't like Laker fans? No, they're the worst. It's Joe Spadoni? Well, Spadoni's a real Laker fan. I'll at least give him his chops. God, the Laker fans are the worst. I'm a, I, I'm a Chicago Blackhawk, Laker, Dallas Cowboy, Yankee fan. Chicago Blackhawk. Just going any NHL team that was good like I know, 10 I didn't years know where ago. To go. I was going to go they Boston good, Aren't they like the worst team in the NHL? You know why I'm not? <laughs> See, Shasky does this. Uh, what? You do this. And I can't. I remember when I wanted the Lakers to lose. And you're like, we got to have that to play at Lakers Warriors. And then next week. When the Grizzlies are playing the Warriors, we got to have LeBron against Steph, Lakers, Warriors. I want the Lakers to lose tonight. I want them to lose Friday. That's not I don't happening. want them. Yeah, it's not happening. I want the Lakers to lose. I don't want to deal with Do Lakers. Do we have fans. the officials for tonight? Oh. I mean, it might as well be Phil all of the clutch management. Fill a buster for all a right, second. I'm going to fill a buster. There. Uh, yeah, LeBron James tonight against the Timberwolves, correct? Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay, so o'clock. Clock. What? What are your feelings right now, Mr. Laker fan? Uh, this feels like, so I think the, the line jumped from the Gobert suspension. So the Lakers are five and a half point favorites. I think they're eight and a half you right Gobert now. Gobert on the floor? I don't think it matters. Like, it all comes down to Anthony Davis, no matter what. That's and what he I held feel. His, he held his own against him last time. Like, there was like a half. It was in Minnesota a couple weeks ago where it was like Is a must-win game. Playing? Uh, he was playing, and he can't guard Anthony Davis. That, well, that's like if AD like has his game, they're winning. All right, here yeah. we go. Look out for the Mike Connolly game. Here we I go. I think Anthony Edwards has a big game tonight. Actually, ooh, who's guarding? Vanderbilt would guard him. Vanderbilt, yeah. yeah. Here we go, real quick. Minnesota uh, for Atlanta, Miami. Crew chief John Goble, Sean Wright. Oh, Goble, JB stinks. DeRosa. Crew chief Look at for the Lakers. He's like the most immediate. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Minnesota Lakers. Crew chief David Guthrie. Tyler Ford and Trey Maddox, part of the crew tonight for the Lakers and T Wolves. David Guthrie, number 16. Who's the guy who runs clutch? Rich Paul. Rich Paul. Rich Paul that's it. That, I'm surprised he's not wearing the, the stripes tonight. Oh, he'll be courtside with the Dell. If probably. you don't think the Lakers are going to have 15 to 20 free throws in the first half, you're tripping. <sighs> Mark my lines. What was the discrepancy for free throws made this year? They were like plus 300 over second place. They blow. Austin Reeves is getting to the free throw line. The nine league, times. the league already has the red carpet out for Shannon Sharp to sit courtside for, for the Grizzlies Lakers game. Oh, it's going to be fascinating. But Stephen Adams will be a street close, so he'll be looking out for Shannon Sharp. Sharp won't want that smoke uh, because he'll get injured. All right, Dave Flippy coming up at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock, that's in about six minutes to talk about Masters and, of course, the San Francisco Giants. Yeah. But speaking of the Lakers, they could be at full strength tonight when they take on the T-Wolves in the play-in tournament. Point guard Dennis Schroeder, who has missed the last two games with neck spasms and Achilles soreness, was not on the injury report, and he is cleared to play tonight. Anthony Davis and LeBron both dealing with right foot soreness. They're probably going to play, as is D'Angelo Russell, who is expected to be on the court despite dealing with soreness in his left foot. As for the T-Wolves, Rudy Gobert has been suspended for the game for punching Kyle Anderson. Jared Vanderbilt broke his head, hitting a wall. Nas Reed is out. So it looks like it looks like the T-Wolves could be cooked. The injury report brought to you by Boxer Girls, your Northern California's premier workers' compensation law firm, helping injured workers get their lives back for over 40 years. What's coming up on the game? Sparks of my Fremont Bank full-service banking. No compromises. The one and only Dave Fleming on the morning roast here on 95.7 The Game. The 2023 Mountain Winery concert season is here. Come celebrate our 65th concert season with iconic performances by It's been Bare Naked Ladies, Last Summer on Earth 2023 with Semisonic and Della Mitri on June 20th. I don't care.
Baby, oh baby, oh, bu- oh baby. Good to be with you on a Tuesday morning. A little foggy outside. Oh, I see the sun peeking out here on a Tuesday. Um, Warriors and Kings, of course, Saturday, game one, 5.30 p.m. Going to one center. We'll get the rest of the schedule, hopefully by tonight or maybe later in the week so we can figure out the rest of the games here. I know there's going to be a couple day breaks uh, in this series, which favors the Warriors. you got to think with no back-to-backs and, a, and being a much older team. All right, Garlic Fries, the Baseball Guys podcast is back. Joe Shasky, Sam Lutman. They bring you all you need to know about the Giants season twice a week. No episodes are now available wherever you listen to your podcast. Giants, of course, get smoked by the Dodgers last night, 9-1. to Urias was really good, 8 Ks and 6 innings, 4 hits. Logan Webb, not so good. Drops to 0-3, 6 hits. Four runs and six caves, and Max Muncy continues to dominate the San Francisco Giants. He goes three for three last night. Seven RBIs and two home runs for Max Muncy. Mookie Betts goes three for five, two RBIs and a homer. We'll get back into the Warriors, 888-957-9570. Line them up. Ron Adams will join us at 830, the defensive guru for the Go to State Warriors. But let's bring in Dave Fleming, who is back from Augusta, Georgia. Had a great time, I'm sure, at the Masters. Dave, good morning. Welcome back to the Morning Rose here on 95.7 The Game. We'll get to the Masters. But first, the Giants, is there a scuffling at home? They lost three or four at home. They're failing to score uh, or hit the ball really well. But last night, I'm focused on Logan Webb. Logan Webb, just so far this season, hasn't matched the aces that he's gone against. Garrett Cole, Dylan Cease, and, of course, Julio Arias last night. And he's just catching way too much zone right now. Logan Webb, off to a rocky, rocky start. Yeah, and, uh, you know, the, I, uh, good morning, guys, uh, first. Uh I, I think there is reason to be not maybe not even concerned, but just disappointed by okay, you've given the ball to Logan Webb three times in your first ten games and you haven't won a single one of those. Uh, you know, so you're four and six, but you're four and three when Logan Webb doesn't start. That you know, that doesn't sound right. Like that just seems strange. Uh part of that is definitely the three pitchers that he faced. Like you could probably make an argument that three of the like seven best pitchers in the game are those three that he's gone head to head against. I mean, those three guys are really, really good. So that's part of it. The other part is the home run ball. I mean, Logan gave up 11 home runs all last year and he's given up four already. He threw 192 innings last year. Uh, he's thrown 15 or whatever this year, whatever it is. Uh, so that is a concern, and it's strange, and hopefully it's just a small sample. Hey, uh, you know, wrong pitch, wrong time, because Webb's still got the skill set to keep the ball in the ballpark. It's his most important skill set. He's throwing hard. He looks totally healthy. His stuff, to me, looks good. Uh, I'm hoping that's just kind of a flukish, okay, he made some bad pitches that got taken advantage of. It's going to even out over the course of the year. Yeah, you know, I just I think a lot of Giants fans are just kind of frustrated. You know, they they look up and they're four and sixteen against the Dodgers over the last twenty. They've been outscored one hundred eight to fifty six in those games, and that's your rival. And, and no one is saying that you got to compete for championships every single year, but closing the gap a little is, I think, something that Giants fans are feeling right now. I I, I don't know, man. What's going on? Why do the Dodgers have their numbers so bad over the last couple of years? Yeah, I don't know because I think they have closed the gap a little bit for this year. I do. I think they're a, they're closer in the overall talent level to the Dodgers. Um, you know, but maybe part of that is the last year uh, the Dodgers have had, and they have a lot of guys. You know, Logan's one of the best pitchers in the game, but against Muncie and Betts and Freeman, <laughs> he doesn't look like it. I mean, part of it could be just some individual matchups against some Giants pitchers that are that are no good. Um, I, it, that one is hard to explain. I mean, the, the, the number one explanation is last year the Dodgers won 111 yeah, games. Yeah, they were awesome. Like, they were just a historically awesome team. And you, we the three of us talked about it in the offseason. Like, you take away the you, – you can't do it, and you don't want to do it. But if you measure the Giants against everybody in baseball last year other than the Dodgers and the Padres – the Giants had a better record than than almost every other team. Uh, they handled themselves just fine against everybody but those two teams. But the problem is you have to be able to measure up against those two. You have to. And we're seeing the Diamondbacks have obviously taken another step forward. They've got a ton of young talent. I mean, the National League West is just brutal right now. And 
Uh, does it help that they play fewer games in the division this year? It does, but it doesn't help that much. You're still going to have to, you can't have another year where it's, you know, three and 10 against the Dodgers and four and nine against the Padres that you're, you are not going to get where you need to go if that happens. So I don't have a good answer for you, but I think you're right to say it's frustrating and they have to match up better against those teams. I, I, I believe at the end of the year when we're talking, we'll say that they did, but they got to go out and do it. No doubt. Dave Fleming here on the morning. Ross on 95, seven a game. Dave, uh, looking at Ross Stripling and Sean Manaya, I thought Sean Manaya pitched really well over the weekend against the Kansas City Royals. Ross Stripling, a couple rough outies for him in his Giants debut. What's the ideal role for Ross Stripling? Is it coming out of the pen like he did uh, Saturday night, Saturday afternoon, where he gave up the big home run to Salvador Perez, the three run jack, or is it starting the game? What's the mo- What's the ideal role for Ross Stripling? What What you know? How can you get the best out of him this year with the Giants? Yeah, excellent question, important question, because he is good. He was really good last year. He's got, he's a big part of their plans this year, and it, it, the answer could be they're still they still need time to figure that out. I, you know, it's you have starting pitching depth that's really great. It's enviable, uh, but the flip side is early on there might be some bumps in the road as you try to figure out how to use those guys, um, and so. You know, I don't think it's going to be a problem long term. Stripling, I think his answer when he was asked about it, you know, I, I give Ross credit. He stood in front of everybody the other day after, because that's the game. The Giants, absolutely, they should be five and five. I mean, that, right. that has to be a win. And when you look back at the end of the year, you might say that that's the worst win of the, the worst loss of the year. I mean, that you can't lose that game. What was the, against that for team. just a second, Dave? Like, I, I was listening to Gabe in the post game, and he said, oh, we're trying to get him some work. Like uh, I hear that to a degree in like the seventh inning, but like what was what was him not going to the bullpen in the eighth inning? Like I I didn't understand the baseball logic in that. Um. Yeah. I mean, I think it, it, well, number one, it tells you that from the right side, other than their closer, you know, they still they trust Brebbia, they trust Rogers, they do. Um, but those guys aren't like massively overpowering sort of traditional. Uh, late inning relievers, at least by the standards of current baseball, um, I mean it does tell you that they 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 may have a little different concept of how to use those right handers, Junis, Jelly, Stripling, in conjunction with Brevia and Rogers. Um, so you know, part of it might be just kind of experimenting a little bit at the beginning of the year and seeing how do we have to have a traditional late inning mm-hmm. right handed setup guy, or could we use those three pitchers in some way to, to kind of take that role. And maybe the answer is going to be no. Maybe you need to be a little more traditional at the end of the game. I mean, I'm, I'm okay with some early season tinkering, experimenting. You know, Stripling said after the game, I've started 100 games, I've relieved 100 games. I can do both. I'm happy in both. That wasn't the reason I didn't pitch well today. Uh, he has been tinkering with this new changeup. I wonder if, you know, maybe some of that tinkering has thrown him off a little bit. We see that a lot. Like spring training, early season, pitchers, hitters, looking for a new approach, looking for a new edge, and then ultimately you just go back to what you know works. I wonder if we're going to see a little bit of that about with Stripling because I, I still think he's going to be a very big part of this team. Yeah, What's yeah. It? There have been a couple of, like, positives. I think – you know, the general consensus that, like, the sky is falling and everything is lost isn't true. Yastrzemski looks like the bat is alive. He's got much better swings. Estrada's been on fire. J.D. Davis has been on fire. VR looks solid. Uh, defensively and offensively, he's got pop. And then Ramos has looked good in these last couple of games. What's your favorite of those storylines? Well, and I would add, I mean, I think uh, Michael Conforto has good call. excellent. Good call. Like, he's... He's swinging and missing a lot, but to me, that's a guy who hasn't played in two years, basically. To me, that the, the strikeouts for him are less of a worry than the other stuff is a positive. I think Conforto's going to be just fine. Lamont Wade Jr., to me, looks way better. Like, Lamont is taking pitches, he's taking walks, his at-bats look great, and his exit velocities are way up. Like, he, he's hitting the ball harder than he ever has in his career, including 2021. Uh 
So I I think there actually are a lot of positives on this team. Jacob Junis looks yeah. absolutely awesome. What about Anthony DiSclefani? Uh, yeah. In the first two starts. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. He's a huge positive. I think there are more positives than negatives right now. I do. I think the defense is still not great, Agreed. but better. Do you, um, Flynn, to stop you right there real quick, do you think they – I, last night, watching the game and just watching it really closely, because over the weekend I was in and out with the Royals and all the stuff going on with the Golden State Warriors, but last night it really hit me that without all the uh, drastic shifting, they need to get a lot more athletic defensively. That's the one thing that popped out to me. There's one negative about the defense. It's their athleticism. Yeah, and I, I think that's probably true. Um, you know, I, I wonder when... You know, the outfield looks like it's supposed to look, and, you know, right. like maybe maybe that's not going to happen totally. You know, it could be that, that, you know, they've got some guys who are just too injury-prone mm-hmm. and took too many risks there. I mean, that's a possibility, but uh, hopefully not. Yeah. Um, when the outfield looks like it's supposed to, then I think the defense, you can sort of stabilize. I mean, I think one of their main goals this year was to stabilize things, like not right. have – be a be a mix and match team. Be a matchup team. Be able in the late innings to go to your bench and have true weapons. I, last night to me was you know it got lost in the fact that the you know the Muncie Grand Slam blew the game open, mm-hmm. but it was really interesting that Alex Vasilla was the guy out of the Dodgers bullpen. Not one of I mean they only have two lefties and Vasilla's really struggled. Why do they do that? Well, because you get Jock Peterson and Michael Conforto and Lamont Wade all sitting on the bench. Oh, they the teams are not going to want to have to use their right-handers in the late mm-hmm. inning after a lefty starter against the Giants. I, they are going to be able to match up the Giants are like they did in 2021. Mm-hmm. But that said, still part of the idea is to have more stability day to day, and so that's where I think Fonte maybe will find out. Right. Uh, in a few weeks, like, Mm -hmm. okay, let's get them settled in and see if some of those problems start to disappear. I mean, look, I, you guys have heard me wax on about Brandon Crawford for a long time. Brandon is the greatest giant shortstop of all time. He is. Mm -hmm. And he's had an amazing career, but the defensive numbers so far are not good for Brandon at shortstop. His range. It just doesn't. No, that is, that is a concern. If, if, if Crawford doesn't, look rangy at shortstop he's their guy mm-hmm. uh and uh that you know that's where some of that those issues without shifting might start to pop mm-hmm. up well so i went to the opening day uh dave and i had not been to a game with the pitch clock and the new rules and stuff and so a like the action was unbelievable just a- across the board uh my wife and and uh one of my cousins they made a remark that like you know for a casual fan they now know when the ball is going to be in play because they're looking at the clock and they're like all right here we go it's Pitch is coming in, and so like it's an indicator for the casual fan that the ball is going to be in play, and things are just moving faster. But I was picking up on the Royals and their defensive shifts, and how they were putting another outfielder in the infield, essentially, and then how they were running the bases. And so you're seeing sort of philosophical changes from team to team. The Diamondbacks running the bases like crazy against the Dodgers. I'm loving the athleticism that has been injected into the game as a whole. Are you noticing those same trends? Totally agree. And I think t- to your point and to Bonte's point, long term, you got to be more athletic. And yeah. the Giants have to be more athletic. And long term, that has to be a goal for this franchise because I do think that these changes, that, I mean, first of all, we know they're here to stay. Right. But Absolutely. The rules, the rules changes have been wildly successful. They've been right. incredible. Baseball is, I think, thrilled with the way this early season is going. Just you know, on a hey, macro hey, level, Flynn, we could watch an so, entire game now on this morning show. I was in <laughs> bed. I was like, "Wow, I got to watch the Giants and go to bed." It's been dynamic. I love it. it. Exactly. I mean, it's it's just changed everything about the experience of being a baseball fan. So that that's really really good. Yep. But that, but I think if you're building a team with these rules. That's going to have to be an emphasis is range on the infield and speed on the base paths. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's two things the Giants can improve upon. They can. And I think long term, they're definitely going to try to. You know, Casey Schmidt, whenever he's ready, <sighs> it's going to really help having a guy like Casey Schmidt over at third base who can just go get everything. Agreed. Uh, you know, that that is going to be a 
difference maker for the Giants once he's ready to go with the bat. And those are the kinds of players that I think are going to be even more valuable. Yeah, I can't wait to see Casey Schmidt. Cannot wait. David VR, you mentioned him. Positive there. So tonight, Alex Wood against Dustin May. Dustin May has been dealing so far. He missed most of last season, of course, as well. Game two of that series. But let's leave on a positive note, Flynn. The Masters, tell us about your weekend. I know it was rain-soaked Saturday. Played 30 holes on Sunday. Tell us about your weekend down in Augusta, Georgia. It was great, as always. You know, it's just one of those events that always delivers. You know, there are always storylines. Uh you know, I was really super disappointed. You guys know I've I've gotten to be friends with Will Zalatoris, who's you know he's Sad. from San Francisco. Yeah. He's such a, a great Giants baseball fan. He's such a good kid. He's just awesome. And I was out there with him during the practice rounds, talking golf, and he looked healthy and good. And then you know now not only did he miss the Masters, he's out for the year. That, that stinks because I just personally am. Uh, so pulling for him so that was kind of a downer for me at this year's masters but taking you know will out of it i i I was texting with him after the surgery and he said he's feeling better already and going to be back in the fall and so that's good news but uh the masters was awesome i thought john rom was you know this was one year where golf tournaments are so impacted often by what side of the draw you're Mm -hmm. on if the weather's going to change and for John Rahm to win that tournament from the, quote, wrong side of the draw, from the much more difficult weather side, means he played better golf by far than everybody else. Like, the final score didn't even indicate, the final totals for everybody didn't indicate how much better he was than everybody else. John Rahm dominated that tournament, and I think it's fair to say as good as Scotty Scheffler is, uh, and Scotty's been an amazing winner the last year. The most talented all-around golfer in the world today is John Rob. Agreed. And I, I, my, one last thing, I know, Dave. Thanks for joining us. Just, I miss Brooks. I miss as much as everybody hates him. I miss Phil. I miss all these guys playing on the same tour simultaneously. It, like, and I was, I'm, I'm not mad at anyone for taking money. I mean, I'm using an iPhone that's made, it, you know, in China under gosh knows what kind of conditions. So everybody that's wants to pro clutch on that, like, my bigger thing is like, forget the live tour and PGA. I just miss them all being in the same venues together. Like, I miss those guys. Yeah, I mean, I probably have a little different take on the politics of it than you do because I, I, I do hold it against those guys. You do taking that money. I do. Uh, I'm with you, and too, I, I, yeah. I think it was. I think it's. I, I well. I mean, we won't go into that this no. morning, but just. <laughs> but I think your point. Your point is still a really good one. Like the game misses those players. Yes, uh, and not all of them. A lot of them are washed up and over the hill. And I, I don't miss watching Ian Poulter. You know, struggle <laughs> to make the cut. I don't. But I. But I do miss. Pat Perez. I miss. I miss Cam Smith. Yes. And I miss. I mean, you know, Phil. Phil at the Masters is Phil at the Masters. So uh, I, I do miss some of those guys. And I wonder, like, a big takeaway for a lot of people was, hey, live golf players, are go- they're not going anywhere, and they're still talented. The Masters is different. Those yes. players, you know, some of those who fit that golf course so well, there's no tournament where the course and the style of play of the player and how those sync up dictates the results more than the Masters. Like, we're going to show up in a month at Oak Hill in Rochester, like a traditional sort of U.S. Open-style course. If Phil's got no chance. And I, I mean, it could be that those live players really do suffer because of the lack of you know hardcore tournament experience and seeing hard golf courses. That, that to me, will be a bigger test of what's it going to look like for those guys going forward when they come back to the majors. Warrior question. Uh, yeah, per, like, well, love it. Just got to my ear as you were ending. Get him a warrior question before he leaves because you know all about basketball. You cover college basketball. You're tapped in with the NBA. This Warriors run playing the Sacramento Kings pretty damn cool for the first time in their story franchises histories uh, that they played in the playoffs. They've never been in the playoffs at the same time. <laughs> you got all four California teams in the playoffs at once, and no Texas team in the playoffs for the first time in 40 years. But this Warriors run, how do you see it playing out here, Flynn? Yeah, take that, Greg Abbott. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, well, I think, you know, game one is going to tell us a lot about this series. 
you know, the, my worry with the Warriors is just on the defensive side. Yeah. Like I, I have, I have no doubt that in the playoffs these guys are going to show up and make shots. Like I, the, the Warriors have too many good off between Curry, Thompson, and Poole. I and yeah, they have others, but I, but those guys are going to make shots. So I, can they defend a really good offensive team on the road? Is to my number one question. I think overall it's a great matchup. Like. The experience level the Warriors have versus the Kings is just such a massive advantage. Uh, it's a terrible draw for the Kings. I feel bad for the Kings because they've had such a great year. I, I think they almost would have rather seen anybody else in the first round. Uh, so I, I have a good feeling about the Warriors getting through the Kings. But if they can't defend them you know, on the road, then they're not because <laughs> you know, they're starting off in Sacramento. Right. So they don't have home court advantage. And if the Kings put up 130 in every home game, that's not going to be good. So I, to me, that's what I'm looking for. Can they guard them in Sacramento starting in game one? All right, Flynn, you're the best, man. You're tapped in on everything. We love talking to you. We'll do it again next week and see if the Giants, they've lost eight straight home games to the Dodgers. Eight straight home games. they got to figure out. And, by the way, Dodger fans started to annoy me. Last night I, I became annoyed seeing all that blue at Oracle Park. It's become Dodger Stadium North. Yeah, and for no other reason than that, like, you're right. There should be some urgency. The Giants should be ticked off about it. Like, because they're fine. Like, big picture-wise, the, the, the Giants have a, still have a great chance to have a really good year. There have been lots of positives. But it, it makes everybody unhappy to get your key, teeth kicked in by your rival. And that's what's happened now for a full year. And it happened again last night. And it happened from the first hitter of the darn game. Yeah. And so, you know, Alex Wood, tonight will be an interesting, you know, Alex loves to come out firing. And it'd be very interesting to see his performance uh, early t- tonight because uh, he can set the tone for this game and maybe the Giants can get one of those wins. No doubt. Flem, you're the man. We'll see, we'll see you on the broadcast tonight. Two more against the Dodgers at home before heading out on a six-game road trip to Detroit and Miami. Flem, have a good one, buddy. Thanks, buddy. Okay, awesome. Talk to you next week. Anytime. Dave Fleming, man, one of the best in the business. Um, he's tapped in on everything, man. Love hearing his perspective on everything, and he agreed. They need to get more athletic. There are some positives, but the disappointing aspect of Logan Webb is you want him to match those aces, and he just hasn't quite gotten it done yet. Uh, the leadoff home run by Mookie Betts, man, he, he's such a fun player to watch. He's so, even when he gets turned around on the pop-up, you know, you see him at right field, he kind of loses track of the ball, he still comes up with the play, it's like, this guy's so good. He's so good. He's amazing. And if, if he just played second base, I'm convinced he'd be a gold glove second baseman. Yep. If he just played center or right field, he'd be a gold glove at that position as well. Like, he's, he's an all-time talent. And then running the bases, his instincts, I love that... This generation is now emphasizing base running with the rules and everything being the mm-hmm. way that they are. I'm loving it. I mean, I I, I was looking at the shift and and seeing that the, how you can't shift anymore. And I was watching how the Royals were setting up, and then I watched the Giants and how they're setting up. And you know, Dave kind of alluded to it. I I said this to Lubman, and Lubman's like kind of looking at me. I'm like, bro, Craw don't look good. He don't look good at short. Got going knee. left, going right. Well, he's got the knee issues in spring training. He just looks big. Did he force himself back too early? I don't know. He he doesn't look as rangy as he has in years past. Look, shortstop is a young man's position. Yeah. I, I was just going to ask you. You think there was any possibility, any chance that Brady Crawford in the back of his mind saw Casey Schmidt and the compliment he gave Casey Schmidt, saying he's the best infielder I've ever played with? I'm like, huh, what? What are, you, what are you talking about? Maybe in the back of Crawford's mind, He's like, I have to play because if I don't play and I'm out for an extended period of time and Casey Schmidt comes up here and balls out, what does that mean for me? You don't think there's anything like that going on Maybe. through his brain? Because I mean, this is the end of the road. And Casey Schmidt is coming, and he does look good with the glove. And then maybe the Giants have a conversation. It's like, hey, Carl, you want to play second? Hey, Carl, you want to play third? Well, like, they tried to do that in the offseason. I mean, he should know that this has been coming and trending in this way for quite some time. Maybe that's why he forced himself back, because maybe he wasn't ready know. to come back with any injury. Well, right now, he looks like a guy whose bat is slow, and his range is limited. And he look, I mean, B, he looks his age. There's nothing wrong with that. He's played for a long, long time. I'm not trying to, like, run this guy out of town. I'm saying, like, all the outside of Omar Vizquel, who even at 44 years old moved to second base, yeah. most guys go from short to third. 
Very few do what Derek Jeter did, and that was out of respect to Derek Jeter. Right. He probably should have moved positions. No doubt. Cal Ripken moved to third base. There's no there's no shame in moving positions as you get older. Shortstop is a young man's position. You know what I mean? Like, it, it just is. Unbelievable. Giants, Dodgers, Dustin May has been. Ginger Guard's a baller. Oh, my gosh. He is so good. Alex Wood can get through the lineup twice, maybe three times. Dustin May, 1-0 so far this season. Well, 13 innings pitched, 0.69 ERA, nine strikeouts. He's throwing 90. He's throwing 95. By the way, we got a break. And I lied to everybody. It's my mistake. Raymond Ritter, of course, he's on top of everything. I'm not. Rod Adams is Wednesday at 830. Wednesday at 830. I'm thinking, you know, I saw the text. Okay, I'll confer with them tomorrow for Wednesday. And I'm thinking, oh, tomorrow, 830. That's all me, folks. Rod Adams tomorrow on the Warriors Wednesday at 830. That's all me. Then we're going to have a special guest live in studio Thursday. I have more intel on that tomorrow. It's a little teaser for you guys uh, out there wanting some Warriors basketball. Speaking of which, let's get back into it. 888-957-9570. We're having a conversation about the Warriors and embarking on possibly this last journey. Jermont Green says something on the Chris Haynes and Mark Stein podcast. And I want to bring that up. Plus, we'll get into Rudy Gobert and his thoughts on that. All on the morning roast. Phone lines open now. 888-957-9570. That's all coming up. Sponsored by nobody. The playoffs are. There's nothing like the nation, baby. We still win it. I'm big stepping. Go to stay with me and we are a bitch pressing. Got it. Champs are here. Big stepping. Hitting big threes. Then we full court pressing.
face kick. Stay Warriors. Now back to the morning roast with Bonte Hill and Joe Shasky. All right, Rod Adams tomorrow. Rod Adams tomorrow, 8.30 at this time. I lied. That was my bad. Raymond Ritter's on top of it. He's like, hey, hey, Ron's for tomorrow, not today. Sorry. Ron will join us tomorrow. I can't wait to get his perspective on this series. Defense, he won't tell us the game plan, of course, but, you know, we'll get into how to defend the Sacramento Kings, how to slow them down. Pretty Ricky will get to you in just a second. 888-957-9570. Your thoughts on this series as we get closer and closer to game number one of the Western Conference playoffs, of course, the NBA playoffs, I should say, uh, first round Western Conference series against the Sacramento Kings. Game one, Saturday at 530. However, if you want to be a chase center for the Warriors' first home playoff game this year, we're giving away a pair of tickets to game number three against the Sacramento Kings. Make sure you're listening all day on Thursday, all day on Thursday for your chance to win tickets as game three against the Kings. We'll give it out a pair. Listen all day Thursday for your chance to win. It's going to be a lot of fun. Sacramento the Warriors meeting for the first time in the playoffs. NorCal rivalry. Maybe this is the birth of a NorCal regional rivalry, the Battle of I-80. Draymond Green has been saying a lot. And he recently joined Mark Stein and Chris Haynes on their podcast. And Draymond Green, the quote that he had, quote that he had was, I'm going to play basketball for 15 years. I'm going to play basketball for 15 years. I want to retire as a Golden State Warrior, hmm. but it is not up to me. End quote. Draymond Green wants to be a warrior. He wants to retire. And I got no problem with that. He helped build this thing. He did. But it's not up to him. Well, he does have the opt-out option. So he could opt in on a one-year deal, but obviously he wants that long-term stability. He also had thoughts on Rudy Gobert, Shasky. And I know you want to get to well, that. Well, can we stop on the on the 15 years thing? W- was that more of like, I want to play 15 years, like me saying, I want to be well, in radio for 25 years. I'm just reading the quote. Maybe we'll get the audio. Well, do you, no, I'm asking what you think. Like, do you interpret that as like no, specifically I truly believe, 15 years? I truly believe, yeah, 15 year career to have that. And maybe he'll want to play longer, but maybe he knows his body. And maybe he knows he only has 15 years in him. I don't know. I look at it as he does want to retire and go to state warrior. That means a lot to me. So he's in the 11th season right now. Next year will be 12. Next year's 12. 12, 13, 14, 15. That's four more so, years of basketball after this season. Four more years. What we'll does that look fun. like? So, like, what if you did, like, an extension? So, like, if I was the Warriors, what I would like to see happen is he, he opts in on his on his year. So, boom, right. he gets the $28 that's, million. That's 12. And then a three-year extension right. that would be a little more team-friendly. Hopefully. So that everyone can meet in the, in the same... I'm not saying that he's got to take this huge haircut because right. he's earned a certain level of respect. But, like, I think it's got to be amicable for both sides because no there is a luxury tax portion of this I, conversation. It is. And I also think, what if Draymond Green knows that, hey, I can be the Sigadala for the youngsters I would love that. Jordan Poole, Andrew Wiggins, and Jonathan Kaminga. He ages and he transitions to the bench and he helps that bench unit in... And he'll be in the closing lineup. Again, we get so fixated on who starts and who stops. For some people, well, it's important. Like I mean, Jordan three years Poole, from now, who knows right. what he looks like. Who knows? But, but maybe but he's more, not in the closing. More but players, I hear what you're saying. More, more players, yeah, they need to start. And you look at Jordan Poole's yeah. splits, it's like, man, he's so much better as a starter he's, in terms of scoring at basketball. And Draymond uh, started his career coming off the bench. Exactly. So maybe I'm he transitions you. like that. But the more, more important thing is he's not looking at the L.A. Lakers. He's not looking at the Clippers. I'm sure there's conversations, and I'm sure other teams will want him. A contender would want mm-hmm, him mm-hmm. because of his wisdom his, and his playoff experience. But it, be, it does mean something that now we're at the point with this organization, after all the down years, that we got players who want to retire as a warrior. Well, that's amazing. And not move on elsewhere. Like, think about how far this franchise has come. I mean, that's amazing. But, like, on the Draymond thing, the reason why I do think that the 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 financial portion of it matters, if you hit 
the luxury tax top portion, you wouldn't have the opportunity to be able to sign someone like Dante DiVincenzo. Right. Right? So you have to be able to have that mid-level exception, and you want to be able to have some of those those freedoms when it comes to player mobility and stuff. So that's the only reason why the money matters. If this was baseball and it wouldn't, it didn't matter one way or the other on the money, like who right. cares? Give him whatever money he wants. Money does matter. But it, does, does, it matter. does in this league. And that's – so I don't know. Does he – does he view a certain price point as disrespect? Maybe, probably. I mean, the reality is this. I don't care if you're a plumber, a bus driver, a lawyer, a doctor, a basketball player. We all want to get paid yeah. something. Now, are there levels to this? Of course. So you don't want to be disrespected. And then, like, not all money is created equal. Like, $25, 35000000 in Detroit isn't the same as $22 million in Golden State. No, it's not. Still a lot of money, though. <laughs> no, I'm saying from Draymond's perspective because he's made no, a lot, I, and, I, I, and I hear you. you know he's got a lot right. of things going. So, well, but I don't know what that purposes. equation looks like for him. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what he's worth. The teams will tell him what he's worth. The what teams do you think would offer he's worth? a contract? I don't know. I don't know. To the Warriors, he's invaluable. I think he's worth more to the Warriors than other hey, teams. He's invaluable to the Warriors on a team like Detroit that is not in a position to win multiple basketball games. Like they're not winning. 45 games next season. Let's stay massive something. Like, all of a sudden, Kay Cunningham becomes Jason Kidd. You know what I'm saying? I don't see them taking that leap into the Eastern Conference. Why? What, uh, is that the only thing that would be driving his decision is to Draymond win? Draymond Green? Yeah. At, at this point, it's all about winning. Well, people's opinions change a little here like, and does there. He wanna, does he want to go to a rebuilding team and teach them? I, I don't see, think Draymond... I, I, think don't, Draymond, I don't think Draymond's so, Draymond's in the business of winning. I agree. You go to Michigan State? What are they in the business for? Winning. I, I agree. But like coming to the Golden State Warriors and, and, and playing, think about how the 2019 20 season went. I mean, Tony Parker said the same thing, and Tony Parker ended up going to with Charlotte or whatever, yeah. whatever team he ended up going and, to, and, because he wanted to keep playing as well as he right. claimed he wanted to win. It's like right. you're not Maybe winning for, for away one, from San Antonio. For one year, a one off, sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, but but who is he knows? signing like next season if he opts out? Is he going to a team like Detroit? You wouldn't think so, but I don't think there's a lot of options. I think a contender would love to have no, Draymond. No, no, I think contenders. I'm saying, right. like, are there 25 teams lining up for Draymond? Probably not. But if it's all only, it takes is one. If it, All it takes is one, but if it's 25 teams not lining up for Draymond Green and it's five that are contenders, that's fine. He'll take that all day long. Oh, I, yeah, I, I agree with that. You know, but there may there be are only no contenders? contenders. I don't know. I think there's going to be some people lining up for Draymond Green. I really do. We don't know what the market is, but there's going to be a team out there that says this guy is all about winning. He's a winning basketball For sure. Player. For sure. We'll have we'll figure out how to fit him into our system. I would be shocked if he, you know, you took took a deal to go play for, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to think of some of the, the, the bottom feeders. The Utah Jazz. <laughs> Ran, let's just randomly pick them. Like, yeah, I would be completely jaw dropped. However, now that I'm thinking about it, it's hard to envision Draymond Green not wearing a Warrior uniform next season. I'm having a hard time envisioning that. I, I agree with you. Unless something, unless they do lose to the Kings in the first round and Joe Lacob decides that, hey, it's it. This is it. The core group, finally, you guys lost the series together in the Western Conference under Steve Kerr. I, it's time to move on. It's hard for me to envision Draymond Green but, playing in another uniform next season. Well, so a part of this discussion, like we we know, Joe Lacob can drive a, dr a hard line in terms of negotiations. Is Draymond willing to compromise a little? Don't know. I have to ask Draymond Green. I know that. Well, that's the that's the. Uh, yeah. It's unknowable, right? At this right. point, it's unknowable. I would I would hope that it ends up working that way. I I really hope they can find a compromise. Uh, let's go to Pretty Ricky in San Leandro. Pretty Ricky, how you doing, man? You're on the roast. Hey fellas, how you doing this morning? I cannot contain the excitement. I am so psyched. And I'm not worried at all. I love all the commentation. I love the callers coming in. Oh, defense on the road. Guys, Steph, Dre, Clay, Loon Dog, and one of my favorite players, GP, back in the fold, and our coaching staff and the camaraderie. Bro, nobody's going to beat us in seven games. It ain't going to happen. Now, I'll tell you this, too. Sacramento, I might give them the first game because of the newness and the craziness. You know, we were there before when young team and the crowd lifted us up. They might get the first game. I'll let them have that one. That's all they're going to get. Warriors win it all again. I'm on record early last year saying they'll win the next three. I said it on the radio. I said it at work. People said I'm crazy. I love this team. I'm so excited. I can't wait, man. I love your excitement. So just fired up. Love your excitement, pretty Ricky. Love it. And he brought up Looney. 
real quick. Matt George, ABC 10 up at Tacker Metal, sports reporter, producer, Locked On Keys podcast. I've been on the show. He's a good dude. He's actually cousins with Jeff Hillborn, Matt George. Believe it or not, small world, right? Hillborn from the city. DJ Hillborn, he used to catch him at Madrone on Motown Mondays. Tweeted yesterday, Matt George. Warriors fans on Twitter really presenting Kavon Looney as the counter to Demonis Sabonis with confidence. It's only Monday. About to be a wild week on his app. Basically what Matt George is saying is that Looney is food on defense. A lot of Kings fans feel like Looney is food on defense. I mean, we're talking about a guy who led the league in offensive rebounds. I guess about his led the league in rebounding, period. But we're, the lack of respect Looney's getting heading into the series is fascinating. Like, King fans are getting our Warrior fans for saying, ah, you can tell they don't watch much Sacramento basketball. Well, how much Warriors basketball are you guys watching? Because you would know Looney's value to this Warriors team, and you would know what Looney has done this season. All the double-doubles he's had, all the multiple rebound games. What is he had, like 34, 35 double-digit rebound games? I'm looking up right now. Did they now. not watch the playoffs last year? Like, just last year? Well, the Kings haven't been in the playoffs. So I know, but check the, out. the Grizzly game was like one of, one of the most watched games in... Uh, what, what was it, TNT? I believe it was TNT. It was uh, the, ESPN. Which was one, Game ESPN? 6? It was Game 6. Game 6 was the ESPN. ESPN. Game. It was, wasn't it one of the most watched games of the playoffs last year? I'm not. I don't remember the ratings. Yeah, it was like 3 million people were watching it or 4 million people were watching it. That's it? Yeah. yeah they, they, well, the playoffs didn't rate too well. Again, the numbers are all over the place. Yeah, I don't. I don't. The Western Conference Finals averaged 2.2 or something along those lines. Yeah, I don't, million per game. Yeah, I don't believe that. I'm just telling you what, yeah, they, what no, they're what their numbers say. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm just telling you. It, it seems a bit low. Well, it just was weird Bay Area because was the watching. ALS and the NLCS outrated well, the Eastern How many people Western in the Conference? Bay Area? That I don't know the number of the share. I guarantee our. I mean, share how was many way. just population wise in the Bay Area? About eight to nine million. Yeah, give or take. You think half of that was watching the Warriors? Uh, even if it was a third, that should bring that number up. Right, yeah. But I, that's why I don't believe the Nielsen rating. I mean, you and I have our own opinions right. on Nielsen when it comes to radio and television. I don't believe them either. Yeah. Right. So Looney led the NBA in offensive rebounds. And he's not even in the top five when it comes to most approved player. Like Shea Gilson Alexander's on there. He took a big right. quantum he leap He did take a big leap. And it feels like the most – and Mully was breaking this down on Warriors uh, pregame live – on Sunday, it felt like the most improved player award should go to a guy who's a role player. Who's a role, like, so not like, a guy who, like, Shane Gilson Alexander, knew, we knew he was a, a scorer. Well, and he's a premier, right. like, a, premier player. Ascending star. Mikael Bridges is on that list. Yes. We knew about Mikael Bridges being a two way star even before he got traded to Brooklyn. Yeah. It feels like that award should be for glue guys, for guys you don't really talk about too much. Who's the guy in Utah that was the sixth man? Jordan Clarkson. Like, he was a perfect example. He got a lot better right. in his role. And right. it was, like, defined. Like, th those are the kind of guys. I agree with you on that. Yeah, so Looney, he played all 82 games. Became the Tiff Warrior player to play at least two consecutive 82-game seasons. The last was Anton Jamison. Anton Jamison. Wow, back that's in a name I haven't heard 2000 in 2000 to 2003. You know, he just surfaced on the Vince Carter podcast. He had, like, a full beard. He had really? a set of hair. Yeah. I've never heard him talk. I have no ill will toward Jamison. I no, just I wish don't. we would have drafted Carter. Yeah. Uh, can I ask you a question on the free agency thing? Yep. No one will deny that there's a talent, you know, uh, Kyrie is different. They're just very different players. Like, So there's different talents, and they're bringing different things to the right. table. If both guys are free agents, who's who's got more suitors, Draymond or Kyrie, this offseason? Uh, don't know. Don't know. Because I'm sure there are a lot of teams that will cross Kyrie off their list because yes. they just don't want to deal with him. I think Draymond's got more suitors. I think more teams would want Draymond, which kind of sounds crazy, but if you like no, dig doesn't. a little deeper, I don't think it's that outlandish. Now, somebody, a couple people thought I was, you know, a little intoxicated yesterday when I said Dallas what? should choose to build around Kyrie instead of Luka Doncic. Well, elaborate on that. Because the, the reports I got out of Dallas, just from talking to people in Dallas, and they were saying, you know, Kyrie Irving has come in. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, we know about some of the off-court issues. But as a player and as a practice player, he outworks Luka Doncic night and day. Really? Like, Luka's lazy. He doesn't want to do anything. And it translates to the court during a game. You see the way Luka went out as a 24-year-old. Look, you, you could say what you want about Kyrie Irving. But if I built around Kyrie, now nah, you can't count on him because of all the things that happens mm -hmm. off the court. Mm -hmm. So I'd be reluctant to give him a long-term deal. But can you win with Luka as your number one? 
Who would want to play with Luka Doncic? That, see, that's a better the, question. It's, it's, I it's, think he can evolve look, over time, but right now, I don't know. but right now he's a ball hog. When he doesn't have the ball, he just stands. Yeah, there. exactly. He and plays no defense. Cries, cries all game. That must get tiring to be his teammate. So I don't know how good of a teammate he is. I think Dallas is in trouble. I think you're. I think you're. They right. may have to just say, you know what, the hell with this experiment. Let's trade Luca for a bunch of picks that, and I trade Kyrie. I, I don't, don't think they will Cuban do it. Doing that. He's not going to do it. He's not going to do it. What would you fetch for someone like Luca? I don't know if you could build around Luca, man. That's crazy. Everything is dribble, 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 <laughs> dribble, dribble, so dribble, bad. dribble, dribble, dribble. Well, and then if you're telling me that he's got some off court, you know, work habit issues, those aren't going to go away to the next organization he goes to. I mean, no. normally when you, you you show up to a new place, they when you're that talented, they are all on bending knee. Yeah, no, nah, I don't, I don't, I. They're in That's trouble. sad because Dirk. I never, you know, uh, you know, when you look at Dirk sitting right next to Cuban and everything that that organization represents, well, that's kind of like anti what I think of the Dallas Mavericks. Well, they haven't been able to get a big time free agent in a very long time. Yes, because Cuban gutted the championship team and all the things that has happened inside that organization. Like D'Lo was bringing it up yesterday, and it made me think Dallas has had a lot of turmoil within their organization. Oh, tons. Beat reporters. Team reporters, uh, the front office had the front a lot office, of issues. HR, yeah. it was yeah, a lot exactly. of nasty stuff going on down there, and they can't get so like yeah, Ky, look, Kyrie, you're not going to give him a long term deal, but if I'm looking at a short term solution with the Dallas Mavericks, Kyrie outplayed Luka down the stretch. That's he crazy. Did. He did. That's crazy. So I, I, who would have more suitors, Draymond or Kyrie? Draymond Green, man, is a winning player. He's a winning player. I don't know. The Mavericks, I, they're a mess right now. Let's go to Paul in Union City. Paul, what's happening? I can't believe they went Western Conference Finals <laughs> that, to no play in tournament. I'm, I think that is one of the that is just, craziest fall-offs in sports. It, it's just wild. They were ascending. <laughs> they let go of Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson just walked. Let's go to Paul in Union City. What's up, Paul? Hey, what's up, guys? I'm loving hearing this about Luca. I totally agree. Uh, it's it's amazing to see his talent that's out there, not just him. And uh, let me just get this quickly out of the way. I'm, I'm 56. I've been a Laker fan my whole life, but I'm not. I haven't watched a game, a uh, Laker game, since LeBron w- uh, went there. I-, I hate LeBron to a T. You know, you, you get up to, you know, uh, my age, you watch Jordan's career. You watch Kobe. Um, you see the way that basketball should have been should be played and the work. Uh, ethics, which you really don't see anymore, um, except for maybe someone like Steph Curry and, and stuff like that. And it's amazing to see that you got people out there, and I compare LeBron to Terrell Owens, to where Terrell Owens had the talent. He, he would have been the only one I thought probably ever to compare to Jerry Rice if he would have had his head out of his rear end. <laughs> and if he would have you know, been a true team player, I, it, everything you know, the stars was his to grab, and but he didn't. And the same with LeBron. You want to sit there and show the way the, the world, you the way you really, truly are? We all see it. You're an idiot. You know, and I hate the way he plays the game. He's talented. It ruins everything. Now, Clay has been my second favorite behind Kobe, is, you know, forever. And I love the way Clay, more than Steph, can, he doesn't need to dribble. And he's probably the only one in the NBA that dribbles the least. And just grabs and shoots, grabs and shoots. I love it. It's, it's a, a pure shooter. And I think right now that the, the Warriors are going to beat the uh, Kings in six. I don't think they'll sweep them. Uh, there's too much of a defensive issue that they've had their entire year. But the problem I think that the Warriors have besides defense is there's really not a low post presence that can create its own shot except for Wiggins. And Wiggins right. has had that whole year where it's kind of been off. Right. Um, even though when he was there, and you, I miss the days when you had James Worthy, Kevin McHale, you know, even you know, uh, yeah, other power forwards that could actually uh, play right. the post and dominate. You don't see that. Nah. And I think that's huge for the Warriors because you watch the Warriors, and I've I've, I've right. been there and I watch them and I root for them until you know they get rid of LeBron. You know, I'm, I'm back, but. Well. The thing is, is I, I watch to a T, and I, I really you know, magnify everything. There's no low post presence at all. You've got guards that are driving to the lane. That's different. 
you know, and I feel that that's too much on Curry. It's too much on Poole, and they're trying. They're just having to too way too much than to just well, you know just they, go down there and let someone take over. Good call, Paul. Good Paul. Look. It's going to be interesting if the Warriors take on the Lakers and how the Lakers utilize Anthony Davis and if Anthony Davis is going to get his big butt on the block. Because that's how you can torment teams like the Warriors. Really can. But they're playing some damn good defense. The whole defensive thing is starting to get overrated. The last couple of weeks they've been top 10 defensively. The difference in their defense with Gary Payton is second. They've been a lot, of be- they've been a, a lot better on the ball. Point of attack defense. The Warriors have been a lot better. So all those defensive metrics that we're talking about here, I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dive too deep into that until I see it happen in the playoffs. Now, Alex in Atlanta, he's our unofficial statistician. He says we numbers every single day. He's all over it. The Kings defensive rating at home, and we don't really get into defensive ratings. But Shasky, their defensive rating at home was almost identical to the Warriors' defensive rating on the road. So it's Sacramento. They give up. They just gave up over a buck forty to the San Antonio Spurs. That was with their guys, De'Aaron Fox and Bonus. So they played no defense at home whatsoever uh, in their losses. How about this? They have the worst defensive rating in their losses this season, and the Warriors did in their losses uh, by a full two point rating. Uh, so the Kings basically have to boat race opponents to win a game. That's Alex and Atlanta sending those numbers. So uh, the Warriors' defensive metrics—they've been a lot better over the last three weeks of the season. And I think people are in for a rude awakening uh, when it comes to the Warriors' defense and whether or not they have a low-post presence. That's one thing. They've won without a low-post presence, basically, in their whole dynastic run. The, so. the entire time. <laughs> right. <laughs> the entire time. So, yeah, the, I'm not I'm not too worried. And I just think, like, all these defensive metrics, a lot of the bulk of the numbers came – I mean, you missed 45 games of Wiggins. He's your second-best defensive player, yep. at least in your, in your core lineups. You know what I'm saying? Like – that's going to make a big difference. And then I, I just look at like this team being older, <laughs> being uh, not worried about the regular season as much as, as the younger teams. A lot of those numbers you just throw out the window. I'm not dismissing all of them. They, they've been bad by the eyeballs. I'm just saying, like, I know they're going to lock in when they need to. Hey, I'm, I'm with you there. I think they will lock in. Let's go to Jason in Danville. Jason, what's happening? You're on the morning hey. roast here on 95.7. What's yeah. up, fellas? First time call- what's up, fellas? First time caller. Um, Thank you. Yeah, so I just looked up ESPN's rankings on uh, Golden State's defense. At the end of the season, they got ranked, I think, 21st, which I think is very misconstrued because most of the season we had no GP2. Uh, half of the season we had no wigs. And, you know, you just add those two in the lineup, easily this team could be ranked in the top 10 to 15. Easily. So, man, I'm really excited about the playoffs, and I think we're going to go real deep this season. Thanks for the call, Jason. Sam in New Jersey, what's happening? Sam, you're on a roast. You're on 95.7 The Game. What's up, man? What's up? What's up, Sam? Um, like this, uh, Warriors, five games against Sacramento. Five games. I give, the, I give them the Sacramento one game because, you know, they're the three seed. we got to give them a the game. But it's going to be five, maybe six. And Steph, Clay, Draymond again. They never, I don't know if they ever got beaten by a Western Conference opponent. As long as I can remember that they're healthy together, and this year will be no different. Why should it be different? Last time they uh, lost at, was the Steph Clippers. At 30, Steph at 35 is playing like Steph at 25. He's the yeah, guy. The guy's out of his mind. He's, he's, doing, he's doing good things. That, and best yeah. of luck to my Golden State Warriors. Thank that, you. No doubt. Missing all those games, and yet he still put up historical numbers. I know Saturday at 530. Has the rest of the schedule been released? No, I don't think it'll be released until the play-ins are done. So that's what we're waiting for. I think that's what we're waiting for. Because uh, is it, it's I'm I'm just trying to guesstimate. So Saturday, Monday, and then you'd think Wednesday or Thursday. Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday. The last few years, it's been Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday. Like they'll stretch the first wow. three games out for a week. Really? Yeah. Who does that help? The Warriors, right? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Older legs. Yeah. You know, I mean. When was not- the last time that the Kings rolled out their entire team trying to win? They rolled out their starters in the first half against Denver. Um, let me check that out. I wonder if the Warriors are flying up to sack. Raymond Ritter, if you're out there listening, Fly? you probably turned us off already. Probably takes Raymond longer Ritter. to get the engine. It's like a 30 minute flight. That's a lot of waste of biofuel. Either the Warriors do what you want. Or are you worried about biofuel? Or are you worried about your players being comfortable on the flight? 
and get up there safe and sound. Instead of being on a bus. Imagine all those six, eight, six, seven guys on a charter bus. That can't be good for their legs. I mean, I'm sure that their bus is more luxurious than, than like you and me taking the 38, like hanging no, on. I, I, like, ah! Like, come on. Their last, the last time they played all their guys was April 5th. They've got to take up. Now I want to so, know. No, so, no. Now I want to know. Are they going to, where would they fly out yeah. of? So they drive down to SFO. And fly out of SFO to go to what they, does that flight or look they all, like? Or they all meet at SFO. They get on the flight. Thirty minutes, boom, you're in SAC. Is that what it is? Is it a third? I don't even know how yeah, long. Thirty it is. minutes. I never flew to SAC in San Francisco. I mean, it, I don't know. I just think I think they've got to take a bus. I would assume a bus. I don't know. That's Stardy. Stardy. Or Stardy. Get Somebody Stardy. ask Stardy. Stardy. Or just ask him. Just ask him and let him know the answer. I'll go get He's Stardy. No, 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 no. Just that. Just. Somebody go ask him. You could ask him and then just tell Steiny to leave the Do the one just fly to Sacramento? Do they fly or do they take the bus? 888 957 9570. You are listening to 957 The Game. KGMG FM and AC1 San Francisco. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Download the Odyssey app in favor of 957 The Game for the best and most up to date sports coverage. And do not forget that you can also watch us every single day on our YouTube and Twitch streams. Just log on and search 957 The Game. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Um, not eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven zero. Mark Medina nine twenty. Has to anyone talk about what's going on in the Lakers? Uh, to talk about the Lakers and Clippers series. I, I thought you were going to go eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven. Has anyone flown from SFO or Oakland to Sacramento? I've never done it. Yeah, it's an hour and a half bus ride, maybe two hours. It depends when you leave. I thought they were taking a bus. I thought they'd take a bus up to Sacramento. Yeah, I, I didn't say they they would fly. I would assume they have team charter buses. I was with D-Lo and KC yesterday. It was like the Warriors are flying. They're flying. Like the Sacramento Kings take the charter bus. I think you take the charter bus. There's got to be an Arnold Schwarzenegger, get me to the chopper. (laughs) There's got to be a drop somewhere. Get me to the chopper. We'll get into some some Draymond Green sound in just a second. Let's get to Anthony. Some of my favorite rides back in the day when my teams were on the bus, you know? It's high school, college. Oh, except we had the old yellow bus with Mr. Ron Rosa yeah, driving us around. I had my disc man. Who's Ron Rosa? Ron Rosa was a teacher at Reardon who was the baseball coach, but when he retired from baseball and then Isola took over, Ron drove everybody in the bus. So we'd be in this big, gawky, I'm talking old school, giant yellow right. bus. Interesting. Yeah, the uh, Reardon buses. Anthony San Jose, what's happening? You're on a roast. Hey, how you guys doing, man? It was my first time calling in, but I was sitting here driving uh, to Oakland, and I was listening to the the caller talk about how the game is supposed to be played and how Michael Jordan and Kobe played the game, how it was supposed to be played, and LeBron doesn't do that. And I was thinking about how much talent Michael Jordan had, so he didn't, you know, he kind of changed the game and the way he played. It wasn't played like that ever before. The same thing with Kobe, a lot of people considered Kobe, Kobe as a ball hog. And so he wasn't necessarily a player who right. played the game like he was supposed to be played. But everybody says LeBron doesn't do that because I don't know what this personal thing that people have with LeBron that make, make him, make them hate him. He has, as a player, he has the most tools in his physical body that anybody has ever had. And so he plays the game the way he plays it. I don't know why people have this hate for LeBron and they tell what he can. I know, I know it has a lot to do with his personality. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. Not, you know, throwing the people under on the bus. Yesterday. Throwing people under Jesus. the bus all the time. I mean, he he's, uh, that's that's why people can't say LeBron James. So I just got confirmation. Raymond Ritter, thank you so much. Oh, yeah, what did he say? They take the bus up to Sacramento. All they fly. Well, you're the one who said fly. Well, D'Lo and Casey was like, no, they're flying. They're flying. <laughs> I was like, th- why? Do you think they get like a police escort on the way up there so they don't have to deal with like traffic or anything? That's a great question. That's yeah, a lot of city I, money I on think... gas back and forth. I don't know. Where's you always worried about Can we afford that? Can the Warriors afford that? Well, no, I'm talking The uh, Warriors will pay for the cops because that's what happens. So if I'm not mistaken, when I used to do side hustles at McAvoy O'Hare and Mortuary, okay. they get the cops in there. The funeral, the the people, you know, whoever the death of the family, the family would pay for police escorts, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, but that they was that's to like coma, right? But I'm sure the warriors <laughs> could Sacramento. pay. I'm sure the warriors could pay California Highway Patrol. Hey, we need a police escort up to Sacramento. 
I'm sure the Warriors could afford the if bill. If you leave, so I know that because I've done this, go to my sister's order, Tahoe or whatever. If you leave at like 8 or 9 o'clock in the, or I guess 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning because you'll beat some of the morning traffic back to the East Bay and you just take I-80 all the way up, you're fine. You're going to get there in an hour and 40 minutes, hour and 40. And that's if you want to stop off in Vacaville and grab a bite to eat. I'm sure they won't do that. I'm sure no, they'll have their own catered food yeah. or whatnot. So i uh, got some people who want to call in about flying to Sacramento. Yeah. Who has flown to Sacramento? I want to hear this. Eric in San Francisco, what's happening? Hey, guys. I, I actually grew up in Sacramento. Okay. And one of the standard field trips when you were sixth grade was to fly to SFO and get a tour of the airport. Really? Fly back in the afternoon. That's cool. That must have sucked. That was <laughs> Eric. One. Eric, you guys <laughs> flew down to San Francisco to take a tour of the airport? What? Yeah, well, remember, we got, back then, this was like in, you know, 1971 or something, we had a rinky-dink airport. So it was kind of nice to go to the big airport in the big city. <laughs> that's unbelievable. I never, that's incredible. That's cool, that though. Like, that's a good opportunity for kids that, like, have never going to, or never going to fly in their lives to the get that free. I only flew, let's see, like, when I was, like, 12 or 13, so maybe younger, but okay. a lot of kids, like, my age, like, were like, oh, yeah, I've flown when I was seven. I six, didn't fly until I was an adult. 20s. There you go. Yeah, I still you? don't really like it, but it did you fly it when you were a kid? No, I, the first flight I ever took. I was in my was down to San Diego. I think I was twenty one. Yeah, so you're like me. First flight. We, the the Shaskis didn't hop on planes. It was, it was all a road. That's trips. a quick one, at least. Yeah, down to San Diego. It's like yeah, an hour. It was all road yeah. trips. Uh, damn. So that school must have had a lot of money to get to the airport, <laughs> check into Sacramento, and then fly to SFO, and then tour the airport, get back on the plane, and go back to Sacramento. You're not even going to go to Fisherman's Wharf. No, you're going to get on a little yeah, bus. That's or, a whole other hour trip. Can you imagine in today, too? Because that's in the 70s. That was like pre-TSA, all the check Dude. stuff. Now it's just like getting 30 kids in a class oh to go gosh, through the geez. TSA. And then getting those permission be, slips signed. I'd be pissed if I was like a whole class was right in front of me. It's like, I need Tory, that TSA check or whatever it's called. Touring SFO. Like, imagine, the old SFO. The old one. Not even a new one. So 510 from the uh, says they work for United. We have flights from SFO to Sacramento. They do. Comcast Business Tech Interesting. Slide. How much is that flight? Probably cheap. Probably real cheap. Eric and Danville, what's happening? You're on the roast. What's up? Hey, guys. Um, I've flown from Sacramento to San Francisco, I suppose, uh, to Sacramento. It's about a 25-minute, 30-minute flight on a prop plane. I'm guessing if they had a jet, they could do it in about 20 minutes. What's flat. a prop plane? Uh, you know, propeller. Oh, propeller, oh, propeller. okay. Sorry, I don't know the vernacular. My uh, bad. No, no worries, man. No worries. Just wanted to call in. Yeah, I Go appreciate Warriors. that. It's like uh, in Grand Theft Auto when you have to drive the, the Dodo. I don't know if you played GTA. Was it 4? No, I wasn't a GTA guy. What? Yeah, I was I was mad in 2K. What? MLB to show. I was all sports guys. So you got to fly like the Dodo plane, and it's like a propeller thing? I never yeah. heard it called prop plane. I, I'm not a plane guy. So, you know. Wow. So round trip. Give it to me. What's the round this trip? This is a random August 30th Wednesday. If okay. I want to go from you San know, Francisco. I, before you finish this. I blame Gavin Newsom for all of this. We should have that whatever light rail system that oh, he's yeah, been talking yeah. about forever so we could be able to do it that way. But continue. Um, <laughs> is there any flights from SFO to Oakland? <laughs> Probably not. Uh, round trip, a Wednesday, August 30th, will cost you about $254. That's nonstop. That is insane. I, I can go to Phoenix for cheaper. That doesn't make any sense. Wow. It says here is an hour flight. Is that for today? No, August thirtieth. August th wow, that far out and it's two fifty? Yeah. Two eighty five. Goes to show you how inefficient it is. Okay. That's uh, that's interesting. B bougie bots <laughs> would demand to be flown to Sacramento <laughs> first class and be put up in a five star downtown Sacramento hotel or refuse to work the Warriors Dude. game. Diva. Well, three two one, Comcast Business Text Line. Yes, I would want to fly first class to Sacramento, but two I don't think they have a five-star hotel in Sacramento. No, what's the hotel that's connected to the stadium? The Double Tree Inn. Don't isn't that where like all the players for the California Classic were the staying? Five, the uh, or was, am I am I wrong? Motel Six. You're talking about? No, it, it was like a nice hotel. Days Inn. No, it was not a Days Inn. Come on, don't do that to Sacramento. Do they even have any five-star hotels in Sac? Yeah, they're state's capital, so I would assume so. You know, I, like Gav politicians, like we're getting like a lot of like people yeah. coming in here yeah. from like they Washington DC. Right? All right, we'll I'm gonna so right. really, really quick. I just googled you know five star hotels in Sacramento, and I got this website of ten 
five star hotels and all their ratings have four stars. So, <laughs> so there you go. I'm, I'm not that much of a hotel guy. Uh, but I feel like that's kind of an indictment right there. So, what if, if, if the games are spaced out, we'll get the Willow Marin just hanging tight. The games are spaced out. Say if game one's Saturday mm -hmm. and game two's Tuesday. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming home to sleep in my bed. Are you coming back home if you're the Warriors that night? Yeah. Set of say it is sack? Yeah. Eh, being on a bus, that's Although, all Although, if I'm going up to Sacramento, I'm going to tell you right now, Jim Boyce, I got to hit up Jim Boyce Tacos. Not, you know what it's Bomb. about up there? Squeeze in burger. Oh, I know about squeezing the cheese on it's the delicious. outside crust. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I agree with you. Will and Moran, what's happening? Food up there. Will, what's happening? Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for taking my call. Yeah, I, I just don't really see the logic in it. I feel like you would spend more time at the airport Thank wasting you. your time waiting yeah. Thank to you. get onto the plane, waiting for it to taxi, waiting. I mean, if I'm just saying, I understand the example I'm going to bring up as a massive hypothetical, but if I was a baller on the Warriors and I was good enough, you know, to be on there and I was one of the starting five, I would hop in the Lambo. Bring Steph, I feel know, drive up, have yep. a homie road trip, smash yep. up, yep. stop at the taco place you're talking about, Thank you. cruise around, Thank pull you. up to the parking lot, hey, what's up, you like the Lambo, yeah, I'm about to drop 30 on you tonight, exactly. we're going to win, then we drive down victorious, you know, shooting the stuff like the boys and have a good night, and it's all good, I, Will, I wouldn't even want to waste my time there, I mean, it takes an hour and a half to get through TSA. <laughs> Will, you're speaking my language, and if I'm Steph Curry, I'm bringing my golf clubs, and I'm going to Hagen Oaks. Like it's an Alistair McKenzie course. You know you can waltz right on because you're Steph Curry. Like if I'm the boys, I'm it, it, actually now that I think about it, I'm not driving back home to stay. I'm staying at a five star up there. If, if I'm Curry, okay, this is me pretending to be the most famous athlete right. in the world. I've got all my golf clubs and we're doing an, a golf outing because I bet the weather's like in the sixties up there now. Maybe it's gotta Maybe. be nice. What is the weather up there? By the way, a big trade in the NFL. What? Uh, Lions cornerback Jeff Okuda. Remember oh yeah, top the five top, pick out of Ohio yeah, State. Yeah, tore Achilles. Uh, he's going to, he's getting traded to Atlanta, to the Falcons huh. for a fifth round pick. Fifth rounder? Fifth he round went fourth pick. overall? I know, fifth round pick wow. for Jeff Kuda. I liked him coming out. I did. I did. No delivery of the game, right? We're off. Wow. No home run of the game? You guys all want to do home run of the game? Would that be Max Muncy? If you were a player, be Mookie Betts? absolutely not. If, if, you, if you were a player, would actually. you drive back and forth or would you stay up there? I'd be tempted to drive back. Well, yeah, I know you and the Charger, the Batmobile. Do those highways in Sac? They're like six lanes deep. Oh, I love it up. Yeah, in Sac. No, no, that's great. Then Dude. you get onto the I eighty and you're like, this sucks. Yeah, I mean, going through what Davis. It? Could you take what is it? Thirty seven. The oh, back road to uh, Sacramento. Well, thirty seen goes like you're going. Is that yeah. Napa? Yeah. It's What's like, the one high? It's another one. It's in between one. 101 and then loops up and over. There's another one where I was driving up to Sac yeah, for the uh, NCAA that's tournament. That's if you take five. And the sun was setting. To 50? It wasn't five to 50. I got to look sure? up the road. Like, yeah, because I, I went through Marin. Okay. I don't think it was 37, Well, if you though. went through Marin, then it was either 37 or you hopped over to 12, which is up in Sonoma. You probably took 101 all the way up and then hung a right. That may have been the 12th. Yeah, it then. was either 12 and then and you go past the And it's beautiful scenery. Yeah. And, yeah, I know and my the North sun Bay. was setting. The sun, oh, it was a beautiful drive. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, it is beautiful. There's nothing out there. Nothing out there. The Batmobile ain't no V6. So they're stop. saying that the Kimpton Sawyer Hotel is a 20-step walk to the stadium. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Because I thought we saw some of the old, uh, some of the coaches. I, I could have swore we Ooh. saw... The Miami Ooh, Heat. You know what? Before we break, you know the New York Giants, they like to get on the train to go to Washington to play the Commanders? I didn't, I didn't what know the that. Warriors, what if the Warriors just got on the Amtrak? Well, that's why I'm mad at freaking Newsom. He's been talking about this light rail thing or whatever. It was the high speed. What do they call it? High the speed, high speed rail. rail. Yeah, high speed rail. I've been hearing about it. Do you know how bad I would like to take that to go to a SoFi game? I don't. Yeah, I don't know if the plan was it for was it for to go from the Bay Area to Sacramento, but I totally hear what you're saying. It'd be <laughs> yeah, awesome to have that thing. Sacramento wasn't part of that plan. <laughs> <laughs> it went nobody, straight to Tahoe. Nobody, and that's it. Nobody's taking a light rail from LA. I, yeah, to I think Sac. it was like a Bay Area LA thing. I believe it was the transit center was supposed to be like a station for it or something like that at one point. Oh man! So Sacramento wasn't a part of it at all. I thought it was the whole state. And uh, Sacramento, I think was I think even though they're the state capital, they, you know what? We get to Mark Medina in a second. Faulty state, state capital. capitals. It's yeah. a faulty like state. Albany and New York. Yeah, it's not. New state. York City is the capital. Yeah, I'm with you. Sacramento being the capital of Sac California is an absolute joke. I'm 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 agreeing with you. I'm nodding my head. What's the state capital of Texas? Is it is it Austin? Mm-hmm. 
You got to Google it. To me, Dallas should be the capital of Texas. Austin's a beautiful town, though. The reason they do that really quick is they don't want, like, the biggest cities to have, like, too much influence over the rest of the state. And they also ah, want the state capital to be more centralized. So Sacramento's more in the center of the state of California. So that's why Sacramento is our state capital. And, Sam, this is why you're the smartest person at 95.7 in the game. Like, Montgomery is the capital of Alabama. Should be Tuscaloosa but or Montgomery's Birmingham. Montgomery's in the center of the state. But it should be Birmingham. Come on. This is a joke. You do get extra credit. Love it. It's from Tyler Miller. Like, come on. Oh, look at that. Jefferson City, Missouri's the state. Jefferson City's the state capital of Missouri. I used to love this stuff as a kid. Geography, doing state capitals. I, I remember a second grade test. I got like 47 out of 50. I was so happy. I want to see um, you unfurl an old school uh, map and uh, not use Waze or Google Maps. Oh, I would love to do that. I know. I, I want to make that. us do a road trip yeah. where you have doubt. use a map. All right. Clock, 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 clock. What's coming up in a game brought to you by Free My Bank Full Service Making No Compromises? Mark Medina. He's going to join us here on the roast. The 2023 Mountain Winery concert season is here with performances by Smokey Robinson on June 23rd, Chicago on August 29th and 30th, and many more. For the complete 2023 season, tickets, dining, VIP.
tie line. He is fitted up. No doubt, Iguodala's got some style. Warriors sack. Warriors of Kings, game one, Saturday, 5.30. Can't get here soon enough. Rod Adams tomorrow, Wednesday, 8.30. We're going to have Fitz on the show later this week. Bobby Fitzgerald has had a banner year. Size matters. So that'll be either Thursday or Friday. And then we have a special guest joining us live in studio. Nothing easy. That's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. Mark Medina is going to join us in moments here. We got some Draymond Green sound. It's just some funny stuff from Sacramento, San Francisco. Uh, Comcast business text line 925. Hold up. Sacramento's not in the center of California. Fresno is. It was the center of roadways, though, at the time, if I'm not mistaken. And also rush. proximity. Yeah, the wall proximity to uh, what they thought was going to be, uh, you know, a more booming economy right. up north. Gotcha. 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 It's not about being centrally located, per se. Yeah. Because I'm looking at the capitals here. I just went crazy. Like, these capitals <laughs> just doesn't make any sense to me. All right, Indianapolis, Indiana. Okay, that makes sense. Like, how's Chicago not the capital of Illinois? Who the hell's going to Springfield? I'd rather go to Peoria, the home of Sean Livingston. Like, Albuquerque is not the capital of New Mexico. It's Santa Fe. Mm. Like, we have realignment in the NFL and Major League Baseball. Mm -hmm. We need realignment with the state capitals. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. <laughs> realignment with the state capitals. Good luck with that. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Why is Harrisburg the capital of Pennsylvania? Should be Philly or, P or Pittsburgh. Hell, even Happy Valley. I'll accept that. This is Olympia. It's the state capital of Washington. Should be Seattle. That's a joke. <laughs> Salem is the capital of Oregon. How is Portland or Eugene or Corvallis not the capital of Oregon? Is this snitching geography or what? I just it just doesn't make any sense. Trenton is the capital of New Jersey. Well, yeah, because I know that uh, isn't that uh, where Naughty by Nature's from? I guess aren't they from Trenton? Raleigh is the capital of North Carolina. I know that. Should be Charlotte. Stand up. Should be the Queen Take City. Take your shirt off. Should be the Queen Twist City. Around your head, just turn it like a helicopter. Right. Baton Rouge, the capital of Louisiana. That makes a little sense. I get. I'll, I'll give you that. Okay. One. Okay. I'll give. I'll give them that one. Tallahassee, the state capital of Florida. Look, I love my Knowles. Miami should be the capital of my, uh, Florida or Orlando. Come on, man. Albany, the capital of New York. Who the hell's going to Albany? Say, hey, Michelle Shasky, you want to go to Albany, New York? I know they just had some tournament games here. We're actually planning another, uh, you know, vacation or whatever right now. So we're we're open to any ideas. Like I told you, leave California. Well, we were thinking like Vancouver, Bora Bora. We have all kinds of different ideas. Wow, you're actually. Exp I, I can't believe you're evolving. Well, I don't have a lot of money, but you know, oh, stop. You got two houses. You're thinking about paying money oh, for sack. There we go. Dude, I don't have. I any just money. paid. I have a toy. I'm just. I'm literally pushing send on my turbo taxes right now. And and let's just put it this way: the government is flush with money. All right. They've got enough money. All right, we've... they took all my money. All right, people are telling me. This is terrible radio. Jason Purdue. This is terrible radio, Bonte. <laughs> we all had this convo in the fourth grade. Well, guess what, Jason? <laughs> I'm 40 years old. I don't remember the conversations I had in the fourth grade, so I'm bringing it back up. Mark Medina, he's back on the roast. Mark Medina, it's been too long, you superstar. I, I, look, we're going to get to the playing games, but how much of a joke are these state capitals? Like, Albany's the state capital of New York. You went to Syracuse. <laughs> That's a joke. See, I would rather have Syracuse be the capital of New York City. What about California? Sacramento being the capital of the state. That's why I can't stand the Kings now. They're the state capital in this great state of California. Are you kidding me, Mark? Bonte, I'm with you. I think Syracuse should be the capital of New York. I mean, it's home to the Great Dome. How about this? You're ripping on Harrisburg being the capital in Pennsylvania. It should be my hometown, York, Pennsylvania. That was the temporary uh, base uh, for the uh, Continental Congress when the Articles of Confederation were drafted, right? So, oh my God. That should be the capital right there. I am so mind blown by that knowledge, Mark Medina. You are one of my favorites, man. Let's get to basketball. Lakers, T Wolves. And then you got the first round series between the Clippers and the Suns. We'll get your thoughts on Warriors Kings in just a He's second. Like he's I games. Just, yeah, I'm starting with the Lakers. Let's go. And Mark Marcus wrote so much. The dude is a writing machine. He's writing all day long. So you wrote about D Lo going up against Jared Vanderbilt and Malik Beasley. Obviously, Vanderbilt, not McDaniels, but Vanderbilt just broke his head, punching the wall here. But Anthony Davis, 
I think a lot of people have slept on Anthony Davis. We've called him street clothes for so long because of all the injuries and him and the, and the inability to get on the court. But, damn, Anthony Davis has been a top-ten player, it feels like, for the last two months of the season, Mark. Yeah, without a doubt. I think that what Anthony Davis has shown this season, once he got back from his injury with that right foot, is he looked like the Anthony Davis the first season with the Lakers, where he was the number one focal point on offense. He was consistently aggressive and dominant. And no doubt that LeBron James, he's the leader soul of the team. But, you know, the heart beats to how well Anthony Davis produces. And so... I think that part of that has been LeBron James's preparation and training habits running, uh, rubbing off on Anthony Davis. I think it's Darvin Ham trying to preach positive reinforcement because a lot of times, you know, 80s frustrations would get the best of him. But I think the bottom line, not only is it the fact that he's healthy, but when he's consistently aggressive, that's usually the difference between a quiet double double versus, you know, a 30, 40 point performance. And they'll obviously need it tonight and onward if they want to make a deep playoff push. Are Laker, are the Lakers and LeBron in particular, are they happy with how this thing shook down? Like, did they want to avoid Kevin Durant? It, it felt like they did. Well, I think uh, with the Lakers, because they were such in a precarious position at the beginning of the season, where they were in 13th place in the Western Conference before the trade deadline, I didn't think that they were in a position of, oh, let's try to avoid this matchup here, avoid matchup there. I think that there is more of just a sigh of relief that they got into the play mm-hmm. tournament because there was a chance they weren't going to make the playoffs for a consecu- second consecutive year. And I think no doubt, if you're looking at potential first-round matchups, uh, assuming that they win uh, against Minnesota tonight, I think facing the Memphis Grizzlies would be a, a much better haul for them than it would be with the Phoenix Suns because, you know, for all the talent the Grizzlies have, they talk, you, as you guys know, a lot of you-know-what, and sometimes they are more consumed with that than actually playing the game, where the Suns, you know, look, they have – amazing talent from top to bottom with Chris Paul, Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and DeAndre Ayton. But, you know, I think in fairness to that, there's also the unknown with Phoenix. I mean, they're only an injury away from, you know, falling out in the first round here. Um, so, as you guys know with Chris Paul, when he's faced up against the Warriors, oh, we know. things might look good initially, but <laughs> it can be that fragile falling apart pretty quickly. Man, Mark Medina covers the NBA nationally, does a great job doing it. He's had a few write-ups about these playing games in the NBA playoffs. All right, so the Lakers, they're feeling good. and I, I'm very intrigued if they get past the T-Wolves with this Grizzlies series because now you get the Grizzlies, Lakers, and the Warriors, Kings on the same side of the bracket in the second-round matchup, whether it's Warriors, Lakers, Kings, Lakers. It's going to be dynamic. How legit? Do the Lakers have a legit shot at making it through the Western Conference? They played really good basketball since the trade deadline, but are Laker fans and the Lakers themselves thinking that, hey, we could run the table in the Western Conference and find ourselves playing in the month of June? Well, look, they do have a legit shot because as of now, and they're knocking on wood as I say this, but LeBron James and Anthony Davis are reasonably healthy. That's number one. Number two, they've been one of the best teams since they trade deadline. Uh, they've been night and day with just how their identity looks like. It's addition by subtraction with the Russell Westbrook fit. That didn't work out for any party. And, you know, with the trades that they got with D'Angelo Russell, Malik Beasley, Jaron Vanderbilt, they're very much fulfilled positional needs. D'Angelo Russell... Um, you know, he has his strengths, his weaknesses, as Warrior fans know, but specifically with this Lakers team, he is plug and play as far as fitting in with LeBron James and, and LeBron, uh, Anthony Davis. Uh, you know, he's a great passer. He has a lot of open space to shoot. Uh, Malik Be- Beasley, for the most part, has offered a, an additional laser for uh, the Lakers. You know, as you guys remember, after the Lakers lost to Golden State in the season opener, that's what LeBron James was lamenting, that they didn't have enough lasers. They also have more defensive reinforcements, so it's not just on D. So there, so there very much is a pathway to win the NBA championship, most like for the same reasons that you can't rule out the Golden State Warriors or the Phoenix Suns. Um, and the Clippers, those, all those four teams have been in the middle of the standings primarily because a lot of their guys, uh, had overlapping injuries throughout this season. So it might fit that old adage, guys, that, uh, in the playoffs, what matters is health and if you're playing at your best. And so I will be interested to see if that dynamic flips for all those four teams where inevitably they're the favorite. But because of the fragile nature, of all these teams with their durability, uh, you just never know. So it should be a compelling uh, playoff series, to say the least. Mark, which player has the most to gain from a great playoff run, and who's got the most to prove? 
Yeah, I think that's a good question. I mean, I think the most to gain, uh, look, I, I would probably choose Chris Paul because he hasn't won an NBA championship. I know that the Athletic did a players poll recently after the All-Star break of which players do other NBA players hope win their first ring. They all uh, mentioned Chris Paul. I asked Chris what he thought of that, and uh, he, he was flattered by it and said, look, uh, you know, I, no, no one wants to win it more than I do. And so while I do think that, you know, a lot of the narratives about him of, hey, he didn't win a ring or a little bit overblown because, hey, a lot of it were injuries and unavoidable. And two, he is, you know, number three on the all-time assists and all-time steals list. I think that how he's viewed as a point guard will still be viewed uh, in very reverent terms. But, look, superstars or all-star players want to also be able to collect rings. So I think that would be the most notable because when you look at everyone else, no doubt, you know, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, LeBron James, they all want to collect rings, but uh, they've already done it before. And, you know, while it never hurts, I don't think it's going to blemish their legacy. I would probably say behind Chris Paul, the Clippers, look, they assembled this team with Kawhi Leonard and Paul George since 2019. And up to that point, they've never gotten to the NBA championship, let alone winning it. And I know talking to owner Steve Ballmer, uh, he's not – uh, happy about this to say the least not only does he want to win a, a championship once they have the intuit dome their own arena starting in 2025 they want to make sure that they win a championship before they leave crypto.com arena and <laughs> look there, there's no excuses i know there's, there's injuries but they've had this pair together for a while now and now it's kind of put up or shut up Mark Medina here on the Morning Ross on 95.7 in game. Look, Jaden McDaniels broke his hand. I keep saying Vanderbilt for some reason, but McDaniels with the T-Wolves, Vanderbilt, of course, and the Lakers. I, I'm surprised I didn't hear Jokic or Embiid there with that answer. Doesn't it feel like Jokic, who's won two straight MVPs, if he doesn't get past at least the second round, do you think that's yeah. a big-time knock on him or Joel Embiid, who's never played in a conference final? Yeah, you know what, that's fair, too. I mean, I'm just thinking of uh, off the top of my head, but Jokic yeah. would be in there as well because, look, I think that he deserves all these MVP awards. It's a regular season award, but the reality is when you're fitting that caliber of player, you should be able to carry your team to deep playoff push right. pushes. In fairness, they have done that so far. I mean, look, they were the Cinderella team in the bubble, overcoming 3-1 a series deficits against Utah, against the Clippers. They ran to a very dominant Lakers team. I mean, you guys saw the Nuggets unravel last season, but it was against the Warriors. I mean, mm -hmm. they were playing at the top uh, of their level here. But I think in this context of this season, the fact that they're number one, the fact in the West, the fact that Jamal Murray uh, and Michael Porter Jr., while they've had ups and downs, they've at least been available for most of this season. And so, yeah, if they fall short, uh, he'll definitely get criticism. So I do wonder, will it be one of those kind of split the differences? Right. Could he placate some of that criticism if they at least get to the West Finals, NBA Finals, but don't win the championship? But no doubt, they obviously want to show that you know they're not just about regular season success and that can actually carry over to the games that count. Real quick, Mark, what happens with the Dallas Mavericks? Does Kyrie get an extension with them? Does he get a max deal somewhere else? Wait, wait, the implode, you talk about imploding. I mean, that team was in the Western Conference Finals a season ago. They make the big trade ahead of the trade deadline, bringing in Kyrie Irving, trading uh, Dorian Finney-Smith, and, of course, Spencer Dinwiddie. And everything just, I mean, they just they crapped all over themselves down the stretch and didn't even make the play a tournament. What do you think happens down to Big D? Yeah, it's just a tire fire. I mean, I think that I don't think the Mavs want to keep Kyrie long-term. I don't think Kyrie wants to stay there. Um, but I think the bigger question is what do the Mavericks – do with that cap space. You know, I've been told that Luka Doncic, it's, it's too early to think, oh, that he wants out of Dallas. No doubt he's frustrated with how the season's gone on, but, uh, but he's very much in this wait-and-see mode of, hey, what does the front office do this summer to give me more help? That's not to say that he's dictating to them, this is who you got to sign, this is who you got to sign, but I think the, the underlying thing is this. The Mavericks clearly haven't uh, been able to right, find the right player to fit with Luka, you know, with Kristaps Porzingis, then a handful of decent role players, uh, and then Kyrie Irving. Jalen Brunson, obviously, uh, was the best fit, but they weren't proactive enough in keeping him around. And so when I talked with people around the league when this Kyrie Irving trade went down, uh, no doubt there are a lot of question marks about Kyrie's behavior, but I think that there was a feeling, hey, they'd at least coexist offensively, but would it be enough? 
to win as a team, as a whole? Clearly not. But I think the other question they had is, what would they do if Kyrie left? What would they do with that cap space? And historically, they haven't done a great job with that. So yeah. we'll see if uh, you know they can finally pull a mulligan on this offseason. It'll be challenging, to say the least. That's a great point, Mark. Uh, 15 seconds or less. Do the Kings have a shot against the Warriors? They have a shot to make it competitive, a shot to win, but I, I choose the dubs are. All right, Mark Bettina. I don't know if you've ever sounded better on 95.7 The Game. Damn, <laughs> our YouTube chat is saying you're on fire right now, Mark. Uh, uh, hey, you know what? A mark of a star player in Bonte Hill is someone who no, knows how to you. elevate their teammates. See, so all wait, credit to you. To, 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 you got to show as well. Mark, why do you think I'm here? <laughs> <laughs> Mark, you're the man. Monte Hill is just carrying us all. No, it's no, stop real. it, Mark. Stop it. Mark, I can't wait to see you during the playoffs, man. Hopefully I'll run it to you soon. I uh, appreciate you, man. Can't wait. Anytime. Mark Medina here buddy. on the Morning Re- Morning Rose on 95.7 The Game. A fantastic job. A lot there. Dallas, the Warriors, he doesn't give gives the Kings a shot, but not a shot to win uh, the series against the Golden State Warriors. The Lakers situation. They're going to be an intriguing team. If we get that second-round matchup, Lakers and Warriors, oh, my Lord. Spadoni's going to have to work afternoons. Go work with Mark Willard. He's the L.A. cat here. <laughs> you know, Fox Sports Radio, Mark. So, <laughs> you go work with Mark in the afternoons. Give us Grandy, man. <laughs> I do feel like we've For unearthed something here. Huh? I feel like we've unearthed something here. What? This state capital thing is going crazy. It is going crazy. Crazy. Is it my fault? I mean, no, I sorry. love it. I love it. And I love Why? I want you to give sports opinions about state capitals. Okay. Because I want like a bed of music. Dun, 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 <laughs> and you like, I can't. Okay, for example, I'm going to give you the best and worst state capitals to live in. All right. This is by a ranking called smartasset.com. Okay. The number one, and you can tell me, I want you a sports opinion knowing nothing about this place. Tell me if this is right or wrong. Overrated, underrated. They're saying the number one state capital to live in in all of the United States. Pierre, South Dakota. It scores the highest in employment, education, along with affordability. Across all 50 state capitals, it is the second lowest unemployment rate and has the fourth highest income after housing costs. Well, no wonder the South Dakota State Jackrabbits always have good success in Division Two, right? I mean, they, they, I think they won the FCS championship this season, beating North Dakota State. I could be wrong, but I know they made a deep run, and it all makes sense on why they're pumping in fake crowd noise, got the stands <laughs> all filled up, and they're blowing teams away. I think it's the South Dakota Jackrabbits. No wonder. All right. Now we're, we're going to go. They can afford to buy players. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go to Helena, Montana, number five on the oh. list. Best state capital to live in. Helena, Montana, it ranks fifth uh, for best employment and education with the 11th highest affordability and livability. It offers the third highest high school graduation rate at 96% and the 10th lowest employment rate, unemployment rate. Bonte, Helena, Montana. Well, I was right about the South Dakota Jackrabbits. They had a deep run, but Montana, Montana State. The Montana Grizzlies, and of course, Montana State, I believe the Bobcats, they have a great success. They fill out the stands. People can afford to go to these games. They can go, go afford to fill out these stadiums. And an NIL and all the college football, they can afford to buy players. Juco, transfer rate, you name it. Montana has it booming. That's why Montana and Montana State, I mean, come on. It, makes, it all makes sense. Sacramento. California. Well, the Sacramento State Hornets, I mean, they've had a good run here in uh, college basketball when it comes to the women's and men's team. They've got transfers and, of course, their football team. Hell, they've been so good in football, the Stafford Cardinal had to steal their head coach, Troy Taylor. Des Moines, Iowa. Oh, I mean, Iowa State Hawkeye. I mean, Iowa Hawkeyes. Look at them. They're a wrestling powerhouse. <laughs> Caitlin Clark with the women's basketball team. They were the no- <laughs> Oh, actually, they weren't the number one seed. But the how the hell did Keegan Murray and his brother go to Iowa? Uh, Why? Because Des Moines is booming. They had that great hospital where they wave at them right over to Iowa Hawkeye State football stadium. I want you to give me where you believe the United States capital should be. Should it be in Washington, D.C. or somewhere else? Well, it makes sense to be in Annapolis. I mean, I can't argue against that. That's that's fine. That's fair. They suck in sports, though. I mean, no wonder nobody wants to go there to play sports. It's all about politics, 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 politics. Hey, I could go score five touchdowns for the Maryland Terrapins. <laughs> but guess what? CNN's going to lead the way. Not Nassin. Not any of that stuff. It's all about the politics there. That's why they can't. F- they can't they're not kidding anymore. Juan Dixon ain't walking through that door for Maryland. That's the most got incredible more? segment you've ever produced. You got more? Let's go. No, you're on Albany, fire. Albany, New York? Yeah, go Albany, New York. 
Well, they've got that dump of a stadium where they played the first couple rounds in a dump basketball tournament. Iowa, Iona, and Rick Patino got to play UConn and get their brains beat in by the UConn Huskies. Nobody goes to Albany unless there's tournament games. Tournament games, which they have like every three or four years. Phoenix, Arizona. Well, no, it makes sense. I mean, Phoenix, Arizona. If you're a sequel guy, why would you want to live in Phoenix, Arizona? I mean, come on, sunshine, retractable roofs. You got the TGI Fridays and right field, or two, yeah, right field, left field, and Chase One Park. Uh, you got the Phoenix Suns booming. KD's out here tweeting, could uh, win Diamondbacks. Uh, Who wouldn't want to live in Phoenix and go oh play college God. football there? Oh, my God. It makes sense. All right. This is the hardest one. All right. June, is it Juno? 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 Oh, Juno. Alaska. Juno, Alaska. The home of Carlos Buza. <laughs> The home of Trajan Langdon. I mean, I mean, they've had some ballers come out of Alaska. And the great thing is, if you want to go to school there, if you want to play sports there in Juneau, Alaska, it gets, you might say, it gets too cold. Oh, there's 20 hours of darkness, blah, 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 blah. But guess what? You got underground tunnels to avoid all that. That's why Juneau, Alaska is a great sports destination. The last one on our list, Frankfort, Kentucky. Oh, Frankfort, Kentucky. Well, that's the home of chicken, right? Louisville's right down the road. You got Colonial Sanders down there in Louisville. You got the Young Center. The college baseball teams went there. Why the hell do you think Lamar Jackson wanted to play football at Louisville? Come on now. What? I mean, Diddy Crumb. Diddy Crumb couldn't leave Louisville because Frankfort was right down the road. I mean, Kentucky, the Bluegrass State, the home of the Kentucky Derby. Come on. Kentucky Wildcats. Rick Patino pressing 94 feet. Right. Smack dab in SEC oh. country. Let's oh. go. Oh. Come on. Oh, my God. The fact that you, without a pause, said <laughs> the home of chicken, like chicken originated in the state of Kentucky. <laughs> oh, I'm dying. What else we got? Oh. What else we got? We got more? Oh. Come on. Carson City, Nevada. Oh, I mean, it was Nevada. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> no state taxes. Come on. Why do they say, uh, there's everywhere else, uh, and then there's Vegas? <laughs> duh, duh. Why do you think the Raiders was looking at Carson? Come on. <laughs> All right. I got to go one more. One, right, more. one more. All right. Montpelier, Vermont. Oh, boy. The cheddar, the Vermont syrup. I mean, they got lobsters. Oh, the lobsters. Anthony Lamb. <laughs> I mean, it's a hold of the countabouts. Vermont. Catamount. Vermont University. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? This is a great capital for the state of Vermont. Uh, I mean, Vermont's only about, I mean, you can drive from one red light to the other red light, and boom, you've covered all corners of Vermont. <laughs> I mean, geez, Louise. By the way, you want to be a uh, chase hitter for the Warriors' uh, first whole playoff game of the year? Uh, We're Brian, giving away a pair of tickets to game the three chicken. against the Sacramento Kings. Uh, Make sure you listen to all day on Thursday for your chance to win. Uh, Tickets to Game Three of the first round series for Tony Kings uh, and in Golden State Warriors. That Where's might have been like the most chicken? incredible, like reaching you've ever done in your life. I'm gonna call you Stretch Armstrong. <laughs> I really, I really enjoyed Colonial Sanders. <laughs> that was the one that stuck out to me from all of that. <laughs> Sam, Sam, are there times chicken. when you look at the two of us and you're like, you guys are morons? <laughs> it's once or twice, an hour. Yeah, every five minutes. Oh, <laughs> I mean, we're all, we're all about, the same cloth here, so it's all it's all for fun. How about Juno, the home of Trade to Lake? Dude. That was the home state of Carlos. It was Lewis. absolutely hilarious. It's absolutely and then nice. I love how you weaved in the Insomniac movie with Al Pacino. <laughs> you don't want to be outside too long. No, you don't. You don't. Not at all. Robin By Williams was great in that movie. Such a good movie. <laughs> Such a good movie. What's a scarier movie? That one or One Hour Photo? One Hour Photo is really Psy Psy the Photo Guy, right? Bro, yeah. is so Rob creepy. Williams the bad guy yeah, both? The, yes. Yeah, correct. that's what I thought. Oh, my gosh. Oh, man, that, that, that's pretty funny. Uh, Pate, did you ever work in sales? Comcast business text line. Well, I sold things. Well, that's a, you know what they used to say? It was legal. <laughs> they grab a pen. This is what they did in sales when I first got in. They're like, sell me this pen. Oh, and I was yeah, like, they this do that. big pen is incredible. Right. <laughs> it writes... It's got everlasting ink. <laughs> everlasting ink. Look at the way you write your B's with this pen. Uh, you can't write a letter B with this with an, any other pen except for this. Never. Right, that was bad. Where do you think this, the, the the capital of California should be? And like, w would you look for something quote unquote centrally located? Because you're not trying to give one of the the you know L A or S F too much love, right? Because then one of them would San have Jose. A little, what San Jose. I think Benicia used to be the state capital too for a minute. Are you or two. kidding me, Benicia? Boy, the smell alone of the sulfur wow. and the and the, the, the 
You, you never. You know. I think it's down at the Monterey Peninsula. Yeah, Pacific I'm Grove or Monterey. It's, it's got to be Shire. Monterey. Give me, give me San Jose. Give me Carmel. Give me San Jose. Nobody Get wants to go to Carmel like week. that every single you, weekend. Oh, baby Chess loves the Monterey Bay she Aquarium. She does Get love the aquarium. Come she on. does love it. She's been Just twice. The aquarium's the headquarters, Dante. And, I, and, and I love the their cannery? fake. Hey. Yeah, the tin cannery. Thank cannery you. Row. Yeah, they're, they're fake Fisherman's Wharf, right? That's just an awesome place. I'm not going to allow this slander. No. The place has been there for a long time. No, it is really good. I'm sorry, Rich. I celebrated yeah, Valentine's Day down there. I mean, come on. Lover's Point? Come on. It's pretty good. I I'll tell you like where it's not going to be. Go to Lover's Point if you want to get the action. There you go. I'll, I'll tell you where it's not going to be. Where's that? It's not going to be Bakersfield. And it All certainly right. ain't going to be Fresno. All right. All right. I mean, come on. Like, yeah. seriously. It's not. Damn. Jeff Kuda, number three overall pick. Trade all right, Draymond Green wanted to finish his career. Let's let's listen. Quick thoughts on this. Quick thoughts. The show's flown by. Four hours. We're starting our, fighting our groove here at a four-hour show. I know. Show. We are. We're not, like, yawning in the fourth hour. We're not just pulling stuff out of our you-know-what. I've know been what. yawning all show because they didn't give me enough caffeine in my coffee. It was watered down. I was oh, really boy. pissed. See, that's why I've been making my coffee at home. I know. Or slipping out there in the morning. Well, and then I went to go get JoJo his... Uh, his Americano, but he likes a splash of, of cream yeah, in there. Yeah, he's got a weird order, dude. No, 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 it's, but, but it's, no, no, no. He's actually very easy. It's a, it's an iced uh, Americano. No, you know who had the large, weirdest orders? It was Madsen. Yeah, yeah, so complicated. Can you give me a hint of honey and a dash of this? <laughs> yeah. Because he, goes, he, he goes by the app. So if you go by the app and you use the app a lot, there's just where you can just go perfect. Just no, every but I've got thing. yours down. It is a iced Americano, which is basically an espresso shot with water, and then you like a splash of sweet cream. So it's espresso with coffee, so it's actually get the double buzz oh, there, and then you get the sweet cream hey, on top. Uh, oh, yeah. All right, since we're on Capitals. So, wow. The Capital Talk. San Jose, 510. Who would have thought? San Jose was the state capital from 1849 to 1851. Vallejo was the capital from 1850 to 1853. Really? How does that even make sense? That overlaps each other. 1849, 1851, 1850, 1853. Benicio was the capital from 1853 to 1854. Then it went to Sacramento, then to San Francisco, then back to Sacramento. All right, this is all confusing. Draymond Green, do you want to finish your career? San Francisco can't Warriors? even handle City Hall. I don't think we can handle no. the state capital. I would love to finish my career here. That's been my goal since maybe signing this current contract that I'm on. It's like it looked like a more realistic thing of me finishing here. And, and I also don't want to play 20 years in the NBA. I want to play 15 years in the NBA. So I think, you know, it's very realistic that in four more years, I'll still be contributing at a high level. Um, I'll still be able to give to a team and, and live up to the contracts that I'll be on. And so I do want to be here. As far as the probability goes, I can't necessarily give you that because it's not up to me. If it's totally up to me, I can 100% tell you I will finish my career here. But that's not something that's totally up to me. You know, and I do understand. You, you remember when I told you, I said, uh, when I told you guys, I said, guys don't know how to play. Another one that's even more baffling to me is guys don't understand the business of basketball. I actually understand the business of basketball. And, and so I do understand why that's not totally my decision. All right, that's Draymond Green. Quick thoughts on that soundbite on the Mark Stein and Chris Haynes podcast. If both sides are willing to compromise a little, mm -hmm. I think they should be able to get something done. Yeah, I think so, too. I but, think but, but then, like, again, let's see what happens down the stretch because something can happen on either end that makes it, um, you know, at an impasse. There's a lot riding on this final, on this postseason run. <sighs> what? I got a new coffee shop. Uh, oh. Damn fine. Is that the name of it? It's in the sunset. I need to know where it is, 415. Excelsior Native uh, owned and operated. I'm going to have to come support. I think it's damn fine. I think that's right. how you pronounce Are they it. open so, early? I don't know, but text right. it. I mean, I'm I'm literally right. leaving the house at like, you know, I'll tell the boss is listening, 345 in the morning, you know, to get here and prep <laughs> it's like on 4033 Judah Street. Oh, it's in Judah. Oh. Yeah. Your boy ain't waking up at 345. You remember the old 49ers down there? Yeah. Draymond Green, I, I think you just this, have to walk out. I think, I think this postseason run is going to dictate a lot what happens with the Warriors next season and a year after. It's all about the postseason run. We'll get to that a little bit more tomorrow. Draymond Green on the front office. We all want to, in, in any job that we do, we all want to be compensated for what we bring to the table. We all want our fair market value. And so, you know, that end of the bargain has to be upheld. And my end of the bargain has to be upheld. I do think I am still holding on my end of the bargain. We're, we're defending the championship. Um, I am still playing at a high level. 
And I don't doubt that Joe and Bob and our front office and ownership group will hold up their end of the bargain. They always have. I have no, uh, contrary to the reports out there and all the things, I have zero reasons to believe that they won't hold up their end of the bargain because they've never shown me that. All right. That's Draymond Green. And I do believe that that Joe Lacob does come to the table. When it's time to pony up, he ponies up. And I think Draymond Green, he mentioned it in the last cut. He wants to be a lifer here with the Golden State Warriors. And so if they have a deep postseason run, I think it's we're going to see Draymond Green retire Golden State Warrior. The, um, the business of sports is an interesting one. It very rarely feels like you're paying current market value for anyone. Mm-hmm. You're either paying them like on what they could be, on what they've done prior. Like very few guys are getting exactly what they deserve at any given time. Yeah. Would you agree with that? Yep. Yep. Like the way it's very difficult. So like when Dre says, "Hi, hey, I feel like I deserve and I'm playing at a high level now." All true. But isn't the equation that a, a front office is trying to do yeah, you have worth here. What are you going to look like in two years? Right. What are you, you, you going to look like in three years? How does project. that make it more difficult to sign other players or bring in other players for this roster? Like, it, there's, it's deeper than just are you playing well? For a guy who does it is not dependent on scoring the basketball. How will his game age? Because he's a damn good passer. I think it'll age. His IQ is at all time high, but his body is like beat up. Like, okay, let's say I, he had a three year contract in the back pocket. I don't think he would have played as many games as he did this year because right. that wrist needed to be rested. Yep. And I don't blame him for that. Like, I would be Iron Manning too because what am I going to do? I'm going to look at your game logs. Right. And I'm going to see if you, oh, you were hurt this year. Like, well, whether that's fair or not. Looking at his three point shot, he shot uh, 30% this year. It's the highest he's shot in years. Nice. Shot 52.5%. It's a career high from the floor. How well can he shoot that ball in this postseason? I think he can make a lot of money for himself. All right, uh, we got to run here. We'll get more into this tomorrow. Uh, it's been a fast show here. We got Ron Adams tomorrow at 8.30. Zaza live in studio. Zaza Pachulia will be live in studio Thursday morning. We'll have Fitzgerald, Bob Fitzgerald, the voice of the Warriors. Of course, on the television side, he'll join us later in the week. But right now, it's time for the Xfinity Fast Five. All right, Fast Five, final thoughts, and it's the question of the day. Which state capital would you want to live in? Which state capital would you want to live in? Who wants to start it off? I tell you what, okay. I definitely don't want to live in Harrisburg, I'm, Pennsylvania. I'm going to take it. I'm going to start there off. There you go. You're go. going to go? go. Uh, I'm going I'm to take Phoenix, Arizona off the board uh-huh. because of all of the different places that are out there. Well, did I take yours? At the first pick, you just snuck up on I, me. You I, traded. You were the Bears. You I, traded I, I, up. I'm sorry, man. Gotta, Minnesota Vikings. I got, a, I got a sleeper pick for you guys. I'm going to take Phoenix because I can golf all year round. Uh, it feels like, it, it, even though you know, there's a lot that that is negative about it. It's a vibrant, awesome little area to live, and I've got some friends and family down there. Are any of these on a coastline, Bonte? I've lived next to water my entire life. I'd rather not live like away from it. So I'll yeah, go. I'll I take Sack. It's only a couple hours away. Oh wow! All right. What house depressing? Joe, I'm sorry. I stole yours. Yeah, I feel you bad. should be sorry. Yeah, I'm surprised sorry. you to say Honolulu, Hawaii. Oh, that would have counted. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> love it. You would help, help that one. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna go Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I dro- drove through Louisiana once. Very beautiful state. <laughs> I just, oh, this guy. Hey, it's a quick drive down to New Orleans, which, you know what? Hey. New Orleans, that's a hop in town. So, you know hey. what? Get me near New Orleans. That's a sleeper pick. That is a very sleeper. Look, you've got Denver, Colorado. You've got St. Paul, Minnesota. I hear Minnesota is very underrated. Denver is the, is the capital of Colorado? Denver's the capital of Colorado, mm, believe it or that not. That is a great place to you live. You know what? Weed's legal. They've got pro teams. They've got the Colorado Buffaloes with Deion Sanders. Give me Denver for the state capital. The Capitol. Pepsi Center. I'm Bonte Hill. Not the Pepsi Center. It's called Ball Arena now. I thought it was the Pepsi Center. No, Ball Arena. Oh. It's been Ball Arena for a couple years. Ball Arena. Let's go to the arena to go ball. Oh, I like that. This ball is arena. the way we ball. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then. Come on, a little flip? No? Yeah. Freestyle right. King? Oh, 408. San Ron, Puerto Rico. Oh. <gasps> That's more of a territory than a state, right? Yeah. Does I, that count? I'll let it count for the text line. How does that work? Are, is that, are you flying international when you go there? 
I think you're still part of the United States when you're there. Like so you don't need a passport. Yeah, you, well, you need a passport to fly anywhere out of California. But no, you don't. It's not like traditional you international don't. travel. You need a passport to fly out of, out of... Well, passport or a real ID. It's yeah, the, totally different subject. But anyway, no, it's, it is like flying to another state in right. the country. Sack is close to Tahoe, Henry Chavez. You're right about that. All right. That was a lot of fun today. A lot of fun on the show. A lot of Warriors. We're closer and closer to the Sacramento Kings to go to St. Warriors. Tangling in the first round of this best of seven series. Oh, yeah, that was the Fast Five brought to you by Xfinity. The next generation, Team G Network, only from Xfinity. The future starts now. Steiny and Guru, they're coming up next. Guess, guess what they're talking about? Little Chai's Dodgers, I'm guessing. State Capitals? They will definitely not talk State Capitals, although I think Steiny is jealous of that conversation. The one time he's jealous of the roast, talk of State Capitals and geography. They'll be talking some doves and kings right here on 95.7 The Game. He nutted that thing. Does your heart long to wander? To encounter colorful creatures from the deep blue sea? And amazing animals from the Amazon and beyond? Feed your wild heart. Travel the world right here in San Francisco. Make your reservation to the California Academy of Sciences at calacademy.org.
Tell you what, Warriors maybe they might need to be careful. Sounds to me like they are. <laughs> they, they, they think they've got a first round series win hand delivered to them because they're playing the Sacramento Kings. I, I, I don't know. What did I say? I echo those sentiments, Donnie. Everything I you hear them saying. You said Warriors in five. No, I said the Warriors are talking with their chest out like they can. It ain't about me. It's about them. Clay, Draymond. I just the confidence is, runs abundant. What about for you? Honestly, Stanley, I told you Warriors in five. I really believe. I just, I just don't see how the Kings can stop everything they need to stop to get past this series. And Darren Fox, you're incredible, Sabonis. But Stanley, I gotta watch it play out. Are they gonna be able the Kings to play free flowingly like they've been doing? I just don't think so. Now, if you're telling me and the masses, hey, Goo, they're going to get the Kings, those wide open looks from three uncontested, then Houston, we got a problem. I just don't see that happening. Well, interestingly, if I wanted to play devil's advocate, and sometimes I can do that fairly well. Look at you. You're master. Tell you what. Let me tell you all the war. Here's what Sack needs to do. Sack needs to just keep stuff close because they're winning. They're winning if these games are close down the stretch, right? You're basing that they on. They have the most clutch player in the NBA, according to statistics, no right? Doubt. Right? No and doubt. De'Aaron Fox is the most clutch player in the NBA, according to stats. Those are facts. Warriors sometimes get sloppy late in games. But I know it's the playoffs. There so we, we go. We don't, yeah, they, Warriors will. No, they'll just, everything, gets, everything gets perfect. And Evan just, what about this nugget? Evan tells us in the green room, the Warriors have not lost a series to a Western Conference team under Steve Kerr. Donnie, that's just I think incredible. Your, I think your stat's even crazier. How about that? Uh, give, go ahead and give your stat. Or the stat about Cali? Yeah. Oh, the Warriors have an opportunity. I ran this by JD. An opportunity to go to the NBA Finals. And not leave the state of California. I got to tell you where I got it. He's listening. Go Our ahead. guy, Walter Arbery. The, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, Walter, he hit me up with that. I go give it to me. Let me tell you something about Walter. I, don't know if I you love noticed. him. Go ahead. He has ascended yeah. the, the ranks. Okay, got gotcha. you. He used to, remember when you used to go over to the Chase Center? He'd be there to greet you, say hello yeah. at the garage. No doubt, yeah. yeah. You can't even find Walter anymore. You we know why? on out. Because he's now positioned like inside the there Warriors you locker room. You can't. He, he, and you a good father too, Stan. Well, that I don't know. Well, you follow him on Facebook. Well, I'm just I follow a lot of people. We love you, Dub. Yeah. Uh, the only chance the Kings have to beat the Warriors is with the old Kings team that has Weber and Peja Stojakovic. Oh, brother! Wow. Yeah. Ching, what's the little? When the comedian does something, they do the bye. Well, yeah, it wasn't that funny, so we, <laughs> we, we left it off. All right, Warrior fans, so I'm thinking. And I read uh, Tim Kawakami's piece in The uh, Athletic about how, you know, every champion needs a couple good pieces of fortune, and the Warriors have already maybe gotten a piece by playing the Kings. So the Kings are the best matchup the Warriors could have. This is the one the Warriors wanted. This is the one Draymond Green wanted. It all fell into place. Guess what? You don't have to play Phoenix. We know you're a little worried about Phoenix. Guess what? You don't have to open with Memphis. You get the Sacramento Kings. So my question is this. If you, if you lose to the Kings, it'd be that, that's yeah. worse than anything, it, right? It, you would, you it, couldn't yeah. lose to a team any more ill-suited to make fans say, you know what, we weren't. No doubt if about it. If you lose to the Sacramento Kings, all right, your favorite matchup, the team you wanted, the team you think you can hammer, if you don't beat the Sacramento Kings, is this too, well, it's over then, right? Then the dynasty's over. Not that, 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 forget that, all forget right. that, it's too strong, I don't want to say, but. If the if you lose this to the would Sa- be monu- this if you would lose be to the Sacramento Kings oh, goo, yeah. that means you're a five. That means you're forty four and thirty. And this season that's was who her. you yeah, okay. were. You know what? And it's who you ended up being. I'm not mad at that. And I'll say this: if that were to happen, I don't see it happening. But if that were to happen, partner, this season would be a monumental failure. And I would go wow, to chase what are you doing? when we're out there. And I, Draymond, we're going to get into that. I mean. 
I, I believe at that juncture, everything's on the table. Steph told us it was on the table last year before they went and shocked the world. Yeah, we got a great show coming up today. Uh, one of our favorites at noon, Antoine Walker. Whoa, Antoine Walker, former Celtic. Yeah. Uh, he's on at noon. Uh, if you follow Daryl the Guru Johnson on Instagram, you'll know Ooh, that yeah. he uh, he was playing a little golf. He was out in the golf range yesterday. First time he's ever picked up a and club it felt good. for the most part. And uh, felt good, you can go, I mean, What's your handle? I'll give you a uh, Daryl like Guru D -D 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 Johnson. No, no. Daryl Guru. Guru Johnson on IG. All right, Daryl yeah. Guru Johnson on IG. If you want to see his swing, yeah. um, I appreciate Spadoni Evan the support. Yeah. I, we ain't doing it now, but it just felt good being out there yeah. with other golfers. Yeah. Now I need some clubs. Shout out Schneebs, our guy. <laughs> you got to break it to him, Snarty. To Schneebs? Yeah, if he calls in, you got to tell him what we thought. He, I ain't shared it with him yet. <laughs> Are you sure it's okay? You're the only person. I thought this is really my brother. Because when you typed it, it's all I well, thought the, about. The funny thing is, is now I've also got to tell, hopefully... Our main man who met us last year at Keysar, <laughs> our tall young friend. Clearly, his name's not Schneebs, but oh, for some brother. reason, I thought it was. Oh boy, it's a Only funny you. story. Yeah. It's a it's oh. all it's an all timer yeah. involving Guru and yeah. me. That's just uh, that's just. But apparently, I'm not supposed to bend over as much as I was. Huh? Well, you again. I don't think you had clubs made for you. You're six okay, three, six four. All right. You gotta have. Shasky calls them plus two. I don't. I don't know what that means other than yeah. You need a longer club. Plus two. Sure. Okay. Um, yeah, we get into it. Uh, also, um, we're gonna talk a little bit about James Ham, who was here yesterday. Boy, he got some Warrior fans <laughs> mad <laughs> by stating a fact. All he did was state a fact that the Kings' offensive rating this year. Was the best of all time, but that's I think a fact. The, the that's heat all. came from. That's all. Looney has no action at stopping Sabonis. Mm. He he basically. That's how I took it. Evan helped me out, Spadoni. Like he was gonna eat. Sub, like the Warriors don't have any deodorant to stop Listen, Sabonis. I'll bet you. Anybody want to bet me right now? I will bet you. Sabonis averages twenty points, ten rebounds, and five assists. For you the think series. 20 and 10 and 5? Absolutely. That's not the issue. The issue is, do those numbers hurt the Warriors? Do those numbers hurt the Warriors? Because sometimes guys can get their numbers, but they don't really mm. translate to a win. I'm not saying... And would you hold that against a guy? I got to watch it. Mm. I got to watch. I absolutely have to watch the series. I cannot wait, Listen, man. You, you know, you can you can have a triple double and stink. You know that, right? No doubt. You can We've go seen five it. for seventeen. Some say from Russell the floor. Westbrook's season. You can have that? eight rebounds just fall in your lap, and then in the NBA you get an assist for everything. Stop it, Signy. I know what you're doing. Dre and Seth I preferred know what sack you're doing. only because of traveling. Nothing more. Oh, really? You know what I'm doing. Now the chef is quiet. You know what I'm doing. Five one zero. Let me play you a little something. Let me play you a little something that I can't find right now. Damn it. So we didn't find that one about four or five. E. Okay, we're going to hold that one. But I got uh, 510. Stop it, Steiny. I know what you're doing. Dre and Steph preferred sack only because of the travel. Nothing more, nothing less. So trap time to bake. bake. No, no, no. Chris A. Chris A. We got some new sound, new information. Yeah. A little bit of new information we're going to play for you. But uh, also, it's uh, a lot of people said they'd take that bet, Snotty, with some bonus. He averaged 19.8. I mean, yeah, those are still less than his averages, I think. Mm. He averages, I think, seven and a half assists a game. Why would somebody think he's not going to get five? Well, now on those kickouts, if the ball, which I think is going to feel like a the medicine worst defensive ball. team in a league. Why would you make season, that bet? The Warriors better close out. That's what we were talking about with Willard and uh, Larry yesterday. They better close out. He ain't averaging 20, 10, and 5. He's going to have to dominate in one of those categories. He's not putting that big of a... See, 925, and I'm, not, I'm being dead serious right now. Sabonis can get 20, 10, and 5 and not be a factor in this series. Sabonis can end up with 20, 10, and 5... We've seen that before. Not hurt the Warriors. Yeah, let him get his. You get 
20's not even his. If you go seven for 17, you get supposed to go seven for 17 with one or two threes, four for six for the line. You take that any day of the week. All right. Uh, let's you see. You got it? I think I do. I'm, oh, you got it. All right. I, this, is, this is specific specifically for my new friend Chris A in the 510. Take a listen to Draymond on his latest. Is this his pod or, or this is his pod? It's going to be a tough matchup. But, of course, I got the Doves taking this one. Why would I not have the Doves taking this one? But it'll be tough. I'm looking forward to it. Um, you know, you want to try to get these games done as fast as you can. I would love to get it done in four, maybe five. Very hard to do. I don't care who you playing, by the way, whether it's a great team or not so great team. Very hard to do that. But that's always ideally what you want to try to do. Uh, this is a team a young team that doesn't have much playoff experience, you want to try to pounce on that right away. You don't want to let them get hope, uh, start getting more experience and start believing. You want to start trying to take that. You want to instill doubt right away. As much as you can, instill the doubt immediately. And so that has to be our goal going in. There it is. I love Dre. No, but <laughs> let, me ask, let me ask Warrior fans That wasn't question. shade either. And, and, and somebody plays it down the middle. Really? Do you think? Let me ask you a question. Right. You think? And I'm being so you think sincere. If they play, you think if they would have ended up with the Phoenix Suns in the first round, okay. he would have said, "Like to get it done in four or five. I, I, I don't. But I feel like you're taking that out of context. He said it, and it was predicated on any team, Donnie, and he knows how hard. Nah. He, I, I didn't feel like that was a that was shade. Your ticket is at. He would not have said that if they were playing the Phoenix Suns. Wow. That's I just, all I believe. I, I disagree. And. And that's fine. And it's like, it's not really a big deal. Dr Draymond, yeah. you know, Draymond's going to talk. Confident. And what about his shirt? What about it? Don't let say? us win another. Yeah. I can't say it. I, yeah. I'm out of here. I'm just saying. Don't, <laughs> you know, sometimes when you get what you wish for, if you don't come, like, mm -hmm. you know, the Warriors lose to Phoenix, that may look different than the Warriors losing to the Sacramento Kings. But what I'm saying is, if you're telling me, and I'd, I'd love to know what Warrior fans think about this, if there's a subtle difference that I'm going to describe or it's all the same, Warriors have a, 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 a an average regular season, completely okay. average, yep. and everybody comes along, though, for six months. Not everybody, but there's a lot of fans out there that say, they'll flip a switch, they'll flip a switch, they'll flip a switch. Then the season ends, you're 44 and 38, and guess what? You got the Sacramento Kings. You don't have to travel. You've got the least experienced team in the postseason. It's the team that everybody wanted, and it's the team that your fan base thinks is going to beat in a relatively short series. Everything's fallen into place, and now you get the Kings. What I'm saying is if you lose to the Kings, I do think. Now we have a problem. All right. I'm not Because to that. me, at that point, you lose to the Kings. And here's where the Suns maybe are a little different. You know, you lose to the Suns in seven. Maybe that looks one way. You lose to the Sacramento Kings. Don't we have to look in the mirror and say, we're a 44 win team, plain and simple? We're the eighth, we're the sixth, seventh, or eighth best team in the West. Period. End of story. So now how do we move mm. forward? Yeah. I'm not mad at any of that. I am not mad at any of that. And I told you I'll be the I'm the poster boy for hey, goo, Astani, I got the pulse of the team, or I feel like I have it. And I've been wrong at every turn. But man, if you were somehow to go down in the first round to the team that you kind of we want them, Stani, it would be and there's not a person on this earth that could argue anything other than the Warriors told you and showed you all season long who they were and guys like me. Didn't want to believe it. Yeah, I just I'm, don't see. I, I, I man, I Malik are. Monk is going to have to be. All the bench players for the Kings are going to have to be blazing. Like, and I got to tell you, I drove home to the range thinking about your Don Nelson example. But there is a lot of that with Mike Brown knowing the team, and you know, if we see GP two guarding some bonus, like there is some ingredients for that. But I just. I just think this Warrior machine, when it gets stopped, it won't be by a team like the Sacramento Kings that don't have a, a, a great like 
uh, a Ja Moran or a Kevin Durant. You don't think De'Aaron Fox can have a series as good as a Ja Morant? I'm not saying he's as good as Ja Morant, but you like I think De'Aaron Fox is a guy who can. Who how's he you in better, the half court? You better, though, get, you better get him on. Okay, he can it, go by people. D- he can go by people. Again, I'm not like I don't know what's going to happen in this series, but you have to respect De'Aaron no, Fox, no doubt, not and, and his quickness, and you have to respect Sabonis and his all around game. Uh, Kings are not the best offense of all time. That, according to Han Solo Dolo, uh, nobody said they were. They just had the highest offensive no. rating. There you go. Of all time. And your boy, you mentioned De'Aaron Fox was the best offensive player in the fourth quarter. Uh, tell Steiny that the regular season is over. The Kings have yet to prove that they can beat the Dubs. There is no negative. The Kings have never been to the postseason. Again, you're right. And that's why you better not lose to them. You better not lose to the Sacramento Kings. Yeah. I just I like that everything. Means, that, that means you. That means you <laughs> slept walk the whole season. You still got what you wanted, and you still got put out the pasture. At that point, I think we would have to look at this team and Man. say, "Do we have to make some changes?" No doubt about it. Now you beat the Kings. Hey, you Lakers, maybe you lose the Lakers, maybe you beat the Lakers, then lose to the Suns, maybe you make a run. Well, all things are different. Yeah. And why am I so confident of the Warriors offensively? Like, I told you where I'm at with Klay Thompson and how, forget the analytics and the stats, it's just a gut feeling with him. Stoney, I think like he's ready, locked and loaded. Who? Uh, St- uh, Clay. And I know what we know what we're going to get from Steph. And I'm assuming, you know, positivity for every player, but Jordan Poole, we get the best version. But defensively is my biggest question mark in this series. What Warrior team are we going to get? I just, I cannot wait for Saturday. And Stein, it ain't going to take us three quarters of me. I'm going to know from, okay, they turned it up a notch. Defensively, the Warriors. But if we're looking at a 70-point, 69-point half from Sacramento, I'm like, good Lord. I almost think with Sacramento, it's not going to be about the final total. It's going to be how many they get in the fourth quarter. I mean, yeah, money time. I, mean, I know you think. I, I, I at know that. you think that like the Warriors are going to come out with their hair on fire Saturday, <laughs> and they're going to be playing from the get go, and you're going to be able to see it. They're going to be smacking the floor like the let's Duke, go, like the Duke Blue Devils. I used to love. Let that. me tell you how it really goes. The Warriors are going to take the floor on Sunday. And they're going to know it's a playoff game, and they're going to play. And then halfway through the game, they're going to be like, eh, probably be a close game, but or relatively be close. Going crazy for that. And they'll say, okay, well, you know what? We know we have another level, and we're up to at half. So now we play at another level, and we win this game by 10. And they do that. Mm-hmm. They're one at a time. But, the you know, the Warriors are still such a good team that they can – they can assess a game and then determine kind of what they have to do in in the second half. Uh, Doug's in Berkeley. What's up, Doug? How Detail. you doing, man? I'm doing I'm doing great this morning. I'm doing great this morning. How you guys doing? Hey, hey. Uh, we're doing great. Hey, listen. I I want to applaud you guys. I mean, I'm a big fan. We're all big fans, but I want to applaud you guys. For just keeping it real, keeping it real this morning, just now talking about, you know, it's not a slam dunk that you know we're going to have to play. And what if, you know, it's refreshing just to hear some perspective from from the sportscasters. Man, it's, it's just refreshing. I, I, I hope we're going to win. It would be really bad if we lost the sack. There is the Mike Brown, Don Nelson thing. They know us. So, so it's reason to worry, but we're, just make us root harder to make them play harder. But thank you guys for just keeping it real and and talking about the possibility of the alternative. Appreciate it. Thank you, Doug. Wow. Appreciate the That's what appreciate you do call. this. Man, would the Warriors have been favored against the Suns? I don't believe so. Would the I Warriors, believe that series no. price would have been, thank you, Evan, would have been Phoenix minus 140. Uh, would the Warriors have been favored against, well, they wouldn't have played the Lakers. Do Memphis. I think Memphis would be favored. That's a good one, Memphis. Yeah, Memphis would be. I don't, Evan, you think Memphis would be favored? <laughs> so, in other words, you could. Okay, so the only yeah. team the Warriors were be- going to be favored against was the Kings. I believe so. Ooh, better Stein. win. And let me tell you, you guys something game. about 
it's no shade. I ain't John Dickinson, Snotty, but I lost. I, I watched a lot of King games. I honestly believe whoever the Kings played, I, I would have gave that lesser team a shot. Like it is, just, it's not just warrior underwear for me. It's I just th- they need to show me that they can do what they did so well in the offs. Uh six five zero. Dubs own the Kings. Do they? Do they? <laughs> Do they own the Kings? They beat them three times early, or two out of three yeah. early in the year. And then Dubs own the Kings. Quick work for the Splash Brothers. And they roll through at this point. Uh, there you go. Sweet. Oh, Anyway, quick work for the Splash Brothers. I'll leave it there. Yeah. Who you want to? You, you know I got ties in sack. Who you want to talk to this week? Let me know. Nobody. We're talking Antoine Walker at 12. No St. Jean? Well, I can get Gary St. Jean. Give me one guy in sack you can get that I can Bobby can't. Jackson. B. Jackson. Well, like last week? I, well, no, we were supposed to have Bobby Jackson no, last week. Why are you snitching? And he I, canceled I, he on hey, I don't not like me. That. <laughs> he didn't cancel. Who do you want? Vivek. I'm telling you, yeah, he's not a good you, interview. I hadn't. You think so? Not <laughs> I want somebody give us something. That's a problem. Lakeup sets a standard for yapping among an, among owners, and nobody can touch. What him. about Vladi? Or he don't want to he's speak. Not there. Yeah, <laughs> but he's a king think. forever. Yeah. Well, if you know what, Vladi wouldn't be a bad guest. Weber, we can't get him. He's too big. But where is he at? He's been he quiet cares. since he got. Not, he made a he deal. Cares. You be quiet behind the mic. We'll put you in the hall. Like Bibby. Team Dime. Let me tell you something. That guy's been lifting weights. <laughs> you see him? It's too many, though. He's swole. <laughs> Look at you. What do you know about swole? Doug Christie, he's on the staff. Yeah, we can't get hey, him. Like, here's the thing. I love when assistants, ah, I'm too busy this week. Uh, You're an assistant. <laughs> you wouldn't say that to their face. Well, not to Doug Christie's face because <laughs> I don't know him. But, like, uh, Kenny Atkinson. But I was just now going I'd say there. To Kenny well, Atkin- he's busy. Kenny. He listening. He probably listening. What up, Kenny? Kenny. Um, Eddie House reached out to Christy, by the well, way. He played on the Kings. He was Who on the no Eddie House. He was on the last Who? Kings team, Eddie House, that was on the Eddie. playoffs when they lost to Seattle, who is now OKC. He was on the uh he was on the last of a lot of teams, wasn't he, Eddie? Played for a lot of teams, didn't he? Now what are you doing here? Um uh, I'm just, I don't know, dry snitching. Hit one whatever. of the biggest shots. I'm Spadoni, close your ears when they came back and beat the Lakers uh in LA years ago. Oh, there's a good one. Get white chocolate. He don't. Yeah, he, he's been out there a little bit. I see him here and there. I real Gerald Wallace. Oh, let me Bruh. guess. You loved him. No, he dated a chick that uh, a a no, woman. Yeah, he dated a woman. Yeah, she said something about him. Let's start like. that over. Yeah. Yeah. Mitch Richmond. That might not be a bad. Where player. is Mitch? You know. It's surprising, even though they don't play in the NBA, they have lives <laughs> and families, I just, I understand and they do that. things. Yeah, and they do things. All right, eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven zero is the number. Matt Barnes. That'd this be a is a uh, he played I, on both teams. Does anybody? I want to know who's with me. Is this a? If you're a Warrior fan, are you be careful what you wish for? I don't take anything for granted, right. or. I can't believe we got this. <laughs> I, 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 let me ask you. It is are, no are, shame. You in, are you in this camp? I can't believe we got the Kings. It may as well be a bye in the first round. It feels like. If I'm telling you 4 oh, 1, I feel, fans. I'm being real. I'm, that's how I feel, Stoney. Damn it. And Phoenix, I'd be like, oh my God. KD, Booker, Stoney, I'd be like, Chris Paul. Now I'm just like, what time did play? It's sad. But you, you're hearing it, though, for you to bring it up. It ain't just me. Uh, catering to you, though. <laughs> so please. No, it, it feels like Warrior fans. Okay, that, what's your confidence level, Warrior fans, on a scale of 1 to 10? Because it does seem like... <laughs> Thank you, Spadone. I mean, we'll be I back to talk right. about it on the other side.
Watch yourself and know who you're talking about. Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7. Let so me tell you something, Bay Area. A lot of you know me as, a, as an objective observer of sports. And you know me. I don't tolerate disrespect about the Golden State Warriors. And I'm consistent, so I'm not going to tolerate disrespect of the Sacramento Kings. So we got we to gotta respect the Sacramento Kings. They're the three seed. They may, you know, they may go down in four or five games, according to a lot of Warrior fans. But remember when you were those little tykes? Wow, look at you. Remember when you made your first playoff appearance? Be nice, Warrior the Documentary fans. is coming someday for We Believe. I believe. You know how there's two documentaries on Fire Festival? Dude, what do you know about that? Uh, what my, do you mean? I know everything. I'm like, all right, but go ahead. There's two. <laughs> there's going to be four. I mean... Nah, I'm going to come off as sounding arrogant, and, I, and I don't like to do that. There can't be a, we believe, Doc, unless I'm in it. I'm sorry. I mean, you got to get everybody. You got to get I everybody. Come? I mean, it, <laughs> I, was, I was there every day of that se- season. They just, Can I come with you? Come with where? To your next doctor appointment. <laughs> <laughs> like, who else is... Who else is <laughs> like, who says you can't have one See, without that's me? that's why. But I that's believe that's the love. real Steiny, and it's okay. No, it's not. Because you just did some BS stuff I'm about to tell the people. Oh. We were supposed to, Evan, yourself, and I, Spadoni got the babies, going to the Giants game tonight. Talk to him. Lucas comes in, says you're going, and Steiny did a, it's partial Bobby Brady, Gary Coleman, you know, Lucas, I feel guilty going in with the credentials That's right. and not really working rather than just tell right. them, hey, I'm getting a haircut, I'm out. I couldn't believe you just did your act the way you did. The Oscar goes to Matthew Steinmetz. That was wonderful. But I just want to let you know, Lucas bought it. I didn't purchase it. Is there a, okay, you got, you got your licks in. I just threw up in my mouth. Congrat- congratulations. You got your licks in, and I let you. I laid out for you. I laid out for you. Any chance you can do the same for me right now? I will. Go ahead and eat more of those peanuts. Just finish those peanut, right. peanuts in the next two minutes. I hate to say what I'm eating, but all right, I can. So, Evan says you guys want to go to the Giants game against the Dodgers on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Yes, definitely. Um, I was going to get a haircut at three. and I'm still, But it's in Oakland, but I was like, oh, I go to three and get four. I still can get back. All right. Evan, sa- I said, Evan goes, I got the credentials for tonight. Let's go! Okay. I'm not, I feel uneasy about using a credential when I don't really feel like I'm working media. Okay? I'm not going to sit in the press box. What am I oh, going to do? Oh, okay, Probably well. walk around a little. I'd like to have a couple beers. Yeah. I will not well, have be a couple real beers then. Okay. if I've got a media. No. 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 I'm just, I, I just don't. Now, here's the difference. Print journalism. I mean, you go to a Giants game, are you working or not? Well, are you writing a story oh, or we, not? Usually. Oh, oh. Well, okay. But, for guys, eyes, but though. a guy like me yeah. now, it's a radio eyes, guy. All us. In theory, me just Going to the ballpark could be considered work because I will share those experiences on the air. That is, I'm still a little uncomfortable. Wow, with Stan, it. you're better than I because I'm all. We're always so I working. Know you asked Bob Myers for tickets and Steph Curry for an Let autograph me tell you something and a picture. About Bob and I that came up organically. There was no Bob hello, Bob. Me. How you doing, Bob and I? That's Bob and me. It's Bob. now Spadoni, Evan. I got this one. James you Logan, baby. You want to bet? It's I. It's, it's Bob not and me. It's not me. My mother would slap me. Daryl? It's Daryl and I. No. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Take you it said, back, Stan. I got something I? with Bob and I. Rick James has a song called You and that, I. It can be correct. You and I is it correct. you and me. Take you out of it. Repeat the sentence, please. Bob and I have a great relationship. And the conversation that was, was not the way you said it. That's a, that's correct, the way I you said it. I don't see it, Bob. Yeah, yeah I said the, con- the ticket that's thing correct. came up organically. I think you used it as a, in the passive, though. No. You said, 
Is this like you Alfred? Said, is this me, your Alfred you said, from yesterday? No, you said, uh, let me tell you something about Bob and I. You would say Bob and me. Let me tell you something about Bob and me because you take you out and you say, let me tell you yeah. something about me. You wouldn't say I'm trying me, to think where I started at. I. But anyway, I didn't cut whatever. Uh, can I get some tickets? We were chopping it up like we do. State of the Union. Came up. But anyway. Yeah, where I, were we? I love going to the games and it's your eyes. Special. Remember how you said guru? I, I love you for this. Words are my life. I, golf is my life. But listen, I'm just telling you, Stani, you're always working. So you, you come here and you tell us what you saw and where you saw it at and how you felt. You know what I mean? So don't feel guilty, but you want a drink. That's what it is. Hey. It, well, no. like Jesus. <laughs> a, You don't like not being able to grab one. I get it at the ballpark. drinking. That's all. I get it. Like that's 97% of it. That you got to go dry. Because <laughs> you got to be dry in the... Uh, First of all, I could just put the media pass away and go That's what I'm, walk on the concourse. I kind of w- winked at you like, ah, but you know what? But I'll know. So you're the kid on the commercial. Referee, yes. no. No. I try to be... It f- went out on me. Dude. And, and that's where we're at in the society right now. That's where we're at. It went being, out on being me. Being forthright is a negative. It says it all about our society right now. Oh. Hey, try to get over. <laughs> because if you get over, Everybody. then even getting over is not wrong. If you can get over, wow, the ends justify That's the means. What I'm it's hearing. All wrong with our society. <laughs> is that you can't go to a baseball game without drinking a beer. That, yeah, that's all. Nothing bad. You see, you kept it real. Nothing wrong. Yep. Now I can. Just looking at that chalk. Manicured grass. <laughs> <laughs> the uniforms. You know what, just actually, to... there's a new reason. I don't want to go with you guys tonight. <laughs> but the way you kind of lied to Lucas, I felt sorry for the kid. I'm going to go in there and break. Ty Jerome. He's like, all the work I did. What did he do? He made a call. I lied to him. He goes, dude, you're not going. I was like, no, I'm going. So the Kings, Warriors. God, there's like four areas I want to go here. But I also have to know, I can only bring one of them up right now so we stay on that topic All right. for a while. So. And I also don't want to play 20 years in the NBA. I want to play 15 years in the NBA. So I think, you know, it's very realistic that in four more years, I'll still be contributing at a high level. Um, I'll still be able to give to a team and, and live up to the contracts that I'll be on. And so I do want to be here as far as the probability goes i can't necessarily give you that because it's not up to me if it's totally up to me i can 100 percent tell you i will finish my career here but that's not something that's totally up to me you know and i do understand you, you remember when i told you i said uh when i told you guys i said guys don't know how to play another one that's even more baffling to me is guys don't understand the business of basketball I actually understand the business of basketball, and and so I do understand why that's not totally my decision. Wow. Well, I'll tell you what, Stani, he's no dummy by any stretch. We've talked about that. Said everything uh, the right way. But he thinks highly of himself, and he should. He knows his own worth in his mind, and Draymond is not taking a hometown discount. And I don't think they would offer him one. But when you look at the Warriors situation with their salary and, and tax bill next year, Stanley, it's, it's like $500 million. So it's almost one of those, the Warriors could want Dre. They just can't afford him. And that's what I hear from him. But I'm going to tell you what. You, Evan and Spadoni, if somehow the Warriors run this thing back and go Drake, I could see somehow Dre, because it would be more him taking what I said he wouldn't, a hometown discount and finishing his career with Steph and the Golden State Warriors. See, I don't see him taking a discount. In fact, that's what I heard him say he's not going to do because he knows the business of basketball. Here's the the thing that I heard. I I think he said a lot of accurate things. The one thing I, I... If I were an owner, I could not take his word for it that four years from now... I still feel like I'll be playing at a high level and contributing. That's too far down okay. the line for me. So you wouldn't give him four years? Just where you think That's he'd too be much in four? For me. All right, got you. That's just too much for me. 888-957-9570 is the number. 
Draymond Green has an opt-out. He can opt in for 27 mil next year. He can opt out and become a free agent. At that point, he can, re- he, can, he can sign an extension with the Warriors, rip that bad boy up, or he can go somewhere else. What are you hearing him say here, Warrior fans? Encouraged, discouraged, or just given a response by the book? Let's listen to it one more time. I would love to finish my career here. That's been my goal since maybe signing this current contract that I'm on. It's like it looked like a more realistic thing of me finishing here. And and I also don't want to play 20 years in the NBA. I want to play 15 years in the NBA. So I think, you know, it's very realistic that in four more years, I'll still be contributing at a high level. Um, I'll still be able to give to a team and, and live up to the contracts that I'll be on. And so I do want to be here. As far as the probability goes, I can't necessarily give you that because it's not up to me. If it's totally up to me, I can 100% tell you I will finish my career here. But that's not something that's totally up to me. You know, and I do understand. You, you remember when I told you, I said, uh, I told you guys, I said, guys don't know how to play. Another one that's even more baffling to me is guys don't understand the business of basketball. I actually understand the business of basketball, and and so I do understand why that's not totally my decision. That's one of those things where I love that answer. You know how Draymond Green, you say, hey, what do you think of Draymond Green? I'm like, I like him. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes he goes overboard. Yeah. I don't like what he did that, that, and that, but there's the this, this, and this I do like. It's a great answer. It's a great answer. From a smart individual who knows everything about what's popping. Let me tell you the biggest thing with Draymond Green that I heard. And that's going to mean we're never going to utter hometown discount again. Wow. No more. He said it's a business. And the bottom line is this. If the Warriors don't offer him the most money, however it comes down, he's going somewhere else. Wow, He's going to go somewhere where they give him more money. And the lure of staying here will get dwarfed. I really Could believe you imagine that. Imagine where, and I know it's the week of the playoffs, and I don't want to talk about his future and him not being a warrior. I just can't. And that's why I keep saying, Stani, I really believe where they go in regard to this run, this playoff run, if they can, if they get it done, another ring, how hard would that be? It's already going to be hard just to think about him leaving. Okay, let's let's play that out. I, Warriors win it. Draymond is is good, All right? Not not great, but he's good. He's good. He's valuable, yeah. like he always is. Okay, he says to the Warriors, you know, I'm going to opt out unless you extend me. Okay, and it's twenty seven five, right? Well, that's what he would walk away okay. from. Gotcha. Okay, so he would probably say he would have to. Know. I want to start at thirty. Yeah, I want to. I want three more years at. 90. Yeah. Give me 30 mil a year. Does that get it done? You think I'm playing? I think that gets it done from Golden State. Okay, it might. You think Joe Lakeham is looking at that? Now, what the Warriors go, I'll tell you what, we'll give you three for 60, and the Lakers say three for 69. He's going to the Lakers. Whether they win a title or not, I think. Wow. Again, this is just what I think. What'd you hear in Draymond's response? 888-957-9570. Ray's in Hunter's point. Hey, Ray, what's going on, man? Hey, guys. How you guys doing? All right. Doing well. Good, good. Uh, my response is very simple. What Draymond Green has to realize is that systems make players. And the system that he's in, he's perfect for the system. Mm. Now, I would go to say that if he left Golden State, I would give him one year, and he'll be out of the NBA or be sitting on somebody's bench. Because what he does would not be effective for no other team. And now think about it. You think about players that have left teams to go somewhere else to play, and they just disappeared out of the NBA. So I would say the system that Golden State is in is perfect for Draymond Green and he, uh, if I was him, you know, I would do all I can to stay right there at Golden State. Last thing, yeah. uh, Guru. Hey, hey. Man, them waves, them waves, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I get a cut uh, Thursday. I'll be ready for you Thursday. 
Ray, let's All right. Uh, it was out. Ray and I were talking. <laughs> Go ahead, Snapchat. It's a sports talk radio <laughs> show, Ray. <laughs> That's the one that said, good night. <laughs> uh, guru, man, love them waves, man. Good Shoot, night. I did. Is Ray still nice. there? You got to borrow that Evan on a, play, on a call. Is, uh, Ray, are you still there? Hey, let me let me let me push back just a hair. You don't think Draymond could be pretty good on a team, right? On a content, like I kind of agree with you. If Draymond finds himself in Charlotte, he's oh. he's going to disappear. Oh. <laughs> what is, what's that? Hey, hey Lucas, <laughs> get out of here, I Lucas! I was like, Lucas, take a walk. Yeah, I was like, how did you catch him and keep? I thought he left. Yeah, Lucas just <laughs> laughed at a phone ringing. I thought it was yes, funny. No, listen, I, th- I didn't know how you knew we still had him. I, I thought he was gone. You don't even. I ha- said Snotty got him. Wow, I think Dr- dude. I don't think Draymond falls off the NBA map if he goes to a. Contender. And I was waiting for you to jump in, didn't well, you? And I, I like to said, let people finish. That, that's <clears> an occasional <throat> fight. But I'm gonna say this. You and I have talked to nauseam about he can go to the Lakers. So I did, and no, Draymond got, would they totally pay do. him. Teams are going to okay, no him. doubt. But Milwaukee, Boston, oh, the line would be the all contenders. Milwaukee would tell him to hit the pike. They got a better Draymond Green. Bobby Portis, baby. I like him, man. I, I really do. It started in the pandemic. Remember, I mean, he was I, talking about pay why does me. It bother me, pay me. Guru like the same guys as I like. The, the same guys that I really like. Like we I got like into Tim, it about Logan. I Webb. liked him in Arkansas. And I got to tell you about Evan. Oh, uh, well, I'll wait for Willard with the ah! Logan Webb. Well, you'll forget. Say it now, and you can repeat back. I'll remind him. Well, I just always thought Logan Webb was a two or a three, and I'm not judging him on these three games that you know nothing to write home about, Stani. But I, but it's Evan, a, Evan brought this to my attention. Right. He said, "Goo." Yeah, you're right. If he was on a good team, he'd probably be a two or three. Yeah, you can't fault him for the Giants not having much in yeah. the rotation. Right, he's their one. Okay, but I, I know you. Know, I used to pitch, so I'm talking about stuff. I okay. never thought his stuff was that nasty okay. as a one. But Evan, okay. I, I got to give the What's young the kid argument credit. About he's a two or three, and I asked Shasky. Okay. I said Shasky without him knowing the sure, backdrop. Yeah. Uh, two or three, I gave him the dap. Like I know what I'm. I, I used to throw Stiney. But now I golf. Right. He, uh, Logan Webb is like Jordan Poole. If he's the best pitcher just, on your team, you're not going to be very good. Just like if Jordan Poole's the best player on your team, you're not going to be very good. Now, I, I, you here, want Jordan I'm, Poole to be your third or fourth starter. But when they There's won really 107, no I'm no shooting analogy. my own self There's in the no foot. There's no analogy to go at here. Yeah. No, it's not. It's a no. fact. He no. was their best pitcher when they won 107. Uh, I beg to differ. Who was Gosman more, on the phone? Who got the ball when the do, game I don't five? Care who got the ball? Gosman was like seventeen and five. Yeah, and he was one and five the last half of yeah. the season. Remember, he was who was their best pitcher bit. that year? Logan Webb. Yeah, no, no, it's not. Honestly, no. it was Logan Webb. We'll say that for Webb. Why did Logan Gosman Webb? get six hundred million dollars <laughs> from <laughs> Toronto? <laughs> they couldn't fit him in because the Giants wouldn't pay him. That's what they do. This ain't Fresno. Logan Webb's more like a, like a Bradley Beal kind of, you know, he's better than Jordan. No, now, Evan, I'm going to come back and argue again. That's a little Why don't high. you guys argue once? Who? We already did. Oh, we, we have. <laughs> I'm thinking, of, yeah, that's my little brother. I mean, if Draymond Green were on the Dallas Mavericks, they'd probably make the playoffs, right? I, you know what? That's, that's lo- I'm going to say yes. He's exactly what they don't have. A guy that can play D, Stiney. But he's exactly what they can't use because they don't have anybody who can play off the ball. So they couldn't, they could not maximize his playmaking yeah. with those two guys. Let's go to Steve in San Francisco. What's up, Steve? How you doing, man? Hey, doing great, guys. Thanks for the show. Oh, yeah. oh, I think the other thing about Draymond is, um, you know, he already said he wants four years. Golden State's not going to give him that. But more than that, he also wants to spread his market nationwide because he's got an eye on media after he retires, and he needs to spread out his market and make himself a national personality. Yeah, I wonder. I... Over winning, though? Well, yes. Yes. Yes, at this point well, he's already career. got the job. You know. Well, that's what I'm. That's my point. Is does Draymond really have to expose himself no, anymore? He's, he's got to get the TNT yeah, no job, doubt. and then if, from there he can take that yeah. wherever he wants. 
Well, those guys just re-upped their cut. Well, he said he wanted to play four more, Stoney. Man. So I'm what, mad at him. What he would be looking at is, here's how his, an extension would look with the Warriors. Because he, now he's already said four years, not three. So you would rip up next year's. All right, you rip that up, he becomes a free agent, and you give him four more years. Wow. Could you get him for four for 100? That's it. Wow. And the, the, would Joe Lacob want him for 400? That's a great question. I mean, it really is. I mean, I, I, think, I think that could get put, it done. Put yourself in Joe Lacob's spot, Warrior fans. And you just hear Draymond say, um, uh, I don't want to play 20 years. I want to play 15 years. I think I can play four more years as a contributor at a high level. That sounds to me like a starter or, or sixth man. That does not sound like Udonis Haslam. But four is a commitment, so I think that's why. Well, it's only 25, but what if he got 30 for only two? You know what I mean? Like, that four would be a big deal, Stani. Like, I think that would get it done. Well, and that's where other teams can come in and say, what if the Warriors say, we'll give you three, not four, and then another team comes in and says, we'll give you four. We'll absolutely give you four. Then is he gone? Mm. I just can't imagine the Warriors without him. But the one thing I did hear from that Draymond sound is <laughs> hometown discount. Hit the pike with a hometown discount. He won his hands. One of the uh, things that bothers <laughs> me about this league is young players don't understand the that, business. All right, all right, all right, I hear you knocking now. Mm -hmm. But he also said early on this season, Stani, you tell me if this goes next to it, the handwriting's on the wall. Right. That was heavy. Yeah, does that make it sound like he's... Uh, taking a hometown discount? No. Yeah. But what about my caveat? What if they win it? I don't think that changes Emotion, anything. None of the, not, the, not, as, not as money Or would considered. it make it easier to... Di no, but then they would be back-to-back, -back and you would leave That's when trying would to go leave. for a three-peat? <laughs> yes. he would. Draymond Green, if they win it... Here's what I think. If the Warriors win a title this year, he's leaving if he gets more money somewhere else. Mm. I mean... I, 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 I got news for you, Goo. No, money what talks. What fantasy land are you listening, li living in? You would do the same thing. Like this, oh, we could get three. No, we could get paid. <laughs> oh, man. Get but you know that would be mental warfare in his mind of, I'm going to go get this bread, but I don't want to because I want to defend the... Uh, Stani, the last team to do a three-peat. You already know who it is. Kevin but Gosman... Was fourteen and six <laughs> when the Giants won a hundred and six right. or fell seven off games. The whole second half he of was the fourteen and six with a two point eight one ERA. Gotcha. Logan Webb was eleven and three with a three point oh three ERA. But at the second who half, had, of the, I don't care about the second half. We're talking about a whole who year. Who got the ball in game five? I don't care. That's everything. Who though. got him to 107 wins? Oh, you are just special. Thank you. I know you're I am. cooking the books now. I'm not cooking any books? Gosman was their best pitcher for the the season. Who that had year. the better? Who who ended up playing? Pit oh, now now the last quarter matters. Well, that's kind of what it, it matters. Except if it's Steph Curry missing clutch shots, Doesn't but if Logan much. Webb pitches great the last month of the season, that's all that matters. Who's the Kevin Gosman and Logan Webb of this Warriors team? Who had the best overall year versus who has played the best down the stretch? Oh, I would say Curry's Gosman. Because he's Curry's been good all year long. But he's missed like 25 Clay games. Clay Thompson's been, well, but everybody has. Kevon Looney. Mm, Looney Please. and Poole. Looney and Looney Both and Poole's 82 years. games. That's great. And their ERAs are over four. Oh, wow. There's no doubt about that. Come on. They're good. All right. 888-957-9570. Let's, uh, let's get it going on 95.7 The Game.
Man, them waves, them waves, man. <laughs> now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. Yeah, we get it. Uh, s s we get s it. You, speaking of haircut, you get them, where you going? Cross street. You I, told me a sister's cutting I you. I felt... Oh, 
Let's table it. I jinxed it. No, I. The boss back no. to Wiggins. It's just that I'm, shocked me. A black lady's cutting your hair. A sister. Th- this time, I like. I. Did you ever? Oh, you gonna come in with a fa- a taper? No. Snidey. <laughs> I usually, I usually go to Brogan and Sons down the street. Remember, you went on Veterans Day, and, and they were closed. P ones. Oh. So I, I missed you. Up. I ha- I I'm in a bind today. Yeah. How can how can I? Uh, you just messed it up, it, man. I put my foot in my mouth. I'll make it up to you. If Priscilla's out there, I I'm, I'm sorry. I'll be back next time. I cannot. They call believe, that in the uh, community. You you're chair hopping. That. That's what you're doing. Damn it! When you come back to your barber and you, you try to act like you went to another one, and he knows. <laughs> Did you believe I felt like I'm dead serious? Yesterday we were talking about it, and you said, "What's the name of them down the street?" And I I was like, "Let's just, you know." You gotta give me a signal, Tommy gotta, Lasorda, some sign. You just gotta not get personal. So. Listen, Listen, this is our. Bro, this is what bro, we do. Brogan and Sons down the street is is wonderful. Willard goes there. Wonderful. They've given me Sal. Uh, Gabe Kapler goes there. Apparently, serious to get a shave. Yes. And so um, I'll be back. Infinite Can't outcomes. You did that. Oh, Are you mad? 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 Or no, a little? I feel yeah. bad. But you if, didn't tell. If me. They were. If they're listening, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not coming for you. Well, I could, I'll, yeah. I, you want to go? They wouldn't know what to do. Hey, Schneebs is on the phone. Is he? You playing? Well, it says Schneebs. <laughs> Let's see if it's him. Schneebs, what's going on, man? Hey, how's it going, gents? Is, going it, well. <laughs> is this Schneebs from yesterday, the hey. golf instructor? Okay, first of all, we got to get some things straight oh. here. Because the initial offer here, Steiny, was to give you some clubs and then to take them to the range and or golf outing. Somehow that turned into me giving major golf instructions, oh. which I was not prepared for. And so there's another thing here, too. Somebody on Instagram said that my golf swing was terrible and that my – Don't listen. Was tight. And both, yeah. of those things, both of those things are 100% accurate. Oh. So before we get started, All right, I didn't do before that. Schneebs, right, you, you got a harder goal before you go, Stani. Right. Don't listen to those jackals. What you did yesterday was incredible. Oh, you got me in the game. <laughs> Schneebs, can I tell you? All right, you have a good one, dude. Oh, hey, no, Schneebs, hold on. No, 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 no. Schneebs, tell me, tell me, tell me. Yeah. Here you go. This is, this is, uh, this is a true story. And Goo has told yeah. me to, to, yeah. to, give, I w- it, I would tell to give it to you straight. Yeah. Uh, we, I love him. He's my so new guy. last year for game six of the NBA Finals. We went to Keysar Pub. We were at Keysar Pub. Okay, and we met a gentleman who was about 6'3 yeah, right. and about 180 pounds. He was a young kid. When I say that, he was in his young 20s. And he was talking about golf that, that, that night with Goo and yeah. said he was going to give him lessons. Well, then a couple weeks later, <laughs> you, you came along <laughs> I sneeze. I as love Schneebs. You. Yeah, right. And Guru and I are like, oh, Schneebs from the Keysar <laughs> hey, Club. He's right. going to give you lessons. So when I pulled up yesterday, t- <laughs> so we thought Schneebs was this six three guy. He was about one hundred and ninety pounds. <laughs> My boy had me the though. whole time, and I'm like, "Well, Schneebs, because that night Schneebs like, oh, I'm a four. I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good." So anyway, then Schneebs throws the Instagram thing up, and I'm like, that's not Schneebs. Right. That's and not I didn't the tell Schneebs him, I know. But, yeah, now he's my bestie. But yeah, Schneebs, <laughs> you looked a little different yesterday because we thought you were somebody else, but we had been drinking. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, I love you. That's great. I got your text. I'll let you know about this weekend. You put me in the game. But the Jackals don't even listen to any of that. And you were mashing those nah, balls. Schneebs, you're a good guy, yeah. man. No Thanks doubt about it. Hooking goo Get me some black balls, too. The wh- What do you call them? Black balls. Yeah. Range balls? Uh, I shouldn't know. But in Here's the back the- of my truck, I got clubs. Right, right. Get them out of there. No. Get them out of your trunk. But they're like my hoop shoes. They go with me everywhere just in case. Oh, tell me the etiquette. I don't. Why don't you're gonna you get? Him, you're gonna get your window broken. Oh, okay. In well, something. gotcha. Yeah. Kidding? All right. Okay. Somebody sees golf clubs. Good set. A few thousand. Night Just night. One wow. little. What do they call it? The plug. Sneeves took care of me and gave me some clubs. Sneeves is a man. But Did now I need bip? plus two though, right? Bip. 
Yeah, yeah I need plus two. Shasky was saying plus two a little longer. That's all right. All right. Yeah, um, that's fine. Yeah. There's one other thing. Now we need to... The, who, who, now there's a second part of this story where who, we feel terrible. I can terrible. picture him, no. I can picture him, too. Dude, that was incredible. Who's the young guy? Sneezes. Who is it? Keysar. Like 25 say, years old? I want to say 32, th- between 25 yeah, and 32. I think you're right. He was a little older. It's 90. I had, tro- like, I remember he, he like, I'm a ge- great guy. It was a hazy night. <laughs> I think I got a ride home. Yeah, it's not even. You, oh, you I think that Uber person home. exists? Remember, that's the night I parked <laughs> at the police station. You're right. Not parked Dead right serious. next to you. You think this person exists or <laughs> could we have just been on one? No, this person, I know what he looks like. I Stan. had his business card up, and, up but until But I thought that was few months ago. But it felt good being out there. The breeze, other golfers. Yeah, it is fun. Yeah, it's fun. I'm thinking about changing the IG to Guru the Golfer. Too soon. Game by game guru. That's who you won't let that go. No, that's but that's what you do. That is Number right on the four. Money. What does Tim Kawakami do for every game? Marcus Thompson, Slater. They write articles their own said game. It ain't about right. what they we know what it is. No, but their but, conviction they hold on to their convictions longer than uh, yeah, they no actually, proof of that. They actually have convictions. You react to new information, pal. Yeah, they, yep. Oh. Oh. ESPN so. 95 7 the game breaking news. Uh oh, what we got? You know what? That was awkward. Who cares? Uh, no, 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 not about the news. Oh, okay. This is one where 888 957 9570. Is this big enough for breaking news? ESPN sources Houston has received permission to interview Golden State assistant coach Kenny Atkinson for the franchise's head coach. Atkinson helped rebuild the Nets. And accepted the Charlotte job before sticking it to Michael Jordan and turning it down. By the way, that uh, deserved the sound. Who, who's this from? Because it, it, it's written wrong. Woj, I love Woj. The, the Warriors you... have no associate coaches. They never have. Raymond Ritter, remember he yeah. spelled that out for us two weeks ago. <laughs> that man, because yeah, yeah, we were talking about Mike Brown, wasn't yeah. he associate head coach with the Warriors? And Raymond said, "We have never had an associate. They are always." Assistance. I almost want to flunkies, if you will. Text back to Woj. They yeah. have no. Wow. Don't do no, it. I won't. Yeah, I know Woj. But Atkinson is uh when you meet him. Back when he was covering the Knicks and the Nets, and I was traveling. Well, you were with the team. I was working for a newspaper. Oh, okay. Let's go to GW in Livermore. What's up, G Dub? Hey, how are you guys? Doing well. Hey. A uh, long time listener, second time caller. Uh, I remember that first I, time, G Dub. I was from South Toledo. Uh, times change. Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, geographically, I changed too. But um, hey, man, I just want to say thank you again for everything you guys do. You make my days go by so much nicer. And cool. um, I was going to talk about Draymond Green. I'll be real quick. I think you should get a two year contract with the player option for third. So that's done with. But the real thing. I have a son with autism, and uh, and I I heard that he did that. I was listening to you guys, yeah, actually, and um, he did that California Academy of Sciences speech, yes. talking about like uh, their superpowers. Yep, it's a real thing, and uh, yeah, <clears throat> not getting emotional. <clears throat> I just want to say that uh, I really appreciate you guys making a moment in your in your uh, in your in your in your list where you just talked about it. Absolutely. Man, thanks for you know, sharing. Yeah. yeah, that's a real thing. Uh, also, I will say this. Um, I do golf, too. So uh, so if you guys need any lessons, uh, I'm, I'm not good. Uh, I'm not bad. But I can tell them, uh, I can fix other people's stuff. So uh, uh, off the air, if you guys want to... Uh, when I want to come in contact with me, um, I, I can give you some frame chips. Right. I, my main thing is uh, you, you, go, you go down, you, you hit the ball down to go up, and then you swing easy to go far, and that's pretty much that's pretty much golf. No, wow, man! Thank He's you, GW. Man. No Appreciate doubt, it, man. G-Dub. Um, wow. You know what? It's, it's a few things. Swinging down to go up. He's right because. The, the blades like that, so, oh, gotcha. and then it goes up. Um, no, let me tell you what GW is talking about uh, with Draymond Green. It was last week, uh, I think, for their last home game. Uh, it was Autism Awareness Night, and Draymond was a big part of it. But Man. the night before, uh, there was an event at the California Academy of Science where uh, there were obviously a lot of uh, parents, 
of kids with autism and a lot of uh, people with autism. And Draymond gave a speech. And part of the speech was he said that, uh, that autism is your superpower. And it's what makes you different. And it's what makes you special. And it would make you know it's what it, it's, it's wow. what makes you who you are, and apparently it was uh, very emotional. And I just we we brought that up last week, so thank you, uh, G Dub. No, that's for wild, man. That. And that, and that's what I mean about Draymond Green, like heart of gold. In a man. way, that didn't get a lot of run. You know what no, I mean? Didn't. And he didn't do it to get run. But yeah, thank you, caller, yeah. and you bringing that up, Snotty. That was incredible, and I saw it after the game. And by the time I got here, totally forgot about it. But shout out to Dre. That's a big deal. And I like that. It's just superpowers, Donnie. Let's go to Austin in San Jose. Our guy. What's up, eh? Hey, fellas. How, how do we follow that call, man? What a, what a great man. call that was. Yeah, it was nice. Hey, Very hey. nice. Listen, listen, guys. I don't want to take this negative, but I want to go in a little bit of a different direction. First of all, Dre, uh, that's my guy. You pay him. To me, it's not even a question. Um they don't win without him. I don't think they can do it without him going forward. And I always say, if you're, gonna, if you're not going to have Dre, please tell me who you're bringing in. How much are you giving them, Austin? How much are you giving them? Okay, so here's where it gets interesting. I think they can do – I think Steiny started down the road uh, of you start with three, um, you know, three years. If somebody wants to come in and try to give him a fourth year, I think that's what he'd be looking for. i say 30 over three to start. Mm. Um, see where that gets you. Uh I think he's going to get many offers, believe it or not. I disagree with people to say he's not going to get off. He will get offers. I think he knows that. I think he set it up real well. Dre is really smart. He said, hey, I want to be here. So that's what fans want to hear. Dre is, Dre is a smart guy. He's a politician. He's smooth. He knows how to play the media. He's letting the fans the good bear fans know, hey, I don't want to leave, but the business of the, of the team would say I, I, I may have to. Last thing, guys, let me throw a little bit of – Fun into the equation. Take your time. Would you guys, and I would, let's talk about Clay Thompson for a minute. Yeah, I know we're going into the playoffs. Nobody wants to go there. But for me, I would keep Dre. And if I had to move Clay, I would do it. And here's the last question on that. Would you give up Poole to get Kyrie Irving if you could do it? That's all I got, guys. Thanks. Well, you already know my answer. Wow. wow. Yeah, that, that was heavy. But I, I love you, I'm Jordan. I'm more interested Poole. in the first one. Yeah, well, I'll take the last one first, and then you go, Snotty, with Clay. But I would take, of course, Kyrie right. Irving for Poole. That'd be hard not to, yeah. to tell you the truth. Come on now, that would be incredible. But the first part, Clay, I mean, to get Clay to is get, back. I know to get 36 good games out of Kyrie Irving. When I would get two, Jordan Poole just played 82 games. No doubt about it. 80. No doubt about two. it. Oh, what about Clay? Move Clay. I, he he ready to move off Clay? limits, dude. He's back. I'm telling you, man. Uh, now, who hit that? That was to affirm your no. Sorry about that. Oh, okay. I love you, Evan. This, you know, remember, yeah, they got him. You better be careful. Clay, Clay's harder to talk. Clay's become harder to talk about than Steph. The 41% from three this year, after starting off with that Barkley slander, telling the world he was in a dark place, and then parlaying that into the two best month of his career, and he As ends a shooter. up. With the Shooting. most threes in the league made and attempted. Yeah. We've got Antoine Walker at 12. Oh. Um, yeah, Clay took 140 more threes than he ever has uh, in any past year this year. Well, okay. What was the percentage when it was all said and done? I think like 41. People, players Among would give the, their right uh, arm to be players, there. players, not Clay. It's low for Clay. But... You, but it's almost to his career high. Not really. It's not no. 31%. So nobody no. could say. I think a lot of people are still under the umbrella of Clay is not what he was. He's okay. not. But if you're telling me he's 41% after right. umpteen three-point three attempts and he leads the league in the most made, I'll take that all day. I, I don't have – I'm not going to disagree with you. If you want to compare Clay Thompson to Clay Thompson – now that he's, okay. he's, he's right. doing great. If you want to compare Clay Thompson, or I'm sorry, if you want to compare Clay Thompson to other players, he's fine. Right. If you want to compare Clay Thompson to Clay Thompson, he's declined. He's declined. But not fallen off. Because let's put the right on the table. That's what we thought we were talking yeah, about or put watching. words in anybody's mouth. When people I were never calling said he this. Was I didn't say listen, you. People were calling the show, talking so about easy. bringing them off the let bench. Me, let me tell you how guys age. All right? They don't fall off a cliff. They just get more inconsistent. 
They have fewer great games. Mm. They lose a step on defense. It doesn't all come crumbling down. So Just why would Clay be gone? I didn't say I, that no, was not okay. me. That all was right. Austin. Right. So Clay, before the injury, was essentially a 40, 43.5% three point shooter. Since the injury, he's 40. So he's dropped okay. three or four. He's right. dropped three or four I points. Got, okay, in terms of his three yeah. point shooting, I mean that's that's right. not me hating. No, I I said okay. That's a guy who used to shoot. You know, 41, 40, 41, 7, 43, 9, 42, 5. Actually, that's not right. He was lower than that. So he's dropped about two points, two or three points, right. not three or four. Let me throw this at somebody. People may get really mad at me for this one. So I'm looking at Clay's numbers, and you know they're pretty solid. Yeah. And then I'm thinking to myself, man, he said he had some unbelievable games. That he did. So I was like, gosh, let me let me look at some of his unbelievable games. Well, he had four unbelievable three point shooting games. Gotcha. He was ten for thirteen against the Rockets. Damn. He was ten for twenty one against the Hawks. He was 12 for 16 against OKC. Then they played the Rockets again. He was 12 for 17. He had four games against those opponents All right. where he was 44 for 67 from three. That Wow. If you take away those four games, he ends up shooting 38.5%. Four games were so good that they meant uh, two percentage points. Now, as you're going to say, where you end up is where you end up. Right. But the bottom line is, Clay has shot the ball, no matter how you look at it, he shot the ball more inconsistently this year than he ever has. Than he ever has. Because, it, let's say you're a 40% shooter, and you have three games. I mean, ideally, if you're a 40% shooter, what do you want to do? Four for 10, four for 10, four for 10. That's a 40% shooter. Clay was a 40% shooter, but he was two for 10, two for 10, eight for 10. So, lack so of there was an in, there consistency. Was a, exactly. Right. And you would rather have a guy who plays three games and goes four for 10, four for 10, four for 10, for the most part, than a guy who goes two for 10, two for 10. Then eight for ten, so he's had he's had some monster games this year. So doesn't that wash out the monster inconsistent games? Well, that's the point. He's had if 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 I'm telling you that on these great games, I can drop him down to thirty eight five. That means his bad games are worse than ever. Oh. Okay, that's what All I'm right. saying. Okay, he's his extremes are higher and lower than they have been. Also because yeah. he's shooting more. No doubt. So And that takes energy. So he's shooting more than he ever has. Right. But he's less consistent than he's ever been. But what if I told it's you just that, a fact. that dip from 43 to 40, that, that ain't his major. And the eye test aspect of all this to me, and Austin, I'm talking to you, I've watched every one of those three-pointers miss and go in that you just talked about this season. Stani, I'm at the juncture of I'll take 40 all day, and it feels like when Clay Thompson rises up to shoot, I feel, and I told you this, great. I feel like it's going in. That's great. So do you it's think? It's not as much as it used to. But what if I were to say by a small margin? Well, okay. And then um, for Listen. the people in the back, Stani, let me get this out. What if the people said, Stani, why would you want to take those games out? That he was good at because to, they what was the greater because they indicate that over the course of the entire season yeah. that he can be is 50-50 is what you No, it's not 50-50. It's like 40-60. It's these like if you have one twelve for sixteen, if you shoot forty percent from the floor, all right? I, I'm totally I'm and you have one twelve for sixteen. But that means you can go 12, 12, 12, 26. 
you can miss your next 14 right. shots and still be a 40% Isn't shooter. Isn't that how math works, But that's though. how you lose more games. Oh, because oh, you're having one great right, game, right. two I didn't know that's clunkers. where you're going. Well, of right. course. Would you rather... Okay, you got oh, Steph Curry. obviously that's what you shoot Would for, Would you rather study? Steph Curry go 4 for 10, 4 for 10, no. 4 for 10, or 2 for 10, 2 for 10, 8 four for 10? 4 for 10, 4 exactly. for 10. Exactly. I didn't know that was your that, greater point in all that. I like, said, wow. He's never shot the ball more inconsistently. Yeah. That's that's all I'm now, saying. Now what if what what if uh, Peter Vesey walked in here and pulled up a chair and said, you know what, I feel good about where Clay Thompson's at in regard to shooting the ball. Can't you understand why a person would say that the way he watching him here let this be, last month let and me a half? Be, let me be clear. Because that's where I'm at. Let me be clear. Clay Thompson, they don't win a title without Clay Thompson right. last year. Okay. Okay. Clay Thompson is still good enough. To be a thirty-minute a game player, and this team win a championship. Clay Thompson can win a championship playing thirty minutes a game for this team. Right. All right, Prove it. that's the fact. Stop telling me he's the same player. He's not the same player. He's still damn good. And he's still better than most of the guys he plays right, against. Right. But he's not as good as he was. So stop trying to say he's that player of three or four years ago. But where say are you something hearing that? better. Yeah. Say, you know what? His game's actually evolving to where he's figuring out how to do more with less. But where are you hearing this? He's that guy. Because he told us. Clay's back. Clay's back. Clay's back. See, no, I, he's I, not. I, I think that's just the feeling that I have. That if you know they were to draw up a a game winning shot for him, you could understand. But like, stop and saying you would he feel shot it. the ball yeah. the last two years well, like he shot it his whole career. Yeah. Like stop that. Well, no, no he hasn't. Yeah, I haven't been hearing it like that. And then defensively, he told you, and when he was responding to Barkley's comments, he'd be a fool to think he could be that. But that's what let he's striving for. Let me for. tell you what. Why haven't we talked about this? For, forget. Clay's numbers. Why haven't we talked about, hey, you know what? You know what he could do in the postseason? We saw a little about it the other night. They could start posting him up a little more. Huh? That's how you gain, that's how an older guy's game evolves. That's how Jordan's game evolved. Like, stop saying like age doesn't work. Like, people get older. It affects everybody. So, like, he's still a hell of a player. Hoisting up shots left of course, and right. This is slander on Clay. You know why? Because you're a freaking idiot. You don't understand what I'm saying. Nobody's saying he stinks. I, Learn I, what I'm saying. He's a marksman stuff. Learn and he's good what enough. I'm saying. That's he's, right. Yeah, he's, he's good yeah, enough. Right for them to no doubt. He's just not who he was. Yeah, I don't and I don't know and who if you would want to tell say he's still better. Yeah. Everybody thinks he's the player he was in nineteen. Not everybody, yeah. but a lot of people yeah. do. And he's not. I just think he, his defense right. has taken a step no, we can, back, okay. and his offense has taken a step back. And I'll tell you this. And he's still a great player because right. he's a Hall of Famer. And I think he's giddy. Yeah, I'm not selling him short, Donnie. I think that man is giddy about where his game's at Good. right now. He should be. And the evolve. We got to go. Come, yeah. Seriously. I'm not, we got to go.
I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Finish and then lay out for me, would you? Now, back to <laughs> Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. All right, Steiny and Guru with you. 11.33, coming up in 27 minutes. Antoine Walker. Yep. Antoine Walker. Antoine Walker. I like his, uh, what is it we call what we do? Uh... There's a word. Sports talk radio? No, it means that. Talking? But it's an adjective to describe it. I like his... Uh, Demeanor? Insight? No. Well, that's analysis. Not lexicon, but his uh, analysis. Not what I was looking that's for, but we'll take it. I got to just put this PSA. No. So Schneebs driving around the car with his friend. <laughs> Schneebs is not a guy. I set instructor. him up for failure because no, he's saying he's goo. No. no wonder they were coming at me hot and heavy because you were saying you oh. were getting lessons. And so I was, Schneebs I'm not buddies that were giving him grief. No, no, no Schneebs, I apologize. That's funny. Jesus. See, that's a good... Uh, Stick it to good, him. Good, nah, that's good nature to yeah. mix up. Nobody got hurt. Yeah. Although you still stink. <laughs> you got to get a lesson. Is that what you're <laughs> calling it? <laughs> the ball what? left. You know what's funny, Good. No, I'm going to tell you something. He said, just just yeah. lay out. Okay. It's I a like compliment. <laughs> Here's the difference between you and me. You don't even have to swing the right way to go as far as I go when I swing the right way. Now, are you sure about yeah, that? I saw. Even with your abbreviated swing, yeah. if you hit it, if you hit it on the center of the club, that's where you're six four, two ten. Okay, all right. Because I never felt like I gave in. it that, Steiny. But I was. I know. You, I was too tight. You're, yeah, you're gonna. You're gonna. Swing freer once that's, you get a better okay. set of clubs. All right, all that fits right. there you. There we go. There Let's we go. go to Big Dave in San Leandro. Big D. Let's talk. Big to, let's talk about Draymond Green. Hey, uh, Big yeah. Dave. How's it going, guys? Hey, hey. Going well, man. Playoffs. <laughs> Yo, man. Let's get it going. Uh, before I start, though, um, hey, Goo, if you need any balls, I actually uh, live right next to the Monarch um, Golf Course in San Leandro. I got like hundreds of used balls, but they're all clean and whatnot. I started you know, just looking for them as I was walking my dog after a guy's trip. I threw down a lot of money for balls. I'm like, what the hell am I doing after I lost a few? Man, sure enough, balls everywhere over here, man. So let me know. I All know. right, reach out to me on uh, IG. I like it. Seven dollars I spent yesterday on balls. Oh, that's all you wanted. To... I gave you at least oh, fifty. Oh. Fifty good ones. Okay. But hold, 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 hey. Um. Oh, no. All right. I... Wait. So they're driving range balls, or are they practice balls? Or are they real balls? I like. I got driving range balls, too, because I, so I go to the driving range free because you know, there's a lot of those, but gotcha. I got straight-up balls from the course. So oh, I, I got you. Yeah, how many balls are over there along the nine hole, and then even over um, on the opposite side near the marina, there's a lot of balls over there, too. So every single day I take my dog for a walk, and I'm finding balls, and I'm just taking a picture of them so I can go back and look and see how many balls I've collected over the last couple of months. It's, nice. It's fun. It's fun. But, um, but, yeah, in terms of Draymond Green, so – we can't. The caller made a point a couple calls ago. Yeah, we can't let Draymond go. I mean, if yeah. we let Draymond go, that's the end of it. And if that's the end of it, then what? All right. And this is what I'm thinking. Like, just, come on, don't wake up as a businessman. How much are the Warriors worth right now? How much would the Warriors worth? I'm st- I'm sure they would still be worth a couple billion, even if they were middle of the pack. But they're worth more than that. So you got to spend millions to make billions. And I'll tell you, that season when the Warriors were the worst in the NBA, I couldn't even give away my season tickets. I took a fat hit. So if the Warriors were to lose Draymond Green and we aren't competing for chips anymore, I don't see the Warriors will not be making as much money. I don't know. I think it's worth spending the millions to make the billions. So that's my point. We cannot let this break apart. we got to extend this dynasty as long as possible. And in my prediction, for sure, if all goes well, Andrew Wiggins comes back legit, we're about to take another chip down. Wow. And someone's going to stick around, and I would definitely pay him $100 million for four years. No doubt about it. I'd pay him a little bit more than that. If that's, the that's fair. That's my, that's my, my uh, pick. Big Dave, thanks for the call. I don't know if I'd do that. I'd have to think about it, but I don't think it's outside the realm of Why do I think the years are a big deal? What, they are. You he said he wants to play four, four more for years. Four for 80 ain't getting it done, huh? Because that know. annual ain't the 20. But what about this? That now, this is 2022, y'all. Sports business publication leak report pegged the Warriors' overall value at $7.56 billion, putting them just behind the Cowboys as the second most valuable team and North American sports. What's Joe Lacob doing with all that chicken? That that's past generational wealth, right? But good God! But then, why has he made it clear they've got to cut payroll? Because you got threshold still exactly. to run a business. Well, then, that's, but you told me there's no just... cap for Dre. So right. to that caller's point, what he's done, what he's meant, like I, I ain't saying to Brandon Crawford. 
Good Lord, we're seeing but, I mean, what that, got, how that's playing out. They got rid of Wiseman sure. because they didn't want to pay. Oh, oh, yeah. You know. Yeah. So, yeah, they can pay Draymond anything they want, essentially. Um, what would you do if you're if it was Matt if what's it? Matt Lakeup and everything? Well, it's, well, I I have no sense with really where Draymond is. I think the organization probably does. I gotta believe that. It, well, see, I think what we just heard out of Draymond, and maybe we should play it again. Uh, basically, said he wants to play four more years. Well, that would be easy to get done. Twenty seven. You opt out. Of the contract this year, he's got one more year, so you rip that up, and then you give him a four-year deal. Damn. And then what about this? For how much? What about this? Does he deserve? Okay, so how about this? Here's something about Draymond Green's salary uh, over the course of his career. Draymond Green has never taken a pay cut in his entire career. He's always gotten a raise from his rookie deal till right now. So if he's making 25 this year and 27 next year, but he's willing to rip up 27, are you willing to go 27, 28, 29, 30? So he continues to get raises. Or is Draymond like, I made enough. Just give me, yeah, I'll take I'll take 80 for four. What about three for 90? Depends how important years are yeah. to him. And I'll know. say this about his new locale. If we talk about trying to get inside his his mindset, just talk about. Let's just think for a second about how he's talked about and Steph, how valuable Bob Myers is, and how combustible Draymond when he's go when he's on one. And you know, there's only a few that can talk to him. Let's say he goes somewhere, Stanley, and there is no Bob Myers, and that figure is not there. You know, things could get not out of hand, but. I got to believe Dre is comfortable just knowing that he, well, here I go. We don't know if Bob's here next year. So I can't use that as the. will stay if the Warriors give him more money. Even no, Bob I believe leaves, that. I yeah, no, but I'm just saying I was using the Bob Myers thing, and that's a question mark. Draymond's getting cashed out from his podcast and his TNT deal. No, we, he what for sure would take thinking? a slight pay cut. No, he wouldn't. What are they talking There's about? No chance. He just said the opposite. Take that's a like, listen. Yeah. I would love to finish my career here. That's been my goal since maybe signing this current contract that I'm on. It's like it looked like a more realistic thing of me finishing here. And and I also don't want to play 20 years in the NBA. I want to play 15 years in the NBA. So I think, you know, it's very realistic that in four more years, I'll still be contributing at a high level. Um, I'll still be able to give to a team and, and live up to the contracts that I'll be on. And so I do want to be here as far as the probability goes i can't necessarily give you that because it's not up to me if it's totally up to me i can 100 percent tell you i will finish my career here but that's not something that's totally up to me you know and i do understand you, you remember when i told you i said uh when i told you guys i said guys don't know how to play another one that's even more baffling to me is guys don't understand the business of basketball I actually understand the business of basketball, mm. and, and so I do understand why that's not totally my decision. Right. So he's saying, I'd love to be here. You, re- you I'll opt out, and you give me $160 million over four years, an average of $40 million, and I'll stay. And the Warriors say, boy, $40 million's a lot. How about twenty nine? How about right. $30 million? And he goes, no. I can get thirty million from this other team. Like that's what we're talking. Of course, and he's, he wants, and he's walking. He wants away to be from a that, warrior yeah. as long as they can meet mm. his dollar figure. Yeah. And it doesn't sound like he's taking any discount. There's no chance he's taking a discount. I get it. I, I don't understand. Think. And I, I think it's interesting the way he says four years. So he's envisioning four years after this year. That see to me the four years is a little bit of a tell because the if if he's really serious about. It, like if that number four means something. No, no doubt about it. Means it means he's opting out. Okay. How about or this? It means it means he wants to opt out and get a four year deal. All right. Let me run this by you. So there was a point in the offseason after they had won, you and I had discussions with the people, the fans, the callers. We talked about Joe Lake of Sam business, the 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 wallet is I'm putting it up. 
And out of nowhere, we saw two contracts that we saw two guys that we didn't think were going to get last season. That was Andrew Wiggins and Jordan Poole. Now, they're at different stages of their career, but... Stani, what if I told you I think the euphoria of winning the chip made Joe and the powers to be ready to talk about extending? And it wasn't that the players weren't deserving because they were, but it, that comes with winning. What if I tell you again, this is a big what if, if they got it done again, Joe would probably go 25-400. He would probably do something that he might have been reluctant to do because they got it done, Dre, what's it going to take? And Dre's a warrior and rides off in the sunset with the rest of the game. I, I can't tell you're wrong, but I also don't think Joe Lacob's going to... Um, Overpay? If that's what he thinks. The other thing man. is, I don't want... You know what? We're a little revisionist history here. A little revisionist history. Uh -oh. oh, Warriors didn't have to... First of all, Jordan Poole, before he ever got punched, if you read the stories... Every, not everyone, but the predominant opinion was Jordan Poole's going to get his bag this year. If you'll remember, he was linked to Tyler Hero. There were a uh, lot. Uh. Tyler Hero got a number, and Jordan Poole got a very similar number. So, yes, the Warriors could have elected not to extend Jordan Poole, but I think to say now... Uh, you know, that was something that nobody thought they would do, and they ended up, no, they were going to do that, I think. Wiggins is different. I think Wiggins, they saw and said, man, this guy's pretty valuable. Oh, and he likes it here and will take yeah. a reasonable, I mean, they got Wiggins yeah. at a pretty good Because he's made some chicken, though. Way yeah. more than Draymond. You know, Draymond's trying to cash out. Has he? Uh, Wiggins was a max in Minnesota, I thought. Yeah, but he's only played eight years, so Draymond's... I, I, I mean, I'm not, uh, okay. I'm not disagreeing, no. but I, in fact, you just made I, me curious. Yeah, I just thought we, that's what went into Wiggins' decision to kind of like, I love it here, so what you're talking, I ain't tripping, let's go, as opposed to Draymond is in, in those sound bites is letting you know. I mean, I wonder how many guys that he knows, not just on the Warriors, fall under that umbrella of not knowing that it's a business. And he's like... Hell or high water, I'm trying to get mine. And if it ain't here, it's going to be somewhere else. According to Basketball Reference, which lists right. uh, Sabonis at 611, by the way. Uh, interesting. Wiggins has made 138. And uh, Draymond Green's made 130 mil. So they both got nest eggs, I would That's think. way more closer than I thought. Marcus is in uh, New Orleans. Hey, Marcus, how you doing, man? By you. All right, what's going on, fellas? How are you? All right, all right. Yeah, you you guys were talking about Clay earlier, and I think Stein, you were making a point about how four games kind of affected his overall numbers for the year, or something along those lines. Which, I mean, from my perspective, isn't every great player judged on their great the number of great games they play? I, I don't know if that's really meaningful or not. But also, if you want to sort of extrapolate numbers and draw conclusions, you could look at Essentially, Clay Thompson has shot more than 44% since January from three. If you take out the first three months, and actually if you take out uh, the first month of the season and the third month of the season, he's shooting over 43% for the year. So, what? And this has really been what, his third best offensive season ever, and the guy has diversified his game. He's, his assists are up. His rebounds are up. So you could say that he's regressed in some aspects, but that's really only, I think, from the overall field goal percentage. I think we're forgetting that the dude was out for two no, years. No, no. I'm not he, forgetting he didn't that. He played during the summer. Well, he didn't play during the summer, and he was out of shape when he came in, and he got himself together. I think next year you'll have a better gauge as to where Clay Thompson is as a player. I never said. Go ahead. Get it out. <laughs> All these things are true. He's, a, he's just not the player he was. That's all I'm saying. He's not the player he was. And when Charles Barkley said that, Clay said, duh. Right. So why, when I say he's just not the player he was, he's still a great player. He's just not quite at 
Clay Stan- Clay yeah. Hall of Fame standards. Why, if I said that, Clay would be in here and say, duh. But why are why would fans say I'm wrong? Maybe when because Clay of, uh, would I think, acknowledge I, I, think it. I can help you. That's where I yeah. say Pike I, hit it. I don't think it sounds like you're doing enough of what I'm doing. I think you're forgetting a lot of I, in between of the dark uh, and bad that's times. That's why he's not the play. player. Okay, that's why. But when I you bring it up now, Stani, it feels like you're uh, you're ignoring the improvements. Like the and I know you the January and February the best two months of his career shooting yeah okay well but but that's how the bar was so low he was bad at shooting Stoney that that's all when I see Clay Thompson out there I'm like you kidding me Friday night I'm like this version of Clay ain't the 19 Clay but he's a marksman still and the team collectively has three marksmen. Actually, okay. five. If Dante Thompson, and Wiggins, that's just too much. Here's what I'm saying. That's too much here's what, firepower. Here, here, okay, here's yeah. forget the I'm other going games. Up. Yeah. Here's what I'm saying. Let's say the let's say the Warriors win it. Uh, let's say it's just for sake of argument, back to back. they win they win four series in six games. That's 24 games. What I'm saying is, in 2019, Clay Thompson was likely to have. 14 good games out of 24. Clay Thompson now is more likely to have 10 good games okay. overall. Right. The question is the four games that aren't quite that aren't at the level he was 5 years ago, will that get you beat? And my answer is not necessarily. Cuz last year it didn't. Last year it didn't. Mm-hmm. I think this is a better, stronger Clay than last year. Now I mean, Stanley, because we could really go well, around I the think, league and say who LeBron was, ain't playing defense I think for half the year. Clay was not as okay. good and as I, he was I, okay. last year, and I am giving him his flowers. He ain't asking for him, but that's where I was programmed. Like, oh man! But okay. now it's a different one. Five one That's where I'm at. Comcast, bro, you're missing the entire point. He's still ascending post injury. All right, I'll give you he's ascending right. post injury. I'll give you that. Is he gonna is he ever gonna reach back? Is he ever gonna get back to what he was? No. And okay. he'll tell you that. Thank but you. But they're still winning. Of course. Okay. And they have already won. Now, this could be the worst analogy, but you tell me what you tell me what you think about the clay won't be nineteen clay. I got a few grays coming in, honey. If you say goo, you're you're graying. Yeah. I'm going to say, no, duh, right. I can't stop it. Right. So I, when you well, say that. that's why I can't understand why people just don't understand oh. logic. <laughs> but I would say, guess what? You might have a little more trouble with the younger women. Oh, exactly. <laughs> <sorry. laughs> I'm mad that's at that. That's all I'm saying. I want to rip the mic out. But, hey, but, but where are you hearing this, this roar that he's, he, like, I haven't given you that. Twitter is where it's at. But no, I don't. I I think Stani, honestly, man, even if he hadn't gotten hurt, he wouldn't be the same player he was in nineteen. Five one zero, Steinmetz. Your take sounds like hater take, and, and you know that's okay. the problem. That's, I'm gonna I'm lay out. That's What's the problem lay I out? have with with yeah. people like you, five one zero. I'm gonna lay out. Is all I've done is acknowledge the guy's greatness. That's all I've done. He's a Hall of Famer. He was best two-way player in basketball. Still a Hall of Famer, yeah. Of course he is. But what made you take you the need, four games because out? You, because it's an indi- – again, he's been – Up and down. You, you're right. 41% is 41%. No, For me, how you get there is important. What if, what, if, what if I look at the numbers? and I'm, What if I find – oh, my God. Do you realize that <laughs> – you tell me if this would matter or not. Do you realize that when – when Clay plays a team, again, I'm not going to use Clay. Yeah. Do you realize that player X, when they play teams with a 600 winning percentage or more, he shoots 30 percent from three, uh, I get but it. against okay. average teams, he shoots 50. Right. Like, is that not important? No, that is very important. Well, that's all I'm saying. I'm saying to get to 40 percent, yeah. To me, there's a difference between going four for ten, five for eleven, three for ten, four for ten, four for ten, and having a game where he's ten for twelve. But that means you're going to have to 
take the brunt, take a brunt on the on the other end. I'm gonna give you this because I know we're up against it. I told you I had Yankee Mario, big Yankee fan. Mm-hmm. A Rod in his prime. Let's just say A Rod hit 40 bombs. Yankee Mario said he's a five and five guy. And why I'm bringing this up because I feel like it applies. I said, what do you speak of, Mario? What's a five and five guy? The guy has 40 bombs. Goo. A-Rod hits the home runs when we're five runs up or five runs down. Okay. Can, so, we, can we look at that stat so, or is that a hate? No, you can't even look at that or you're I a I guess hater. I would tell Mario, isn't that kind of front running as a fan or just as a person? I think that's To fair. kind of look inside the numbers. So when Clay's hot and then maybe it's against a team that's not 600 winning percentage, like, I guess what's the energy behind the... I want to go look against when, when he was when because he was. Super, I love basketball, and I that's the way I look at the game. But what Every made the light bulb player. go on to go find that is all that data? Because the eye test this year I, I, showed and that's me what Yankee Mario he's, was he's got more highs and lows right. than in the period. No. And you know what? If I find yeah yeah if if a Rod hits seven hundred homers and you find out, <laughs> do you realize that? Do you realize that five hundred of them came when they were either up or down five? You're damn right. That's important. But I, I, How I, can I, that so not that be important? That floored me, man. But I'm just like, why would you? What like what? Forty is forty, man. But he went and did it. I was like, you got a point. Hey, we got. Uh, are we ready to take a break? Uh, Three hundred. There's only two other players ever did that. Does that fit into your theory? Yeah. He oh, took 140 more threes than he ever has in his career. Do Warriors fans know that this, the second player outside of Steph was James Harden that did that? Did what? Wow. Made over 300 threes. Like, I, I just wonder how that, maybe that changes how they look at the that, 300 wow, mark. Man. Clay? I mean, that's, you know what? It tells, letting, it tells me Clay is finally in James Harden, you know, group as a shooter. He's what, finally, he can finally say he's as what, good a three point shooter okay. as James Harden. And the rat on the table is. <laughs> He's a bigger part of this offense than he's ever been pre-injury. If you're telling me he's taking them many threes. Let me threes. think about that over the break. Yeah. On 90. Antoine Walker on the other side.
Now back to Steiny and Guru. Take it away, Steiny. All right, Matt Stein, it's Daryl the Guru Johnson with you, and uh, we're joined by former Boston Celtic, hey, Dallas Doug. Maverick, Antoine Walker. Antoine, thanks for joining us, man. How you doing? Man, thanks for having me. I'm doing good. Uh, King's going to beat the Warriors? <laughs> <laughs> um, it should be an intri- I think it's going to be an intriguing series just because Golden State has struggled on the road. You know, when you think when you look at it, I think they only won like eleven games I was looking at the day on the road. So the Kings gotta feel pretty good, um, having home court advantage. But but you know, them veterans and you know, Steph and Clay, and, and Clay, those guys can get going and Draymond, you know, they've been there before so many times. So but it's gonna be a different and new challenge for them. Antoine, let me ask you this. The NBA regular season, I mean, if there's any more darts that could be thrown at it, you let me know. But I do know this. I'm telling my partner the 82 games that we saw the Warriors play and look lackluster on defense, just stinky on the road. Antoine, I'm like, and you know what it's like. You played, got ready for the playoffs. I'm like, this is the new season. How much of that do you apply to the Warriors? Or Because we've had you on before. Or do you think what we've seen is real and you don't expect a different Warrior team in the playoffs? Well, I think it's real, but I also think, you know, when you look at, I mean, they got their core together when you think, and I put the core as Steph and obviously Clay and, and Draymond. And the other guys got to understand how an A2 game season goes and, you know, put yourself in position to get ready for the playoffs and to make a real championship run. So they've got some younger pieces that they've had to incorporate into that. And I know Wiggins, and Wiggins has had his his things going on off the court. Um, I just think they've had a few distractions that some teams, you know, it struggles with, but they've been able to maintain. And um, obviously they're not going in, you know, in the sixth seed is a little, you know, a little, that's not what they, they usually at. They're usually in the top three. But they have guys that can get it done on the road. They got, you know, obviously superstar Steph who can, you know, make big shots, have big games. So I think they want to be playing good basketball. And if you really look at it right now, they've won three games in a row. They're starting to, you know, turn the corner a little bit. And this is when you want to be playing your best. Antoine Walker joining us, NBA champion. Uh, great career with Boston, Dallas, Miami. Let me, let me ask you this, because we've heard this a lot out here in the last couple months. Uh, Warriors flip a switch. Playoffs come, they're going to flip a switch. Have you ever been on a team that flipped a switch, and all of a sudden it changed. And then have you ever been on a team that thought you were going to be able to flip a switch, but you couldn't? What's the difference? Um, I would say that I've never been in a situation where these guys have kind of their core has been together, and they've made a run like this, obviously, for multiple championships. Um, so I kind of got to believe that they, they have the ability to do that because of their success. I've never been on a team like that. I just can go back to the days with the Heat and – we won the championship our first year, and that second year we couldn't we couldn't turn it on. We thought we'd be able to turn it on, and we dealt with some injuries, kind of the same stuff that Golden State went. And we thought once the playoffs start, we were our playoff ready built team, but we didn't we didn't when they were to turn it on again. So it's tough. One thing I do know as a player, individually, you want to be playing your best basketball. You want to be healthy. You want to feel good. And I think as a team, it's a mindset. you got to also have to be feeling good. So if you don't feel good as a team going into the playoffs, it's going to be very difficult to turn it on. So, I, I, you know, that's why I said earlier at Golden State now, they've won a few games in a row. That's a good momentum that you want to have going into the playoffs because once you start winning games and start feeling good, and it kind of goes down the line, and then the younger guys pick up on that. But they've been there before. I'm not worried about them. They're going to be a tough out. Nobody wants to play Golden State. Antoine, let me ask you this. Andrew Wiggins played 37 games. I told my partner many days, they can't win it without him, Stoney. They can't win him. Then he gets back, and guess what I'm telling my partner? How come he didn't play the last three games? Antoine, what do you think from a physical standpoint, stamina, what Andrew Wiggins we're going to see in the playoffs? Because my, my whole point is it's kind of scary if there's a rust factor. Yeah, it, it is tough, and he's so intricate to what they do um, defensively as well as offensively. We know how good he can be, um, and it's tough when you got some things going on personal. Um, but I'm sure that they've had long conversations with him. Um, 
to figure out if his mindset is, is really there. I think this is going to be a time where Steve, if he doesn't have it going, Steve has got to be willing to, to put him on the bench and, and go with somebody else. Um, now, whether or not they can win and get make a deep run without him, I mean, that remains to be seen. Um, but I think that's something that Steve Kerr is going to have to really watch for, um, see where see where Wiggins' head is at. And if he's just not there, mm. you got to be willing to sit him and, and understand that, you know, it's something that's kind of the brain because you don't want to take away from the team trying to force this guy to be in the rotation. Antoine Walker joining us on 95-7, the game. When you look at the Western Conference, I mean, if I just said, oh. hey, you got you to gotta pick a team. You got to pick a team that's coming out of the West. Who would you, who would you take? Wow, you put me on the spot like that. <laughs> I got my uh, answer. He didn't ask me though. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like, I like what I like what the. Honestly, I really like where the Phoenix Suns are at. Huh? I just think you know, um, KD and Devin Booker. You got two guys that have the capability of getting you thirty-five, forty in any given night. Um, Chris Paul, veteran leader out there. I just, I just like where Phoenix is at, and they got, they're going to probably have a really tough matchup. I think they're going to have the Clippers the first round. Um, so I, I just like where they're at. I like their roster. I think that they, they got all the ingredients to make a deep run. Yeah, Antoine, I, I like what's going on with the Lakers. So I'm curious to see how that plays out tonight. But let me ask you this: Sunday afternoon, when you saw Rudy Gobert swing on his connected and hit his his teammate Anderson. You've been on some NBA teams. One, have you ever gotten to it with your teammate? And two, what? how did you process? How bad of a look was that? Or is that nothing at the end of the day? Oh, it's definitely something. It's, it's a terrible look. Um, as players, as men, we all know that. We don't take well of that. That makes national news. So that's something that, you know, you never know um, that what that can lead to. Um, and that just shows you that the locker room is divided, and, and that's why, you know, Minnesota hovers around 500. They got a tremendous – we all know they have a ton of talent over there. They got some terrific young players that they're developing, and, you know, obviously you, you see, especially from Rudy, um, being the leader on the team, sometimes you got to bite your tongue and take that to the locker room. You definitely can't put that in front of, you know, 15 – for the world to see. you got, you got, <clears throat> you got to be strong enough to, to let that go. Antoine Walker joining us on 95-7, the game. Uh, NBA champion, uh, longtime Celtic, played for the Heat, Dallas Mavericks. Um, speaking of the Mavericks, let me throw this at you. Uh, and one thing I like about you, Antoine, is you're not afraid to sugarcoat. You don't have to sugarcoat things. I'm looking at the Mavericks, and I'm like, you know what? I wouldn't want to play with Luka. Like, can, can you name me a player who would fit with Luka Doncic? Um, it's tough because I think with the league is, I think, you know, when Luca being so ball dominant, you would think it, I mean, the ideal thing would probably be a, a, a really good big man. Um, that doesn't kind of get in his way. You know, Kyrie is a guy that can create his own shot. He can make others better where he forces Luca to be maybe a spot up three point shooter at times. Um, and you have to figure it out. You know, you got. It reminds me, and I'm I'm not putting them on the same level, but you know, Kyrie's been in this situation before, playing with one of the greatest players of all time, if not the argument to some people, and that's LeBron James. So Kyrie knows how to do that and win at a very high level. I think you know, with Luca, they're going to have to sit down and talk before the Mavs invest. You know, this hundred this hundred plus million dollar contract into Kyrie, which they're probably going to do. They got to figure out these guys can really work together moving forward because um, they're both terrific talents. They both are ball dominant guys. But when you when superstars accept other superstars in their team, everybody has to sacrifice. It just goes down the line to make everybody happy. So Luca's got to be willing to come off the ball because both of those guys create for each other. They don't need other guys to create for them, and that's why I think it, they bump heads a little bit. Um, but you got to give it some time. And if they both of these guys, if you sign Kyrie Irving, you got to think both of these guys are going to be together for a long time. And that's something that they believe they can win with them at the high level. I have no problem with it. It's too hard in this league to develop and get superstars. And especially with the cap mm -hmm. and the free agency mm -hmm. and guys' freedom of movement. But if you got an opportunity to keep those guys together, and it didn't work the first year, they, they'll figure it out. They're competitive. Um, Kyrie's won a championship and been, been in, in, in big games. 
they'll figure it out. So you got to be willing to see if it's going to work. Kind of throwing it together during the season is really, really hard. And I think that's what we haven't looked at, is that we think you just throw talent together. It takes a while uh, to, to, build, to build chemistry, to understand each other. And, and I think we have to let that play out. But if I'm the Mavs, I'm not letting either one of them go nowhere. It's too hard to get superstars in your team and get those type of caliber guys. So I would not let them go. Antoine, do me a favor, if you could, for for this question. Be Draymond Green, because we're out here. Sack is just an hour away, the first time ever these two teams have met. But Dre did a podcast today, and he talked about how shocked he was. I'm paraphrasing. How some of you know guys in the league don't know the business aspect of the league. He can opt in or opt out next year. And I was telling my partner, you know, if they win... I could see Dre maybe taking a hometown discount, but if you, the sound was basically he wasn't going to do that. If you were Dre and you have this career and you've been in one uniform, would you take a pay cut to stay in Golden State? It depends on on if the situation fits. I think it's always hard when you when you're considerably a big part, an intricate part of what Golden State is doing. You, I mean, you're one of the, the top three men on that team. Um, I'm pretty sure the community, everybody's embraced you. It's a lot of things that goes along to to what Draymond has, has established and been there in, in Golden State. And I'm pretty sure he's got a ton of business deals and people coming to him locally, um, wanting him to do things um, locally. I mean, it, it, it'll be hard for him to leave because, you know, the organization obviously understands you, but Steve Kerr, your coach, understands your teammates. You know, sometimes your act may not work with somebody else. Sometimes that coach may not, you know, give you the leeway to do certain things. So it's, it's tough when you start thinking you want to go somewhere else. A guy that's played on multiple teams, everything is not the same. So sometimes when you got a good and, and, and you got a situation where you are a main vocal point, you got a, a voice, a strong voice, um, you don't want to leave that. And I'm pretty sure he's settled in off the court as far as home and living there and those things. So it's hard, it's hard to try to pack your bags and go somewhere else. Man. Antoine, thank you so much, man. You're really Thanks. great, and yeah. uh, look forward to uh, hopefully catching up with you uh, once we're into the playoffs. Oh, no question. Thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it, guys. Yes, sir. That's they Antoine did. Walker, NBA champ. So a lot of this, too, Snani, a shocker. For if you're Draymond Green, it's pride, too. About I've been here. I built this thing. Of course. Nahegan comes and offers you less. You're going to tell him to hit the bricks. Wow. That's right. Yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> hey, but, but what about all I've done? Right. Eh, you know what? We don't pay for past performance. Wow, but I get you, Dre. And you're getting up there. Yeah. You were mentioning your gray hairs. Hair. It's <laughs> <laughs> okay. let up now. Let's go oh, to yeah. Calvin. Calvin's yeah. in St. Louis. Missouri. Y'all guys got me on it today, man. But let me just get back on it. I know you feel like everybody's coming at you, but I just want to make a couple of points about Clay. All right. You say that Clay sort of fell off, right? Again, he leads the score. He leads the league in three pointers. He scored almost 40 points in one quarter. He had awesome games before Steph got hurt, facilitating the system and lead, leading the team in scoring. And Clay. It's a player when the Warriors are sitting up and not scoring in the fourth to do something. Clay got plenty of games where he's the one who puts them back in with his scoring. And with that being said, if the other Warriors players improve like Clay did, we would be undefeated. And, Calvin, and it don't hurt that nobody's wow. talking about Draymond and Looney get paid not to score. Everybody asked for, for Clay to just come back at 70%. That man surpasses. So how can he fall? With those type of records and the things that he Calvin, brings, Calvin, well. let's uh, tell me. If, I'm going to make a statement that I believe is factual. Mm. You tell me if if it's true or not. Clay Thompson's playing the best he's played since returning from injury, but he's still not back to the player he was. But if you was a boss at a job and you told your employee, "Hey, I want you to up your game," right? And the employee come back and y'all getting record sales. How can you minimize mm. that? I really feel like he's the best. And look at the look how other teams D him. Everybody D's on Clay just like they do Steph because mm. everybody in the league knows that man can score. He got two players mm. on him too. And other teams want Clay. 
Appreciate it, Calvin. Yeah, I'm high on him, Stiney. Yeah. I'm not saying you're not, but he, I, from where he's, th- I'm talking about this year. Okay, say something that I'll disagree with. Clay Thompson is at the top of his game shooting the basketball going into the playoffs. The Splash Brothers are as lethal, I believe, as they've ever been. Okay, the numbers show a little okay. differently than that. But it was good enough last year to get it done. So, yeah. if, if, Let's just say he's a B minus version of himself. Okay. That's way past good enough. Because it's not be. just honest. It's possible. On him. It's possible. This is incredible it's possible. if they do it again, man. It's, it sounds like, Sonny, like if you're taking a great recording artist that's gone platinum and then has some trouble uh, like and he this. goes through, you know, rehabilitation, whatever you want to call it, comes out of it 10 years later, five years later, makes a gold album, really good album. But it's not as good as their best stuff. Like that's it kind of that's what it sounds mm. like you're saying. Yeah, and maybe you know what? And is platinum what? Better, platinum's better than gold? Yeah. yeah. Maybe next year he'll put he'll have a plat I don't think so, but maybe next year he'll have a platinum year or record. But how selfish are we being if the team gets the team uh they get another ring? Like, shouldn't that be all that counts? Let's, you know what? I'm ready to put that. Let's let's wait till they win a playoff game or two. Before we say, what if they get another? Oh, well, they're oh, you defend- can lock that up right now. Well, they're a defending champ. Oh, you like their chances this year? I do. I feel to like win it Lakers- all. They won it all last year. I'm a little nervous in the East in the Lakers, but you're, they're going to come out of the West today. Today, no, I didn't say Warriors- they're. No, I'm, I'm. I'm a little nervous if they they match. Why does it? I know why Phoenix doesn't scare me. When the ball tips, they do. They scare do you. But no, it's the. Cooper, the you said the, you didn't want to play them. Their bench is not them. deep enough. Okay, but uh, rotations get cut down in the well, playoffs. Hey, I got a quick, three. <laughs> that's right. Hey, uh, I'm a, I ain't shame. So I bought some tweezers today to get the gray hair. So I took it out, but they're saying once you do that, more come back. Why are you asking me? You know everything. Why are you asking I, me? Well, no, you know, I'm telling Robert Redford, you you're looking good. So you've never heard that? I haven't. Evan I haven't. don't know. I have. It. Yeah. God. It's like Antoine, I like you if not. You know what? Let's move on. Let's move on. Like Clay's fine. They're fine. I really believe Warriors in five. Like am Trey's I, am, wearing am, that shirt. Don't I let the, us win another. I can't say it. Clay's saying who's gonna beat us four out of seven. C is for confidence. Draymond Green says four years from now, he sees himself contributing at a high level for a team. And that, that scares me. All right. I don't, I don't know if I want to, I don't know if I want to rip up next year and give Draymond four more years after oh, this that, year. That's interesting. Take that for data. And I'm not sure winning a title or losing a title would, would change my mind. I'm mm. trying to put myself in Joe Lakers. No doubt. Position. If you're a Warrior fan and you put yourself in Joe Lacob's position, Draymond clearly wants to opt out and get a four year extension. Would you do that? He says he can, he'll be, he sees himself contributing at a high level in four years. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. That's a, that's a tough one. It's just a tough one. I feel like it's what the Giants did, and look what they're doing with Crawford's Donnie. When you, when you give that money out of euphoria, slash, He's got something left, but you do it also, too, for what you've done. Then you got, hey, no shame. Sonny, your boy ain't lighting it up at uh, shortstop. That's a position if an infielder slipping or getting older. If you're at shortstop, I'm going Brandon Crawford, that's the position that can make you, that can show that you're, you know what I mean? You're getting older faster than any other, I believe. You know what's a position like that in the NBA? Two guard. Nope. <laughs> so, so this guy that or it's gal that texts, well, let's talk about Clay's defense. How about that aspect of his game? Well, okay, if you yeah, do that, better there's over no the shame. The but year. what you're trying to do is diminish Clay as a whole. Like, you're like, I, goo, Would you're you? giving him all that love. But when you throw that out, what am I supposed to do with that? We all know he's not the 2019 defender. He may never. Apparently, you, you all don't. But guess what he Apparently has at his disposal? Don't. Otherwise, you wouldn't say he's had his best year. No, he hasn't. 
Because well, defense ta- yeah. all right, all right. is important. Right. Don't, right. Don't, don't talk about that. How about this? That. How about, uh, give me this. I, I, I'll say this. You know what? He stinks. It's No. What's today? 2023. When did he get hurt the first time? How about this? This will make people... 2019 when okay. he went up to dunk. And Game six. So it's 2023. June. I'll tell you right now, the day after he got hurt... No, no, no. Let's. The day after he either got hurt the first time or the second time... All right. I didn't think he'd come back and be this good. No, then that's I, so he's better than I thought he oh, would be. But no, that doesn't mean he's back to where oh, he was. And, and Will I you don't meet think, me halfway yeah. there. I'm there. Y'all don't even gotta meet you don't got to meet. I don't yeah. think anybody's telling you. Yes, they are. See, that's he Just ain't telling use you, Stani. Words precisely, yeah, but he's not saying that. I know he's not saying that. He's the one who, when Barkley said you're not the same player, said duh. So what I'm what I'm annoyed with. Is a small percentage <laughs> of Warrior fans oh, okay. that are All in right. fantasy land. Uh, uh. About, thank you, the Clay. Plane, the plane. How about this, uh, uh, Clay? Hey, Clay. Uh, how dumb are people that they they actually think you're? He I mean, Clay, you. you're still a hell of a player. But how dumb are the people that think you're just as good as you used to be? Ah! I... You need to hit the duh. Don't you get it? Duh. How about this guy? I was going to ask Andrew, yeah. uh, Antoine, Stani. I don't. I'm, I'm asking you now because I know what JD thinks. Because I text him, and Bonte too. When I watch Kawhi Leonard play basketball, there is no doubt he is back offensively. But using the whole Clay Thompson comparison, he's nowhere near what. The claw used to be defensively, especially his lateral movement. It's, but and why? How dumb do you have to be to maintain that he is? Right. Oh, so but you ain't hearing that good. But it's the same thing. Like exactly Kawhi would tell thing. you, the days are over. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> right. So back to the gray hair, hair thing. What if I looked at you with this gray hair and said, "This is the youngest I've ever been." No, it's not. You could say that's the youngest I've ever felt. But it ain't about that. It's, this is the youngest I've ever been. It can't be, dude. Why? Look up top. That, that ain't true. You know what I'm saying? Clay ain't selling those lemons. So I'm just telling you, don't let the, the Dub Nation or the Jackals get to you. Here's where I'm. Because oh, yeah, I yeah, think no, you're no. selling them short. If you think you that they I'm, think no, he's fed. No, you know, I'm 19. not selling those people short. I'm selling them high or tall. You're right. I shouldn't even be responding to those kind of people who doesn't get it. Okay, uh, Evan, 408. Let me just throw this. Sorry, Steiny. He says, and Evan, is this right? Oh, Clay's defensive rating this year is the highest of his career. <laughs> I'm laughing. <laughs> but that's, that's material. And we're not laughing at you, Clay. That is true, and being high is not a good thing. I thought you were well, saying legal. he's had the lowest of his career. His defensive rating is the highest it's been. So what does that mean? That he's, means when he's okay. when he's on the court, they give up 117 points per 100 possessions. Okay. But oh, high is bad in yeah, this. Being instance. high is, is not yeah, good. Okay, right. Okay. <laughs> you know what? That's why I say it's legal. You know Let me. Th- you know what? That no, that's a hell of right. a stat. You guys are right about Clay's at the top of his game. He's never been no, better. I, nobody's saying well, that. Course, well, apparently he's, this is the he's better. If it says Clay's defensive rating is the highest of his career, doesn't it stand to reason he's the best defensive player he's ever been in his career? No, he said year. high being it. bad. The highest oh. is bad. Yeah, you missed oh, it. I was, uh, the but, highest is bad. So this would be no, the worst. This, this guy's saying, sorry, Steiny, Clay's defensive rating this year is the highest and he's taking the rating the wrong so way. So you're wrong. Yeah, but he's taking the high being good and high in this instance is bad. Evan, back me up, baby. So... So according to statistics, has Clay been good or bad defensively? Bad. Not the good. numbers would tell you bad. Not, not great. One hundred and seventeen per. Okay. What was a hundred? Uh, oh my god. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't. I, that sounded like me in the back. Mm-hmm. Four one five. Draymond knows he's got two high first, level Mr. years Bridge. left. He wants to cash out in a four year deal. Should get twenty five for three. Yeah, I seventy five. Seventy five for three. Does he take it? I think what he's if the Lakers. That? I, I don't. Well, I don't, don't forget who he's number. with. He was with Clutch Sports. They're gonna be like Dre. You ain't taking no discount. 
I'm well, not just Gray doing a, a podcast is saying different. This is what I don't like. I don't necessarily think a pay cut is a discount for Draymond Green at 34 years old. I mean, he's set to make 27 next year. What if they said, look, we'll give you three for 90? That'll well, do that's it. a raise. Okay. Right. But I, what about I, four for 100? I, I, I think, you, I think the four is the number, the, the well, that's years. That's a pay cut. But you get length, too. Right. Yep. And security. All right. 888 957 9570. Is the number. Let's get into some more Warrior talk. And we are going to change. What did I have here? What's Andrew Wiggins' role going to be Man, moving forward? Is he starting? Well, that's a great tease on 95.7 The Game. Back to Wiggins.
2019. Everybody wants to go back to 2019. Let's just say this series. This series. I, I, let's just say this series right. were being played in 2019. Oh, good lord! Who's guarding De'Aaron Fox? Clay Thompson. Thank you. Let's go to. So you don't think we see any of that this series? Come on. Very little. And see, this is my point. I, Just because he can't guard like that anymore doesn't mean he's useless, okay, everybody. I, I, no, what I, it means is I, you just he can't it all up. guard that anymore. I, what he can do is guard bigger players a little more. Yeah. Clay the, Thompson, let me Clay Thompson, how about this? This is Get it give, out. give me the Kyle Shanahan right now. The educate Actually, the more the better, so I can Thank help you. educate. Let me let me help educate some people. He's not the defender he once was, but you know what? He's actually improving as an off the ball defender. All right. He's gotten worse on ball because of his because of his quickness, but he's gotten better off the ball because he's being asked to do it more. He wasn't asked to play off the ball a lot in his prime. I'm not mad at that. I am not mad at that. And I'll tell you this, Steiny, it's a team. But for again, this is a Clay Thompson conversation. I get it, but you know who they he has at his disposal now? Gary Payton the second. And Wiggins. Got Wig, no doubt. Looney, Dre. Okay, that's I how mean, teams evolve. Sabonis, I love you, bud, but I've watched you guys play and I've seen when you have been held in check. Forget the reasons. I just don't think you're enough along with Fox to beat this team four out of seven. Our guy Walter now listening. Oh. I did give him love. He didn't hear oh. about the Warriors could go to the NBA Finals and not leave the state of California. Okay. And that would be beating the Lakers and Clippers if they take care of their business respectively. What up, Walt? Little Walter. Hey. That's Tony, Tony, Tony song. Bud's in Oakland. Hey, Bud, how you doing, man? What's going on? Hey. What's up? How y'all doing, man? Talk to Dynamite. Us. Hey, so listen, right? Um, what, what Antoine said was correct about, you know, uh, Wiggins, you know, and Kerr seeing if he's okay. Now, with my with that aspect, I think that you, you do ask him to come up. You let him know, hey, we're going to bring you off the bench in this first series. You know, even if it's the first game or two to see. Because the the, the way the offense and the, the team is clicking on these last few uh, games winning going into the playoffs. Uh, yeah. You don't want to mess with that. But, um at the same time, I just want to add that I don't think the Phoenix Suns scare us. I mean, we've seen this story before with uh, with KD when he was with the Thunder and he had Westbrook and Harden and his other pieces around him. They get stagnant. Uh, they they tend to look for KD. Booker, you already know you can knock him off his game. He's a young guy. Yeah, he can score, but he's young. Chris Paul, he can do those Chris Paul-like things, but to a certain degree, he's not the, the same Chris Paul that he once was. Yeah, he may can get you still, uh, you know, 30 points on a good night, uh, but still, he still, he still, he still uh, has not been victorious against who? Steph Curry, and you know, Steph nope. Curry broke up the well, Thunder. He broke up the Clippers. Wow, he broke up uh, many teams. You know, the uh, Curry and the Warriors have broken up many teams. Even LeBron with the uh, Cavaliers. Woo! So you know, uh, I can see, I can see us riding into the sunset against the Suns. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Uh, Bud. Yeah. Thanks, Bud, Bud Rock. This is where. I do feel the need. Um, he, said, uh, he said, he uh, said, we know Clay Thompson can get Devin Booker off his game. We know Devin Booker can get Clay Thompson off yeah. his game. Like, I got you. I, what are we doing? What if? I, what do you give me for this in regard to Phoenix? What if I told you that stench of last year and whatever was going on against Dallas? And then uh, before I'd say you answer, you're hoping because you're afraid of no, him. No, the Monty Williams not talking to DeAndre Ayton and that relationship. Like Ayton tried to get out of town, Indy offered him something, and Phoenix said, "No, we want you." Like, what if I told you KD coming to town still doesn't okay. negate that? Like, there's something at the core, I'd say and it's only going to show it and rear its head you don't think when the they're Suns down, are maybe two one. There's no doubt they are. Okay. But well, I, think I don't they think are they're too. Sonny, I don't think, and you said to rotate, I don't think they're deeper. That's great. And to beat the Warriors, you got to have That's like what I'm Memphis, about them yet. Memphis the Warriors, last year, because Memphis had the Warriors some depth. Aren't good enough Clark. to talk about the Suns yet. Okay. 
They, if they were, mm. if they were a fifth seed, we could talk about the Suns. They're a sixth seed. What if I told they, you I feel like? Seed. Oh, hey. Let's not talk about the Suns. They're defending yet. champs. Let's the not Dubs. talk about the Suns. The, oh, okay, gotcha. Because the Warriors aren't there. Well, the defend, yeah, War, Suns are better than the Warriors this year. The the Warriors and you haven't earned the right to talk about the Suns. How many Suns games yet. have you played with mm-hmm. your new superstar? Sun. Under fifteen. I know. And you're eleven and zero. They're 11-0. <laughs> I thought it was 10. I'm glad I said 15. Uh, oh, boy. We got... Uh, and what about you? We got to call you out. J.D. in Oakland. What's going on, J.D.? I ain't forgot. Now, what, Matt. Hey. Matt, guru, what it is. What's up, baby? How you guys doing, man? Let me get to it first. I hate that I that I have to agree with Steinmetz. Is, and I, man, I'm kicking myself in the ass. I never want to agree with that guy, but he's right. He Clay Thompson is not the defender, and the Warriors don't have a, as big a problem scoring the ball as they do defending it. With mm. and and when 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 my guy comes back, when he comes back, you don't put him on the bench. He's a, a, a first number number one overall first pick. He's starting. He's defending. Him and Clay with Draymond is going to help the defense. You get GP the three three in there, he's going to help with defense. So that's where they have to get better. They have to get better on the defensive side of the ball. They're giving up too many that's points. Great. We know the. Let playoffs. me ask you this, JD. Game slow. Let me ask you this, JD. And I know you're you're go ahead friends Go ahead. friends with Gary Payton the second's father. You think Gary Payton the second can guard Sabonis a little bit? He may be able to sneak with Sabonis. Sabonis is not going to kill you. He wants to be on the perimeter too much. Anyway, mm. he may get a couple of possessions, and that's what you got to realize. But I think the biggest problem, Matt, and this is what I hate to see and hate to say, Steve Kerr is a problem because they should have went and signed Booby Cousins. He went and played in Mexico. Oh, man. Signed that today. You, you needed that guy. Really? If, you get to, if you get to Denver and you, 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 you go at Denver with Looney and Looney only as a, as a center, mm-hmm. Man, we're gonna get killed. We need a big body You're right. that helps sustain that helps sustain the, the Gary Paytons and the Draymond Greens and, and the guys. The Joel Embiid. You don't give yourself a chance. Yeah. All right. Uh, where's a hey? Do you have a good place in mind where people could maybe watch a game? Watch one of these games. Man, I got a couple places. I give them to I got my band. We, we Lafayette. You go three, four, two, two. Uh, Mount Diablo Boulevard, and that's my new place. is It's called uh, All the Smoke Barbecue. Wow! And we got three hundred Broadway. And what's the name of the three hundred Broadway? Halftime, so I mean, we got halftime at three hundred Broadway. Gotcha. Let's Seven do it, Snotty. Yeah. Oh, hey, I didn't cut you off, JD. That was a producer. Oh, he's still okay. Yeah, that's daily. I haven't been. Yeah, yeah gang. We used to bang down low. Then you said he don't remember me. He didn't. But so did Alfred and uh, Chaplin's. How'd that work? Hey, yeah, I just had a thought. Okay. This is the Sue Evan. Tell me what you think, honestly. The Guru Computer. How shocked would you be? And I just thought of this, and I don't want to be right. If we get to Saturday and Wiggins wasn't available. Oh, my God. Don't, Goo, this is No, I wanna, just, I just, how did that go I, down? I, I just I, asked, I brought up a hypothetical Evan, could you share Dude, with me? Would, uh, would yes, you be Evan. floored, or would you be like, "Well, damn, yeah. that's something I hadn't thought about." I think the Bay Area can sympathize with me after that question. I can. Evan, after Evan's four answer, days, let of, me know. it's bad. He's coming. Okay, go ahead, Evan. Thank you so much for taking this one. I expect him to be back. If he's not, I haven't seen him in the last twenty-five okay. games. All right, but but what? That would be an indication that he's further, obviously. From being ready to go, like I thought, you'll have an excuse. Is, is that what no, you're worried that, about? No, I'm not even. They're not even going to need it. They're they're not did need you it. write those addresses not down? Get, I, I know where they Lafayette. are. Lafayette. I know where they are. Yeah, but dude, I just—it's the thought I had. I don't want to be right. I know we got Bob. To, Bob tomorrow. Robs and Sam Bruno. Our got this. What's up, Rob? VIP. How you doing? What's going on, fellas? Hey, man, I'm listening to these Warriors fans, and they're a little overconfident. Like, he's don't worry about what Phoenix got going on right now. Worry about the Kings. You know what I'm saying? Because the em. Phoenix boys, the Phoenix boys, I mean, Booker ain't Westbrook. Booker got a mid-range game mm. of this world. And, you know, Kevin Durant 
And let's not forget about 2017. If Chris Paul don't get hurt, the Warriors don't Ooh. win that series with Kevin Durant. So let's, let's just keep it real. Let's let's say that. Real People are going to get mad at you, Rob. People are going to get but mad at you. But, 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 but look, but look I, man, I'm coming down your road. Okay. Like Thompson ain't the defender he used to be. Right. But he ain't, he, he, he not a Jordan Poole type defender. I feel oh, like, no. Thank you. Absolutely. I, I feel like he can still hold his own, but he just can't do it for a, a long period, a long period yeah. of time. He used to do it. Rob. But I feel like if this is a close game two minutes ago, I won't play Thompson on their best player, period. I'll if just, Clay Thompson were a 10 defensively at his prime and he's an 8 now, he's still better than a lot of defenders in the league at an 8. Clay. But the Warriors need him at a 10 because they don't have no beating. So they need that from their defense. So I just feel like the Warriors need to relax, worry about the Kings first, because that's going to be a six-game series. And they're not uh, – the Warriors are not as good as they used to be. It's not going to be like they – did before. Mm. Teams got smoke for them. So I, I want to see it pan out. They still got opportunity to win, but it's not going to be as, as easy. So Warrior fans, stop worrying about Phoenix right now because Phoenix got to worry about the Clippers and the Kings. They to worry about and the Warriors worry about the Kings. Gotcha. Thanks, Rob. Uh, Rob, appreciate it. Why do you want to talk? You're, no, you know the what? caller hey, brought, you know JD hey. brought up Phoenix. Phoenix is living rent free in your head. That's obvious. Who are you? You're afraid of them? Evan, what do You're I got to do? I'm ready to them. run out the damn window. I just told you the other night watching them, it dawned on me. Shout out Red Don. Great movie, Sonny. Old school. That they don't got enough depth to beat the Warriors. So bring on Phoenix. That's actually what I was looking up. The Hey, all right, go ahead. Because I got something for you on the Clay versus Clay. I feel like you're being real. They've oh, got go ahead. Booker. Durant, Paul, Ayton. Th- that's fine. Uh, Tell me, Cam can- Johnson's not on the team nope. anymore. You got Payne coming Tory, off the bench. Tory Craig. Okay, I like Craig. Damian Lee. He All beat right. you once this year, but he don't fear you. You don't scare. He I, don't I consider sc- him a rotation player. I actually, I actually like do. Him. I hate he's gone. Go um, ahead. Cameron Payne, Biombo, Shamit, Biombo, Akoji, <laughs> and here's the guy who was healthy. T.J. Warren. Well. Jock Londale. Like, Londale. I, I can't stand when he gets in the game. I know. <laughs> he reminds me of that dude oh, in why? Utah that got hurt to big. I, I like oh, him. I know though. why you don't like him. <laughs> I got a feeling I know why. I'm from New York City, California, buddy. Land how of can, them all. How can you say? How can you say the Suns bench might be a problem when they have Terrence Ross. <laughs> I forgot. You forgot. Hey, but he'll you shoot forgot. you out of it. So I've been what? watching him. So what? Clay. Your boy ain't made a shot he don't <sighs> like, boy. t Raw. He's hey, He shot him out that game Sunday all, against the Clippers. All a guy like Terrence Ross has to do is nah, win I like, a game of I series. I always like a score. Hey. I don't. Yeah. Was your. your I got to bring this up because J.D. got me thinking. It goes back to the Spider-Man meme. When you're comparing. You got mad because you feel like Dub Nation's comparing Clay to now to 2019 Clay. Mm-hmm. What I'm about to get you this lesson is called de- who's playing defense. So forget Clay. Braun, he's effective. He ain't playing no D. Ja, right. he's effective. He ain't playing no D. Right. Curry, effective, yeah. playing okay D because I love you. Kawhi, just a, a, a beast offensively, ain't playing no D. Fox, he, CP3. It sure. goes on and on like. Who's really playing D, Stani, and giving it to you on the other end outside of Giannis? Again. And Tatum and Brown. Again. And Embiid. If you go f- it Clay's fine. He don't got to be 19 for them to go back to back. That's fine. That, well, you I, said that. I wouldn't yeah. argue any, okay. anything like yeah. that. I, I wouldn't argue that. But I'm watching but too it, many it, great it, players it, no, that ain't it, playing. It, it D. would be like uh, it would be like if you know it would be like somebody in uh, give it to him. somebody in. Uh, uh, let me see what it would be like. Uh, it would be come on now. Oh, it would just be somebody like a Laker fan saying LeBron's been LeBron is LeBron. LeBron's playing as well as he did no, eight, okay. eight years all ago. Right, right. Well, that well, that's, no, yeah, that's ludicrous. Now, is his – if he's dropped from a 10 to an 8, he's still better than 90% I, of the players. No but it doesn't mean – but it means he'll be less dominant. So, I got I to gotta ask you this question. 
if you can, for all of us, Donnie, go back to when Barkley made those comments. Did you think Clay at that time, and I'm asking you too, Evan, did you think he could get back to where he's at now? Uh, whatever I said, word I you think want. He's playing as uh, maybe but, better than I thought. See, I, I was doubtful. Like that's and how so was I. I'm, I'm that's sipping what I'm saying. Clay like he's going to. He ain't scared of no shot. And no. and well, <laughs> no, you, you look at that as a positive. <laughs> Clay is and it, and, it, and it can be. And it can be. Has there? How do I say? What, has there ever been a player more protected by the fan base? I don't know who releases the ball Thompson? faster, Curry yeah. or Clay. I, I, Why don't you throw the number out? Maybe 888-957-9570. I'd say Clay it's, touches I'd say it's it in a millisecond. It's gone, though, Stardy. I'd say it's Curry because he doesn't jump. But the, he catches boom. Clay's still got to rise up. <laughs> you might be on to something. But the See, naked that, eye. Here's what you did. Here's what you did. You've, <laughs> you've revved up cocky Warrior fans. Joe in San Jose <laughs> wants to talk about the Suns. Not the, not the Kings. The Suns. Let us have it, Joe. What's going on? What's going on? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump on Rob's comment real quick. So he called in this. I like this. Yeah. that nonsense. Right. Let me tell you, the top three. Booker, I haven't seen him in the playoffs yet. So, but we're going to give him his, his due. Wait. Right? KD. Doctors, Doctors, Cotton, Chris Paul, let him have the game shot. That's a brick. Uh, the Warriors just have to come play defense, and the teams that they need to play physical with are the Kings, the Suns, and everybody else. They just have to play their game, but defense has to be defense. If, if, if they get on, off the plane wherever they go, and you don't play defense, Golden State, you're coming home, and you're not bringing no gold. Just have a good one. Now, Evan could have played the buzzer music. Did you miss Booker in the finals against Milwaukee? So, he sent LeBron home that year. But LeBron was hurt. Had a sprained ankle. AD was hurt. Why do they scare him? They scare me. Who? And the LA. Suns? The Lake Show. The Suns do, too. No, they don't. Yeah, they do. You've, they, you, they've got nothing. It was a tell. You've already... You've already, I love you've already you, fibbed on yourself. This is your new shtick. I love it. Go ahead. Listen, it's not – it's okay, Warrior fans, to say, boy, Phoenix, they are pretty good. Now, Dub Nation does that. The real Dub Nation <laughs> does it. <laughs> oh! Listen, here's, here's the other thing. I, Lafayette. I, I forgot. A, uh, I got that address. I have a bond with, oh, man. with the – and I'll say it. I'll say it. He's an idiot. Uh, with re- true Warrior fans, lifelong Warrior fans. Where were they when you said Dallas in five? Now nah, I shouldn't have brought that up. That was your lowest moment in radio. And Whitley doesn't even she didn't bait you. She said she had something for you. Did you find out? Mm-mm. Oh. No. I could have taken the gutless way, like y'all. <laughs> you could have told the truth. You did skip Bayless and backfired. No. Or Cowherd. For the eight million. I watch time. those guys now. I'm like, they don't really believe what they're saying. They're doing this. Wow. It's like, I won't dare say it. Can't kick wrestling when it's down. Wrestling's not down. It's, it's more popular <laughs> it's than it's like, ever been. I was just it's more popular than the NBA. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't like say any that. of it, to it be is. honest with you. You think that you think an NBA game could draw seventy nine thousand? Sorry. How many were in Aladome? Four Alamo one. Dome. No, 60. 60. Yeah. Uh, 415. Third try. All Warrior fans are playing with fool's gold. If you think Sack will be a cakewalk. Straight up fool's gold. He's talking to you. Give him I one don't win. have sneakers. Oh, I got ones. LeBron's. No, but you're a fan. You're saying the Warriors in five. Oh, yeah, no doubt. And I really want to go sweet. If Whitley comes to us with that. Go ahead, 415. Like, reply to the 415. Now, it, I can do it without being disrespectful. Okay, do it. We've seen many teams do what the Kings have. I think of the uh, Coach Bud in Atlanta a few years ago. They were the number one seed, got sent home in the first round. I just, I feel like they're soft. They the can, Kings? Yeah, the Kings. They're finesse. Hey, you may shock the world, but you ain't going to stop this Warrior story. If it, It's going to stop eventually, but it ain't going to be the sack. 
especially the first time that these two teams have danced in the playoffs? I don't know. I really don't know about this this series. I can we know where are we watching? All right, you trying to go? I hear streets talking. Where? Uh, Saturday, go to one. I'm going up the sack. Wow. Catch Amtrak and drink on the trains, Daddy. They got a bar. Yeah, but you got to pick up Amtrak like in it. Uh, uh, Jack London. But then you have to take a bus for part of it, don't you? Uh, no, that's if you're coming from SAC to the city. You take a bus uh, at Emeryville. A straight shot. Dude, nice. Uh, over there in Hercules, you're on the water. Huh. Monster SAC. What were those guys talking about? The best state capital? Yeah, that I was the United States. States. Fast five segment, yeah. Sacramento's the... It's up there. Sacramento was fifth, I believe. Fifth? Who was first? Well, I'll tell well how many capitals do you know of cities? All of them. Texas. Austin. And that's, that and that's up there. Okay, the Ohio. Columbus. That's not on my list. South Dakota. Michigan. Uh, Michigan's Ann Arbor. Oh, Lansing. Mm-hmm. Lansing. Does that? Did you get? Does he still get it? Yeah, we'll give it to him. Kind of like Jock Pretty. Yeah. yeah, we just gave that one to him. Yeah. Puerto Rico. Well, <laughs> it's San Juan, but it's not. What if it was that? That state. was a hell of a pool. Uh, Honolulu's got to be number one. Honolulu, number one in my list. Uh, number two on my list is Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, number, number three on my list is Denver, Colorado. Four would be Boston, Massachusetts. And then last but not least, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Look at, what do you know about no, that? I'd actually pro- you know what city I do like? Indianapolis. Indianapolis, Indiana. Oh, then uh, SAC. What? SAC, like I don't, SAC's, SAC's. Like automatically in the it's top the three, yeah, because it's in California. So SAC, I'm not even putting on the list because it's up there. If you know what I mean. Uh, capital of Philadelphia, uh, Pennsylvania, Harrisburg. All right, How eight- would it be Harrisburg over Philly? Did you ever read a history book? <laughs> Why is it Sacramento over San Francisco or Los Angeles? Eight 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 nine five seven. Just like the DMV test. Nine five seven zero is the number. Matt Stein, Matt's Daryl, the Guru Johnson, and uh, I want to ask Warrior fans: This is a game tonight that you probably care about. You want to know who you're rooting for? On ninety five seven, the game.
I hate that I have to agree with Steinmetz. Is, and I'm, I'm kicking myself in that. I never want to agree with that guy. Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. Eh, eh. 650, Steiny, it's Springfield, not Boston. No, it's Boston. You admitted an air. 650, I, I, and you I were thought, right. Huh, I guess I got that wrong. No, it's Boston, capital of Massachusetts. And then the 505, I'd like to acknowledge, Couch Potato. Lives in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Thanks for the shout-out, Steiny. I got your margaritas here. Whenever you make it to town, I've been in Santa Fe. Uh, Santa Fe. Unfortunately, it was like right smack dab in the middle of COVID. Oh, it's damn. Such a bummer. Remember that? We were doing shows from home. Yeah, that was great. It was. <laughs> Afghanistan. Do you know the uh, capital there? Kabul. You a boy. Let's you go to Nico in Sacktown. Macramento. What's up, Nico? What's going on, guys? Steiny, man, this was the Steiny I wanted yesterday. The one that's not afraid to stick it to Warriors fans that still think this is the 72-win team. They're not, man. Oh. Everybody is delusional right now, and it's, it's just getting on my nerves. Like, like they're just going to walk through the Kings and sweep them in four. That's not going to happen. I mean, I doubt it's going to happen. I mean, like I said, yes, they're Warriors in six, but if you look at everything that's going on, like, like your guest said yesterday, if you guys put GP2 on Sabonis, he's going to eat. I did my research, and he likes to muscle people, and he ain't scared. Yeah, true. So I'm not going to I'm not going to sit here and say the Warriors are going to win this thing in, in, in four, five. Nah, it's got to go six or seven. This team is hungry, and they really want they want to fight. That's why they've been playing all year. It's not like they just walked in the playoffs as the three seed. Everybody needs to grow up and realize that this is a real NBA team. I love y'all so, man. You guys have a great day, dog. Yeah. Well, you know what? Like that's where I am, and I'm not. I don't know how. I don't know what percentage uh, these people represent, but I, I'd be like Nick. Like I would be okay. We're forty four and thirty eight. It's coming to the end. I wonder if we can make a run. Can we make a run? You know what? A nice little draw against the Kings. Let's see what we can do there. I can't imagine I, I'd be a fan who'd be like, <laughs> "We're going to sweep the Kings." No. You were 44 and 38. You're not sweeping anybody. But when you talk like That's that, my point. You act like you have the answers well, on bet why me. they had that bet record. Me. Bet me. Oh, you talking about You think the Warriors are going to sweep the Kings? Oh, no. Hey, well, oh, that's no. what I'm saying. I'm saying no, this, yeah, no. this 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 confident. But I wouldn't be shocked. I would. I would be shocked. This is a big ask from Sacramento, man, to be the team to knock this team that just did it last year out and everything is accomplished and this crazy, uh, I'm going not Algebra 1, a calculus offense that they run. You got to stop Ooh. this. The Warriors, this ain't no open gym. And this ain't Stiney no has the ball. Year. Watch him. The Man. ball movement's the same. No, it's not. The screen, the motion, this, this everything. Not, it's not even close to the same Who's going to stop Steph? Who's going to stop well, Clay? It's easy for you to say that. JP. Wiggins. Okay. Looney. So you think Dre. That, you think that, who's, who's, Dante. We don't know who he's going to be scared of tomorrow, though. That You got to admit that. You didn't get the applause you wanted from that it's one. It's not a matter of applause. Because that, that, you know, come on. You know, he, Sons don't scare me. to have it both the I both told you the Lakers on my – Anthony Davis scares me. LeBron they being able to – going to beat Minnesota tonight. <laughs> now, I'm you want to bet on, on that. that game. I'll give you points. Well, get nine. Good Lord. I'm just saying. You're more afraid of the Los Angeles Lakers than the Phoenix Suns? I, I am. I truly am. Yeah. If you're telling me LeBron and AD are healthy, I am. Well, he'll root for the Lakers in that series, I think. Uh, I actually won't. No, won't. I want Lakers. He likes, I'm sorry. Goo likes the Lakers more than the Warriors, but he'll root for the Warriors. Now you really trying to station. stick it to me to say it's Warriors on my Chris Washburn, Stoney, Sonny Parker. Uh, let me keep going. I used to Michael catch Cooper, Bart. Byron Scott. Those are Kareem. the Lakers. <laughs> I'm talking about uh, no. Warriors. Go say the players. You uh, really Bernard like. King. Just. Use your. Uh, I'm gonna let my Sonny Parker uh, marinate. How about that? Darnell Valentine used to be on Darn the Clippers. He never, yeah, he never played for the Warriors. I just said he used to be on the Clippers. Uh, he, made, he had the Val biggest thighs right, you've Darnell ever Valentine seen. Played most of his career in Portland. 
Yeah, but he was on the Clippers when I went to Simmons and Youngster. And I said, man, me and Ron Tillman, look at his thighs, man. Like who? Yeah, you weren't around, Evan. You were just a, you weren't even a thought at that time. Yeah. What you got? <clears throat> got, got Lafayette, Stardy. Got, got goo goo. What's the name of the bar? I got the address. Gotta know. If... <laughs> It ain't like we're driving you to go find Lafayette it now. You realize Lafayette is a little town. It's a city. Oh, so don't people... tell me about Lafayette. You don't know about... I worked in mortgage. You I don't got tell people me up there. about Lafayette. Yeah. J.R. Ryder used to stay right through the call. Well, let me snitch his get stitches. By the way, I saw something about J.R. Ryder. He's doing good in Arizona with this kid. He's got a team like Matt Barnes, AAU. But go ahead. I'm he, did a, uh, he was on a podcast. He was talking about Phil Jackson. I, he told a story about I Phil Jackson. It. Makes Phil Jackson seem like a jerk. Not the McDonald's one. No, the one about Crenshaw. Hope that we don't was, see you down at Crenshaw. And you know, I love you, man. And you know what it did when I heard it, Stani? It went back to that posse comment that he talked about. True. With Dude, but we know Phil ain't that. But that was bad. I guess we should. Yeah, so help I saw an man. interview with uh, Isaiah Ryder. Jail. He was great, actually. Man. He was just saying when he was with the Lakers... He wanted to play more, but he wasn't a problem. He was going through it. Yeah. You know, he thought he could have had a bigger role with Phil Jackson was the coach. And this he is... said uh, Phil didn't talk to him much that season. And then they were going to practice. It was after a shoot around. Yep. The game was over. And Phil said something like, let's hope, uh, let's hope we don't see uh, JR down in Crenshaw tonight. Yeah. Which is a rough part of yeah. L.A., but... Why would yeah, you say that? No doubt. It's not like he was a bad guy. But some people tell on themselves. So I don't know why Phil. That was bad material, Phil. But some could Terrible. have you thinking. Like, what did you think of the posse comment back in the day? I yeah, thought I LeBron like was either. being ultra sensitive. But then I was like, nah, you can't but, say that. But the other thing that I, Isaiah Ryder said was like, okay, yeah, Crenshaw's a tough neighborhood. The kind of neighborhood that he came from, even though we know he's yeah. from up here. So... What are you insinuating there also? You, like, I can't, so I can't go back home? Right, right. Oh, because there's a, a, a inner city, uh, what are you calling right. me, a thug? I'm right. a, yeah. yeah like, I got you. It's, it was just, I would, Phil could, all he would say right now if you asked him, hey, Phil, what were you thinking? He called him Phil. I wasn't. Remember? Yeah. Maybe that's why Phil Jackson was a jerk. But it would be like, uh, uh, you know, hey, uh, let's hope you don't see uh, Steph Curry at, uh, we see if we yeah, see that's, Steph Curry yeah, down yeah, in the tenderloin. Yeah, it's like, yeah. what, why would you say that? It falls under the umbrella of you people. That was yeah. bad, Phil. Yeah. yeah. Right. Phil still, still with uh, anyway, this bus? What? Is Phil still dating Gene? No, she's with uh, Jay Moore. The comedian? Yeah, he also acts. It's, yes. Where the hell would I make up that name? Jay Moore. Jim Rome's fill in back in the day. Wow. I didn't even know that. Dude, you, you got it all. Uh, Clay Thompson. Clay Thompson. How's he feeling going into the postseason? I like where we're at. We're all healthy. So excited to get Wiggs back in the mix. Young guys play great tonight. And this week of preparation is going to be so important for us to keep our conditioning up and our minds fresh. But people will forever remember what happens in the playoffs. And we've tended to be a great playoff team. So I have no worries. And I'm excited. I mean, it's the best time to be a basketball player professionally. He's ready, Steiny. They're, gonna, they're ready. They're going to win it. I. Yeah, they're going to win it. Not, we can't even tell when you're being realistic. I just hope they get to. Well, they're not going to. So how about more clay instead of you real quick? Man. I would say we have to value the ball more, take great shots, and communicate on defense. We, those, we do those three things. I, I don't see a team who can beat us in a seven-game series when we're healthy. Um so if we do those three things, three things going forward, I think we'll be in a great position to repeat. Wow, and that I You're believe him, no doubt. And do you think he would have said that? I'm posing your question to me. If Phoenix was on the docket, I honestly believe so, Stani. I think he. Pre well, that that's a little different than what Draymond said, as far as I'm concerned. You know, Draymond talked about it. He'd love to get it done in four or five. I don't think he would have said that specifically about the Suns. Mm. 
Do you think he was also just talking about, like, that's been the Warriors' path in a way, the first round being able to take care of an opponent in four or five games. That's been yeah. an equation of their yeah. previous championship runs. Yeah. By the way, it's not Mac Ramento. Somebody on the text line saying. Well, well somebody over here said Wack Ramento, 925. <laughs> but you said Mac Ramento. Yeah. Did you just make that up? No, it's... You've heard, 49er Frankie's used it. Has Relaford ever used it? Steiny, when I was what about, single, what about me and my Petey, boys from the Bay, that includes the town, the city, the Yoon, the Stack, San Leandro. We would head out to the nightclubs and sack and get our Mac on. And we would so, call it, where are you going? Macramento. So the bottom line, <laughs> bottom line Watch is... Watch out now! Yeah! So, so the, I can, you know what? You were, yeah, like, you were a lot maybe. like... Uh, who was like... Oh, Andrew, you're a little like Andrew Wiggins. You know how Wiggins can't go left? You can't when you I don't are, buy that either. He can't, you know go, Wiggins can't go left. You can't go west. You guys never went into the big city, San Francisco. You always had oh, to go we, to Walnut Creek, Oakland, oh, or oh, South. Oh no, yeah. we city we were too big for you. What do you know about Frisco? A little too big for you. <laughs> Handy and I used to come up to all the Please. underground clubs in the city. What do you know about what was the big club? Uh, Electric Factory. The, no, it's, but that's the, the Sound Factory. That was that was pretty good. <laughs> I'm talking about uh, you know, uh, you know. No, it, I got to text my friend. That was I like wife. That the city was, like, was the best. Like, that's why I always spoke. Clay highly Thompson thing. getting exposed on defense right there. You didn't like to cross that Bay Bridge. Please, you know, it was kind of bone dry <laughs> over in uh, San Francisco. A little too much city for you. That's all we came to. Too tiny. much city. Women a little bit more sophisticated. Please. I'm laughing. That I'm you're talking running. about. <laughs> Let me guess. Mac Town. Let me guess. You did well in Merced and Modesto. How about 3530 out here, baby? What does that mean? It's a cl- What's 3530? Oh, 3530. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. I'm glad oh. you got a kick at it. <laughs> I know I did. Yeah. Oh, God. The city is it. City Nights. Remember that? Where were you? Yeah. You were still in Pennsylvania, PA. I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, by the way, did you hear about, uh, well, Draymond did a podcast. The Palladium. That was the big one. The text line is the real Google. Yeah, the Palladium study. Watch out now. Ruby Sky. That was one of them. What about Johnny Loves? That was another one. Boy, you you boy. come on. You had, I sometimes you had to, to Google you know, it. You wanted to these see are new people. all clubs I'm very familiar with because I never went. We catch it. Wink, wink. Hey, where you oh. going tonight? Well, not Johnny Loves. I know that. Uh, you could just go up to Danielle Marshall. Hey, where are you guys going tonight? Right. That's Danielle Marshall. He's a pro player. But you were in the business, so you could get that. I was before. not in the business. I was in the newspaper business. But you never got to. Hey, I made about $48,000 a year. <laughs> You're playing. I wasn't paying a cover to go to Johnny Loves. I'd go across the street to Shanghai Kelly's. But about your earnings, it was more than forty eight. No. I mean, you want me to give you the numbers? No. You want me to bring? Well, you, I, I gotta forget how long ago that was, but that was respectable. Yeah, wasn't well, that long ago? <laughs> wasn't that long ago? Big hard Watch city, fifty k. Oh, holy cow, dude! Quit saying I these names. I'm oh my goodness. Your hotel, boy got around. I, I, I have been. I have been to the hotel Utah a few times. Now that one, I don't recall. I know because it's a little rock venue. It wasn't hip hop like a rave? A rave? I've never no, been to one. You ever like been, a, honestly, you've been to a rave? I don't even know what a rave Where is. Where they do drugs and it's dark. Well, I mean, I've been places like that. <laughs> so any place there's drugs Every concert. Is a rave? <laughs> wow. Go ahead, tell your gym story. Oh, this is real. This. So listen, I've been around the block and I've been to gym many a times. I've never been to prison, but I use the same principles had I gone to the pen like I would in the gym. Men in the locker room. I've been going early. I can feel my shoulders. Um, the air's coming back to my muscles. They never forget. Just <laughs> lose my little baby. I'm back. Steiny, this morning I'm leaving the gym and a grown ass, he had to be 65 to 70. I've seen a lot at a local public gym. I won't even say which one. Taking care of his pubic hair what? in public. At the, at the, I I was coming around the corner. I w- was walking out and I said, what? 
Stani, I wanted to make a citizen's arrest. I couldn't, but I will never forget the... Bro, you can't be... I almost wanted to go tell the manager. You I had to share that down. with you, man. You hear what Draymond said about Rudy Gobert? Oh Insecurity me. is always loud. Let's get into that. As far as the tap on the chest goes, quite frankly, there are just some words as, as men you just don't say to men. So when I saw the choice words that is the word Kyle Anderson using towards Rudy Gobert, you do have to be ready with what comes with that. Like you're just not allowed to just disrespect guys and say what you want to say. Kyle Anderson uttered some words to Rudy Gobert that a lot of people thinks. He said it. He said what a lot of people thinks. I personally think Rudy Gobert is a little on the softer side. Myself, mm. he gained a little respect from me because he stood up for himself. I've never really seen the guy stand up for himself. Didn't really know if the guy was capable of standing up for himself. He stood up for himself a bit. Unfortunately, doesn't really work. Take it from me. I know how that goes. Is it the wrong decision morally? That's for you to decide. It depends on what your morals are. But in a team setting, you're playing with a team. It's the wrong decision. Wow. This guy's unbelievable. Hey, dude. He is unbelievable, and I actually mean that in a good way. No, no. That's why when his career is over, and ain't going to be any time soon, Donnie, a microphone's waiting for I mean, and Gobert, if he hears this, you got to think, that's not why I fired that means punched. I know Anderson, what it means. But to hear Dre, you got to stand up. For, and that's why I told you, you said you've never been in a fight. Sometimes you got to stand up for yourself. Nobody's ever punched me. I mean, Jeff Fessler. But <laughs> that was like when I was in that's sixth grade. Fessler, yeah. Uh, I, like, I love how he slipped in the... <laughs> I didn't know he was capable of, of doing that. I didn't know he was capable of standing up for Man, himself. Man, that, like, that's heavy. Yeah, the, uh, oh, by the way... Here's the other thing I saw. And we're, we're talking about the punch, if you haven't heard. Uh, Rudy Gobert took a swing at uh, Kyle Anderson in a, in a huddle. Uh, Man. Le leaned over Finchy, Chris Finch. And uh, he won't play tonight against the Lakers. You know what I did? I've been watching that. You know what I did notice? Take, another, take a look at that punch and look at Torian Prince. He pushed him. And watch how fast Prince gets up. Oh, no doubt. To basically get on Gobert. No, had that like to, like to push, he like, would have got with him, Stani, had like, that been in the locker room. I believe like, Prince had that energy. Prince was ready to punch him too. You could tell exactly. Like. You, but man. instead, he, uh, yeah, I agree. Four one five. <laughs> I love provocation. Guru with the segment killer. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Now, yeah. Dude, since when do we can't talk about everything? I was sharing with That's, you a story. I told you in the restroom coming out. I, said, I, I gotta... know. It's the restroom. It's not on air. <laughs> wow. Well, damn. Who's Captain uh, Hundy? Uh, <laughs> if, if Steph Curry's the MVP of the Warriors, who's the runner-up? Anything but... Oh. This is Kevon oh. Looney. <laughs> Why don't you say... The answer you said the other day, so we can get into it. Today. I'm discombobulated right now. It's JP. Yeah. With I should have kept that. And I guess had I ran it by you, it said, "Good, nobody wants to hear it." But it happened. Okay, we're going to the MVP runner-up yeah. on the Warriors after Steph. Who's the if you, Steph's I, the MVP, right? Last time I said this name, right. somebody tried to come back and say, "Oh, we don't play enough minutes." It's Kevon Looney. I'm sorry. And I watch too many damn games to where our, our, the, the, the Iron Man is getting rebound, rebound, second and third shots, giving it right back out to the killers, and they make it. It's Kavon Looney. You say what to that? I say pool. But you ain't mad at my Looney, and no. I ain't mad at the pool. No. But, but has pool been consistent enough? Get mad at each other has pool so been that we consistent can enough? Segment. He's played 82 games. Looney, too. I know. You surprised we ain't said Dre? I think I did say Dre the other day, didn't I? You did, yeah. Because, Evan, you said Poole. I took pool. Guru had Looney, and you had Draymond. Actually, you know what? I. It's good. It's a good question. It's a good question. I'll, st I'll stick by Draymond if that's what I, I said I do think the those are day. the three, though. Like, the, the three oh, choices. Interesting. Unless you want to throw Clay Thompson in there. Well, that's, that's what I find so interesting. Don't you find that interesting? <laughs> the what? Well, I find it interesting that we all acknowledge that Clay, uh, that uh, Steph Curry would be the MVP of the team. Uh, 
And then when we asked the question, well, who would be the runner-up? Hmm. I'm just surprised we wouldn't have said Clay Thompson, who's had a career year. He made 300 threes. He made more threes more, than anybody. And the, and, but, so yeah. I, I just don't but understand there, like why. Poole, there was some downtime. Oh. There was some downtime. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Brother going to work it out, and he did, man. Interesting. And I okay. don't think Clay would get mad because he would. Oh. He's, because if he would, you wouldn't well, like that. Don't. You would hate. Like, you know what? It's Clay if, 300 from the 408, if, 415. If you ever had a beef with a guy on the Warriors, I wonder how you'd be. Like, like you know how make fa- it like yeah. like I wouldn't make it personal and I would react to new I would give that person propers. See, I'm that type even in life. I'll never deny well, what, what if, you're okay, doing. What if uh Clay takes the podium today and says no, not Clay. Give it to uh, me. Draymond Green. I heard uh, a guy talking on the radio some some clown named Guru saying we can win it this team can win it without me. Hey, you must not know the game. That's a clown statement. You must have saw Brownie Blends, his buddy, respond to you us on Facebook. They had the clip of when you said the Warriors. So came. what would you do? I hated it. What would you do? He if gave he, you credit. If he said that. Stiney finally got one right. I would, uh, I would take offense to the clown part. Then I'd go up to his locker, like, "Hey, Dre, school nine five seven. Yeah, you, you didn't call me a clown, did you? Yeah. And then he would say, he called me a clown. I'd be like, why? And then we'd just talk it out. I wouldn't go in there. there you go. I couldn't. That, that wouldn't be professional. You got into it with him? Who? Dre. When that he was tw- on Twitter. And he apologized. It was a tweet. He apologized. He said I was right. He did not. Uh, that did Eight years later. It doesn't matter. You think he remembered it was you when he came on? He didn't remember it was me. I brought it up. He remembered and said... Yeah, well, you know what? Who was the I dude? was pretty sensitive back then. You know, let me tell you, he said I was yeah. right. We had a good interview with him. Goo, that's that's why it doesn't always have to be game to game goo. You can like you can have a conviction, <laughs> stand up for it. <laughs> I'm gonna make and, you and, laugh and stand up for it. Right. And, and 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 I'm gonna just, make you laugh. Go ahead. SF Bay drummer on YouTube says goo would ask for a picture. As long as it's not a Thursday. Oh, my. Now, see, Stani, that's, <laughs> that, that's the stuff right there. No, no, no. no I Sometimes you said, no, I think you got game. writers working for you. When you find out comedians don't write all their material, they got a whole bunch. I ain't mad. I, you know what? I'm, you're right. I, that bothers Remember me. Remember, I found out Jim Rome didn't write any of his stuff. <laughs> what are you talking about? Nothing. Nope. Evan, is he? I'm is definitely you? not lying. <laughs> I'm not lying. Why I need you? a cigarette. Are you I, I serious, man? I got a couple after work. I'll give you. <laughs> I don't know. Well, thank you. Knock some years off your life. Goo you know up what? your man. I'd throw that in there. You know what? Like, when's the last time you heard this statement? Tell you what. I'm going to start smoking cigarettes. <laughs> I think you know it's, what? it's inside gonna, people's dome. Yeah, no, I'm going to. I've been thinking about it. I'm going to start smoking cigarettes. When, when, when did they take the commercials off television? <laughs> man. I like. I went up the other day just to Lucas for no reason at all and said, "Hey, you got any uh, cigarettes?" I heard you <laughs> ask. <laughs> he looked at me. Oh, it was and, last Friday. I remember. I said that was random. It was totally I said Stoney after it early. Must have had a good segment. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's that a was four. A boy. That's a four. What do they call it? No, uh, a heater. Yeah, I like the. I like calling him heaters. Yeah. Jim Leland. He was a fan. I love the way, yeah, Jim, Jim Leland and Earl Weaver had a way of smoking them, but they hid it. They could hide it in their hand. <laughs> and then they just take oh, that little. Man, I, man. Yeah. Somebody, once, somebody once said that about my dad. Hey, Steiny, let me tell you something. Dad was a smoker? Your dad can smoke. Wow. It was after my wedding reception the day after. Stan Kazalaga, Steiny, your dad can smoke. 420 coming up. I'm telling you, he can smoke. I'm like, oh, hell yeah. So he, cigar guy too? No. I, cigar, got, I no. can't. They just no. hurt no. Winston, much, no Stiney. filters. Whatever. He's, you know what? By the way, I, well, I should have. Yeah. Almost 90. Still, Dude, what a good still run, alive. man. No doubt. Smoking You're Winston blessed. since 1950. He's still not doing it. No, no. Uh, well, well some do. I don't know. Maybe he's sneaking it I in. had an uncle. They said if he had another drink of dark, he could possibly die. <laughs> he said, I'm going out happy. <laughs> Crown Royal. I'm true story. He's no longer with us. 
Yeah. <laughs> but, no, it's not that. You got to go to yeah. break. Yeah. You, 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 <laughs>
<laughs> I had an uncle, they said if he had another drink of dark, he could possibly die. <laughs> he said, I'm going out happy. <laughs> Crown Royal, a true story. He's no longer with us. <laughs> now, back to Steiny and Guru that, on yeah. 95.7 The Game. That came yeah. out wrong, Steiny. No, it didn't. He's yeah. dead. But yeah, but wasn't for that. Dude, That's we funny. do all this provocative oh. sports talk. And then we talk about the certain clubs in the Bay that we've been to in the city. Ranch B hits me. Big Heart City. Well, we're apparently, listen, I haven't Dibs, been to any of these places. DV8, I used to go to that one. And then City Boy with Mr. Fives, the end up at 330 Ridge. It's not even ever. We used to get after we're, we're it. talking about old club days yeah, from the city. Yeah, the city, baby. How about D- DNA Lounge? Isn't that That's wasn't a, that one of them? Now somebody hit you with that one. Yeah, somebody on the text line. No. Well, I'm giving you credit. Uh, the only like one I came up with was the Hotel D- Utah, and it's not real. Well, it's I don't a, recall it's that. It's a music one. club. That's a, it's a country. Kind of a, yeah. No, but it's, <laughs> that's that's a, keep going. I get you. Yeah, that's a, you wouldn't see the future power exchange. In there. Uh, that's another one. Yeah. A, but they yeah, had some other a, stuff uh, going on there, too. That's a yeah. Trocadero. They had a Trocadero in Philly. I know that. Uh, a couple more. Uh, dude, that's a DV8 deal. Dude, power oh. exchange. Holy cow. That's right. Holy cow. I don't remember that one. It's right across, right near Hamburger Mary's. Mm. Oh, boy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's uh, let's get that out of the way. DNA Lounge crossed off power exchange. Um, Big Guru, Heart City. Guru just asked me. Oh, this is real. And man. the uh, cr- changeover is coming up in about uh, eight minutes. Guru just asked me, Steiny, so how much is a how much is a set of clubs gonna cost me? A rack? And And I meant it because you No, yeah. I know, and I said I think you can do it for that. But I, I also gotta get them custom because No, 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 no. They like just I'm have in to, now. They just have to make them long. But they make longer clubs. Not But that's a charge though, no, right? No, no, it's not. It's okay. not. Like most people get fitted. Like, I got fitted. What so is mean? there a big and tall for golf? Yes. So I'd go to a different... Oh, okay. I think... You, Talk to me. Well, you know what? I'm not 100%. Because I never... I think is like, the best. I never want to go up there like I'm swinging a 20-ounce bat when I swing a 34. And that's what that was yesterday. They got... They got... They make clubs a certain length. Some are longer. I don't think you'll have to... Like, Shack, I think there's Shasky a difference. said two plus. Right. So I got to leave it to a pro. I don't know. I don't know if you can get out of there in a rack. I think I paid like six, seven hundred for my irons. Wow, okay. And then I got a couple, I got a driver and a four wood. Oh, so the, there's not like a, when you go get your wife flowers, they don't all come together? No. A set of clubs is usually Damn. Uh, four iron, five iron, six iron, okay. seven iron, eight iron, nine iron pitching wedge. So, so you have to buy me a up 56. with a set. Am I am I hurting my game by like just going like today? I, I promise you, I was going to go hit think, some balls. No video. I don't think you can. I me- think, no, I think you need a set for a guy six four. All right. I but don't use yeah, this set. John, John six three. Yeah. But using this Jump set that's too John. small. John? That ain't hurting my game. I was. I, I would recommend going to Golf Mart. Golf in Mart. South City, right. they have a bunch of used clubs that you can kind of piece together. Like, to Steiny's credit, uh, the iron set would come together, and then you kind of piece together driver, wedges, stuff like that. Right. I got mine when I first moved to the city for less than $1,000. Oh, Everything right. out the door. Driver and stuff included? Driver, three wood, two yeah. wedges, and a putter. That's pretty good. Wow. All right. That's pretty good. Right. So there's that second question about the clubs. Well, you could probably get out of there for a rack. What about my third question? Um, which was I said I'm mad at a certain individual, Zion Williamson. Oh, right, right. And I and I'm not being funny here, Stoney. Do you think this is chronic? Like his career's seriously in jeopardy, man. He's nowhere near coming back. And he's at his weight, being able to do some of the most incredible stuff we've seen a big man do. At what point do you say, you know what, young fella, you didn't work hard enough? That's you, why I'm asking you is, do you think would it's you do chronic? That now? Would you do that I now? I think the world's you asking. You own the Pelicans. Are you ready to say, you know what, Zion? You're done. No, they paid him. Right, but you can still move him. You ready to move no, him? Oh, hell no. I'm, you, okay, I hear what you're saying. you could move him? Well, how about this? Let's do it the other way. Let's say you're the Charlotte Hornets. Do you want him? 
No, because you would really? catch hell getting damaged goods if mm. it was to the point to where they were giving up on them for you to expect you to be able to fix them like the bionic man. But I'm I am always, so hurt Zion is not back. A lot of NBA fans are, man. But I'm always... Dude was a phenom. Sometimes when you're not a great team, you got to take a chance. Like when the Golden State Warriors mm. traded for Baron Davis, who was kind of injury prone. Uh, man. And he came, and he didn't do much the first season, and then he was he was a star. He was a star. BD. And he put together a couple great years here. Uh, Should have beat Utah in that second series after we believe. Yeah, somebody 408 says, Guru, I'm 6'4". Two over is the length of That's Chasky was right. Two, two over. over. So when I go to Golf Mart. There you go. Yeah, they'll probably job, tell though. you. You won't yeah. even have to. They'll say, hey, you need two over. Uh... I'm ready. Sidra, I can't pronounce this name. Hello. I've never heard you say that. Hello. Uh, this, this is Srikant. Uh, I'm a long-time listener, first-time caller. Thank hey. you. I like your, sh uh, I like your show. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, uh, I, you know, I always look forward to listening to your show. It's very good. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, but I have one question. Why Clay Thompson doesn't get a lot of respect? Do you think without Clay Thompson, Steph Curry would have achieved such great heights? It's a That's great question. Man. I think they're a three-man unit that works very cohesively together. I think you take one off, none of the two are quite as good. Obviously, Steph, to me, is the best. He'd be pretty good no matter what. But I think they've all helped each other. Let me take it one step further. Is Clay Thompson to Steph Curry what Pippen was to Jordan? One more time, please. Is Clay Thompson to Steph Curry what Scottie Pippen was to Michael Jordan? Yeah, I'll give you that. I don't have a problem with that. But and now and I, I don't have a problem with that. But what if somebody, somebody said is else? Clay a top fifty player? Because Scottie made that. Oh, well, I mean, you well, can, then I'm saying Scottie's a little mm, better than. There's no shade there. Yeah, still, the analogy to me works, right? right? I, I mean, should have just left it alone. Yeah, you nitpicked yeah. like. No, you got my point, though. Clay's a monster. You He's a Hall like of I Famer. Usually nitpick. 37 I'm and a quarter. Can Somebody... get hot with the. And what about Portland? He said Steve Kerr pulled Portland? him to the side before the game. You're five short. We know, hey, you know, don't gun for it, kind of. I'm paraphrasing Steve Kerr. Clay had that thing in like so a Kerr quarter. Told... Kerr told Clay not to be selfish. <laughs> Interesting. That should have been a big story. I do wonder if there was some reverse psychology no, there. No, like the no, moment I mean, Steve Kerr tells Clay a number's within reach, he knows he's going to go for it. And so he's got extra added ammunition. Shoots that's, the lights out. that's my dog back there. See, the, the thing about a guy like Zion is. It's bothering me because I feel cheated. We are, Go ahead. Now, Jesus. If he was playing, New Orleans would be a factor or a three seed. I think if Paul George were playing, probably the Clippers. Now that's would be different. A he he's played a majority of oh, the really? season. Yeah, he oh he's been an Iron Man, Paul George. Breaking your leg in Las Vegas, that's different than eating, eating yourself out the leg. I don't know what's up with does he got a nutritionist? I don't know what New Orleans should be ashamed well, or well. is this chronic? Some guys get hurt. Or some guys overeat. Okay, then give I up know on him. Give, give up on him. Like, what's your question? Or do you just want to complain about Zion Williams? If you were running the organization, what life is he on if he doesn't come back, if they play in the playoff series and he's not available? I'm assuming he's not going to be available this so year. So his career, it's got to be in the balance of well, being a savior. Well, okay. Because they were a problem. You can't move him now okay, if he hasn't I played. Forget the contract status, just your gut, Stiney. Is he going to? Yes. You think he's going to beat this? Yes, I do. Jenny Craig on line one. I mean, how many games has so. he played? Dude. Okay, I, so oh, you're, yeah. you're ready to give up on him. I'm asking you, do you think he's given up on himself? No. What? No. Because he would be lighter a bit, and then he could still be chronic, but you'd be like, well, he lost the weight. He put the so work you're, in. You're, but you're, you're, I'm looking at him you're like, assuming I think he's, like he's got an eating problem. Oh, yeah, put and it, playing the put PlayStation. The the yeah, I believe. I, the way he's well, looking. He needs better supervision from an organization. That's, that's what I'm talking about. And what's the guy, David Grip? What's his, uh, the owner of the Pales? Griffin? The Benson family is the owner's. 
are the owners. The GM. Although it's the woman. GM's David Griffin. The, like, well, if I guess we would hear those stories if they were tired of his act or he wasn't following a plan. But he don't look like he's working to get slimmer. You're going to say and you know he can't. You're behind the no, scenes. I'm just go. I'm, we don't. Know. I'm body shaming, no doubt. I mean, the, I'm just mad, man. I got body envy. All right. Goo thinks man. Zion is overweight. Am, am I? You got yourself into this. No, I'm, I'm out. Not, there's no doubt. I'm His out. hamstrings can't take it. Okay. You want to keep talking? No. Move I'll on. have a new partner in here by Thursday. That's on fine. 95.7 The Game.
quitting gets a bad name. Hey, it's Moses Moody with the Golden State Warriors. Now back to Steiny and Guru. I bet Willard was a big club guy back in the day, 25. No, I can see I him. making stuff happen in Hollywood. I, the city's I, 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 was, I was listening to you guys talk about that, and, <laughs> and you named about 14 clubs. And, and as I'm driving in, I'm like, I haven't heard of any of those. No, Willard, no I'm not way. Kid, dude. He I, said he ain't wasn't on the circuit. I, I, not on the circuit. <laughs> I, I wasn't. I'm not. I never. Like I'm not a club guy. I turned, uh, you know, 35 when I was 15. Wow. I'm just boy. like it's loud in here, isn't it? I love it. I, why am I screaming? <laughs> like when I lean over into someone's ear, I can't even see your face anymore in order to talk to you. Oh, wow, Willard. Like, what are we I doing? The what are honesty. we doing? I, this, this was a, so I uh, went to spring training 100 years ago. All my buddies, and this is post-college, but like pre-everybody getting yeah. married. And uh, Single. We're, we're, we're in Scottsdale in my buddy's backyard, and he's barbecuing, and the guy's got a pool, and we haven't seen each other in years, and we're all talking and having the greatest time, and then poof, okay. Just like it was our job, like you. Now it's time to go get in the car, oh, and man. we got to head for the bars. Yeah. And the night just denigrated from there. And I'm like, why? Why did we feel the, we're the, <laughs> it's we're the same? It's the same group of people. Now we're gonna go over here and spend two hundred dollars. No doubt, no. scream and Might lose our voices. Yeah. I'm like, we were doing great. The backyard was amazing. I love there was it. food. There was a pool. I could hear you. I like you. Like this is great. I don't I get it. You. I don't get it. Because you feel That's it's me. greater That's somewhere me. greener. Just, the grass is not always greener on the other side, Donnie. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. I live it. Yeah. I definitely know that. I'm not a big guy. The, the, the problem with Sacramento. Huh? The problem with the with clubs are. Yeah, we got tired of the city. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Steiner. Yeah, ahead. that's all right. I don't have a club story. <laughs> uh, the problem with clubs is most of them don't open till like ten at yeah. night. I'm, I'm the guy who shows up at a dance club at about 8.40, yeah. and I'm like, like well, this place everybody. sucks. It wasn't yeah. popping. It's like bedtime in an hour. So you, you guys haven't been to Miami then, because they say I you haven't. don't go out until 12 Long in the morning ago. looking no. for stuff. Well, yeah, I actually had That's two, too much for me. I had two trips to Miami, because this is back when I was traveling with, get the... the oh, you know, I love this, my just, favorite. Well, yeah, I was traveling with USC Sorry. when they went to those two Orange Bowls. And, thank you. Um, but I never really got much further. We did go to a club. I couldn't tell you the name of the place. Right, I right. couldn't tell you where. That's the other thing. I might have been to some of the clubs that right. you talked about, no, but no, I no. Haven't, I'm always the guy. I don't know where we're going. Like, I've got friends, and they're like, let's go here. Yeah. It's in unmarked. My compass. It's dark. It's a gray wall. I'm in it. I don't know where I am. But anyway, most of the time in Miami, like, it went as far as the Clevelander. You all okay. know the Clevelander? Of course. Yeah, That's the just, famous one. Right. right. Like, you Never go get been. some drinks, right. and then, you know. Yeah, you, you ain't taking you your shirt off back. on top of the no. bar. I'm not that guy either. No, no. Yeah. Not Coyote Ugly. Ah. Willard, I don't, I don't do let that. me tell you about this morning. <laughs> yeah. Evan and I, my little brother, my friend. Yes. We kind of got into it today, mm. but it was a sport get into it. Okay. So I told Stanley, I'm waiting on you. Everybody stay So in I room feel like or? I'm touching it to, yeah, we were good. In the hornet's nest. Everybody stayed. <laughs> and the subject matter was Logan Webb. Mm -hmm. And I remember last year, we didn't spar, you and I, but Evan said something to me, and I'm going to give him credit, but I don't want you to think I'm going off these three games and last night. I just always felt like he wasn't overrated, but he wasn't Lincecum or, or uh, Kane in his prime. So it was about the stuff. So Sh Shasky's coming out after the show, and I say, "What is he to you in the in the on a good team?" Shasky said two or three, and that's where I'm at. Do you look at Logan Webb as a one? And I'm not being some timey. Yeah. I just, but Evan said this to to kind of. I said you won. He goes, "Goo, they need him to be the one on this team." And I go, "Well, you know what? That ain't Logan." Logan's doing his job, but I just don't think he's Roger Clemens. Well, I mean, listen, when Rodon when, Ro <laughs> when Rodon was on the team, let's say they I, had made the playoffs stuff last was year. Different. Okay. Well, okay, so who's your game one starter? It was Rodon to me. I think I'm with you guys. Okay. Like, I mean, Logan Webb feels like a one for a few reasons. A, the Giants need him to be. Right. B, he's homegrown. C, 
He was given that role one time when it mattered, and he crushed it. He did game, game one oh, and oh, game okay. one okay. against the Dodgers. <laughs> Somebody did remind right? me. Like you take game, game one, one. Can you shove it against a good lineup? Yes, you can. Yeah. So I think he's got sort of the mental and emotional makeup to be a one, but he doesn't have okay. Scherzer right. stuff. Yeah. And I shouldn't hold that against him because no, he's so not like, out there telling you that. You're right. And I don't know. Like, that's the other thing. Logan is like, he's this homegrown guy and he's a good dude. So nobody wants to be like, dude, you're a two. I don't know what he is, but yeah, he from a Do stuff, they have a one, Willard? Because no, that's where I was trying no. to. Okay. Wow, Stiney. No. Why I mean, are you they, trying to. Wow. Because you got Mad Bum and, you, and the guys that I yeah, mentioned. He's you kind of. I don't think. I mean, he's not. Those guys, but he also okay. hasn't been given the opportunity. Is Marquez a one for the Rockies? No, all right, but that's pretty good. No, yeah. right? No, most <laughs> teams. He's a pretty good pitcher. pitcher. Yeah, no, yeah. Logan. There's nothing wrong right. with Logan Webb, right. but but is he is he overwhelming with his stuff? That's okay. No, right. no, no. That's not his deal. He's I'm gonna get ground balls. I'm gonna hit my spots and got a got a bulldog mentality. But no, he not yeah. he not even from a stuff standpoint. He's not even the guy he went against last night. Yeah. And speaking of last night, real quick, so I know I'm going Westbrook. Uh, I sent out a tweet I wanted to, to bring back. I said they should throw at Muncie next time he's up. But <laughs> he's too comfortable, right? Well, he's I think you're too comfortable. Oh, boy. Me? <laughs> oh, wow. He, he, there's truth in it. But go ahead, Willard. You're, People need to understand I'm laughing when I hear you're, it. you're not wrong. Willard, you going solo today? Uh, apparently. <laughs> Apparently, well, you'll oh, stick around. It's like <laughs> it's, used it's, to it's, it. Never met a monkey in life. This, this Go ahead. new thing here, at ninety-five <laughs> seven. We love Larry. Um, yeah, yeah, he'll I be miss here. Him. No, yeah. he'll be here. I don't know where he's probably. You know what? I, I bet I know where he is. Like his. I worked with him before. No, so, his yeah. little card that beeps you in. I don't think his card's oh, working. No, that that's right. A, I had to get on the elevator. To, go down. I had to beep him in yesterday. No, oh. out at the parking lot. He couldn't use his car. Oh, was just no. sitting there. Oh, I wow. pulled up behind Larry, and for <laughs> two incredible. minutes, I'm like, "Who is this idiot? He's just sitting there at the little <laughs> at the little card reader and yeah, just a I car." Don't have those I'm like, "Well, yeah. if you just sit there, then I can't get in either." And I'm all ticked off, and he pulls forward and then rolls back and pulls up next to me. I'm like, "Oh, it's Larry. Hi, Larry. <laughs> yeah, no, let me beep you." Anyway. Hard. Um, what was the question? But what we're talking about the Muncie. The thing. Well, yeah. we're talking about, well, and we're, when we're talking about rotations, I mean, let's let's go off a five man rotation. Okay. I mean, ideally, you'd want five ones, right? You'd want five ones, but most teams will take a one, two, three, four, five. Well, some teams may have two twos, a three, and a four. Most teams, exactly. So, how many ones are there? So, how many right, ones? Okay. you can yeah. you well, can win. How many ones do we got in okay. baseball? What do you well, think? I think? How many ones I'm are gonna there? say thir- Well, the third last three guys Webb pitched against, I would say. Twelve to fifteen. Okay, so we got twelve to fifteen ones. Garrett Garrett Cole yeah. is a one. And and uh Urias. Urias. Yeah. And what who's, about, uh, who's, who did Webb go against? Cease? Him? Yeah, that's not okay, in Chicago. Now, what about Scherzer, Verlander? I'm still putting it Burns. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Woodruff about, from uh, Milwaukee. What about Gallon? I mean, we've reached a point where, like, I mean, you just said some names that half our audience doesn't even yeah, know who right. they are. Okay. Alcantara. So, like, yeah. Alcantara. Al- Alcantara, who, by the way, got, also, he got he lit did. up yesterday. Yeah. No, Absolutely he did. Nine got runs, lit right? Up. Yeah. 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 So, I don't know. Yeah, most teams don't have that guy. Well, like, the J- Webb was a one or two on a team that won 107 games. Yes. Like he was that yes. year. And he uh, go, so preaching. And then I don't know. I can't think of who the number three was offhand, but I bet he was pretty good. But this goes back to what I was telling Steiny and you all about Might is better than I know three. it's about money, but if you're going to let Rodon go, the message to me and Giant fans were oh, we got, we got it. We got enough pitching. So now well, you're putting it all the whole on its own web when you could have been greater by retaining Rodon. Like I just and I know he's hurt and he ain't through it yeah, in for the Yankees. Yeah. But damn, how I just hate when you have something, Larry, and you let it go, and then you're waiting to try to br- get that back. You're when you had it. I'm you're sorry. listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ <laughs> FM and HD One San Francisco, always live on Twitch, YouTube. And the free Odyssey app. And Larry's here. I'm yes. so glad Hi, you said that. Larry. I just wanted to get that out I was of just going to say that, actually. Oh, wow. uh, no, I mean, why did they let Rodon go? I mean, Rodon was their ace. Webb's, Webb's okay. you know, slated in so right behind the, him. Webb's not an ace. Webb's see, a two. And, here's, the, here, here's the rub, because I agree with you guys. This is kind of my 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 take with, uh, with the Giants today, because I'm already frustrated. 
Oh, is, wow. Because you don't frustrated. get that right, easy. I'm already yeah. frustrated. Yeah. Last Seriously. night, it's not about a four and six record. It's about the way that looks. And it looked like 95% of giant Dodger games the last two years. And it's frustrating. It's like wow. you don't even belong on the same field wow, with this man. team. And that's frustrating. And it's not okay. And it's all that stuff. But here, here's kind of the rub. The rub is, I still think, the Farhan regime, I'm not going to make this about one person, but this regime is uber-obsessed with the game they play. And the game they play, they're very good at it. But the problem is, it's kind of like what I likened it to earlier today on social media is you're one of these people that's uh, just kind of hyper about planning everything out for a two-week vacation. You ever gone anywhere with these people? They've got every hour planned for the whole vacation. And then you get to the airport to go on the trip, but they never even bought the plane tickets. Like, they're so good at the little like oh we could I think the word is I think the word is inept. Well, no. Cuz that's a big part to miss the yeah, it's, it's, it's micro and macro and they're over here playing this like oh we've got what Bryce Johnson and he's written there on taxi squad and here's the roster moves today and we're up down and you forgot to just like have a core. Mm. You forgot to have a core of the baseball team that all these other teams have that's so evident when they play the Dodgers, and I know they've tried, and they tried to sign Carlos Correa, and they wish some of the people on the farm are further along. But here's the rub. If you, if you say, well, then, come on, pony up, Rodon and Correa. Have you seen what Rodon and Correa are doing this year? Yeah, but that, that's, right, yeah. that's like one of those oh, yeah, arguments yeah. that because you were going to spend and because what you were going to spend on didn't look like a wise maneuver. Now, you have all this license to never spend. No, no doubt. I mean, you know, spend. Of course, I mean, you, seriously, of course you have sit to spend. It out. You're not, don't sit out the off-season. I mean, no, no, no. And, and they I didn't. would look forward and, to them and, coming and they back. Didn't. They, they, they didn't they, sit well, out well, the off-season. Yeah. You know they, they didn't. They, they paused on Correa because of injuries, but then they signed Hanniger, who played 57 games last year, and is hurt. And their big signing was Conforto, and he played how many games last year? But they year? tried for Zero. Judge, too, right? though, Larry. But, but wait they a minute. But you know the answer to that. They signed those guys to one in three years. They would have stuck with Correa if it were three years. But it was 13. Like, uh, again. That's the deal they negotiated. I understand I mean, I'm not going to take understand responsibility because uh, they no. negotiated anyway, a 13-year the, deal. The, 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 the point is this. The micro of each of these contracts, when you look at Rodon, or any pitcher for that matter, five, six years. I heard Ned Coletti say earlier today, he said, I've never signed a contract for three years or more that didn't make me totally uncomfortable, including right. Clayton Kershaw. But he did. Pitchers. Yes. So if you sit in a room with these guys and they're like, here's why we don't want to do five years for Rodon. I'm like, I get it. But then you also have no ace. So, That's, so which is it? These are, these, so are, which is these are such bogus yeah. excuses. <laughs> this is year five. They drafted Hunter Who's Bishop over Corbin Carroll. Who's no, making excuses? I'm not, I'm so not pointing at you. Office. I'm saying for, if anybody's I, making like, excuses for this team not being good, it's year five. Okay, yeah. so if you so Leap what if you, if you didn't get a free agent you wanted, so what? It's year five. A cycle in the minor leagues is four years. That means that you should have had guys coming up that oh. you've already drafted and developed that that weren't saving guys that were your guys. But instead, there's nobody. Bishop, so that's Luciano, not on anybody. I, I but I thought they there's, were coming. There's no question. There, there, there's no question. I mean, they drafted Hunter Bishop. The Diamondbacks drafted Corbin Carroll. Corbin Carroll's a fixture in Arizona with a long-term deal. Hunter Bishop can't get out of A ball. KD, okay, KD is wearing I, his jersey last yeah. night. Can I tell you, you one that? thing I am yeah. surprised Boy. at? I am really surprised that it doesn't feel like the Giants organization or fa- Giants organization's gotten a lot of uh, gratitude for the 107 win season. I mean, couldn't you make a case? Big, big picture. Like it's kind of like. A, not really. Kyle Shanahan, first two years were a wash. Now he's won three. Now they're going to three in four years. Yeah. But, and I know it's not going to be that good. But first two years were cleaning it out. Then they won 107. Then they took a step back, which we all knew. So it's like, they're not, it's not as dire as. I think, Stiney, I think, I think you're going to I think you're looking at that man. the wrong way, though, Stiney, no because, because who did they win 107 with? It was all of Sabian's guys. It'd be like if Shanahan inherited all those a team. All those guys were, were pre. That's not true. All those, all those guys were pre. The majority Farhan? of the nine of the 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 107 win team were Sabian's guys. It was Crawford. It was Belt. It was Longoria. It was Buster. All having one last go round, one last year. So it would be like if Shanahan inherited a team and in year one they went fifteen and one right. and then they bottomed out. 
you know, it's a different situation. I mean, the Giants didn't have a great minor league situation going on with Sabian and, and Bobby Evans there at the end, and they, they had to make a change. But, you know, they the core that they won with was Sabian's core. Mm. I mean, so, who, yeah. who well, was Lamont, big? You're Lamont afraid you're, had a monster yeah, year. Yeah, you're, you're right. Who you're forgetting. Se- you're uh, forgetting Darren Ruff the, had a monster year. Ruff was their OPS no, guy. Right? Man. You're, you're forgetting the Donovan, Donovan Solano. Yeah. You're forgetting Yaz. You're forgetting Wade. You're forgetting the acquisition of Chris Bryant the second it, half of the season. But the, all those guys Gosman. took lesser of a Gosman. role than Gosman. Sabian's core. Sabian's but, core yeah. led that charge. Ah. Yeah. There was nothing that you was, was Buster yeah. Posey. That was a mix. He it didn't was, go by was, himself. But Buster there was, was nothing. Was Brandon Pelt. Yeah. It was Ivan yeah. Longoria. There was, was Brandon nothing Crawford. youthful about it, Larry. Stand so away. to Steiny's point, even though they won 107, Steiny, it wasn't like, oh, these guys are going to be fixtures around here. We Like, t- three years ago, I was here at the Giants' farm was loaded. Like, oh, I mm-hmm. can't. It's just going to be jam-packed. So the 107 to me was with guys that were kind of getting phased out. And now you look at what do we have to look forward to? I'm just telling you, I know it's early. I thought the Giants were better than the Rockies and the and the Diamondbacks. I know it's early. I'm watching them like, oh, they got talent. And they got young talent playing. You're half right. The I mean, Gi- they're better than the Rockies. Oh. They're, they're not the D-backs, though. That, they're, oh, they're not better than the but D-backs. I, I thought, There's no way they're better than the D-backs. Yeah, this... But in theory... It's, it's, it's just like... Put- to your point, Steiny, it's ten games, so you can't you can't write this off yet. But it's a look. No they, doubt, they look <laughs> exactly like they looked last year. Now I remember in 2021, and I think this was 2021, they started off things with the Dodgers this exact same way. And then do you remember, like a week later, they went to L.A. Uh, yeah. for a four-game this is series. Who's our guy that saved the ball? And, they lost, and yeah. they lost. They lost the first game of that series. <laughs> And everyone was like, this, this is, is a, a bunch of crap. Here we go. Right. And then they won three in He's a row right. in L.A. Right. And off to 107 wins they went. Facts. So could that happen again? No. I doubt it. But well, it could, let me, Terry. Let me, tell you one thing we know. let me tell you one thing we know about Gabe Kapler teams. They get better as the year goes on. Well, let me, let me tell you something true? else we know about it Gabe Kapler teams. Well, I want to say last He's year. managed for five <laughs> yeah, years, they, and he's been they, four or 500 okay. for, for and, those and, five years. And what about Dickinson? You can feel it in Cal. <laughs> the 107 is the aberration, no guys. Doubt. Come on. That's, no cool. that's the biggest aberration, aberration in the history of Amer- well, Bay Area sports. i got to remember John Dickinson that said this right. about Kapler. Now, you could, I, I'm paraphrasing. He said the pandemic season, the 60 games, saved him from getting fired. Like, I'm Wait, like, who, hey, who no, said that? That? John Dickinson. Remember, he, yeah, he said, because he's he never been pandemic. a Kapler fan. Oh, But right. that kind of put the pause on. That would have been. They were 29 would, and 31. Dude, they should have made it. They lost their right Why would he have left. been fired? That was his first just, year. Because it would have been another full season. It would have been that full season of failure. But that was his first year. Yeah. yeah the 107 is what fire him after one year? JD's going to be mad at you because I think you're misrepresenting. <laughs> no, I'm going to text him too. <laughs> no, I thought he said, okay, they go 29 and 31. They don't come back without 107. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna let JD speak yeah. for himself. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna yeah, tell yeah. my butcher yeah. to shout out. Yeah. <laughs> I think JD might yeah. have had that differently, but either way, either way, I think the 107 guys is the aberration. That was an incredible it's, year. I don't know what it's I incredible. can't explain it. It's I was incredible. talking to a Giants person the other day who was like, "Dude, I can't explain that either." Wow. So, so I, you know, I don't know what to say. No, about that's, that. to your point. That Dodger that season started. It was like this. It, it, it looked they exactly went to LA, like this. Swept them, and then that started. Right. They're outclassed. They're, they're, yeah. It would be like if you put like a horse that's going to the Derby into a mating, uh, you know, a claimer wow, race, they're... you know, and all of a sudden you're like. Wow, look at that horse. Yeah, and the then, Dodgers and the Giants right now are, you know, the Gi- Dodgers have guys at AAA that, I mean, basically every guy in the Dodger lineup would hit third, four, or three, four, or five in the Giant lineup. Um, and the Giants well, are putting Yaz in the three hole. They're hitting for Joey hitting Bart, him, or man, I should say, they're putting hitting Wilmer They Flores can't even get rid of them if they wanted well, to because they need Bart, did, right? Did you even see, did you see Slessor's tweet last night? No. That stat, like, I'm not a big stat guy. Uh, but sometimes they they reach out and they smack you in the face. Uh, listen to this: the Giants in the first ten games offensively have struck out 115 times. It's like the third most in history, or something, isn't but it? They got it a is, lot of home runs. Though. It is the third most in history. Ever. Number number one and number two were both in the last five years. Both of them were the Baltimore Orioles. 2021, 117. Only two more. That's the most ever. 2018, 116, 
that is only one more. That's the those are the top three: one seventeen, one sixteen, and one fifteen. And yes, those two teams both went on to win fifty some odd games. Oh my God! So you're saying that might that's be that's the pace they're on offensively. Yes, you're right. They blend in a lot of home runs. Okay, let me give this to you, Willard. Like that's a scary. Dustin May is going to punch out. I, I every, to every time they load the bases the with Saturday, nobody out, they had two strike, dudes. They did one again last Crawford night. Swing and miss. What did it again last night? Is strikeout? Is strikeout? And then someone finally but flew out. But what if we I said that's the new baseball though? Well, it's, still it's, it's older yeah. now than it was last yeah. year. <laughs> What's the Giants' slogan again this year? Uh, nobody likes us. See <laughs> no, that's the Spanish translation. <laughs> yeah, oh my yeah. God. And, and, no, and, no, nothing like it. Nothing, nothing like, like it. it. Nothing yeah. like the it. Except for the Orioles. Nothing like yeah, it. Except right the Orioles. Like like the part, they're kind of like it. The part that gets me, like the, a bigger picture thing, I remember talking about to this with JD last year, and I was like, how, how can they get better than the Padres or Dodgers? That, you, it feels like Landon how are they Judge? not going to be playing for third man, every year? Man, um, how would you well, answer for, well, that? First of all, okay. we got to get Otani. The Giants have, have a ton of money. Not only yes, did the Giants do. have a mediocre, boring team last year that finished 500 miraculously, gotcha. but Steiny, they made like $80 million Okay, Larry, do they got a closer? Do they got a, a guy profit? they can close? If you run your, if you run your company poorly... And you're just totally bad all year. You shouldn't make eighty million dollars of profit. They've become A's West, and what the A's do is lose in anonymity and make a tidy profit. And what are the Giants doing right now? Well, Larry, lose, they tried to get the and big they're making fish. a profit. They even Stanton. I'm like, they tried to close. They but just I mean, can't tr- close it, man. There's nothing weaker. There's I'm nothing weaker than the tried. You know, tried, yeah. tried. I mean, come on, seriously. I don't want to hear about the labor pain. Show me the damn baby. So well, are you and, and, and Aaron regime, Judge is the you only want a new way. Voice? I'm asking. Yeah, I think I think if they I think if this season is a train wreck, that the giant ownership group ought to take a real long, wow. hard look at the regime. This, this, I see how many where they're chances at. do you get, Willard? Yeah. This year this year is, this year's huge because the narrative has been that the reason Otani will leave the Angels is because he's got no chance to win there. Well, you can't pitch to oh, Otani. Man. Oh, man. Well, come to the Giants if you're coming off back to back 500 or less oh, well, seasons. Unless you're going to start at can... 75 million a year. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Good yeah, stuff. That's yeah. Great you guys. stuff, guys. <laughs> Sounds like you got a good okay. one. All right. <laughs> Bye, Steiny. All right. Chance. All right. Bye bye. I had an uncle. They said if he had another drink of dark, he could possibly die. He said, I'm going out happy. <laughs> Crown Royal. I'm true story. He's no longer with us. They're longtime friends. Let me tell you something real quick about Dibs that I'm sure not everybody knows. <laughs> and first time partners. Hang in there, big guy. There'll be bright days ahead. Now, these two homegrown Bay Area boys finally come together to take over sports talk. Get the hell off of my doorstep. Major League Baseball, you steam. It's Willard and Dibs <laughs> on 957 The Game. Ooh. I can tell you hot today. Oh, that's exactly what I was hoping for. I expected it. I feel it. I hear you. It's 10 games in, and we got plenty on the Warriors and Kings and Draymond. Draymond has a thousand interesting things to say that we got to get to. And Ramona Shelburne, our good friend, uh, who is going to be on her way to the Laker game tonight, by the way. So in addition to Warriors, we can talk about this play-in scenario tonight. She's joining us in an hour but I knew, oh, I knew, <laughs> I knew you're going to come in hot today. And uh, yeah, I'm not bothered by a four and six start. Like that's that's baseball. Uh, I'm not bothered by one loss game. I it, it's it's not that they lost. It's how they lost. It's the way these games seem to look every single time they play the Los Angeles Dodgers right now. Which is it looks like a pitch. It used to be that like you couldn't score on each other. These two teams, not that long ago, toe to toe, someone pushes a run across in the eighth and wins two to one. That's what it, now it's a pitcher's duel for three innings. Then the Dodgers get a little bit of a lead. Then there's a moment where some giant could hit a home run and it gets all everybody excited. That giant strikes out. Last night it was Joey Bart. And then we move on into the later innings where the Dodgers make it a laugher. It's the exact same game every time they play each other right now. So uh, you got two more of them for the Giants to sort of, uh, I don't know, gather some sort of of faith or hope or excitement out of this. Op- this is their opening homestand. This is the picture you're going to give your fans. I know that results 
uh, in baseball, you can't take three or four games and and make some sort of a sweeping judgment. But um, this is not a good look. This is not a good look. Only a few games in. It's not a good look because it's not a good team. You know, I mean, and 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 their five hundred, I think, is is optimistic. I mean, look what look what we've seen so far. They got thoroughly outclassed at Yankee Stadium. Then they went to the South Side. The Chai Sox look like they're in a world of hurt. Giants just looked awesome. You know, I mean, hitting all kinds of home runs, winning two out of three there. Then they come home for the Royals and they look dead. Yep. They look dead. I've never seen a sleepier opening day than that opening day. Uh, then they lose badly, I thought, because of Kapler. You know, it's a terrible loss on Saturday. Um, and they were getting totally dominated on Sunday until the last inning. They had two hits going to the last inning and then somehow miraculously pulled out an Easter miracle. And now here come the Dodgers, and the Dodgers thoroughly outclassed them last night, and tonight it's going to be more of the same because the kid on the hill for the Dodgers is Dustin May, Mm -hmm. and he blew out that, I don't think it was the elbow or whatever, and he's had the surgery and he's now back. He's been Incredible, he's got Mark. good stuff. Yeah. Fr- and, but his first stuff. two starts against the Diamondbacks, he's mowed them down. Now here's a Giants team that's averaging like 12 strikeouts per game. He could strike out 15 tonight. <laughs> he absolutely could. He could and and it's just and and to me, if you say what's the real issue, I think the issue is the Giants have not crafted a lineup. So I mean. They don't have a lineup to speak of. I mean, the Dodgers start with Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, Will Smith, Max Muncie. The Giants last night started with Tyro Estrada, Wilmer Flores, Mike Yastrzemski, and J.D. Davis. That is, that's a, that's a wide divide yes. between talent and salary there on those four guys. So the Giants' farm system may be better under, uh, under Farhan than it was under Sabian, but we haven't seen it yet. And um, this whole fascination with, you know, um, the back end of the 25-man, 26-man roster and the 40-man roster, I like I, you, that's okay to play those games. I think you might be able to find a couple players along the way. They have, in certain cases, Tyro and Yaz. Um, but you're not finding building block players at the back of the roster. So where are your building block players coming from if you're not being able to sign them in free agency except for giving guys one-year outs? That's the other thing. All, anybody, if any of these guys they sign this offseason do well, they're gone because mm-hmm. they all have one year outs, except for Hanniger, who came home basically, and he might be damaged. Yeah, and where the hell is he? Like, he's why hurt. is that? I know he's hurt, but why is it so quiet? I mean, an oblique, and you're just like poof, just gone. And, and no, an oblique that he hurt, I think, on March like the eighth. Like or when they like tell you, well, I mean, we've got no timetable for you. Yeah, this, this is kind of indefinite right now. I don't think it's supposed to be serious, but where the hell is he? Yeah, like that would that would. And I'm not saying it would make it some great lineup, but it would change it. That would change the look. That's a middle of the order hitter when he's healthy. Uh, but they don't they don't have that right now. Here's here's where I've arrived because and I get this question a lot. And we all know the, the the history of what you know you and I have said about the San Francisco Giants baseball since Farhan Zaidi arrived here. I get the question a lot every time things are not looking good. Oh, you still like him now? You still like him now, Mark? Do you still support Farhan Zaidi in this regime? I, I'm not at a point ten games into this season or even off of last season where I'm going to say I I am off the regime. Here's what I will say though. Something needs to evolve, and the question is twofold. One, the game that you're playing of, as many have put it, on the margins, aren't you aware that that's not good enough? But the second question, and maybe is the more, the more important one, why are you playing this game? In other words... Did the ownership instruct you to play this game? That's what I want to get to. Were you hired with this why, game plan in mind? Why are the San Francisco Giants playing small? That's what I want to know. Why are you playing small? I know. Well, what the, you know, the counter would be like, we went after Correa. We went after Judge. Was that small? So, no, it wasn't. But they're not here. And yes, there are very good, I think, excusable reasons why. Aaron chose not to come, and he chose the Yankees. That's not crazy. Carlos Correa, that falls apart. And what the Mets did next, I think, gives a little corroboration to what the Giants had to say about it. So I'm not overly upset about even those two things. But the whole approach from the beginning seems to be 
Check us out. Watch what we can find in the weeds, which is great. It actually has helped every team Farhan has ever worked for, A's, Dodgers, prior to this. That's fine, unless it seems to be the only game that you're playing. That needs to be something that's happening alongside development, alongside major free agent signings. And I know they're trying, and you just said you don't want to hear try. But the bottom line is, it feels like the Giants regime has become obsessed with showing everybody all the cool little trinkets that they can find. That's great. Trinkets are cool. Unless they're the only thing you've got. Why are we playing small? You're the Giants. You're the Giants. Literally, listen to your name. You're the Giants. You're, you're, you're charging Nordstrom prices for the dollar store, you know? And that's what it is right now. You're charging big-time prices because you used to be something, and now you're you're you basically are shopping for your players at the dollar store. Everything's a dollar. Look, we got this for a dollar. We got that for a dollar. It's you know this flea market building plan is really it's it, you know we'll see what it produces, but you know what's going to speak louder than the wins and the losses? It's going to be the attendance because last night it was a lot of Dodger fans. Yep. There was a lot of blue, and so that that you know buoyed the final number. But once the Dodgers leave town and the Rockies come to town, they won't bring fans. And then it will just be Giants fans. And the Giants fans who are engaged and interested in this team. And there's not enough of them to to move the needle. And I think that's going to speak louder than anything. The empty seats. Uh, it's not just a... I've, there's been way worse Giants teams. I've been... I've, you know, oh, God. I'm, come on. Yeah. I've been li- I, you know, I grew up in the, <laughs> in the Sunset State, District yeah. you know, going to Giants games for years. I've seen way worse teams than this from the Giants. It's not about how bad they are. It's about the lack of hope and the lack of a direction. It's not verbalized. Farhan hit out all spring. Gabe, with his neurotic conversations with the media people, and, and he just he's nervous. He's, he's fidgety. He's, he doesn't command... Uh, he doesn't make you believe like ah oh, everything's going to be fine. He seems like he's constantly kind of on edge. Um, this incremental improvement plan is great as long as you have a farm system that's spitting out players and you're attracting players. But I don't, I don't know if it's San Francisco or California or the Giants' lack of foundation piece players, but they don't seem to be a choice destination for free agents. So that kills that. They haven't been able to really hit in the amateur draft with any consistency under under this regime. That's number two. So then it really comes down to trades. Trades are usually made when you have prospects to trade. So they don't have a lot of trade uh, ammo. So they're in a real difficult spot right now. And I I don't. You said how or Steiny was saying how are they ever going to compete with the Dodgers and the Padres? They're going to have to spend. They're going to have to get creative with their money. So the Dodgers got Mookie Betts partially because they got creative with their money. The mm-hmm. Red Sox didn't want to pay him. The Dodgers said, here's Jeter Downs and Alex Verdugo, and we'll take all this money and we'll pay him. The Giants are going to have to make that kind of a move where they find a team that's financially hurting, and they say, you know what, we'll take on $25 million commitment, they, and we'll d- get this player for less because of our financial wealth. They've Otherwise, done, They've done deals like that. They're just not at the high level like a Mookie Betts. Like you and some Giants fans, are, that's how they got Will Wilson. But who they is went, Will Wilson right, right Who's now? he going to become? But he was the 16th pick in the draft, and the very next year the Giants plucked him because they attacked the Angels' finances. Zach and Cozart. Said, right, we'll take Cozart guy. and then just cut him and get that salary off and end up with the 16th pick in the draft. And, great. and that was but, a great move because yeah. they took on $13 million of money. And they, well, that was a great move. That was a, it was a smart move. We'll see if Will Wilson makes it pay off on the back end. But, I mean, they just gotta, they've got to get creative with the use of their money um, and then I think they've got to, you know, ultimately, um, somewhere along the line, I think they have to start thinking of also about the marketing aspect of this. Larry Bear and Peter McGowan and the Giants ownership group that bought the team in the late, in the early 90s, 92, going into 93, totally understood marketing. They brought in bonds, but it wasn't just they brought in a great player. He was also had local ties, and it rejuvenated the area. You might want to start thinking about some players who you can acquire that may excite the fan base somewhat, um, and try to bring them in as you're developing your farm system, as you're you know trying to build this thing up. But here we are, year five, and are they closer 
to um, to Dodgers and Padres and contention and playoffs and another World Series than they were at the beginning. If they are, I don't, I can't see it. And yeah. I was just, and I got into a discussion on my channel the other day with with uh, FP Santangelo, who's a friend of mine, former Giant, and he's telling me how deep the Giants' position players are. And I was just at spring training, my mouth dropped open. I was like, what? What are you talking about, bro? I love you, but come on. And here we are, 10 days into the season. They don't like Bart. They don't like Ramos for the most part. And yet both of them are up right now because they have nothing else against left-handed pitching. And they're getting dominated by lefties. And so here comes Bart and here comes Ramos. And and it's like they're crossing their fingers on two guys that they really told us a couple weeks ago need a lot of work and need a lot of development. And now they're up. So I want to if there's if this team's deep position player wise I haven't seen it I did not see it in spring. Well, that's a scary statement that you just recalled from Steiny of like how are they going to compete with the Dodgers and the Padres? How are you going to compete with the San Diego Padres? Are we really having that conversation? Farhan said before the season we've started to target players who do have local ties, which you could look at that and say, oh, that's smart. Like you mentioned Bonds, people like that. Harrison, uh, the young yeah, arm they got. Jock Peterson, Hanniger, whatever. You got local ties. But it doesn't really do anything for you if the players don't perform at a high level. Plus, there's an aspect of that that's scary to me. Like, are you telling me that you can't woo people who don't have Bay Area ties because of taxes, politics, weather, stadium, Gabe. whatever, Gabe, whatever the reasons might be? Is that what you're telling me? Now, that can switch quickly. The Warriors were never a free agent destination. And then they become the free agent destination at a certain point. Iguodala was literally their right. first free agent of note that they got. So you can switch that, and uh, and and maybe, maybe this group will at some point, but they do not anymore have the luxury of time because the biggest free agent in the history of the game is getting ready to get out there. And this season, to me, is as much about that, presenting yourself to him, as it is about trying to get to the playoffs this year. Uh, we want uh, you to be at Chase Center. Do you want to be at Chase Center for yes. the Warriors' first home playoff game of the year? We're giving away a pair of tickets to Game 3 against the Kings. Make sure you're listening all day on Thursday for your chance to win. Uh, your Giants phone calls, 888-957-9570, are coming up next. Larry's in for dibs. It's Willard and Dibs. Chance are here.
Ball's crank deep left center field towards the gap and gone. Lead off home run, Mookie Betts. Now, back to Willard and Dibbs on 95-7 the game. All right, that was uh, that was Joe Davis on Spectrum Sports LA. And um, they've played one another once this year, and I've already had enough. <laughs> I've had enough. Like honestly. It, it, and in some ways, I get that. There's nothing that anybody who works for the Giants can do about this on a day-in and day-out basis. There's nothing you can do about the roster that the Dodgers have built. There's nothing you can do about how good Mookie Betts is. You could uh, dot Max Muncy. You could. I mean, I'm not in favor of that. I know in baseball circles. Like, I had a conversation years ago when uh, I was doing play-by-play in a minor league baseball team. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. So, um, I talked to a guy, and I'll, I'll name him because he made it to the show for two seconds, and then that was it for his career. His name is Greg Jones. He pitched for the Angels uh, a number of years ago. And I remember having a conversation with him because uh, when, when he was uh, in the minors, same team that, that, that we were working for, uh, there was a, you know, it was like the first or second game of maybe, second game of a four-game series. And you had a team that just hung one on him, you know, put up 17 runs in a game or whatever. And he was a reliever, and he came in in the eighth inning, and he just hucked 
a 95er right off the guy's thigh. Just, and right, here come, okay, boys will be boys. Everybody's going to pound their chest a little bit. All right, calm down. Everybody get back in the dugout and go to first. And I think fans are always like, you don't know. Did you do that on purpose? Did you not? I always think this. Does, do, do guys miss their spot? Yes. Do Major League p- Baseball pitchers also, can they hit a spider 60 feet away? Yes, they can. So if you hit someone in the thick of the thigh with a fastball, did you do that on purpose? Probably is the answer. So I get into a conversation with him. I'm like, well, what's going on there? He didn't do anything. There wasn't anything going on in the game. There was no controversy. So what's going on? He looks at me. He's like, yeah, I dotted him on purpose. And I said, why? He goes, because this is the second game of a four-game series, and their whole team was just too damn comfortable. They're too comfy in the box. They got to make them uncomfortable. And I think in today's baseball, people are a little uncomfortable with that idea. But I, that stuff happens. It happens. And so could you make the case? Max Muncy, for whatever reason, is too comfy at Oracle. He is way too comfortable. Because the ball, last night, Lair, I'm sitting there, lovely Christy and I, my sons, we're watching the game. The second he walks to the plate with the bases loaded, I looked at her, I go, here comes the grand slam. Before I even got slam out of, whack, there it goes. Left field, bleachers. You could, you could set your watch to it. So I'm not saying they got to hit the guy tonight, but something has got to change because these games for a Giants fan are unbearable. Yeah. They're unbearable. Well, he's so easy to, it is to not unbearable like. unbearable to watch them play the Dodgers right now with the gap that is between these two lineups. Max Muncy has 23 home runs in 73 games against the Giants. 23 home runs. You know what my that's answer a is? Full, that's a yeah. 50 home run I, pace. I know, but I'm, I don't remember the 50 games in which he did not homer. I don't remember that. It feels like he homers every other at bat. He's like a batting champion. The guy's like, uh, you know, yeah, looks like Tony Gwynn and Wade Boggs and Rod Carew and all these guys all built into one. No, I mean, Max Muncy, I agree. And you don't have to go up and in, but how about down and in? How about dust him? How about how about make him leave his feet? Um, and and at least you know. And, and 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 you know what? If you do it, the benches are going to empty because they're going to know it's a message because that's how obvious it is that he owns them. But I mean, seriously, next time the Giants have an ownership meeting, maybe send Muncie an invite because he owns them. <laughs> you know, I mean, he's he. And next time you're going to sign somebody, get Muncie's approval. Now, I don't, I don't know what to say about the Giants and the Dodgers right now. And Muncy's kind of an interesting guy because he's kind of their their Farhan move. He's a Farhan guy. Right. Farhan and, did find him. Right. He literally found him and put him there. Yeah. yeah. But the Giants, I think, I think what it really comes down to is the Giants have to, I mean, right now, it's one thing for the Dodgers. The Dodgers, I looked it up, the Dodgers have like $570 million in annual revenue, right? They have huge revenue. They have a lot more revenue than the Giants. But the Padres should be the Padres are AJ Preller and the Padres ownership are going after every major fish that's on the market. Free agency, they're interested. They had an j- offer for Judge. Yep. They went after Soto. Their team that's going to be after Otani. They are saying, you know what? We are going after the top tier players. Then you go on to the next level, Mark, which are the international players. The Padres are throwing big money around in the international market. I think they got the top international guy this year. So. It's time for the Giants to go pursue the best baseball players on the planet at every level. So international market, they got to be competitive. Free agent market, they got to be competitive. Trade market, they got to be competitive. And then if they want to mix in Farhan's 26th man and 39th and 40th Great. man yeah, yeah. Uh, shenanigans and, and shopping and yeah. this guy goes and that guy comes, that's fine. You can do that as well. There's nothing There's nothing against turning over the bottom of your roster looking for incremental improvement. That's great. But it has to be in addition to your going after foundation piece guys. And it's like the Giants make a couple of forays into Latin America for big-time guys. It doesn't work out. You know, Estelona and uh, Lucius Fox out of the Bahamas and a couple other guys, and they get they don't do it, and then they get cold feet, and they don't want to do it again. It's like you know, you have to go continually go after the best players on, in every category, um, or you have no chance of winning. The Padre thing is something I want to respond to, but uh, but let's also hear from our listeners eight 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 nine five seven nine five seventy. Gus is in Tracy. 
Uh, you're on with uh, with Willard and Larry. And hi, Gus. What are you doing? Hey, how are you, really, how are you guys doing? Yeah, what's Good. up? I love the show. You, you know, I, I've been a Giants fan since uh, 1964, and I'm so I'm so dis- so disgusted in the way they're they're running the, the way they're running this. Um, why why don't why don't why don't they just have one player play one position and leave him there for the season instead of you know having you know, what what ten games is that they already have what three guys play first base. Well, Gus, Gus, let me let me let me jump in right away, and, and then and then we'll let you continue. You, I, 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 Gus, I'm going to guess you've been a baseball fan for a really, really long time, and I know that when things don't work, people's immediate response is, "Well, let's just go back to the way it used to be." Nobody plays baseball that way anymore. Um, yes, Mookie Betts gets right field. Correct. There are a handful of those players in baseball, but I want you to watch the way the Dodgers play. They don't just grab eight guys and stick them at the same position all year long. They got a couple more than the Giants do. The Giants need some of that, but the days are gone of these are this is our starting eight. You understand that, right? Right. I, I do and then I don't. And I think I think um, pl- um the fact that we've been one of the worst uh, defensive teams, I think it has to stem with the fact that you know, the guys are playing, you know, he's playing second base one day, he's playing third, then he's out in the outfield. I just think that for, maybe maybe so that you're right, I'm sure you're, you're right, but there's got to be a point where you got to leave a guy there for a certain amount of time so he gets comfortable. He knows he's going to play at first, he knows he's going to get his head back, he's going to feel comfortable at the plate, instead of coming in and going, okay, where am I going to play today? You know, it's like, like, for instance, if, my my work. If I came in to work every single day and I didn't know what I was going to do, I'd be really really frustrated. Well, and I probably wouldn't do a very good job. Yeah, Gus, I, I I'd say this like that. That conversation came up last year with Jock Peterson, and and Jock was the first one to say he's like, y'all understand that that's this is what I signed up here to do. Like Jock Peterson would not make the All Star team if you put him out there against left handers consistently because he doesn't do it very well. So they are going to have a couple of those guys. My sense is, if blessed with health, Conforto and Hanniger are going to be the corner outfielders. That, and, and, and you'll get a day off here or there when it's not the right night, like Conforto last night. But, but, but the days of just, like, go play 158 games in left field, Barry Bonds, it just... Hitters aren't built that way anymore. Well, I don't know about Very, that. very I, few of them. I mean, well, let's take a look at the Atlanta Braves. Look, look, look at the Braves lineup. They got Sean Murphy behind the plate. He's pretty much an everyday guy. You got Matt Olson at first base. He's an everyday guy. You got Ozzie Albies at second base. He's an everyday guy. Austin Riley's playing third. He's an everyday guy. Um, they've got Acuna in the outfield. He's an everyday guy. They got Ozuna as the DH. He's an everyday. So there are there are teams that have everyday guys. But I think Mark's overall point is right, is that the era of, like, you're going to have, those are my eight, and I just run them out there. I don't even look. I don't even fill out a lineup. I just keep putting the same guys out there like it's the 75 Reds or something. No, that those days have come and gone. People are looking for incremental advantages. But Gabe was asked about this in spring training. He said, I got five I got five everyday regulars. And then when you asked him to name them, he's like, well, that, you know, yeah. Tyro, okay, Crawford. Crawford um, and, and, and it's like, I, they are, they've given VR third base for right now VR, and, he I guess, looks, and he looks good. He's got power. Um, you know, definitely Conforto is going to be an everyday guy. And Hanniger will Hanager be if will, he ever plays. Right. Hanniger if he's healthy, but I mean, it, it, they're really struggling to get those five guys. I mean, it might be more like three and a half and even, I mean, like you've talked to some giants people. They think Crawford would be best served sitting against some of the tougher lefties. The problem right now is that the giants have no right-handed bats to counter all these really good lefties like Orius, like Kershaw, who they're going to face in this series, uh, like that kid Freeland from Colorado. I mean, the Giants don't have right-handed bats to counter that. So, I mean, in an ideal world, I think Casey Schmidt might get called up at some point, some and then point. Villar could be an everyday first baseman. But they're platooning at first. They're platooning in a couple spots in the outfield. They definitely don't have an answer behind the plate. You know, in an ideal world, you got foundation piece guys, and some teams – have more than others. I named one in the Braves that have a lot, but there's a lot of teams that look a lot like the Giants right now, where they've got a lefty lineup and they got a righty lineup. Yep, and uh, you know, you you mentioned 
For the the Padres are an inter- interesting case because they they right now they get compared to the Giants a lot because they're the anti Giants, right? The, the the Padres just grab every dollar they have and they walk out in the street with a fan and just throw it up into the air. That's what they do, but. They also have what the Giants don't have, which is they are loaded with fun. They are just, there's music and there's people at Petco. It's a party. There's beer. There's brightly colored City Connect jerseys and seemingly a good player at the dish almost every every, every time they, they call someone up there. Now, I do want people to understand the business model of that. The Padres are doing something that's very similar to what the Los Angeles Rams did. In the last few years, we're selling you, out to you, go right we, now. We, if you're available and we've heard of you, the answer is yes, and we'll pay you whatever the hell you want. Get on over here, Bogarts. You get. I mean, how many guys do they have right now that have the nine figure deals? Is Tons. it seven? I mean, Cronenworth, uh, M- Machado, Bogarts, Bogarts, Soto, right? uh, Tatis. Tatis. Um, you know, I mean, and on then, and on. And then, of course, you Darvish and, and, then, and they Blake tri- Snell. And they tried and, for Judge. Yeah. Yeah. They tried for Judge. So they're doing that for a very specific reason. You think, oh, well, yeah, they're trying to win. Eh. Remember their market. The Chargers left and the Padres as a group, and they've done a great job of this. Same way as the Rams, it's all about relocation. You come to a market, it's a little bit depressed, you don't sell out, you don't even have what's considered a healthy fan base. You go, name, 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 glitz, glitz, money, money, bing, bring them in. Now the Rams got a Super Bowl out of it, but take a look at them now. I think they're going to be paying the piper for five years. The Padres are going to get there too. They will. So... That's, to me, a little bit more circumstantial than when you compare them to the Dodgers, when the Dodgers have health everywhere. Big names, great farm system, big money, sustainability. I know, but I mean, come on, Mark, you're going to hang a flag in center field that says fiscal responsibility? I mean, seriously, what are we doing here? I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's right. I'll tell you what what I, yeah, I mean, it's it's just, it's (laughs) it's a frustrating situation. I would say this, what is a, what's, you know, screaming fans angry as opposed to what's a fair assessment. To me, you know, we, we sit in front of a microphone. I think it's imperative that we always remain as fair as we can be because that's all we got, sure. right? So what's fair? To me, what's fair is not that the Giants spend dollar for dollar with the Dodgers, Mark. It's that they spend the same percentage of their revenue on baseball that the Dodgers spent. And I looked at it last year. The Dodgers spent like 52% of their total revenue pie on player payroll. The Giants spent like 42% or 45%. The difference was about $22 million. Now, the Giants finished 500 last year, 30 games behind L.A. But if they had spent those $22 million on players, they probably could have had three or four more real good players, at least two really good players. And I think if you had had two really good players to the Giants last year, they might have been a playoff team. So I'm just, all I really want as a Giants fan is if you want to, you know, I, what I, I asked this question the other day, what is the plan? And a lot of people are like, well, they're going to wait until their system's spitting out players, yep. and then they're really going to engage in the free agent market. And that sounds logical. But I think what, you know, when you look at how much it costs to go there and how expensive the entertainment is and how much money, you should not be making an $80 million profit on a year where your team was borderline unwatchable. Spend the same percentage of your revenue, whatever that is, that the Dodgers spend, and that's probably going to mean spending another $20 million. You know, the fact of the matter is the Giants have, let's say, 30, 35 owners. Um, they made $70 million. So each owner got a nice little, if they all had even shares, got a nice little $2 million check back from last year in addition to the growth of the franchise value. In a year where it was the most boring team ever that nobody went in the second half of the year for the most part, and they barely finished 500, you should not be making a profit when you're barely finishing 500. So to me, the Giants have to get out of this A's model of we're crap, but we make money, uh, and that's why we're all content. And I'd like to see the ownership group, and I don't know if they will, because maybe getting a $2 million check is enough incentive to go, ah, I guess I can go another year with Farhan and Gabe. I got a $2 million check. I didn't, I didn't, they didn't ask me to cut a check. They sent me a check. So maybe the owners are in that mindset. But if they have any competitive fire to them at all, 
They have to look at the Dodgers and the Padres and the Diamondbacks, and all those teams have younger, better players and a much brighter future, it seems like, and just say, hey, guys, we may have to take some losses here financially in the present to to compete with these guys to keep this thing rolling because the hardest thing to do, Mark, is reestablish momentum after you've lost it, and the Giants are teetering right there. And by the end of this year, if they're empty house, friends and family all throughout August and September – it's going to be a lot more difficult to attract Otani or any other oh, yeah. free agent. It's going to be a lot more difficult to attract fans. They're going to—they have to somehow not lose their momentum and slide back and be viewed as a, as kind of on a lower level. Or it's going to take years to dig out. It's a big year, and I think their response to what you just said, because I think you're you're spitting a lot of truth. But here here's the problem: they'll sit there and go, "Wait a minute, you're you're saying that oh we we need to cut more checks." We need to get out on the market and spend it. Got to spend money to make money. Right. We tried. And they all said no. Except for Correa, we eventually said no. But that, to me, is my biggest fear. Beyond my distrust of ownership, I, I, I trust, actually, as much as this will kind of, I don't know, how, how people receive this, I trust a Farhan and a Gabe much more than I trust the people above them. That's who we're still trying to get to know. I think you could walk through Oracle Park and say, who's the decision maker for the Giants? And I bet you 98% of the fans couldn't even name the people. But what's they your trust of Gabe and Farhan built on? Because I'm not saying Farhan I... has never won a title, and Gabe is mostly 500 seasons, both with Philly and here, outside of the one I, aberration. I didn't say it was an overwhelming trust. I said I have a higher level of trust in them than I do But the ownership, the ownership. group built the Paul Park and set this thing on a totally different trajectory uh, financially. A little, little bit of a different ownership group at that time, for sure. Very much a different ownership group. I know that this, there's legs that have connected all of these people. Um, but that group at that time, obviously the way they did it with – Signings like Barry Bonds and uh, a, a farm system that cultivated Posey, Linscombe, Kane, and Bumgarner, that, that you, you build a cachet and a trust. This group has not done that. And I don't know what Farhan's being told to do. I don't know what Gabe's being told to do. I think the fans cruise around and think those are the bosses. They ain't the bosses. They are not the bosses. They're employees. And I don't know what they're being asked to do because of what you just detailed. But my biggest fear outside the building is how many people keep saying no. Even Max Muncy, who you said has part ownership of the Giants. <laughs> Insult to injury. In the clubhouse last night, they're like, why are you so comfortable here? He so goes, I you know hate it here. I'm not. I hate it here. He goes, it's misty all the time. The ball doesn't fly well. I don't like it here. Rub that in your face, Giants fans. He actually doesn't even like hitting here, and the ball goes over the fence every other at bat. So how many people need to keep saying no from the judges and the Correas all the way back to the Stantons and the Seiya Suzuki's and on down the line, all Bryce Harper, all the hitters who've said no? Can we can we get into the weeds and find out why? I think I know why. Why? Because I think the baseball players, and you could say the same about NBA players, you could say the same about NFL players. I don't know about the NHL, but definitely those three sports. The players know who the good teams are. The players know, um, you know, who who they want to play for. They've handicapped this situation. They know all the people. They know the managers. They know the other the other talent. Um, so. They 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 handicap the race and they go who's going to win and I want to play for a winner especially in football where you're like hey man it's gonna I'm gonna be in a lot of pain I'd rather losing football is even more painful than winning football usually especially on defense but I mean I think that's a big part of it I mean I think once there's got to be somebody like an Andre Godala who says you know what I see it I see the vision I see the vision of the future so what what's going to change it's going to have to be. I think everybody in baseball knows that Gabe Sharp and that Farhan Sharp, that they're smart guys. But they're going to need to see some production coming out of the farm system and some momentum that the Giants are building something from within. Because everybody knows you can't just buy your entire team in free agency. You have to develop a core. So until the Giants prove that they can go into the June amateur draft, draft guys, and develop them and promote them through the system to the major leagues, the free agents are going to look at them and go, well, no, I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to be the only guy on a team that's going to, 
You know, I'm not. I'm gonna take the lion's share of the blame as we lose because I'm the, got the highest salary. I don't want to be that guy. I want to be. I want to be in the winner's circle. So I think that's a big part of it. The Giants have to build from within, like the Warriors did. There are no shortcuts. They drafted Steph. They drafted Clay. They drafted Festus. They drafted Harrison Barnes. And then KD's like, "Hey, man, I want to go there." But it wasn't. They, he wouldn't have come here without those guys being drafted. That's amazing that you put Festus in that sentence. That was that was, <laughs> that was incredible. That was a moment. Uh, we're presented by Fremont Bank, full service banking, no compromises. Uh, much more on this, including uh, a little bit of a uh, surprise in the lineup tonight that just got released for the Giants. We'll tell you that in just a second. Eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven. The number and also coming up next, Ramona Shelburne is going to join us in twenty minutes. Uh, she's going to be at that Laker game tonight. Rudy Gobert will not. I mean, maybe he'll be there, but he, he's not playing in that game. Wait till you hear what Draymond, who knows a thing or two about a teammate punch, wait till you hear what he said about the Rudy Gobert punch. You got to hear this. We got to get into it. Uh, Larry's in for dibs. It's Willard and Dibs.
Now Muncy with the bases loaded, sends a fly ball to left center field, way back there, grand slam! Max Muncy's breakout game, and it comes in San Francisco yet again. Now, back to Willard and Dibbs on 95.7 The Game. You know that Muncy guy, was that Joe Davis again? Spectrum Sportsnet? Yeah, whatever. Stop playing his voice. I like Joe, but that's enough of that. I can't take it anymore. You know what I want to do to Max Muncy? What's that? I want to punch him in the face. That's what I want to do. <laughs> He's got a very punchable face, I Larry. Think I said that yesterday. I agree. <laughs> I, I still agree. Okay, so Draymond Green, uh, who, who uh, knows a punchable knows face, a or, face two. or two. About punching someone <laughs> in the face. In the face! Uh, what about this? And this is from the Draymond Green show via the volume. Rudy Gobert is out tonight because he took a swing at Kyle Anderson. He's nowhere near as good as Draymond Green at punching someone in the face, by the way. He sort of landed it in like the shoulder blade area with nowhere near as much force. He now, couldn't connect on a guy called Slow Mo? Well, g- funny line. However, yes, he had to reach across. He wasn't as close, and he had other players kind of in the way. Yes, he's got a longer reach. He's seven feet something tall. And he's also from France, not Lansing, yeah, Michigan. Exactly. Maybe well, that has something to do with it. Check this out, though, because this actually, um, boy, this generated all kinds of thoughts in my head. Listen to Draymond Green on the Rudy Gobert situation. Insecurity is always loud. Let's get into that. As far as the tap on the chest goes, quite frankly, there are just some words as, as men you just don't say to men. So when I saw the choice words that is the b- word Kyle Anderson using towards Rudy Gobert, you do have to be ready with what comes with that. Like you're just not allowed to just disrespect guys and say what you want to say. Kyle Anderson uttered some words to Rudy Gobert that a lot of people thinks. He said it. Said what a lot of people think. I personally think Rudy Gobert is a little on the softer side. Myself, he gained a little respect from me because he stood up for himself. I've never really seen the guy stand up for himself. Didn't really know if the guy was capable of standing up for himself. He stood up for himself a bit. Unfortunately, doesn't really work. Take it from me. I know how that goes. Is it the wrong decision morally? That's for you to decide. It depends on what your morals are. But in a team setting, you're playing with a team. It's the wrong decision. Okay. I, I, <laughs> like, I got a checklist that we need to go through after listening to this. It's a lot okay. to unwrap there. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Where, where do we start? First of all, at the end, he says, um, does it really work? Take it from me. I know a thing or two about this. It doesn't really work. But then he goes on to say, is it the right thing to do as far as your morals are concerned? That's up to you. I got a question for you, for everybody listening to answer. And it's going to get some of you a little bothered. Because again, as he points out, you call another man the B word, you got to stand up for yourself. Yes, I am I am all for... Did Poole call Draymond the B word? Well, so that that's on my checklist. <laughs> Like, what are you saying led A to B? Because we still obviously don't know anything about why Draymond punched Jordan Poole. But the whole idea, let's go through four high-profile punches just the last couple of years. You got Gobert to Kyle Anderson. You got Draymond Green to Jordan Poole. I got Tommy Pham to Jock Peterson. And I got Will Smith to Chris Rock. Everybody, in one form or another, is "quote unquote" standing up for themselves. The fam- wasn't the famous open hand slap. Okay, it's a slap. Whatever. It was a a a, a right arm uh, uh, attack to the face of another man. Help me with this. I need to understand. I get standing up for self, and and you don't just let other people push you around like that. At the same token. What in each case did the punchers get out of this? What did you get? What's the tail of the tape? We're in a results business, are we not? Yeah, I mean... It's win or lose. You said earlier, I don't want to hear try. Right. We're in a results business. You can respond to me and say, well, they got it off their chest. Instant satisfaction. Satisfaction of their anger. 
and you stood up for yourself, okay, and the tail of the tape is what? What'd you get? Well, um, let's start. Uh, Will Smith probably got some loving from his wife because he was defending his wife. Okay, so Will Smith got... Uh, he probably, uh, you know, it's like... He had uh, relations hey, with, a, with a female. He also, <laughs> what, he got suspended from the academy for a decade or some odd thing? Something? Something, something tells something. me he's got enough money to withstand well, that funny, yeah, they, They've all got enough money. <laughs> yeah, well, they've he's all got, got enough more, money. If they've all got enough money, then he's got more than enough money. Um, but yeah, I mean, he... He at least defended the honor of his wife. I guess he could at least claim that, you know, there's no, that's, you know, that's something. If somebody calls your wife something or calls, you know, as attacks your wife, as a man, I think you're almost obligated to throw hands at that point. Okay, that's fair. Okay. There are a bunch of other things in their life where someone could challenge whether or not Will Smith was actually being respectful to his wife, but that's a completely different <laughs> You're saying he's not consistent. <laughs> Okay, so you're saying next. he's a gigantic hypocrite. So and he, the next. He may not. I'm saying, wow, dude. I'm saying Chris won. <laughs> right. What? Because what did Chris get? Chris got material. I don't know if you've watched his Netflix special. No, I have. I have. I'm a I big mean, Chris Rock right. fan. Right. Like half the thing was about that. Not half of it, but he, he did a bit on it. Right. It's pretty funny, actually. Yeah. All and right. I thought he, you know, he is the absolute. The guy that I think of when someone says, "Hey, man, can you think on your feet when you're on stage?" I mean, you know, stuff could happen, and you got to be able to react. I mean, I think of him. Correct. So, I, to me, he's he's got that going for him, which is nice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, as far as Gobert, I think Gobert finally sent a message to the rest of the league that thought what Draymond thought that he's a big marshmallow, and he basically at least. Sent the put the gauntlet down that hey man you say the wrong word to me at the wrong time I'm capable of throwing some hands. See, but everything you're so getting- I think he because it sounds like Draymond didn't think he was capable of such, and that is as a big man in the NBA. You know what you you got to make everybody's got to think that you're right. you're kind of a little bit of a bad oh, a. Oh, oh, okay. Well, otherwise, okay. So here here's what I think he got. He is suspended for the biggest game of the year. Okay. Right. Like, like again in the play-in. But you're get, well. I mean, are, are you going to the playoffs or not? Like oh, tonight's got a lot to do. I don't do think with they're going to win anyway. Well, neither ahead. do I. But but that's uh, you know. I mean, people are listing today. It's all over social media. Go back and look at what Utah did to Minnesota as far as that trade is concerned. It'll oh, I know. Blow it was an awesome. Danny Ainge should have a mask over It'll his face. It'll blow your mind what Minnesota gave up for this. I know. And now he's not even there in the most important game of the year. You're giving me a lot of messaging. You sent the message. I'm going to give you tangible crap that each of these punchers ended up with. Will Smith, 10-year suspension. Rudy Gobert, you're missing the biggest game of the year. Tommy Pham, cost you over a half million dollars. Now, you could say Jock Peterson sat there like a little marshmallow, and he got embarrassed. There's no two ways about it, but Tommy Pham... Spent a hell of a lot more on that hit than he lost in his fantasy league that he was MLB mad about. MLB find him 500 gur on that? No, the Reds suspended him oh, for the so, whole weekend okay. without pay. Gotcha. He lost and that's over, how much money he, he makes. He lost over a half million dollars wow. because of that. And then Draymond. What did Draymond lose? Hell, for weeks he lost the trust of his teammates. And I will predict this right now, Larry. If they lose this series, the number one opinion that's going to come out here on 95-7 the game the next day is they never got over the punch. This team never I know, never everybody, everybody's going to point punch. to that. I, I, you know, I, I totally have a different take on that, on, on their, that whole thing. I personally think that, you know, people have also said Draymond's going to be a short timer because of that. I think Draymond will be here longer than Poole. You might be right. I think Poole gets moved this offseason. I think Draymond comes. I think they'll resign. You think Poole's getting traded this yeah, offseason? I, I think I think they'll move Poole, and and I think uh, huh. I think they'll retain Draymond, um, and I think they'll give Draymond like a three year, sixty million dollar deal, something like that, twenty million. He says he wants to stay here, and I think he'll. I think they they he he's played well this year. He fits with what they do, and guess what? The guy who matters the most, Steph, loves him and wants him here, so he'll be here. And I think Poole. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't love the way Poole plays with Steph. Um, I don't think, and Steph's obviously the fulcrum of the Warriors, and it, and will remain that way going forward. So I think Poole gets moved. That's interesting. I think that 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 is all still very TBD, depending on what they do here in this postseason. Um, if they lose this series against the Kings, maybe. Um, heck, this is a a great 
starting point for the conversation with Ramona Shelburne. Yeah. Uh, coming up next, plus, you're right, Draymond did say some things about his future and the Warriors, and we'll have that for you coming up this hour as well, and plenty of room for your phone calls at 888-957-9570. So Ramona Shelburne on all of this joins us coming up next. It's all brought to you by the Los Altos Village Association. Enjoy craft beer and live music at the rescheduled St. Paddy's Beer Stroll, April 21st, sponsored by Hyperspace Los Altos, State of Mind Public House and Pizzeria, and Star One Credit Union tickets are limited. Visit downtownlosaltos.org for tickets and information. Larry's in for dibs. It's Willard and Dibs.
Now, back to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. So let me get this straight. I mean, could the Western Conference be more Hollywood? The whole damn thing's a movie, isn't it? Whole thing's yeah, a movie. No doubt. What do you got tonight? You got literally live from Hollywood. You have uh, a man who some say is the greatest of all time going up against a team that just had infighting and injury all spill out onto the court and suspension all within the last 48 hours. Uh, the winner gets to go play Memphis, need I say more. Meantime, the changing of the guard possibility in Northern California with the Kings getting ready to play the Warriors. So why don't we go live to Hollywood? Let's do it. Uh, where Ramona Shelburne, our friend with ESPN, is standing by. Hello, Hollywood. How you doing? <laughs> What's going on, Mark? What's cooking in this whole thing? Can we can we start with Warriors Kings? One of your colleagues, Brian Windhorst, a couple of weeks ago called the Kings a mark. Every team won't say it, but that that's who they want to play in the first round. Do these teams know what they're getting into, or do you truly favor the Warriors here? Um. There's two things going on. One is that Sacramento hasn't made a playoff in 16 years, right? So this is like, you got to prove it. Like, now you're in, and everybody respects what you've done this year, but you got to prove it. And number two, which I think is probably most important in this series, these are the freaking Warriors. <laughs> right? Like, this is the <laughs> right. You know, like, it's not, it's not a knock on Sacramento. That's just like, this is the defending champ. So in my book, when you're the defending champ, you're favored until somebody knocks you out. You know, until they send them home, then they're, they're, you're still the defending champ. But, like, to me, Sacramento, like, I almost picked them. I would have picked them in seven. I think I, out of respect for the Warriors and their history, I picked them in, I picked Golden State in six in this one. Um, but it was more, it was close. And, I, and I, I would not be shocked at all because if there's one guy who knows how to beat the Warriors, it's probably Mike Brown. He's on their staff for three years, right? He knows their weaknesses. He knows what they do. He knows what they run. He's a defensive whiz. And, you know, they don't have a, a strong defensive team that's not what they're known for, but they're young and quick and athletic, and they're going to run up and down. I mean, I was, I was just talking to a Western Conference team, you know, talking about, you know, uh, that, that it's not on the side of the, of the, uh, of the, of the king's bracket, right? And uh, and they were kind of like, you know, I know everybody's talking about like, oh, the Kings are a good matchup, and we don't really think so. That team's like young and fast and athletic. They're gonna get up and down. Like that's a that's a dangerous team right there. So I think I, I know I know what Brian means because it's Kings don't have any playoff history in recent memory. But um, I don't know. I think they're, I think they're are formidable, and, and you're gonna have to slow them down somehow. You know, it's interesting. I, I don't think uh, Sacramento celebrated all that much when they made the playoffs. Oh. Uh, you know, when you think they've been out for 16 years, they would have had this huge uh, celebration. But I think Mike is doing a kind of mental thing on them where he's like, hey, let's let's aim for the second round. Uh, my Kings fans' uh, friends say, hey, the Kings are not just happy to be here. They think they're moving on to the second round. Does Brown, is, is, it, is it his knowledge, uh, Ramona, of the Warriors, or is it his knowledge of how Kerr reacts to losses that you think is his advantage if he has one? I think it's his, I think it's his knowledge of the Warriors. You know, I mean, I had, it's interesting. I had a, I had a long talk with Mike, I think it was a couple of months ago when LeBron was breaking, uh, was breaking Kareem's record. So I, I went and called Ty Lue and Mike Brown and some of the other, some of the coaches who, who coached, coached LeBron, right? And he uh, he obviously was on the Warriors staff when they played the Cavs in the in the finals a few times. And I was like, "Did you learn anything about you know? Do you, do you know anything about LeBron? Like secret sauce? Like how do you stop him? Like what are his weaknesses?" I mean, he he gave me the most detailed answer, so I'm really not going to do it justice in the way that I describe it. But he was he was talking about how Rip Hamilton used to get up on Bron and like if you can get up under him, then you kind of slow him down. So he used to have you know he was. He would say, like, I would tell Clay or whoever was guarding him, like, can't just, you don't want to body him and use your upper half. You need to use your lower half on him. And, like, I was like, it's such a detailed answer, and I, I'm, I'm not doing it justice. But it was just, like, those little things that, that somebody like Mike is going to know from being on the inside. Like, like he's going to know ways to bother Steph. He's going to know ways to put Clay in positions where he's not as comfortable shooting, right? Like, he's going to know what's 
spots on the floor play like to catch it and shoot it, right? And 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 I don't know, I don't know what we, you, know, you guys are up there in the Bay Area. Are you guys giving Clay his flowers? Are you guys like? <laughs> I mean, for him to have three out of three pointers this year, that's amazing. Um, <laughs> like that comeback that year, this year, like I don't think he's got enough credit for that, just because. And they've been so up and down, but my goodness, like for him to have that many threes, made three pointers this year and play as well as he has, that's, that's awesome. Uh, there are some media members. Two of them are not here in this room right now, but <laughs> there are some media members who are uh, having to walk back comments from November and December when they wanted Clay to come off the bench. Yes, yes, yeah, there, yeah. There, there are some of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, look, I, I, know, I know why those comments came out, but like, I, you know, because I was, you know, I'm in the daily conversation on that stuff too, and it's, you know, like the man has two real serious injuries. Like if you don't play basketball over two years, it takes a minute. So like, let's compare, and this is, and by no means comparing the severity of the injuries, but like in terms of being off of basketball, like look at Ben Simmons right now. Okay, he, like his body doesn't work the same way it used to because he didn't play basketball for a couple of years. Now, now look at Clay Thompson. It's totally, I mean, it's amazing that he's come all the way back and hit 300. What, it, what do you end up with? 300, 301, something like that? That's, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's amazing. Ramona Shelburne, ESPN's with us. Hey, Ramona, um, how much of the Warriors' future this offseason has to do with what they do in these playoffs? So it is so easy to say that, okay, if they go out early, you know, they're going to be in trouble. I don't really buy it. I just, I kind of don't, I don't think it actually has as much. Now, like, if they if they get swept in the first round, yeah, that matters. Okay? But they know what they're getting into. I think a lot of it comes down to individual decisions. I think it's going to come down to does Draymond pick up his option? Does Draymond decide to go be a free agent? Does Bob Myers decide to stay? Or does he doesn't do it a contract extension? I think, and a lot of that stuff may not I mean, look, if they, go, if they go win another title, I think they'll, the band comes back together again. Yes. But I don't know if it matters if they lose the first round or the second round of the conference finals. People are going to do what they're going to do. You know, and the, and the only thing I think that changes it is, is the winning another title. But I, I think it's, we, we need to see where, those, where everyone's headed. And, and I know a lot of people think they know what's going to happen. I, I, anybody who tells you that is, is wrong. Nobody knows what's going to happen because I don't think, I don't think the people involved know what they're going to do yet. I like the Warriors to win this series. I heard Mark Spears say today that he, he's picking Sacramento. Um, yeah, he it's Spears he would. Spears has been on that. <laughs> exactly. He's been lighting the beam with his crown on all year. <laughs> so, damn, okay, damn. Okay. The... I, I, I almost did. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you, it was a lot closer for me, but like, it's always a, it always sways me when I'm like, it's the Warriors. You know, you just got to give them, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pick them until they lose. All right? What you know? The one guy though that I'm I'm eager to see. I'm eager to see what Fox, who's been so good down the stretch of games, yeah. what is he? Is he can the Warriors neutralize him in the fourth? It seems like he's like Mister Fourth Quarter this year. Yeah, he is, and and like like the key to stopping the, the key to stopping the Kings is going to be slowing down the bonus, right? Because he's he's kind of like the engine. I don't know the engine. He's like a. Comparing him to Draymond is not the right comparison, but in, but in terms of how they use him, and he's such a good passer, the great facilitating center. Um, Draymond obviously plays that role for the for the Warriors offensively. Like if if my my guess is okay, and, and having covered both teams quite a bit over the years, I think the Warriors' strategy is not about you can't stop De'Aaron Fox. He's he's so fast and he's so quick and all that. You can bother him, but the, the key to slowing them down is kind of the way they do with Jokic, right? You got to play some bonus. I'm a little like the Warriors play Jokic. And uh, if they can do that, that's how they win the series. Ramona Shelburne, ESPN, is with us. Hey, is, is because of the two guys that are out for the Wolves tonight, is this a uh, is this a cakewalk for the Lakers? And then are, are, are you yeah. foreseeing, like this... this this Laker Memphis thing, if it happens, I'm hearing everybody go, "Oh, Lakers Warriors round two. Do Do you think that's where this could be going? Are you asking me, independent uh, writer covers the NBA, or me employee of the worldwide leader? 
I am asking. <laughs> I am asking the deep. Amazing. Yeah, right. No, but I'm asking just the deep DNA of Ramona Shelburne. Yes. I mean, you know, I always root for the content. I root for the show. Okay, so whatever's going to be the best story, that's what I root for. I mean, there's a lot of good stories in the next couple of rounds here, so I'm okay any any which way, you know. But I think, like Minnesota, like I have not seen a team have do that much self-inflicted damage to itself right. in one game. <laughs> Like, maybe ever. Have you ever seen that? <laughs> not, not in this moment, like right before oh the biggest God. game of the year. I mean, like, I, you know, I'm into astrology and stuff like that. I'm like, what is going on with the planet? Is there some kind of, like, you know, like, is there some kind of weird Kazimi or Mercury retrograde or something that I made everybody act crazy that day? Like, that was just, that was a, an unbelievable turn of events for the Timberwolves that, um, that on Sunday. I mean, Jaden McDaniels is really good. Like, he's a really good defender. And he was probably going to spend a lot of time on LeBron James tonight. Okay? Then Rudy Gobert, I don't know. Like, I I, I don't know if I want to call that full-on punch. It was, it was a shove. The shove to, it was a shove to the chest. Kind of a punch. But when you get called the B-word, and, and it wasn't just once, by the way. He said it, like, five times. So, like... <laughs> I don't know. I might. I know they say they had to suspend him, and I think that generally the reaction around the league is like, "Oh yeah, you can't allow that." I don't know. I might have played Gobert. <laughs> like, I think you, Kyle Anderson had a lot had a lot to do with that situation too. Like he was really he kept he kept on tapping on. You know, I'm, if I'm Minnesota, I'm I'm as concerned about the fact that audio of that exchange in the locker room leaked online later. I mean, that's that's like a major breach of trust in a locker room. Uh, you saw that with the Warriors, obviously, earlier this year with the, with the Draymond Jordan pool situation without video leaks. And they, I mean, that changed the Warriors as we know them. You know, they, they don't trust people like they used to. You know, I mean, it's a different it's a different vibe there now after that situation. So, like, I don't know. It's hard for me to see a team implode like that with these self-inflicted things and then bounce back two days later. But it also it's you know, still like Anthony Edwards and Carl Towns, and those are all stars. They're really good players. So I, I think it's, I, I don't think anything in the playoffs is ever a cakewalk. And I don't think guys like Carl Towns, who, who know what it's like to miss the playoffs, are going to take a game like this for granted. I, I think it's going to be a close game. I think it's, I, I think the Lakers win it because they're at home and they have, you know, the, literally the two best defenders on the other team are out. So that's, a pretty good advantage for, for the Lakers. But um, I don't know. I wouldn't be shocked at all if Minnesota is. They're, they're too talented to, to be in the situation that they're in, even. Ramona, how many years you cover the NBA? You've been doing it a while, huh? Uh, yeah, I guess, let's see. Maybe like 2003-ish, 4 ish well, I don't know that I've ever seen, in all the years that you've been covering the league, have yeah. you ever seen anybody do what, like a, what Rob Polinka did this year? I mean... Jared Vanderbilt, D'Lo, Beasley, Mo Bamba, Rui. I mean, they added a ton, and they did it in the middle of the year. And they, I mean, it was amazing. That what, what a transformation. I mean, this guy's yeah. got to be executive of the year. And they, I think they win tonight for sure. Do you? Could you see the There's Lakers no. make a title run? I'm gonna tell you right now, you're not gonna win executive of the year. He's not. And I'll tell you why. Because that award is voted on by your fellow executives. <laughs> okay, <Huh. laughs> not voted on by the media. And I think uh, executive of the year is probably going to go to Monty McNair. I think, I think the Kings are going to sweep that one and coach of the year. Um, Rob, like, like Rob, he deserves his flowers, right? Like, that was a hell of a move in the middle of the year like that. Against all odds, really. I mean, nobody wants to help the Lakers like that. Um, and he uh, he pulled that off, and he was, under, he was under fire down here in L.A. I mean, it was not a comfortable situation for him to be in, but he, he pulled himself out of it the team out of it and I but I have I have seen an executive do that before I've seen two of them okay number one David Griffin with the Cavs basically did the same thing what in one of the remember when Dwayne Wade and uh Isaiah Thomas and all these guys were on the Cavs and they stopped in the middle of the year they like just basically swapped out half the team <laughs> yep, yep. and then they they ended up going to the finals that year that was like a full-scale lineup change. And then the other one, you got to go all the way back 
2008. Mark, I think you were here at the time. Mitch Kupchak with the Tom Gasol trade. I don't think I've seen an in-season trade work that well. Yep. With you know, with that, that wasn't as many players. It wasn't as, but to pull that rabbit out of a hat, you know, swap out Mark Gasol and Tavares Crittenden and the guys they traded for Hal Gasol right. to go to the finals that year. <laughs> Like that was that was one of the best in season trades I've ever seen. So this one, very impressive, just because of the complexity of the deal and the way this team is fit together. But also, let let's see what they do, right? Like like those trades look good. The ones I mentioned before, they look good because they end up going to finals that year. Both those teams lost in the finals, but um, yeah, the you know, the Lakers, despite everything they've been through. Would not shock me at all if they won the Western Conference now because of the way they've rebuilt that team. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I I get it. Hey, uh, Ramona Shelburne, ESPN. Uh, Momo, July 19th, right? July 19th, do I have that right? Yeah, that's my birthday. Okay, yep. all right. So since you're into astrology, I checked out your daily horoscope as a cancer, and I, I, and I want you to really... Uh, you know, challenge yourself at this game tonight because it says okay. that, yeah, the ca- cancers are challenged to push the boundaries of themselves and their creative abilities in order to discover uh-huh. something new about themselves and what they're capable of. So I-, I-, I wish you courage and growth tonight, Ramona. Oh, so I need something. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I need, I need a little something. something. Go, well, go, go into the locker room and tell LeBron off. <laughs> and see what happens. That's, that's maybe not where I'm going to go with that one. All right. Um, <laughs> go, go, pu- go punch Rudy Gobert. How about that? Mm, no, you know what? I, I, I'm mostly a shadow boxer. That's the thing. Like, I'm going to hurt my hands. Those are important to me. Two babies, you know. I'm just um, saying. Sounds to I me think, like if you play small today, bad things are going to happen. Yeah, uh, that's I'm all I'm saying. Play. I think. You know what I think that's talking about is that I have to write a deadline column tonight, and I haven't done that all year. Because we don't use... We don't really write pressure and game columns anymore. So, like, I'm feeling that, and I'm going to have to stretch out a little bit. Okay. Like, you know, fire up the laptop. I'm going to have to, like, go back to what I used to do all the time when I was at the newspaper. And even when I first started ESPN, I used to write all the time off, off games. But most of them mostly just do news stories. But, you know, stretch out a little bit tonight, right? Okay. Yep. Be courageous. Go yep. for it, Ramona. I have faith in all you. All right. All right, thanks, Mark. All right, thanks, Ramona. There she goes. That's uh, that's Ramona Shelburne of ESPN. Uh, she's going to punch Rudy Gobert right in the face, uh, even though he's not even going to be in a uniform tonight. So that'll be good. Well, we know uh, you know Rudy showed a little fire. Will he do it in back to back days? <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. Because Minnesota, after they lose this one, is going to be playing again later this week to try to get into the playoffs against, I believe, the New Orleans Pelicans. And I just saw something pop up on. Uh, on, on the screen here a few minutes ago, Zion Williamson is cleared physically, but, quote, needs to pass a mental hurdle before he can get back out on the court again. Wow. I, 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 to me, if I, mean, I was him, I would not go out there. He's 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 carrying at least 20 pounds more than he should. He can blow out an Achilles. He can blow out a knee. He he needs to trim down and and get real about his career. His career is, I don't know, I mean, it's hanging in the balance, I think. Speaking of future career, Draymond Green, uncut podcast with Mark Stein and Chris Hayes. Here's Draymond and the idea of finishing as a warrior. I would love to finish my career here. That's been my goal since maybe signing this current contract that I'm on. It's like, it looked like a more realistic thing of me finishing here. And, and I also don't want to play 20 years in the NBA. I want to play 15 years in the NBA. So I think, you know, it's very realistic that in four more years, I'll still be contributing at a high level. Um, I'll still be able to give to a team and, and live up to the contracts that I'll be on. And so I do want to be here. As far as the probability goes, I can't necessarily give you that because it's not up to me. If it's totally up to me, I can 100% tell you I will finish my career here. But that's not something that's totally up to me. You know, and I do understand. You, you remember when I told you, I said, uh, I told you guys, I said, guys don't know how to play. Another one that's even more baffling to me is guys don't understand the business of basketball. I actually understand the business of basketball. And, and so I do understand why 
that's not totally my decision. Okay, and it's not, although it's certainly partially his decision, at least especially in the near term. We get some nuggets out of that, like Draymond wants to play four more years. So you mentioned that three-year offer, which is something that everyone kind of throws out there. Can you tear up the last year, the opt-in, if you will, coming up next year, turn it into a three-year 60 uh, and then it averages $20 million per year rather than the 27 that he's owed next year if he opts in. Maybe he'd be into that. However, that only that's three more years. He wants to play four more years. Um, and when you look at the way he's playing right now, do the Golden State Warriors want four more years of Draymond Green? I bet the answer is yes, but I, at, at what cost? That's what I can't answer. That's what he can't answer right now. I mean, he, he to me, the big question is, is his, are his legs in shape? Is he going to do the work to keep his legs in shape? And he's been great this year. I think he's moving really well. Um, I To me, they wouldn't have won these rings without him. And to not acknowledge that and to just think that he's kind of along for the ride, I, I to me, that's, that's overlooking. Um, that, that would be a costly mistake. I'll just say that. I don't think that he's irreplaceable, but I think he's a huge part of their run, and I would absolutely do what I could to go to the finish line with Draymond. Uh, let's go to Mike and Hayward real quick. Want to take some Draymond calls, 888-957-9570. Hey, Mike, what are you doing? Uh, I'm just sitting there waiting to get on here with you guys. I'd like to make a comment about the Draymond Green Jordan Poole punch. Yeah. And uh, I think that was the best thing that happened to the Warriors all year. Not that I'm probably a fan of somebody getting punched, but if Draymond, if, if, if Poole told Draymond, in fact, I don't have to listen to you more F you, I'm get, you're getting traded to the Sacramento Kings, he needed to get checked, right? So people are getting basketball. I play college basketball. And basketball is a pecking order. You don't walk up to Draymond Green and you're a pup on the block. Okay, you got a contract. You have one good year. And then you talk and smack to Draymond Green. You got to be out your mind. Okay, so, so and another thing is that <laughs> Poole got to his side. I think he did everything. It ended up helping, helping Poole because he needed to get checked. Because everybody knows how his ego is, right? Well, except for, Mike, everybody may know how his ego is. You're not wrong about that, but you are. Uh, you're making wild assumptions here about what Jordan Poole did and what Jordan Poole said. We have no idea what was said. I don't know if it was that day. I don't know if there was a buildup. I would suggest it was a buildup. I would suggest it was a buildup. I don't think you get to places like that. Even Kyle Anderson, Rudy Gobert. You don't get there unless there's a buildup. So and and the bigger answer, the bigger thing is we don't know what led to that. We don't. So it's spec. It's it is wild speculation at this point. He may have gotten tired of him. He may have had some some you know some words may have been spoken, but we don't have the answers there. And Draymond has a whole lot more to say about it. Actually, even going all the way back to the punch, the video getting leaked. Uh, new comments on that, and we'll have those for you next. Take your calls at 888-957-9570, presented by Fremont Bank, full-service banking, no compromises. Larry's in for dibs. This is Willard and Dibs. Attention facility professionals.
Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. Larry's in for Dibs. We'll take your calls, 888-957-9570. I wasn't quite done with that whole punching people in the face thing. You want to go more punching? Well, I'm trying to understand. And listen, I have, I'm an open book, okay? Yeah, I, I have had a ton of privilege in my life. I am aware of it, okay? Grew up in the Bay Area, California on a cul-de-sac. So I didn't have to uh, stand up for myself in the streets. You didn't it, fight your way off the I, mean streets of right, San Bruno. Like I had a ride to school with my sister, Milbrae. okay? The <laughs> only thing I had to fight for in the morning was to get her out of bed. Will you get out of bed, please, so that I can get to school on time? And the answer was usually no. And the way I fought when that answer was no was, I went, oh, well. And I walked in the other room, and my first period teacher had a little note next to my name that said, usually late. Because she had had my sister in her class three years before, and she knew it wasn't my fault, and oh well. That's what I had to fight for in, when I was in high school. So, yeah, I'm not familiar with, I'm going to punch you in the face because I don't like what's coming out your mouth. All right? That's not, that's not, that's not me. That's but not pick me. pick a basketball. I mean, come on. There were sure, all kinds of fights Sure, sure. I was a basketball player. I played high school basketball. Sure, there's dust-ups. There's things, people getting in each other's faces. I get not being pushed around. I understand that. But this has become this thread, this thread through the Warriors season. And and now we, we, we get these high-profile examples. If you're just joining us, the four that we're having fun with from the last year, Draymond Green punches Jordan Poole, Rudy Gobert punches Kyle Anderson, um, Tommy Pham open hand slaps Jock Peterson, as does Will Smith to Chris Rock. Um, what did the puncher get out of these situations? Other than, like, what, placate your own anger? What do you get out of this? Because Draymond, even in talking about Rudy O'Bear, is like, you gained some respect for me. But in the very next sentence, he's like, now, I know better than anyone, it doesn't really help. It doesn't work for you. Rudy Gobert is about to miss the game of the year. 
my reaction to that is, you're an idiot. Like, great, you stood up for yourself. You're an idiot. You just hurt yourself. You just hurt your team. You just hurt your your bank account. You just hurt your your future, potentially. What did you get out of this? And everyone wants to pat him on the back. Hey, good job. You gained respect. You didn't gain mine. That was a really dumb thing to do, if you ask me. It's amazing. You inject a little bit of pressure into a into a season that has very little pressure to begin with, and but you just a little bit of end of the season pressure, and suddenly guys crack. Look how many look how many fisticuffs there were around the league, and guys, a little bit of pressure introduced into the equation, and suddenly it's like, man, I'm at my boiling point. I don't know that anybody really is thinking long term. When you're throwing hands on somebody, you're thinking short term. You're not necessarily thinking about what are the long term <laughs> effects of this. <laughs> not thinking at all. You know, maybe you're just you're just impulsive, reacting in the moment. Sure. But you know, I do agree with Draymond that there are situations where you got to kind of put your foot down and say, you know what, it ain't going down like that. And maybe that was Rudy Gobert's moment right there. Yeah, but is there a way to do it? where you actually get something productive out of it. Like, I understand where people are coming from. You can't just let this guy call you a B. I, I understand that, but what productivity came from this? What happened? Like, again, you're just sending a message to like, hey, you know what? I'm not going to be disrespected. This is my line. It's, you know, I think it's, it's, a, it's in some ways, if somebody calls you something that you aren't going to hang, or you're not going with, you got to put down. Sometimes you got to lay down the law. Sometimes you got to say, "Hey, that's where my line is." And if the rest of you guys don't know where my line is, that's where it is. So he's sending a long-term message. He's going to learn a painful lesson because I don't think they were going to win anyway. But I think almost assuredly they're not going to win without him tonight. Yeah, I, I mean, were they going to win tonight? Are they going to win a playoff series? I don't necessarily think any of those things. However, Minnesota is not necessarily a team that I would have wanted to face. Um, and maybe they still will. Like they, they, they're allowed to go win this game tonight. Like I, I know it doesn't look great. They're allowed to though. If they do, they go play Memphis. If I'm Memphis, that's better than the Lakers. But it's not a cakewalk. It's not a cake. Well, Minnesota's got good players. Yeah, no question. Minnesota can mess with you a little bit for sure. Yeah. So um, I don't know where this is all going to go. But I, I do know that when we look at these situations, and I'll let, we'll let you hear what Draymond said in just a moment with regard to the video getting leaked and all that with new comments. But, uh, you know, our last caller, what well, is the best thing that could have happened to the Warriors? What? What, on, what? what good came out of this? Are we really going to go there? Jordan Poole needed that? What, what's the evidence? Every one of you thinks he played worse this year than he did last year. I was going to say, where so what, it's, he, his game has taken off? Give me the evidence that something good comes from this. And again, it's very different if it happens to an opponent. I understand that stuff. That stuff spills out all over the place. But we're talking; these are teammates. You're talking about in-house fighting. Yeah. What are yeah. we? What are we doing? Infighting is never a good thing. And and you know the other thing is. When it comes to, you know, every situation is a little different. But the Gobert thing, the text line brings up, and when he touched all the microphones at the beginning of COVID. Wow, Gobert. I mean, that was yeah. just... So maybe this guy's just a, just you know, a, a, a gigantic child. Maybe he's just not a, a guy that should be taken seriously. And maybe, you know, maybe he's got... He had, you know, you can only lose credibility, Mark, if you had credibility to lose. Maybe he had no credibility with his own team. Well, clearly. Clearly. I mean, you've got a teammate calling you B... And the second you throw the punch, by the way, um, you you had another teammate, and I think if I look at the video, I think it was Torian Prince, who, I mean, by the time Gobert even lands to Kyle Anderson, Prince is in his face, in Gobert's face. In other words, I think this about Gobert, the same way I think this about Poole. I think that there are a number of times that they drive their teammates nuts. Okay, I think that that's probably true based on the behavior that we have watched in not only the punch situations, but others as well. Draymond walking off the court when when Poole wouldn't pass him the ball. Steph Curry throwing his mouthpiece when Poole pulled up from 30 feet for no good reason at the end of a game. I'm sure there's plenty of eye rolling with these players. But whenever that's the case, like 
we get to this point where somebody hauls off and whacks them and we're like, yeah. No, not yeah. What good came from this? I I have not found it. There, you know, and some guys just rub people wrong. I, Jordan Poole doesn't necessarily get a whole lot of calls from officials either, and he's always kind of begging for calls, and it's clear that they don't want to give him calls. So maybe he's just a guy that if you're really around him and get get a feel for him, he's hard to like. Who knows? I mean, I know they say he's the last guy, you know, the last guy out of the gym. He's the first guy there. He's got this incredible work ethic. But maybe he just wears on people over time. Well, and, you know, Clay Thompson obviously uh, talked about this was back when they were overseas in preseason uh, when he made the comment. It's always good to kind of put Jordan Poole in his place. Like, yeah, he's cocky. He's brash. It's funny to me, though, that that's become the thing for Jordan Poole. Oh, my gosh. He's cocky and brash. Well, where on earth will that fit in in the NBA? Right. Are you kidding me? That's what you're – you guys are mad at Jordan because he's cocky? Have you, I don't know, listened to yourselves? Have you looked at any of your coworkers? Have you seen anything about this entire league that would suggest you can be anything but cocky? Everybody's cocky. Everybody's stirring drinks and throwing chalk in the air and shimmying and telling you what it's all about. I mean, that's the NBA. So Jordan is some sort of an outlier because he's overly confident? Well, and that's, then, uh, that, that one didn't land with me. Sometimes it's difficult to transition from a certain role to a different role in the same room. So he comes in, he's this deferential young player, he's a rookie, you know, he's deferring to these older guys, and then all of a sudden he's time, it's time for him to assert himself. And maybe the, you know, trying to assert yourself annoys some of the veteran guys in the room. Wouldn't, it's not at all hard to picture. Um, Draymond Green on, again, the Mark Stein and Chris Haynes uncut podcast with regard to the fallout from the punch and the fact that the video got out. To be quite honest with you, it was unfortunate that it got out there. It's one of my worst moments as a pro. Like, I've never punched anyone as heated as things have gotten, as much things as I've been into. I'm not someone who just walks around punching someone. And so it's something that I had never done. It's unfortunate that it got leaked. But the reality is I let myself go to that space. And I did do it. It's not like somebody altered the video and put out there an altered video. No, no, no. The video that was out there is something that I did. And regardless if it got leaked, if it was or it wasn't supposed to get leaked, I did it. And because I did it, you can approach that one or two ways. You can bullshit try to get to the bottom of who leaked it, or you can accept it. It got leaked, and you shouldn't have done it. Okay, so there's some accountability there, and, and I dig that, and I do think that, that that is a little bit of a window into why the Warriors have sort of been able to hold it together this year. Draymond and Poole are now able to play with one another and high-five one another and pass to one another and all the things that we thought at the beginning. Of the year, oh, my God, you're not going to be able to look at each other. They've been able to hang in there. They're 44 and 38. But I still think that we're at a spot where a lot of us are asking questions that are surrounding the, th this question. Why aren't the Warriors better? Why aren't they better? And if they lose this series, and they might, even Captain Adorable over here will admit they might lose this series. And if they do, I think it's the first thing that people are going to point to. They're going to go back and go, what's different? I know there's little roster differences and all that. What's really different this year versus last year? And I think the answer is um, they look like they did not get along as well this year as they did the year before. They clearly were not connected defensively on the road. I mean, if you and, and, and Draymond, I think, is a lot. He's the guy that I would credit with a lot of that connectivity normally, right? So... Does that mean that this punch had an impact on that? I don't know. I don't know. But they definitely, you say, what? why were they not as good this year? When they went on the road, they gave up all kinds of easy buckets, and they weren't that connected. Um, you are listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM and HC1 San Francisco, always live on Twitch, YouTube, and the free Odyssey app. By the way, hello, Twitch and YouTube. Thank you for being with us every single afternoon right here on Willard and Dibbs. Let's get out to the phones. 888-957-9570. Rich is in Hayward. On with Willard and Larry in for Dibbs today. Rich, what are you doing? Hey, I'm doing good. Well, sweet. That's a start. What else? <laughs> hey, hey um, Draymond, I'll tell you, he's the heartbeat of this team. 
cool. I love him to death. But, you know, him, when you get cocky like that, you end up on the Pistons. <laughs> I swear to God. I mean, he'd be lucky to be, seriously, you're, you've been in this league four years, right? And the mutiny came, or I'm not saying mutiny, but would be mutiny. And I give Kaminga and Moody a good, they've been ready. They did their thing. They didn't take part in that. That's why they're not on the Pistons or wherever. It's just, and that dude will be somewhere next year because, you know, Mark Cuban, what does he need defense? Oh, my God. He's going to max this dude out. Just That's all I have to say. He's gone. He's going to max out. He's going to opt out. Be a, be a maverick because that's what they need. What do you do? Get rebounds, doesn't complain really, and throw the ball to somebody. There you go, bro. Uh, Rich, if uh, <laughs> if if Mark Cuban maxes out Draymond Green next year, uh, he will successfully have made a move that is even stupider than the one he made a couple of months ago in acquiring Kyrie Irving, who is an automatic invitation to the barrel of the NBA. So uh, Draymond Green's not getting a max from anybody, period. Was he talking about Draymond Green getting the max? That's I know what I thought that. he said. I, th- I thought he was yeah. just mistaken. I thought he was talking about Poole leaving. Well, Poole, uh, Poole's, Poole's already leave. signed up. Poole's, Poole's, Poole's yeah, just no, starting I, his contract. Uh, yeah, at least the Draymond thing makes more sense. Yeah. Somebody may look at Draymond if the Warriors have another deep run here as, you know, absolutely a culture changing player and not worry about his age, his limitations as a player, and just say, I want some of that here. Um, so there is a chance that he may get an offer that that doesn't make sense because you know the, there are people that might view his skill set and it's very it's a very unique skill set. How many guys are rim protectors and distributors and have this incredible will on the on, on the floor? You might look at him, especially if the Warriors have a lot of deep run here, and go, you know what, we need that guy, and we'll pay crazy money to make it happen. Maybe, uh, maybe. I mean, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. It feels uh, feels unlikely, but if they do win the whole thing again, yeah, there are teams that are going to want to just take apart the Warriors, uh, and that might be one way to do it. Uh, now it's time for Clear to Play. We're going to take you inside the tent, okay, get you updated on the latest injuries in the Bay, and proud to partner with UCSF Health on this segment and bring in Dr. Brian Feely. Hello, Doc. How you doing? Pretty good. What's up, gentlemen? Uh, not too much. We're uh, we're looking squarely at Andrew Wiggins, and uh, there's no injury there, but I wonder what your response to this would be. What kind of a risk is a player uh, under when, when they come back from a prolonged layoff and get injected right into the intensity? You know, I think if he hadn't been training, uh, training at all and hadn't been back with the team for a couple weeks, I think the data would suggest that he is at higher risk. And certainly we see that in NFL preseason, other preseason games. But I think this is totally and completely different. He's been back with the team by the time uh, they start playing the Kings for a couple weeks. He can ramp up his intensity. And he wasn't injured and should be essentially totally fine. Now, whether or not they clear him early or clear him day of, it remains to be seen. Um, I certainly make it a little bit of a mystery until right before his tip-off to say whether or not he's going to play game one. Injury-wise, one injury I'm I'm interested to see what your thoughts are is the, the Brock Purdy elbow injury. Obviously, uh, 49ers feel really good about his uh, recovery, but um, then there's other people that, that speculate that he could be out maybe the whole year. He could be diminished. Uh, what, what's your... I mean, obviously, you've never seen Br- Purdy's elbow, but... Uh, that surgery that he had, what, what do you think about the prognosis for his return? Uh, would it be wise for them to give him extended rest after he's, after he's uh, you know, cleared? Yeah, I think if we were talking about a baseball pitcher, you would be talking probably, even with this repair rather than reconstruction, you would be probably looking at seven to nine months before you even really are starting to throw When you're talking about a quarterback, even though it's a fair amount of stress on the elbow, it is not nearly as much stress. And when you do a repair, you can probably start throwing in three months, reevaluate, see how he's feeling, see how the repair is feeling. Importantly, there are nerves that go right next to where the repair is that go down into your hand. So seeing how his grip strength is around the ball, which can help him figure out exactly how to guide those passes in is going to be really important. So my guess is training camp will start. Um, he, they will already have a sense of if he's improving around three months, which would be mid-June. He should start to be able to throw. By the time training camp is really going in earnest, 
they'll know whether or not they need to have a plan B, plan C, or plan D. Doc, I got another Warrior question for you, and it is what you see with GP2 and his return. Now, his injury, as I understood it, somewhat similar to the injury that Andrew Wiggins suffered uh, prior to him going away for uh, for, for family reasons. Um, what, what have you been able to gather from what you've seen from GP2 so far, and 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 should is he now 100 percent in the clear? You know, I think any athlete that's had an injury is never a hundred, a hundred percent in the clear. But he looks great. Um, I happened to be at the Timberwolves game when he had a monster block, and he looks like he's moving great. He's moving laterally well. I think he's about as in the clear as anybody can be at this time. And I'm thrilled for him to be back on the team and hopefully be a big contributor to our defense uh, as the playoffs continue. One baseball question. Mitch Hanniger, a right-handed hitter, hurt his oblique in spring training. It was early in spring training. And now they're saying he's he might be out you know, uh, several more weeks. I mean, he's a key cog for the Giants against left-handed pitching. It's an oblique, and it's he's a hitter. So, I mean, that just seems like a really bad injury for a hitter. Yeah, I think the key is to give him the rest he needs. And it sounds like he was doing okay. He's had this in the past, so it's even more important to give him that complete time off and rest until he even starts hitting. The fact that they progressed him onto a tee this week suggests he's going kind of in a normal progression. I would imagine, on average, these are usually three- to four-week injuries. So if we see him... End of April, early May, he's doing great. It's a long season. You know, the important part is to get him back and getting him feeling good first. Uh, there was an additional note on the Hanniger uh, situation that his progress from the oblique was delayed uh, because of some back tightness about four or five days ago. Any additional concern there? No, probably not. I mean, realistically, if you think about where your obliques are, they connect right to your low back. I think as he's recovering, if they, if he has a little bit of back tightness, I would say that's par for the course. It wouldn't really change how he's going to do long-term unless some new symptoms cropped up. Uh, Doc, great stuff. So you went to the Warrior game recently, huh? You going to any of these playoff games? You know, I hope to. It's, it's hard to get free, but you know, hopefully they make a deep <laughs> run and there's plenty of opportunity. Uh, no doubt about <laughs> it. Uh, Doc, thank you very much. Appreciate you. All right, guys. Take care. Thanks, okay, Doc. that's Dr. Brian Feely, and the proceeding uh, was sponsored by UCSF Health. I think we're all in the same boat on that one. I, I've noticed that, and this is in our circles, our world. I get it, um, but uh, everybody's sort of like, I'd, I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to go to one of the games, uh, but we don't even know when they are. Like they've not been announced beyond game one, right? So we don't know when they are. But you also have the additional opportunity, like you could go to the road games in this series. If somebody were to show up with, like, I mean, I got that question from a friend already. Like, are you coming this Saturday? And I'm like, no, I wasn't planning to. But partially because it hadn't even occurred to me that we, yeah, we just get in the car and go on Saturday night. I think it might not be the necessarily an easy thing to do from what I'm looking. Right, the right. the no, Kings tickets are not. it's the hottest ticket in town times 100. And they're going for a ton, right? They're going for more than the Warrior tickets yeah, are on yeah. average. Well, the ticket, the Warrior tickets, I don't even think. Can you buy the tickets even though we don't know the day of the game? Can you do that? Can you just go buy a Game 3 ticket? I don't even know when it is. Yeah, I is don't know. Is it Friday? Is it Saturday? When? when are they, I have no idea when it is. Are we, when are we getting the announcement? Do um, have- I, don't, I don't know that either. Yeah. It might be that they wait until after the playing tournament is over. Grandy, do you have any info on that? I know as of yesterday, all the games beyond everybody's game ones are, are TBD. Well, I know that all the the uh, days and times, obviously, for the Saturday games, uh, which there right. are four games on Saturday, those are all decided. The times for Sunday haven't even been decided yet because they're waiting to see if the Lake, which game Who's the Lakers in? are playing. Right, right, I right. think once they have all the first-round games set up, Meaning, once the play-in games wrap up, then you'll have the rest of the series laid out. Yeah, right. Right now, we know that the uh, the Warriors and the Kings are playing at five thirty on Saturday night, and uh, on TV it'll be on ABC, and on radio it'll be on ninety five seven. The game. That's what we yeah. know. Bring it on. That's and, what we know. And do we and do we know how many days they'll be off between games? Or I mean, do we have any idea? Of- Forty two. <laughs> yeah. I know that's just from history, though. Forty two days off between. Round one playoff games. There you go. That's what it feels like. 
That's what it feels like. They stretch this thing out at such I, a I, level. I think the more time off favors Golden favors State. Favors the Warriors, for sure. Definitely. Of course it does. Yeah. Yeah, I would expect something like, okay, if they're playing, I, I sort of, I don't know why, I feel like game two is going to be Tuesday. Saturday, Tuesday, okay. And then Friday, Sunday. So, for I mean. three and four. That, that, I, that's just a guess. If that's you're, a total wild guess. You know, if you've got older players, I mean, to me, the, you know, the Warriors flipping a switch in the playoffs and playing at this extra intensity um, to me, the extra rest is absolutely perfect because I mean, then you got now you've got a chance to maybe continue to play, especially for a guy like Clay Thompson, who seems like he sure. needs extended rest. Sure, absolutely. All right. Uh, speaking of these basketball games and Chase Center, uh, would you like to go? Does anybody want to go? If you'd like to be at Chase Center for the Warriors' first home playoff game, whenever the hell it is, uh, we're giving away a pair of tickets to Game Three against the Kings. What you need to do is make sure you're listening all day long on Thursday for your chance to win. Just my preference is that you listen all day long every day. That's the plan. My preference. But Thursday is the day um, that that will allow you an opportunity to potentially end up at Game 3 between the Kings and the Warriors. All right, 888-957-9570. We've had all kinds of different things thrown out there with regard to Draymond's future, including what Ramona Shelburne had to say about it, uh, which we'll bring back to the table coming up next. But if the whole thing sits on Draymond's choice to stay or go, I wonder where Warrior fans sit with that right now. Draymond, how important is it to you, Warrior fan, that he finishes his career with the team? We'll take your calls on that next. Larry's in for dibs. It's Willard and Dibs. Chance are here.
Now, back to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. Larry's in for Dibs. Can I give you one more from Day Day? Yes, please do. One more that we haven't played yet. Uh, a little bit more specific to them. Uh, Sacramento Kings. Uh, this is uh, back from Draymond's podcast. Draymond Green Show via the volume. Uh, his thoughts on this particular matchup. It's going to be a tough matchup. But, of course, I got the Dubs taking this one. Why would I not have the Dubs taking this one? But it'll be tough. I'm looking forward to it. You know, you want to try to get these games done as fast as you can. I would love to get it done in four, maybe five. Very hard to do. I don't care who you playing, by the way, whether it's a great team or not so great team. Very hard to do that. But that's always ideally what you want to try to do. Uh, this is a team a young team that doesn't have much playoff experience, you want to try to pounce on that right away. You don't want to let them get hope, uh, start getting more experience and start believing. You want to start trying to take that. You want to instill doubt right away as much as you can, instill the doubt immediately. And so that has to be our goal going in. That will be our goal. I have no doubt that we can get that done. Do you know what's funny? I've already noticed about this series, and, and it's only Tuesday. That brother. was interesting. Okay, what, what what stood out to you? Well, I mean, it makes me think that that Golden State, which is a team that you know has a, been there, done that, and they got all kinds of confidence, but that they understand that Sacramento's confidence might be might grow exponentially if they were to be successful early, and that make that quote or that. Answer makes me more apt to bet Golden State in Game One. In Game One, um, what is, do you the, think? is the number holding steady at one? Is that is that that's the Kings are a one point favorite, uh, which always means absolutely nothing. Um, I mean, it, it might as well be a pick 'em. I'm like literally the only thing that can happen with a one point spread is is you push. But uh, here, let me pull it up right now. I mean, the Kings are the biggest underdog three seed. I read this today. Um, yeah, it's going back to 1990s. So we're talking about 30 plus years. Yeah, we haven't seen a crazy. three seed be this big of a dog. Uh, it is holding steady. The Kings are a one point favorite in Game One. Um, I, I I look at this like there's really one sort of check mark in both teams' boxes for Game One, if you will. I think the energy in Golden One Center is going to be unmatched for for Game One. How much that ignites the Kings. Is is one question how much the Warriors can sort of do what Draymond just said, which is take the air out of that right away. Um, my guess, based on the way the Warriors play, is that the Kings will win game one. Because the Warriors all year long have been a reactive team. They wait for you to punch them in the mouth, and then they go, oh, okay, fine, now we'll play. Look at the whole year. And then look at games within the year. How many times are they down by 11 at half? Down by 20 to the New Orleans Pelicans two weeks ago in a game that they absolutely had to have on their home floor. And they come out and gag the first quarter. Oklahoma City Thunder earlier this week, up by double digits at halftime. And then the Warriors go, all right, okay, fine. We'll step on the gas. And they'll come back and win. I, I I have no choice but to predict that this series will go that way as well. I think that the Kings will get game one. I think the Warriors will get game two. And then things will fall into kind of a home court advantage type of a thing. And uh, and the Warriors get it in six. That's how I would I predict mean, it's the all, series. It's all guesswork at this point, And you can't put anything into these last couple of games, granted. But look at the energy they brought in the first quarter against Portland. Look at the energy they brought in the first quarter against Sacramento. Now, granted, those were G te League teams. Yeah, those were teams that were just playing, you know, just just there in name only, right? But um, I, just, I just think that Golden State's going to come out with a ton of energy. I mean, you're you don't think Sacramento is going to be a little nervous Tight. in that first in that first quarter? I mean, a little bit nervous. And then the other question I would have is. What's the arena composition going to look like? Are Kings fans going to be able to buy up all the tickets? We're talking about an entire fan base here in the Bay Area that could easily... There are people that commute longer than it takes to drive from where we're standing right now mm -hmm. to Sacramento. Mm -hmm. So, And there could be some die-hard Warrior fans with deep pockets oh, for sure. who are going to wind up up there. The so, Warriors... And then I'm wondering, what's Sacramento's 
uh, season ticket base? Uh, do they is uh, is 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 it ten thousand? Is it two thousand? I don't it, know. They fill it, that place. I know I they mean, fill it, but I mean they're also winning and they've been bad for a yeah. long time. It's like if they if you told me they got ten thousand season tickets, and it might be hard to get get in that place. But if they've got four thousand season tickets. Then when they went out and the tickets went on sale, uh, I could buy them uh, right here as, just as well as some guy in Natomas could buy them. I think everybody, both teams are going to be well represented on Saturday night. I, I, I think Do you think that, that's a factor? Because um, I don't know if it's a factor really. for Golden State. Here's the, here's the weird comment. This is going to sound so stupid coming off of an 11-30 and 30 road season. But if the Warriors can do what they did Game 4 in Boston last year, and I know that the teams are different, but the players, the key players are not. If those human beings are not bothered by that, well, then what the hell are you going to bother them with? So do they play poorly on the road? Yes. Might they play poorly on the road in the playoffs? Sure. But I, I stop short of being like, it's because of the environment. What environment has the, have these guys not faced? What environment is going to be like, whoa, never experienced that before. Right. Nothing's nothing. going to be worse than what nothing. it was in Boston. Nothing. There's nothing you can surprise them with. So if the Warriors lose game one, I'm going to give credit to the Kings, not the Kings fans. Let's put it that way. I think, you know, the more I think about this, I think Warriors get game one, Kings blow their doors off in games two, game two. And then it comes back here for game three. That's how I kind of see it. I, I think, do think it's a split, but but yeah, I would pick I think, it the I'll other take, way. I'll go Warriors game one to serve a loud message that I mean the Warriors are I mean they're the defending champions yep. and we're putting a lot of yep. credence into the NBA regular season and I don't think that means a whole lot. Well, it it doesn't mean a whole lot, but then again, let's not act like people just always waltz out of the sixth seed and win NBA titles. Like they don't do that. Yes, is this a different group? Sure, sure it is. But I think the Sacramento Kings, uh, it, it, it's that that sort of idea that you brought up, like them tightening up a little bit. I think that comes later rather than early. And I know that goes against what Draymond said about like you want to get to them early and don't give them hope. But I think they're going to be so excited, so turned up about Game One. I think they can probably get it. But it's like, all right, now, okay, you got game one. You, can you do it again? And the Warriors all year long have been the team that when you punch them in the mouth, sorry for the no. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking a lot about punching. No pun intended. Uh, but when you do that, they have the answer. They okay. have the answer to that. One other, fa- one other element we haven't discussed. The running, you know, the Kings have seen their situation and have been kind of safely in that three hole. Where the Warriors literally have had to dial it up, and they've been playing. I mean, we we've been saying it for the last month. It's a must win. This is a huge game. This is a huge game. Every time I tune into Fitz and Kalena on the TV, it's a huge game. They gotta have this game. The Warriors have had to rise to their level, and they and they kind of sprinted through the tape, as opposed to Sacramento, which kind of had their spot sewn up a little bit. Don't you think there's a sharpness that comes with that? When you have to, when when the end of the season had meaningful games right till the end, don't you think you're on a sh- little bit sharper level than the team that kind of was safely in the playoffs? Maybe, maybe, but I, I I think a team like Sacramento probably feels like they have to play that with that edge all the time, and the Warriors are injecting a a, a starter and and one of their top four scorers back into the lineup. We think. And 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 that's you know that takes a minute. So the sharpness that they had, well, it wasn't even these lineups. It wasn't this rotation. It all changes now. Doesn't that mean you have to hit a, a bit of a reset button? That's all. I just think the Wiggins factor does change things a lot. Yeah, and and I can't wait to ask Steve on Thursday. What does that mean? Like, what's that going to look like? Is he starting? Is he coming off the bench? How many minutes are, are are you planning? Is he playing starter minutes in the first half and then not in the second half? I mean, Kendra Andrews came on yesterday and said they're planning. I don't even we have not got it confirmed that he's playing in game one. Well, and, what kind of condition he's in? You know, so I mean, it, I personally, I'd love to see a little bit more of Kuminga, and I, I would have, I, I, I personally, I'd love to see some Moses Moody. I don't think we're going to see Moses Moody. Um, I don't know. I don't know. You think we will? Uh, I think we could. I think we could. I mean, uh, when he came out 
and had that great game like four games ago or whatever it was, uh, Steve said he's earned more looks. Now, in those final couple games, he had one good one. He had one not so good one. I think Moses is your emergency break glass player for this team, the same way he was in the playoffs last year. Damian Lee went out there, and they're like, you don't have it today, dude. Go sit down. Hey, Moses, go play some basketball. And if you play well, you, you, you're going to keep playing. I think that kind of, with Wiggins coming back, that reboots again. So you're right. Like, he may start out mostly on the bench. But if somebody doesn't have it, then Moses, get in there and see what you got. And, and more often than not, in the last few weeks, he's answered that call. Steve has had an odd affinity for, for Lamb this year. In my opinion, I, yeah. I just think that and I don't. I don't get that. I don't see that. I don't like. I'm not a big lamb fan, uh, the food or the player. Uh-huh. Um, Thank you. But I, you know, I, I I like I like Moody more. I, I'd rather see Kuminga more. I'd rather. I, I don't. I don't get the the. I don't. I don't get what. I don't I, see what Steve sees in Lamb. I think that you're going to get what you want, but the second that those young players start looking like young players, that's when Lamb gets put into the game. That's when Lamb gets put into the game. But yeah, it's 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 those three guys, and that's the key. Like you'd love it to be Kaminga and Moody, but don't go out there and start ending up in the wrong spot in defensive rotations. Don't go out there and start looking like a rookie because if you do, then they're going to put in Anthony Lamb. <laughs> I think that's the way it's going to go. Yeah, he he loves Lamb. I mean, he's well, he's, he's got a belief. I don't in know Lamb. if he loves Lamb. I think that Lamb answers a lot of questions, at least in certain points, as he put it. I think earlier this year. He fills in a lot of gaps. You know, uh, he talked one time in one of our conversations. He didn't even seem to be able to explain it, but he said there's, a, there's in, in their look at analytics, you look at the way players play together, and there's a thing this year with Kaminga and Lamb. And my God, they play well together. When they're on the floor together, it works. Why? I don't know. It just does. And so lean into that. So you might see that sometimes. Um, but I think Moody will have his moments. He'll have his opportunities. He's got going to have a lot of them, so he's going to have to play well when he gets them, and that way you get more. That means a 10-man bench or 10-man rotation? I mean, that's a lot of players. Yeah, that is. That's a lot of players for the playoffs. I think it's going to be a 9-man rotation, and Moody's going to be on the pine. Well, or or is it Lamb? Or both. Yeah, it might be both. It might be both. It might be both, because you you know your bench, uh, you're going to see Kaminga. GP2, GP2. Kaminga. Uh, cool. D- Divincenzo. Yep. You know, and then you're starting five. I mean, it might it might just be that. Uh, but it seems, I don't know. They're going to need somebody with a big chest at some point other than just Looney. You know, somebody in that sort of lamb, Jermichael Green type. I, I could see a little Jermichael Green. Yeah, somebody somebody from that, that ilk is going to have to play at some point, I feel like, in this series. Those are the types of guys that I think Sabonis can have a little bit of trouble with. Somebody who's got a little bit, of, little bit of size, a little bit of beef, a little bit of muscle, shove them around a little bit. That's that's who he struggles with. So they're going to need those guys. But um, 888-957-9570. How about uh, Mr. G in Napa? Hey, G, what are you doing? I'm driving, and uh, now that you mention it, I think I'm going to make some lamb tonight for my wife. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Come on, you go. Yeah. You going leg of lamb? Are you going, will you go mint jelly? Will you go mint oh, yeah. jelly? Will you season it with curry? No, uh, some little... <laughs> Some little kebabs I do it for a living occasionally. So oh. a little, little chimichurri. Yeah. Anyway, um, been listening all afternoon. Thank you for letting me chime in real quick. Um, I want to rewind to half hour, 45 minutes ago, just touch on Draymond real quick, get a couple takes, and then uh, happy to talk about these stuff. I advocated for them shipping Draymond Green last summer. Remember that conversation? Who do we keep? You know, is, do we keep Draymond? Do we keep, uh, is Gary Payton the second going? You know, where's everybody going? I would ask you, Larry, Mr. Personnel, who's the all-time greatest personnel slash coach in the history of the Bay Area, if not all sports? Bill Walsh. What did Bill Walsh say? Better to cut him earlier than to hang on him for too long. It sounds cutthroat, but in many ways, letting somebody go, you know, Draymond is his own business, man. If he wants to go make a bunch of money, I would do that somewhere else. That has nothing to do with the punch. It has nothing to do with the off-court stuff. He is killing it this year because this is a money year, not a contract year but it's a money year. I think they should have done what they did. Nobody thinks the Warriors are the odds-on favorite. I hope they win. That's what brings me to uh, to this year. I mean, this Kings thing, it is nobody's surprise if they sweep them. It will be nobody's surprise if it goes seven. Uh, as far as going deep, 
I don't know. The Warriors got to reset. Uh, I really hope it happens. You have a once in a 18 generation talent and stuff. Gosh, I hope we get to see him in the finals again. Um, what do you guys think about that? Well, real quick, are you saying nobody would be surprised if the Warriors sweep the Kings? Is that your statement? Uh, nobody I know. Okay, or, well, or, nice, or, to, or, nice to meet you. My name's Mark. Uh, <laughs> now, now you know someone who would be shocked, shocked if the Warriors sweep the Kings. I will... I, I, shocked. Yeah, really? Shocked. I, I, Have I, you watched I, my the first prediction was a thank, was thank the gentleman sweep, the gentleman sweep, yeah, which I, is five. I know. I think that I, I could see them go three zero and then I, drop four. And I know your five. point. Your point is that the regular season means nothing. The regular I, season means nothing, and the Warriors know keenly who they are, who they are, and who the Kings are. The Kings are a team that has talent, and you don't want to give them confidence. And you heard that from Draymond. But the Warriors also are an older team that at any point could get hurt, and so they want to do this as fast as possible and end it as fast as possible. So I think they're going to come out every game with just full full gangbusters. Okay, so and I don't think I don't think Sacramento can handle Golden State full full fledge. I really don't. I'm trying to figure out. I know regular season supposedly means nothing. I'm trying to figure out what you saw at any point this year that suggests the Warriors can go play four good games in a row against a good team. Well, that's that's fair. That's uh, fair. I, I mean, Warriors are, have championship pedigree, and sure. the Warriors have, sure. you know, they've which, got which is not magic once again, dust. It's it's. I look at it as uh, the Warriors are the only team that really has the map for where the gold is, and everybody else is just really likes gold, you know. You and know? the Warriors know exactly what they need to do. It's like a marathoner who's done. You're doing your first marathon, and I've been. This is my twentieth. I have a huge advantage over you. And that's the Warriors' advantage over the Kings. I used to want to do a marathon. I actually wrote that down on a bucket list in my 20s. Do and a marathon? Yeah, I wanted to run a marathon. And uh, now I'm like, God, that sounds awful. Sounds that like sounds, a lot of pain. so pain. painful and so awful. Why would I do that? Uh, and also, so, uh, that also will, I, I will not be checking that box. <laughs> uh, I will not be either. I will not be By either. the way, I, I got to push back on the caller, though. The greatest personnel guy in the history of the Bay Area is Bill Walsh. Bill Walsh drafted James Owens. Supposedly, Bill Walsh did not want Joe Montana. He wanted Steve Dills out of Stanford. Tony Rosano made him draft Joe Montana. Uh, he drafted Keith DeLong in the but first who, round. Whoever knows about those stories? I never know I'm what to saying, believe. I'll go with Don Nelson, who who came up with Dirk and Nash in Dallas. Supposedly, and I talked to Larry Riley many times, that Nelly was all over Steph as special. Yes, maybe uh, Riley had the had the title, and Nelly to this day will give Riley credit. But Nelly was there. Remember when Nelly came out on the court and shook his hands in celebration after pulling off the Chris Webber trade? Okay, okay, but being uh, the Chris, which which one? The, the, <laughs> the one to get him. One. Yes, the one to get him. Okay, but they also Nelly drafted Sprewell twenty fourth overall. Right. Nelly Nelly knows talent, man. Nelly's one of the great. He's the guy who found Terry Cummings, Sidney Moncrief. I, I always he's the, I, Tim I, Hardaway at fourteen. I, Don Nelson. I love those conversations though about who wanted who and who convinced <laughs> who. Like I did a thing last week. I like I've reached the end of my rope on. Kyle Shanahan wanted Mac Jones, Ugh. and he was talked out of Mike it. Mike Lombardi won't and, let it die. And Kyle Shanahan also wanted Kirk Cousins, but was talked into Jimmy. And I'm like, I don't know that that's not true, but I'd like to raise my hand and ask a question. Who is this human being that keeps talking the offensive guru out of who he wants to tell him to take someone else, and then he says Yes. Who is, like, what is this process? Who, who's at the top of the masthead making $5 million a year? Thank you. Who doesn't take, exactly. who doesn't get who he wants? Like, I'll tell you what, we are drafting Mac Jones. And then somebody in finance is like, hold everything. There's a guy in North Dakota. And then Kyle's like, you're right. Let's do it. I just work is here. Is that how I'm it goes? I just work here. I have the yeah. hardest time believing that that's how it goes. I know. How does this work? I mean... I'd like someone to take ownership of these picks. Right! Like, who's calling the shots to 49er offense? I would have guessed Kyle Shanahan. That would have been my guess. It is Kyle Shanahan. He he hired John (laughs) Lynch. John Lynch was his hand-picked general manager. You know what's funny about this Kings-Warriors series that I've noticed also? 
even that uh, clip from Draymond we just heard where he's like, look, you'd like to win in four or five. You want to get things done quickly. Have you noticed on social media how quickly that has turned into Draymond says he thinks the Warriors can win in four or five games. You all, no matter which side of the series you're on, you guys are swimming and searching for trash talk and controversy that doesn't even exist. Even over here, Captain Adorable, you kings, you know what I just decided in the conversation you and I just had? What's that? You're the one who thinks they're adorable. I've been calling them <laughs> that for three weeks, and you're over here like, I think the Warriors can sweep them. That means they're adorable. No. I think the no, Kings... You're, adorable is, in, in the context that you're using it, is absolutely a disrespect. That's like, oh, you're a cute little story. You that's, are. That's Gabe Kapler saying, Krug, that's a good question. That was a really good question. He Krug. would never say it like that. <laughs> he wouldn't call Krug, me Krug. Yeah, but... That's a good question. Anyway, go that, ahead. That was a that consideration. Is, yeah. <laughs> that's a great There's Kapler. Infinite number of questions. Infinite number of outcomes. Thank you. Um, not, I would, not when you're facing the Dodgers, there ain't. Anyway, go ahead. I would give that pork chop a 65 rating. Uh, <laughs> did you see that video? Have you uh, seen that yet? No. Did you see oh him? My God. Did you see him go flying an egg on Instagram two weeks ago? Oh my God! The best thing I've ever seen in my entire life on social media, bar none. It was a fried egg. It was a fried egg, and he's like, "It's not easy for me to execute a fried egg over easy." No, but you- this time it worked out. And here's something different. I put it with bread. Dude, you got to check like, out. What you on gotta... earth? What is this? Well, you haven't seen Pavlovich. I'm like, make toast, Gabe. Make <laughs> toast next. Tell us how you make toast. I put the bread in the toaster. <laughs> and then for a change, I push the button down and the bread goes down. You got to get Laura Britt, Pavlovich, and Cap in some restaurant in Arizona. Oh, my gosh. And, it, and the NBC Sports Bay Area is playing it before and after the game. And. <laughs> I'll give this toast a 65 grade. It's it's really good, but like it's not an 80. Willie Mays was an 80. The key to making salad is to take the lettuce out of the bag and put it in the bowl without missing. I mean, what simple tasks are we now, now you, putting on you, IG? You got to listen to Kapler talk about his food philosophy. <laughs> Sometimes I allow myself to have what I want, and sometimes... Oh, I yeah. Judge. Oh, I've had those conversations oh with him at gosh. length. Yeah, yeah. Then it changes every week. It's wild. I only eat steak, and I only do it at 2.30 in the <laughs> afternoon. And then next week, it's like, I ate steak. It's 6 in the morning right now. It's just different every time. I used so. to have strong philosophies about what the players <laughs> ate. Now, I want the players to enjoy eating. <laughs> let, 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 them, <laughs> let them eat cake. Um, all right, we're presented by Fremont Bank. Full service banking, no compromises. All right, we're hip hopping in to the five o'clock hour. Uh, Draymond Green, all of his comments on the Kings, on the punch, on Rudy Gobert, on that punch, your Giants' anger as well, all on the table here. 888 957 9570. If you're on hold, stay right there. We go to your calls next. Larry's in for dibs. It's Willard and Dibs. I'm Howard Mackler.
Now, back to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. You came in all hot and bothered about the Giants, and then I distracted you for two and a half hours with Draymond Green. See that? <laughs> see, see what I did there? See how I did that? That's right. The only Giants thing that came up was Gabe Kapler flipping an egg. The What's opposite that? of... Uh, the, op- <laughs> the Giants need to realize that the opposite of love is not hate. It's indifference. And they're going to see a wow. S load of indifference yeah. in about three weeks that if was they like, don't get it going. That was like some Dalai Lama crap over you like there. That? You just, yeah. You like that? What was that again? The, the opposite, opposite of love opposite. is not hate. It's indifference. Say it in a Kapler voice. It's better. Oh, uh, I don't do Kapler actually. The I, opposite <laughs> of love is not hate. Get a beer. It's get a, indifferent. Now get, get a beer. Mm, 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 mm. Sit down. Yeah, Let's beer? talk a little bit. I'm here for the nine dollar beer. Let's right. Get a beer. I got a. Okay. I got a new Traeger. <laughs> I don't invite Cap over there. Yeah, no. He's doing a, doing a fine uh, job. Fine job. I'm I, here in Texas now. Yeah, <laughs> get a, a beer. I don't. I don't. I don't like. I don't like him in a in a Ranger uniform. I don't like it. I I do. I mean, I love good, it. Good I for love him. It. I love him, and good for him. And it's it's an odd thing for me to say because it's not like he was a lifetime giant to begin with. Guy played with the Padres. He managed the Padres. People, Giants fans were PO when course. they hired Boach. And I don't know if he was necessarily they called him a their, retread. Yeah, he wasn't even their first choice. There's sometimes you know you end up in a in a spot. But uh, anyway, it just because of where the Giants have landed. You know, two years ago, you put Boach in a, a Rangers uniform. You're like, whatever, dude. Right? Like, good for you. But we're winning 107 games, and now you see him out there you're like. Damn it. Damn it. You still wanted to manage. And 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 this is we're not having any fun. <laughs> Does Kerr get to decide his own fate? I would hope. Boach didn't. And I don't know that Bob Myers does. Really? Well, I, why is he not signed? Maybe he's just he wants maybe he wants top dollar. Maybe. But again, every I mean, his kids, I think his kids go to the same school that I used to go to. He's got roots here, man. Whoop. He's got roots. Yeah. Who, I'm Bob? Saying, yeah. He's got roots in L.A. also. Yeah, but I mean, he's, he's you know, his kids go to, know. Street, go to school down the Do street. Do you notice that every answer, if somebody says, why is Bob Myers unsigned, every answer starts with maybe. The word maybe. Maybe he, maybe he, I have no idea. All I know is he's not signed, and that's uncomfortable. You know what makes me think he's not coming back? The fact that he's unsigned? <laughs> well. <laughs> and it's the playoffs? Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, he could have a great relationship, and he could just be hammering out a deal behind the scenes, and doesn't want to be a distraction. That would be. I strange. think it's. I think it's that uh, one. Joe's got his family involved, and they he he likes Bob Myers. He loves his kids, and um, and I think the other reason is Draymond went to the podium and started singing about the praises of Myers and how Myers is the glue yeah. and. And that that tells me the only reason Draymond would even do that is if he felt he needed to do that. Well, and and that makes me think Myers is gone. Listen, if we get to a spot with great teams where people start getting upset about who's getting the credit, that's the beginning of the end. I watched it once already. I worked with the USC football program under Pete Carroll. Thank you. And the second happened with the We Believe Warriors. With, uh, the, who was the business right, guy? But that was Rob Rowell. But that wasn't a championship outfit. That was obviously that was a great. But they little, had a little bit of success. That was a great and suddenly run. Rob Rowell wanted to get credit, and then Stephen Jackson. You saw that that contract, well, and that, soon as he Pete, got played on that Pete Carroll and Norm Chow, right? Norm didn't care. Pete didn't like that. Norm Chow was getting all the credit for being this offensive genius. Really? Yep. And Norm gone. And then here came the cops, and there went Pete, too, and they've not been anything since, and now they're going to the Big Ten. So that was fun. And then Pete was rumored to be maybe on the outs in Seattle, and then they last year they had a phenomenal that guy, turnaround. That guy. <laughs> nobody, guy's got staying power. Nobody knows how to avoid the chopping block uh, in this portion of his career like Pete Carroll. Uh, that is, uh, that's a fact, but... Um, anyway, that was an interesting little side with <laughs> little all that side. stuff. Yeah. But, uh, but anyway, um, yeah, I, I, uh, I distracted you and, uh, you got me off my negative giant bend. That's right. Hashtag Farhan forever. <laughs> 
Yeah. I think these uh, now. No, are, I mean, they, I think the Gi- I, are... I think Gabe and, and Farhan could be under pressure this year if the Giants if the bottom falls out, like I think it potentially could, um, and if the attendance is is you know falls apart. Um, I don't know what their pivot point is. You know, I mean, you can't talk at all after last year. You can't say word one about Otani at all because you just can't. You have to surprise people with it. Otherwise, it's like the boy that cried wolf. Yep. Nobody wants to hear. We're going to go after Otani. Shut up. Shut up. Well, mm-hmm. I nobody think, wants to hear that. I think if you're a fan, I learned something in the Aaron Judge pursuit. I learned something because I came out of that. I don't fe- get let, let around by the nose. No, I felt I felt stupid. I felt stupid as a fan. Um, that you would think that he would leave New York as the that, toast of Manhattan no, for the Giants? No, not that, because I never know what makes one individual tick. I never li- When we get into free agent conversations, I never do the, who leaves the Yankees? Well, maybe this guy. I don't know. Guys make weird decisions. They do different things. What makes them tick? Is it their family? Is it money? Is it who winning? I don't know. You ever spend any time in Manhattan? It's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. You ever spent any time in the San Francisco Bay Area? It's pretty nice. I don't know what makes a guy tick. I don't know. Um, I don't know what what he wanted. Have people left the Yankees before? Not usually, but this is one person. So the, the, the broad brush doesn't really matter. Here's what I learned, though. You should be able to see it from around the corner. Free agency does not look like that when the goal is to go. If Aaron Judge really... Look like what, exactly? It's too public. Here I am at the Fairmont. Once, oh, you mean once he... Hey. All of a sudden he's staying at the hotel hey. over by uh, yeah. on by Howard, and he's like, oh, here yeah. he is. Hi, Twitter. Like, who my told name's, him? My name's Aaron Judge, yeah. and I'm here in San Francisco to meet with the Giants. Right. I felt like such a dummy that I didn't... Right then, that day... Click this microphone on and go, that's a wrap, San Francisco. Forget about it. It's over. Somebody's going to tweet Arson Judge, and you're going to get excited. Don't How bite. cool was that moment? Oh, my God. I'll never forget where I was. I can't think of John Heyman without thinking of I that. I know. I know. That's a defiant. What was more bitter? Oh. That or, hey, tomorrow's the presser for Correa. <laughs> hey, this morning, wow. I'm Bonte and Shasky probably did a morning show going, "Hey, hours from now." I know, right? Well, and then well, all of a sudden, and the guy's there with his family and dressed right. up in, in their Sunday best. I remember so right. We're doing we're doing the changeover at eight forty five every day at that time. I remember walking in here that day, and at that moment, it was like, "Oh yeah, press conference get rescheduled for tomorrow." And I remember because I had had some conversations. And I look. I'll never With, forget I mean, the sources. Just peeps, you know, whatever. I had. I looked at Shasky, and they're like, "Dude, why are you so like bothered? This is this is hitting you like there's a problem." I'm like, "It's just coming up tomorrow." I think Mark. there's. I think there's a problem. Oh, like no. I think there's a problem. This does not smell right. Like you could even look at the way they did it. That email. I bet you got that email. Yes. That email is one line. Press conference is off. Period. Like, what? Wait, <laughs> what the hell is going on here? Remember when it happened with Garoppolo? It happened with Garoppolo with the Raiders. It got delayed oh, a day. right, right, right. But you immediately, they're like, here's what's going on. Everybody chill. We're going to do Jimmy tomorrow. And they did Jimmy tomorrow. That didn't come from the Giants. And I'm like, I don't like the way this feels at all. And then the rest is history. But I will look at these situations through a more cynical eye going forward because if you're Aaron Judge and you really like that's your goal, I want to go to the Giants or even if I'm I'm 50-50, I don't know which team I want. If that's really where you are, you're not going to advertise it like that. Think about how many free agencies we've all been through as sports fans, okay? How telegraphed is it? Imagine if on Twitter one day Kevin Durant was just waving at everybody with a video of the five walking up his walkway. Hey, look. Look, everybody. Here comes Steph Curry. He came over to my house. Look at that. Isn't that great? We're going to sit down, and we're going to talk about me joining the Warriors. Thanks, Twitter. Good night. We'll talk to you. If that had happened, how would you have felt? You'd have been like, this is ridiculous. What kind of a clown show is this? 
That's what Aaron Judge did. And I'm only mad at me that I didn't go, well, he's talking to the Yankees through social media. Now, some people here in the Bay Area think that that means that the Giants got served and they get a clown and they got all. I'm like, no, it's just business. The Giants were first in line. Oh, they did get led around by the nose. They got manipulated. They got work. And I would not have them do it any other way. As a fan of the team, go all in. And if you get left at the altar, oh well. What would you rather have them do? Not engage? Oh, uh, I'm not going to talk to Aaron because we think he won't come. Surprise me. But you, From now on, surprise but me. But you know, but they see, we do that to the Giants, and they didn't broadcast it. Because at the end of the day, the they Giants didn't. wanted credit for just being... In the hunt. They want no. their fans to sit there and go, you know what? They tried. They tried. I don't they know if really, they want really that. They really, really tried. I don't know if they I want that. I think they who, want that. Who said that? Who said that? They never asked for that. They never came out and said, let's have a try party. Well, no, but I think that they want to be, you know, how many times have they, you know, basically, you know, everybody associated with the team has been, well, they tried. They tried. And every time people say they're cheap, they're this, they're that. Hey, you know, they put a lot of money on the table for Judge. They... That's what that whole thing was about, you know, where you tried. And if we fail, we fail, but we tried. Well, I, I, I mean, there is some fairness to say, like, if, if, if you're actually cheap, you don't put those contracts on the table. When have the A's put but that on the table? But there's ways to do things where you can sure. offer the world knowing okay. that, that you're going to be overbid or you're, that person's going in a different maybe, direction. Maybe, maybe. There's a way to bid publicly without... Listen. Well, I, knowing you're gonna not, I would you're not gonna land. The I would like to be more cynical. I think that, in my opinion, you should be a little less. <laughs> then we can meet in the middle, okay? And we can also tell everybody. Next time they land a big time guy, I'll be less cynical. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM and HD One San Francisco, always live on Twitch, YouTube, and the free Odyssey app. I, I, all I'm saying, I'm just spotlighting, spotlighting that one, that one moment. It's not about the chase. It's not about what they offered. It's not about whether or not they're cheap. I feel like a dummy that Aaron Judge was. It, was it the Fairmont? Is that where he was? No, he was at the. Uh, what was it? The, was it? What's the? It's the. What's that? Res, the uh, hotel right there by where ninety five seven used to be. You know, on uh, yeah. Third Street, the and, hotel, uh, the L or the something. Whatever uh, it was, I, I don't even. Yeah, the the fact that I made fun of it at the time. I'm like, dude, what about the? What about the Mark Hopkins? What about the Fairmont? People are like, dude, you're so old. Those hotels are done, man. This <laughs> hotel is way better. Everybody, every hotel's got a suite. Uh, all I know is that when I saw that, I should have known that Aaron was sending a bat signal to New York. Because who does that? Barry Bonds left Pittsburgh. All right. Uh, you, you, Aaron, nobody's going to ever leave New York as the toast of Manhattan. Probably not. Probably not. But it's not, not to come to a lineup where you're going to be protected by freaking Yaz. I know, but I'm I'm always going to be the type that's. But I'd still rather you lo you love and lose than not love at all. Like, go for <laughs> it. Go for it. You can't. This is you're saying I was getting deep. No, my response to you would be like, you can't get mad at the Giants. Yes, and, you can. Well, listen, hold on. Yeah, let me finish the sentence. You can get mad <laughs> at the Giants all you want. You, did you see last night's game? Can, but you, yeah, believe me. Nine one. Ask, ask my sons and and Christy. They'll tell what's you. What's the slogan I again? Was not happy. Nobody likes us. <laughs> no, that what's no, the real slogan? Nothing like it. Nothing like no, it. No, but did you hear? Nothing did you like hear it. the whole thing about the Spanish translation? You know, they've got their Spanish marketing as well. Right. And listen, this is just a Google <laughs> translator. So this is not official. Right? I don't speak Spanish. Took Spanish. The St. Regis. That's what Regis. Regis. There it is. Anyway, we did the Googles because somebody, somebody hit us up and goes, hey, the Spanish translation does not translate perfectly. So I put nothing like it into the Google translator to Spanish, and it does not say <laughs> what the Giants marketing says in Spanish. So I took what the Giants marketing says in Spanish and I put that in the Google Translator to to English, and what comes up is nobody like us. Nobody like us. Nobody, nobody likes us. And, well, so that's what I said. This was one letter away from being a massive disaster. <laughs> Uh, but it's nobody like us, as in there's nobody like us. One year when I was a kid, their slogan was real grass, real sunshine. And then, you know, you could smell some stuff in the stands. We were like, grass. yeah, that is real grass. <laughs> real grass is a wonderful slogan for San Francisco sports. <laughs> high when yeah. I said that. Bellinger, so high. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> anyway, my point is you can't. So high.
You can't. Nothing was as good as you got to love those kids. Oh, that, no, those are the days. You got to yeah. love those you kids. You got to love those kids. Maybe um, they should switch it this year. You, you got to love those retreads or you got to you got to love those. You got to love that platoon. You got to love that platoon. You I gotta, don't know. You, you yeah. got to love that. You got to love that 65 pork chop. Uh, you you got to love the sixth pitcher that's coming into the game. I don't know. You got to love stripling in the eighth with a fresh pen on the eighth day of the season. All I would suggest, don't get mad at the Giants for being cheap and then in the next breath say they shouldn't have gone after Judge. That seems uh, That's where I would be like, that's unfair. I want them to go after Judge. I'm only mad at me for, for buying not, into for it. For not sitting well, in that moment. In that moment, I'm, I'm mad at myself too because why would Aaron Judge leave that lineup to come to this lineup? Right, I get all those things, but again, I'll but always we're from a, here, so we we, well, we think always, of California and San Francisco and, as better than but it is. So is he? Like, I mean, that's what I. But he's never, not really from here. He's from Linden. Linden here ish. Did you mean, do a show in Linden? Uh, now that's yes. what you ought to be embarrassed yes, Larry. about. No, said, I'm not you embarrassed guys were in by Linden. That. I'm not embarrassed you went by to that. Linden. I know. I got gas money for it. Don't worry. It's fine. <laughs> got gas yeah. money for it. Yeah. I, I got mileage. You we're put fine. you put mileage on your vehicle to go to Linden for a oh damn right. I'm all about take, I'm, all, to take you I'm to get all about experiences, Larry. <laughs> that was an unforgettable life experience. How many radio hosts in America have done a show from the Linden Lions Club? The answer is two, and I'm one of them. By That's the way, great. this show with you and Dibs is rocking in Linden. It's the highest oh, rated dude. show in the DMA of Linden. They said that. Both the people who live there said that. They're like, you're our it, show. It was an investment. Yeah. It was an no investment. Doubt. No doubt. Mark Willard and Dan Dibley are going city by city. Thank you. And taking over, <laughs> uh, starting with Linden. Yes. We're not doing it in alphabetical order. They're not doing great here in the Bay, but man, oh, they are big yes. in Linden. San Francisco, uh, eh. And but not, man, the further inland you go. Oh, are you kidding me? These guys are <laughs> inland, inland monsters. Anyway, I just, I, I, I look at that and I go, give me a comp where a free agent goes to a city <laughs> and go, hey, I'm here. I'm over here. I'm here. I'm, it's great to meet everybody. I'm actually not here for a free agent visit. I'm here for family, but but yes, I'm here, and I got a big smile on my face, and you can plaster it all over social media, and then that player ends up there. I know. Give me the because never. It's like how did I Aaron not Judge know? flew into SFO last night, <laughs> and it, you're never going to believe this, but NBC <laughs> Sports like, California had a camera there. I mean, like, it, they're, yeah, like they're everywhere. Yeah. They're <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> you can't come into this city by any way without NBC Sports Bay Area having camera people there. Way too telegraphed. <laughs> way too telegraphed. I mean, you did I, read. I, you I, read how that all ended up coming together, right? No. The Giants had Aaron, like whatever their little mini motorcade was. They got Aaron in one car. They got all the Giants dignitaries. They're in multiple cars. They're driving around. They're showing them the city. They're looking at homes. They're doing their pitch, right? And they pull up to the St. Regis, and they're like, had it all set up to like sneak him in the back door because that's how you do it. And then they pull up, and whoosh, Aaron's gone. Gets out of the car. Like he that went, that he went was through a, the front door. That was a plant. Maybe he was just trying to avoid the feces and the urine and the people laying on the back, Ma- on, the, on the ground right or, around there. Or, or maybe he was trying to make $60 million. <laughs> Okay. Did Hal, was, did Hal Steinbrenner see this? Uh, yes, he did. Yes. That's all he cared about. It was about. a plant. And I think, from what I've read, the Giants in that moment went, uh, And they knew, they knew, you know this, mo- there were plenty of people in the organization who were like, he's not going to leave the Yankees. There were some who thought maybe. But in that moment, when he selectively on his own went through the front door of the St. Regis and a phone was waiting for him, they were like, I, I don't blame Farhan for that. I don't like that. our chances. <laughs> I don't blame Farhan for that, but I had Ned Colletti on my YouTube show, and, I, and he said to me, Whoop. I would never, ever, Whoop. ever call a press conference prior to the physical being completed to my satisfaction. I would never, ever call okay, a the, press conference. The Correa deal. The Correa deal. Yeah, yeah. So that one's on, that one's on uh, I, Farhan. I, I think, I think those, those, those criticisms are totally fair. Um, let's go to Joe. Joe in the city. Hey, Joe, you're on with uh, Willard and Larry. What are you doing, Joe? Hey, I'm uh, just wrapping up work, uh, getting ready to do some workout, and I'm going to dump on Giants ownership here. So since you guys um, have been listening, fans of the, of the Giants forever, have you? I, I, I challenge anyone to ever say when they've heard anyone in ownership, I'm talking 
you know, Sabian or a, a Bear or Bobby Evans ever say, our goal each year is to win the World Series. Our goal this is to win the uh, National League West. Their goal is always the dreaded meaningful games. Even Farhan in his opening press conference mentioned meaningful games. Yeah. And that's marketing speak. And when you're talking about that, that's someone whispering in their ear and say, we don't put this out as the goal. We put meaningful games out. So how can anyone really think that this ownership team really cares about winning? Well, I, I mean, this ownership team was, was at least uh, partially in place um, when, when they were winning World Series. I've always, this is how I translate that. It's not, to, it's not to excuse it because, yes, you have to want to win. You have to try to win. I, I sort of translate that as being baseball speak. We all know how flimsy baseball is in terms of the best team winning or whatnot. Most people don't even think the Giants were the best team when they were winning three out of five years. So um, meaningful games means you are a sustained contender. But the best team in baseball, like to say I'm not a World Series or bust guy. I want you to be a good team every year. you got to enjoy the the journey. The journey. It's you have to. You got to. It's like, too long of a season. Kyle Shanahan's reign with the 49ers. Has it been a disaster? Has it been a lack of success because they haven't won the Super Bowl? They've been in three of the last four NFC championships. That's what basically. I'm getting at. <laughs> I mean, That's what I'm getting at. Like, you got to be there at the party. It can't be an year. all or nothing deal. I agree. I agree. But, and, that's, and, and, and especially in baseball. NBA, a little bit different. But especially in baseball where it's like, I mean, what have the Dodgers won in the last 30 some odd years? A pandemic championship? I don't blame the ownership of the Giants really at all because I really believe the owner, and I don't blame Jed at all, um, and I don't blame Joe at all, really. I blame the people. If, if the Warriors are bad, I'm going to blame Bob Myers. If the Niners are bad, I'm going to blame John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan, the people who actually make the moves. If the Giants are bad, I'm going to blame Farhan and their scouting department the Giants ownership group, I think, is willing to cut the check. I think they've kind of proven they're willing to cut the check for the most part in the grand scheme of things. They just made bad decisions. You know, Bobby Evans traded Brian Reynolds for Andrew McCutcheon. That was a horrendous decision. Yep. Brian Reynolds would be the foundation piece of the Giants lineup be, be today yep, without perfect. that move. But was that move, you know, I don't know exactly the conditions they made that move, but you got to blame... I don't blame the ownership if the ownership is spending a requisite amount of money. I blame the decision makers, the personnel people. Well, uh, I, again, I don't know what their walking orders are. I mean, the Giants should have spent more money, but like, I don't think they didn't win the World Series last year because of the ownership. Group. Yeah, but when you're getting to the big time deals, who who's actually calling the shots there? That's not you know like I, I think the perception for fans out there is Farhan is is has got a computer. A phone and total autonomy. That ain't it. No, that ain't it. When it gets to Correa and Judge, he, he <laughs> he's being told what to do. And the Giants should spend more. I'm not saying the ownership yes, is absolved should. of all blame. I mean, they're a top what five or six pay um, revenue team. They should be a top five or six payroll team. Agreed. They're more like twelve or thirteen. So, but is that strategic? Because they don't see their farm system, you know providing players i think that's a big part of that that's on on farhan and the and the player personnel yeah people. i'll buy that I'll, I'll definitely buy that filmo mike next up with uh, willard and larry uh hey filmo what are you doing oh man i'm chilling i just uh had to do my taxes get that done knock that out there you go yep i think i don't i ain't gonna get no money back though i don't think i'm getting no money back but are you gonna have to pay are you gonna owe see it doesn't matter if you get money back you just don't want to be owing said, yeah, she said I'm a. She said she said you're probably going to owe some. So I was like, damn, man, well, I ain't got money back in a while. But I, I need can, a kid, though. I can make you Mark, feel you good. Got a hookup for me, Mark. I can make you feel good. <laughs> this got said to me one time. One time I was like, it's tax season. I go, man, I owe. And a buddy of mine goes, congratulations. I wished I made enough money to owe just one time in my life. So congrats, Filmo Mike. You must be making the big dollars. There you go. Hey, man, keep that on the low. Anyway, okay. <laughs> don't let that get out. You, hey, you sell awesome with Bucky Brooks, Mark. I, I just want to let you know. Real, real, and he has a great voice. Bucky Brooks, man, he's 
He's pretty good. Hold up. Anyway, I, haven't, I haven't done a show with hold, hold up, Phil Mo. I haven't done a show with Bucky in, in months. We did a few late last year. Are you talking about recent? Because if it's recent, you're talking about Ephraim Salam, not Bucky Brooks. No, 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 no. Okay, you right, you right. You right. Sorry about that. It, it has I'm been pretty sure I'm right. Yeah. We're together. Yeah. Right. You're Buck, right. You're Bucky's right. the man. No, I Bucky's say, awesome man. though. Yeah. I love Jared's Bucky Brooks. Not, He's 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 dope. Yeah, the Giants yeah, got hell excuses. Mark, you feel me, Captain Sailor Giant? They got hell excuses. <laughs> and my thing is this, Mark, you gotta you gotta acknowledge this. When was the last time the Giants were like a juggernaut? Consider that. Oh like, God! Even when we won the championship, yeah, we're I don't know. Lucky. I, I don't know if we're ever. Like I don't know if ever. The last time that they were like they had a lineup that was feared, like two thousand two. Ellis, yeah, yeah, Ellis yeah. Burke, Bonds, Burke, Bonds, Burke, Kent, yeah. two thousand, two thousand two, two thousand three. They won oh, hundred really? games. Yeah, exactly. We're talking about oh, the dust. I mean, era. I don't know, man. We got, we got to get it together, man. We got, we, we got to have an identity. Like, are we a pitcher team? Are we a home run hitting team? Are we analytics? It's just weird, and it's like for me growing up, I'm used to the Giants having you know at least a star or two, but we don't have no stars. We kind of boring. I don't know. You tell me, it's Mark. A, it's a weird deal, isn't it? Because they have power, but not the kind. It's more like collective power. Like they got, yeah. they got like ten, twelve guys who could all hit ten. Right. Um, but they don't really like. I think they're going to struggle to win at home this year because they're so power oriented, and they strike out a ton. I'll make a prediction right now. They're going to strike out fifteen times tonight. Fifteen times. Okay, good. I'm glad you're coming in tomorrow. I'll take coming the, in tomorrow. I'll take the 15. under. Fifteen. I'll take the under. What do you want to bet? Donuts tomorrow? On fifteen, you got. You come on. You got, that's a that's a that's easy to go oh, under. I gotta. I gotta go. You pick a number. Pick a number. If it's under, let's. Well, let's uh, if it's under, you need to bring me a large size t shirt. Well, I'm bringing you the t shirt anyway. You were supposed to do it today. I know. I just forgot. I just forgot. So, all right. I went and grabbed one, threw it in the car, and then I looked at it, and it's like XL. Too, oh, no, I'm like, yeah, I can't yeah, bring that to Mark. I can't even do it. Mark, Mark's I can not sleep ready for that. In that. Yeah, Maybe I if can, I bring you a couple boxes of donuts, I then sleep. I can bring you the XL. Now we're talking. Now we're Size talking. matters. By the way, that's always, <laughs> I, I got it like, net, we're two to six in the afternoon. That's just my my standby is like donuts. What are the do donuts? We was eating a donut at three thirty in the afternoon. Seriously, and if we well, do, first of all, a donut is a sleep in the five o'clock hour. A donut, I'll eat a donut. A donut is a. <laughs> Mark, I don't think like, it matters what time. No, you know what? Donuts, it really doesn't. Donuts are one of those things. You remember the ad campaign? They're for, delicious. Well, yes, they are. You remember the ad campaign for orange juice? Once upon a time, it was like it's not just for breakfast anymore. Tang. I don't know what brand it was, Minute Maid, whatever it was, or maybe it was just Orange Growers, but right. they're like, Orange Juice, it's not just for breakfast anymore. And it's kind of true. I actually end up drinking OJ in the evening more than I do in the morning, if ever at all. I use it it's for... I only have it if it's if I got like a really bad sore throat and I want a lot of vitamin C. I'll I'll pound some. OJ. I use it for smoothies and for whatever reason, if I'm having popcorn at night, I like OJ with it. It's odd. popcorn and OJ. I'm telling you, going, man. Going acid. Uh, yeah. See, I, I, I go lemonade the... on the smoothie. <laughs> it's, it's, I'll go lemonade, a little yogurt, some uh, fr crushed uh, berries. Uh, you know, uh, strawberries. Right. You got the key element though. What? Pineapple. You gotta have pineapple Although, in your smoothie? In my smoothie, otherwise it's not sweet. Yeah, that's fine. Or you can use mango. I use mango. Ugh. Wife is allergic to mango. How the hell you even find that out? Only allergic to mango? Well, I, she's yeah. And, okay. You know, all right. Happy wife, happy life. Yeah, you know? that's a weird thing to be a little Well, she what allergic do you call, to anything you else? call my wife weird? Totally. I mean, I what right. else did <laughs> you know, I'm gonna turn turn you, you into Jordan Poole comes pretty quick Will over Smith. here. You keep my wife's name. Out your mouth! Oh, wow, dude! All right, thank you I very mean, much. The, the, the Twitch and the YouTube audience is just gonna absolutely grow oh, here in the next yeah. five minutes. Yeah, here we go. Uh, yes, coming up at five twenty-five, Larry Kruger walks to the other <laughs> side of the table and open hand slaps me I mean, in the mouth, and then find honey, out he went at your mango weakness. Find, on the air. Find out if I, yours truly, Mark Willard, respond or if I jock <laughs> Peterson this whole thing. We'll find out. That's coming up at 525. Um, anyway, what were we talking about? Uh, we were talking about the oh, Giants the and how good no, they no, no, are. No, the orange juice. Oh. Donuts, somewhere along the line, became a thing that were not just Sunday breakfast anymore. Like, you could find them fancy restaurants will have it on their dessert menu. They're like, you have a plate of donuts. 
little mini donuts, and then there's donut stores that are open until 1030 at night. I get a buddy who owns a donut place in Walnut Creek who claims to me that he makes $25,000 a month. Uh-huh. Is that possible? Is he open all day? Is he open all night? He's open all day. Just day? Yeah, I mean, he's out of there by 3 o'clock. Okay. Twenty five grand a month for making donuts? Yeah. Donuts are on fire. I know they don't cost much to make. Yeah. I'm kind of a donut hole man myself. You got a lot of holes in your game, actually. <laughs> yeah. Donut holes. You don't like donut holes? They're it's delicious. Not, nobody doesn't like donut holes, but that's like if that's your number one thing, well, that's can, just like, come on, man. Like, actually, you know when I was when I brought bring, my kid down to Cal Poly, we can talk about there's a, a donut there, there's hole. There's a there's a there's a Cal Poly donut place called Slow Co Donuts. Uh huh. That's premier. Like Jamming. maybe the maybe the Absolutely. best donut place I've ever been. If you think if if you're like, what's your favorite donut? It's a donut hole. That's like saying. What's your favorite Italian restaurant? Olive Garden. Like, <laughs> no, it's yeah, not. Like, okay. Olive uh, Garden. Nothing wrong with a donut hole. They keep bringing you breadsticks. Nothing wrong with the Olive Garden. But to say I'm not that gonna, that's I'm, your don't favorite? Make me, don't make me angry about oh, Olive not, Garden. Already, anything, you're yeah. already punching me in six minutes. <laughs> How much worse can this get? I'm not going to, you know, I don't want to attack Olive Garden. It could be a sponsor. No, I, I just said Olive Garden is fantastic. Yeah. Just like a donut hole. All right. But it can't you can't tell me that's like the most delectable Italian food in America. It's just it's just you know, you know, you it's just delicious. I mean, just you a wonderful a it's a perfect old fashioned sign. donut next to a donut perfect, hole. Perfect size. And you're picking up the donut hole? That's what you're telling me right now. Uh, the old fashioned now you hit me where uh, okay. I do like the Now old we're fashioned. having a conversation yeah, here. Do you, like, do you see what I'm saying? I don't like the maple as much. I'll I'll go glazed, Same. I'll go chocolate, I'll even go cake. Will you go cake? With no frosting? Yeah. The cake, hell's a, no. cake donut? No. No, that's actually a thing on this show. Like, we always, someone drops a plain cake donut in the donut box just to play a joke. Is it E-Dog? Is it Evan who likes that? Evan Giddens. I think it is. Yeah. yeah, he likes to dip a plain cake donut in coffee. It's like, all right. I don't drink coffee. 1948 but- is over. Have some frosting on your dough. What are we doing here? They're asking me in the other room about coffee cake. Now, coffee cake coffee is cake also is delicious. Coffee cake is tremendous. Delicious. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Any other sugars that you <laughs> want to discuss on the show? This segment brought to you by exactly. diabetes. diabetes. Cha cha cha. All right. There it is. Uh, okay. Larry Kruger's in for dibs. 888-957-9570 is the number. Um, I want to go back to that other thing we were talking about with the, uh, the 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 Kings and the Warriors, which is I really feel like we've reached a point of kind of like concocted controversy. And maybe that's because it's not actually a rivalry and we're trying to kind of make it one. But people are grabbing all of these things that you're hearing media members and players say and they're heading to social media and it's immediately a Kienos Mas Macho conversation like, oh, uh, who was the guy? Was it, Ham? was it Ham that came on with Bonte and Joe yesterday? Yeah, so that the, the Kings offense is better than any Warrior okay. offense in history. I was listening to him when he said it. And his, his name's Canned Ham, I think. <laughs> I think, I think, because I was listening when it happened, it's being packaged differently than he meant it. Now, maybe I'm wrong, but it's being packaged as if it's his opinion, where he's like, I covered the Warriors. I covered the Kings. The he's Kings going offense offensive is better. rating, right? He's, he's quoting he's offensive rating. He's talking about analytics. He's talking about efficiency. He's talking about this Kings offense. The efficiency and the numbers that they've produced are higher than anything that the Warriors offense ever produced. But that also has to get tucked into this year's NBA, where 130 and 140 points was normalcy. And that was not the case eight years ago. No jabroni ever would look at this Kings team Seriously. and tell me that their offense is better than when Kevin Durant was here. Right. Because if you say that, take eight laps and don't come back. Seriously. Go get, come on. Go drown in the causeway. Right? I mean, I mean that's just ridiculous. All right. James Ham. Here it is. James Ham. You know, we talk about how great this Warriors run has been, and I, I covered it for many years as soon as my Kings season would end. I would jump right on with uh, with Monty Poole, and I would work with him on the Warriors' beat all the way through the playoffs. You know, I've, I was in Toronto. I've been to Portland covering this game. I was in locker rooms when they, they won. So I know how great they are. I'll tell you, the Warriors' offense has always been incredible. They never did what the Kings did this year. The Kings' offense this year was better than the Warriors' offense in any of their great years. 
And that's saying something. Like, whether it translates to the, the postseason, we'll have to see just because the Kings haven't been there before. But they're such a finely oiled machine on the offensive end, and it's really wild because most of their rotation is new. Okay, so do you, <laughs> do you see the first sentence is the one that got me. That war, those Warriors teams in the dynasty, they never did what this Kings offense did. He talked to Monty. So he make, was in Toronto. That makes it sound like it was a stat. Like that team never achieved the stat that this Kings offense did. It did not resonate to me as a guy being like, so I was there for all the games, and those teams compared to this offense stink. He, he was making a point without with trying to trying to cite a stat never cited the stat that's so it's basically yes. the old saying liars stats lie and liars use statistics you've heard that saying yes. before what's even worse is when you reference a statistic that isn't <laughs> and you don't and, and you, you make a point that makes no freaking sense i mean that's just he left something out I'll, I'll, i mean but can we know. agree he's not sitting here going so these kings are better than the durant warriors these kings. Well, what, what did Bonte and Chasky? Chasky had to absolutely implode. I think he fainted. Do did, did we have the? <laughs> yeah. What was the reaction? Oh, it was that was not on. That was my bad. It was not with Bonte and Joe. Oh. It was on with Steiny and Goo. Well, either way, Steiny had Steiny and no. Goo probably both imploded no, after hearing Steiny that. Steiny was like, "Yeah, the Warriors that's a suck." Great point. And then they went to break. Yeah, that's how it went. <laughs> yeah. And Goo was like, "What?" And then they went to break. <laughs> that was in the segment was over. No, I don't know. Seriously, I don't, I don't remember. I, I, more important than that, I want to hear the reaction to that. Uh, right? So, I mean, come on. But, Jesus. Were, <laughs> were you even... Did you see... I was there when the... And I was... I'd been with Monty and Monty... Mm-hmm. I don't care! That team had Durant <laughs> and Steph! What do we do? I don't do? have a strong opinion. Uh, I, I mean, there's no way... That a normal <laughs> human being could say this, and everyone's just like, "Okay, all right." So, uh, what do you think about Herder? Is he good? I think I would have I mean, followed like, up with, "Excuse me, um, what's his first name again?" Uh, James. James, were you in a bomb shelter during the Warriors <laughs> season? James, did you not see Durant and Steph? Uh, James and Clay which and drug, Draymond. Which drug have you selected to use right now <laughs> uh, for this interview? No, that's uh, so. I, you're right. He left out the stat. I didn't think you could advertise but for I, cannabis on the radio. But I think there was a stat. Do you agree with me that there was a stat? He just didn't yeah, reference it's defense, it. Yeah, it's offensive rating. Yeah. That their offensive rating is probably higher this year. It's probably one nineteen something than yeah. any of the years that the. So what? So what? That's a that that is. I mean, boy, my God, strength in empty numbers is what that is. <laughs> I mean, I come mean honestly, on. yeah, you like the Warrior team played that, that. The Warrior team played up, defense. But, this team doesn't play defense. That NBA, if you got to 120, that was a massive night. This Kings team played a game this year where they scored 176 points. Let me just say right now a that the 107-win Giants team <laughs> was better than the 1998 Yankees. <laughs> All right? Yeah. And better than the 27 Yankees, better than the 75 Reds. The, the giant team that won 107 was better than those teams. Well, it was better I'm than, not going to cite a stat. Not just I'm just going to say it and then know a stat in my head. They were better than every Giants team ever. Which is totally laughable, because, by the way. Because they achieved something that none of those Giants teams 93 Giants achieved. play a seven-game series against the 2021, 2021. Giants a sweep. Four straight. That's a sweep. Four straight. Rod yeah. Beck with the Fu Manchu saying good night, oh, everybody. Rest, rest in peace. Thanks for coming. I love Shooter. Oh. That's so good. Shooter Beck lived in a yeah. lived in a lived in a van down by the river. <laughs> lived in a a, a, a <laughs> mobile home yep. outside of the pra- outside of the spring training so practice I mean, facility. It's literally. I mean, I mean, it's like what a pen they had. It's Brantley, like, Burba, yeah. Jackson, Burba. Beck, yeah, Big Dave, and Burba. Burba. I know Burba. I went I mean, nuts to the day that the Giants traded Kevin Mitchell, who was my favorite Giant of all time at that point, to the to the Mariners for Billy Swift, Mike Jackson, and Dave Burba. And I went bananas. And I can remember talking to Bruce McGowan about it. And he's like, I asked Al Rosen about it. I said, well, who else did you get? And Al Rosen was not the kind of guy that wanted to be questioned. He didn't want to mess with and that. And he, he bit off Brucey's head. Uh, but, yeah, I hated and that then, trade. But and, that trade worked out good. And then Billy Swift was a 20-game winner. Billy right. Swift was damn good. Uh, dude, Mike Jackson was good. Burbo was good. They're yeah, all good. For, for the Giants historians out there, the Kevin Mitchell trades were were maddening both on the way in and on the way out. 
Because if you I didn't like me, it on the way in either. Yeah, if you ask me as a Giants fan, Chris Brown was I'm our like, favorite. You traded Chris Brown He's for an all star third who baseman. The hell is Kevin Mitchell? And then, as you remember, he walked in. He showed up at Wrigley Field in his first at bat as a Giant, bomb, and in his second at bat as a Giant, longer bomb. And I'm like, never mind, we're good. And of course, later won an MVP. Unbelievable. I was just talking about that the other night on the YouTube show with Ned Coletti, who worked for the Cubs at the time. And he said <laughs> when he saw Kevin Mitchell and he thought that was a great, you know, great acquisition for the Giants, he almost didn't want to get they Mitchell was like there early and they had to get in to Wrigley because the Giants played the Cubs at Wrigley. Yep. And so he had to go and unlock the door. And he's like, I don't know if I want to do this to let these guys in because, you know, Mitchell had some huge, you know, he had two home runs on the first day. And, you know, this was the. Right. Day two, and they, anyway, Ned had <laughs> Ned had mis- mixed feelings about letting uh, Murph, the clubhouse guy at the time, get uh, you know get Mitchell outfitted. Oh man, yeah, those were uh, th- those were some interesting trades back then. But um, but anyway, I like like this whole thing. Getting back to the James Ham comment, I'm seeing this everywhere, and you know our buddies up in Sacramento at ESPN 1320 who do an awesome job, D'Lo and KC. They're at the front of the line. I know we're going to probably talk to them again before this week is up, but there's just all of this stuff that's getting shared. Like, Draymond says they're going to sweep him. No, he didn't. Matthew guaranteed that the Kings would win the series. J- James Ham says that this Kings team is better than the Warriors have ever been. Offensively. No, he didn't. But everybody, well, he didn't know he did, actually. But he didn't. He didn't say they're better. He said they didn't ever He referenced do. the stat, but didn't use the stat. So, yeah, that, then he said he, right. they're better. Yeah. I, like, I just think we're, I think we're grabbing a little bit. Anybody can have an opinion, but it takes some takes something to, to support your opinion. You know, people, if you want an opinion, have an opinion. But you better be able to support that well, opinion. But I think also. Otherwise, the, you're, just a, you're just a guy. But a very reasonable person can come down on either side of this series. I think. Sure. A very reasonable person can come down on either side. You can say this is the end for the Warriors. They've but, limped right. through this year, and they're going to have nothing left, and the Kings are going to wipe them up. But I just feel like every comment about this series is being made to be a larger statement than it really is because people want to really get this into the rivalry space. And I've said it. I feel that kind of energy for this series. However... I can at the same time state without a doubt, if the Warriors lose this series, I'm rooting for the Kings the rest of the way. So how much of a rivalry is it? When the Giants lose... We'll see how you feel about this at the end of the series. When the Giants lose to the Dodgers in the playoffs, or even if the Giants aren't even in the playoffs, the number one goal of any Giants fan is just somebody else beat the Dodgers. <laughs> right, right. I don't have that for this series. Not even a little bit. That's that's a rivalry that goes to the polo grounds and Ebbets. I mean, this is this but, started but in Lakers, 1988. But Lakers. Uh, I mean, seriously, please. I was in high school then. I mean, it's, but, it wasn't but, that long. But knock the Lakers out. Although, I don't know what I'm going to do with this Lakers-Grizzlies series. I'm going to be like, can you just both beat each other? You both stink. I, I You annoy the hell I'm, out of both I, of I'd you. I'd like Warriors-Lakers. I'd like to see Warriors well, get home court advantage. I'm, t- I'm tired of Dylan Brooks. Yeah, I'm that's really true. tired of that's Memphis. True. Grandy, what do you got on this? Uh, so James Hand saying that the Kings accomplished something this year that the Warriors haven't in the past. Do you know who else also can make that claim this year? A <laughs> lot of other teams. The Boston Celtics have a better offensive rating this year than any Warrior team in the past. The New York Knicks can say the same thing. The oh Philadelphia gosh. 76ers, the Denver Nuggets. Believe it or not, the Dallas Mavericks can also say it. You know who else can say it? This year's Golden State Warriors, who have the best <laughs> offensive rating in franchise history. <laughs> that is incredible. awesome. That is so, awesome. So That's Grandy you, doing thank Grandy. Thank you, Grandy. You just debunked <laughs> this entire awesome. sound clip, which is on the doorstep of viral, at least locally, over the last 24 hours. I've heard it and seen it everywhere. Oh, my gosh. James Ham says this. <laughs> it's like it's so circ. It's the most circumstantial point. This team with Ty ever. Jerome and Anthony Lamb All is right. the greatest team in it the Warriors, history it of the is. Warriors. I know when I watch the Warriors this year, I'm like, this is the greatest Warrior offense I've ever seen. <laughs> a better offense than a team that had oh. Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, and Durant. everyone else. Durant. Durant. Overrated. Yeah. Durant. Well, he wasn't. What the hell's he ever done? Yeah, seriously. Durant. Pick Kyrie over Steph. <laughs> well, I, listen. How'd that work out for you? But did he? I, yes! 
What do you mean yeah. he did he? Did he? Yes, but he you did. Make, you make it sound like it was just Steph. Do you know what I mean? Like there was a lot that went into that. It wasn't. What, was what, it the affinity for Barclays? No, he wanted to leave the Warriors. He wasn't happy. Why? Because guys like you weren't complimentary enough to him. I wasn't even here yet, brother. He made it sound like it was media you know, people. No, well, yeah, because who's that poor little blogger guy he p- called out? Oh, remember what was yeah. that guy's name? There were a bunch of them. No, but, of them. what was it? Who was, was the guy who? Yeah, he, yeah. Why am I? I'm blanking on. Uh, who was the guy who was always on? He was always on. Well, that's what the "Who are you?" comment is from, <laughs> isn't it? Who are you? Uh, I, anyway, who is the guy? I can't remember. Someone old. Str- someone Strauss. Old Oh, Ethan, yeah, yeah. Strauss. Okay. Anyway, point being, Strauss drove Durant to, <laughs> to Brooklyn. Well, we, we would still have KD here right now if it wasn't I, for Strauss. I'll give KD this. I will give Damn KD this. Strauss. And you know what? By the way, the the reason I have no emotion about Kevin Durant's departure is that I'm now thankful for it. Like last year was so much more special. It, well, it's also easy come, easy go. It's like finding a twenty dollar bill on the street, putting it in your pocket, and uh. then you wash your jeans and you left it in there. So what? It's like finding, you found it, you like lost it. Finding a thousand dollar bill in your pocket and then losing it. <laughs> Don't call a Kevin a twenty. Bill. Kevin's not a twenty. <laughs> He's a C note. Kevin's a C note at least. Anyway, but the point I'll give Kevin. I, I, I'm not emotional about it because last year was so much more special without him. Number one. Number two. Yeah, if you're gonna pick Kyrie, at least Kevin did it at a time where I think a lot of us w- would have fallen prey for Kyrie. But the fact that the Mavericks are doing it now. That's what I find laughable. Like any GM who signs Russell Westbrook or Kyrie Irving or Rudy Gobert, anybody who does that, that's a job loser as far as I'm concerned. I didn't care that KD left because my whole thing was it had nothing to do with Golden State. It had nothing to do with Strauss or Steph or Joe or any of us. Katie went to three high schools. Katie moves. Katie just likes to move. Well, I, it was there was one thing that was circumstantial to the Warriors, which I don't think he thought of, or maybe he didn't realize it mattered to him. But Kevin Durant being that, loved that well, whole thing, being the guy, like in history. Let me ask you this: and, and, What does that even mean? I mean, I think don't about know. That. I, mean, I don't know. But again, as I just said to you about the, the judge guy, thing, whatever makes you tick is what makes you tick. If that made him tick, whatever, dude. That that made you tick. But in the history of the NBA, has there ever been a player back to back NBA Finals MVP who that fan base doesn't consider the guy? Has that ever been a thing? Ever? No, but I mean, it's it's rare that usually the players that are in that spot were drafted, developed, and groomed yeah. in that, you know, they were homegrown players. And also, Steph Curry is not just any guy. He's revolutionized basketball. There's kids everywhere that would dream to be him, whether they live in Minneapolis, New York, London, Germany. I mean, there's just people. He's changed the game, and he's he's you know he's had a huge impact in the game. So. You know, you don't need to explain it to me, but it's I don't. Like he's, it's not like it's you know. But I don't think Kevin saw that coming, and for whatever reason, and I don't think it was the only thing by itself, but it mattered to him. It mattered to him. Okay, and you can rip him for that if you want. No, I, I'm not going to rip him for that. I mean, I, who am I to rip him at all? I just, I just think that you know that's just so crazy to be like. So you're gonna you're gonna run away from a dynasty, and 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 w- in a sport where every time people talk about where's your place in the all time greats, they all talk about rings, and you're gonna run away from a situation where you already got rings and you had more coming. Because you needed to be the guy. I also wonder what it would have even looked like, or how long it would have lasted had he stayed. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. uh, d- d- financially, does that does that add up? Are you able to to are, are these other guys? Is Clay still on the team? Is is Draymond still on the team? Would it have gotten boring? I mean, like they were so unchallenged. Yeah, they, I mean, when, it, when healthy, when healthy, they you were could so argue unchallenged. Me. I mean, it wasn't the it was my favorite Warrior team. It and was or wasn't? was not, even no. though it was the best. It's like the 94 Niners. They bought Dent. They bought Ricky Jackson. They bought Dion. Dion. They brought, bought Plummer. They bought Norton. I don't have that 94 Niner team in the same category as some of the other Niner teams just because it was such a Carmen policy, write the check, you know, import all these free agents, take Check, them all- Checkbook championship, yeah, as I mean, Brian Windhorst said. Exactly. Well... Yeah. But that was a crap comment from Windhorse. I agree. They drafted the entire team except for KD. 
Well, no, he was. He said about last year. Last year, yeah, check, we, we, checkbook we, championship. Well, and that's that's preposterous as well. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Windy. I mean, yes, it was the most expensive team, but the, like now the, we care about that. Well, the implication every is, cha- championship the Yankees yeah. have ever had has been a checkbook cha- well, championship. Well, I mean, I, th- that's one thing that if if I were running the NBA, I would change right now. The fact that that teams are paying massive luxury tax dollars on players they drafted. That should change. I agree. Today. Well, they now go, you saw are, the new CBA, by the way. You, why are you penalized for doing an amazing job of drafting and developing and keeping stars? I agree. You should not be penalized one cent for doing everything better than everybody else. I think in the NFL, the players that you draft should be... Um, I don't, you know, cost you less against the cap against the than cap. players that you sign. Because what happens is Wayne Huizenga bought the Marlins, blows up the stra- the uh, the whole salary structure by signing all these free agents, and then sells it all off. It does huge damage, but he's got a World Series ring. Yep. And yep. how is that good for how is that good for baseball? I mean, it wasn't. How good would the Oakland A's be if you could just keep your stars for less? I mean, yeah. I, they probably still wouldn't keep them, but you know what I mean? Like, the tax thing is what, like, yeah, if, if everybody's Your owner's worth, worth $4 billion, yeah, by the if, way. If everybody's worth $60 million a year, then you got to pay everybody $60 million a year. But the fact that that turns into $250 million a year because of tax penalties, if you drafted them, if KD stays, you want to keep them, yeah, you tax that. But Steph, Clay, and Dre, Looney... You're not touching those numbers. That's I agree. all I agree. totally off board. My kid I, went to the A's game against the Guardians the other night. I, I took mean, a picture in the fourth inning. <laughs> how Mark. Other, how many other people were in the picture? I, I it, Not it, counting the A's and the Guardians. It was friends and family. I'm like, what time? Is this BP? He's like, no, Dad, that was the fourth inning. Fourth inning. Fourth inning. <laughs> Nobody there. How do you like that, John Fisher? Yeah. I mean, see, I seriously. I think he likes that just fine, Maybe unfortunately. Roll down to the ATM machine and go balance inquiry. Does that make him feel good? Because yeah. you're not going to win anything. He doesn't care. I mean, come on. We He's are, off to are, Vegas. See, they're uh, mentally off to Vegas. I don't and know. so are their fans. They don't, I don't care. Yeah, I don't know where that's going. but uh, Everybody doesn't care except for Townie. <laughs> Townie still cares. A few others. A few <laughs> others. A few others. But, um, all right, Larry Kruger's in for dibs. Uh, we still got time for your calls, 888-957-9570. We'll circle it back to set the table for tonight's NBA and how it affects the Warriors coming up next on Willard and Dibs. The playoffs are...
Dillard and Dibs on 95 7 the game. <laughs> Fillmore's got a front of the line pass, man. <laughs> got a front of the line pass. Um Hey man, keep that on the low. <laughs> no worries. You got it. Except for Filmo does make a ton of money. That's what I heard. That's what the streets are saying. Anyway. <laughs> we do have a quite uh, request on the text line. Oh, what is it? Uh, 650 says, can you guys possibly replay the soundbite where our stats guy says the Warriors are the best Warriors team ever? Can you replay the sound where our stats guy says I think he, the Warriors? I think he meant. I think he meant Ham. Uh, yeah, he better not be talking about Grandy because you talk. You call Grandy a stats man. I'm. That's fight. I'll. I'll punch you in the face. <laughs> you know me. Yeah. I lie just haymakers everywhere. Here's the sound that I think they're asking for. Yep. James Ham. By the way, I don't want to be disrespectful. What James Ham? What What is the what? Don't be disrespectful. He's I'm not. You're not going at James Ham no, in front from, of me. He's from where? What's his? What's he's his? NBC Sports Bay Area. NBC Sports Bay Area. Uh, Kings beat. Kings beat. Okay. Kings no, beat. I didn't know. I don't know James. I don't know. I don't know James. All right. All right. And he used to be on the Warrior beat back when they stopped. You know, he's been with Monty. When he Kevin Durant. Well, okay. He visited with Monty. He's also ESPN 1320's Our Sister Stations in SAC. They're Kings Insider. He's their Kings Insider. Okay. Insider. Great. Insider. Okay, great. There's a lot and of I get, listen, listen. Insider. They do an awesome job. D-Lo and KC, the whole, the whole deal. So I didn't or know outsiders James. or insiders. But here, <laughs> here's James. You know, we talk about how great this Warriors run has been. And I, I covered it for many years. As soon as my Kings season would end, I would jump right on with uh, with Monty Poole, and I would work with him on the Warriors beat all the way through the playoffs. You know, I've, I was in Toronto. I've been to Portland covering this team. I was in locker rooms when they, they won. So I know how great they are. I'll tell you, the Warriors' offense has always been incredible. They never did what the Kings did this year. The Kings' offense this year was better than the Warriors' offense in any of their great years. And that's saying something. Like, whether it translates to the – the postseason, we'll have to see just because the Kings haven't been there before. But they're such a finely oiled machine on the offensive end, and it's really wild because most of their rotation is new. Okay. that I've been in Portland. I've been in Toronto. I, I, so this has become a thing. It's all over <laughs> social media and all this stuff. Grandy, you had the mic drop as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. You had an absolute <laughs> mic drop. Has, have you been to Portland and Toronto? I'm, I haven't been to Toronto. No. Okay, well, okay, no. there you go. If, if James is going to say that the Kings have achieved something that the Warriors' offense never did, never did, and then Grandy listed off like eighteen other teams that also achieved that this year, including the Warriors themselves. So, if we're going to go with what James just said, if you want to get mad, James Ham, James, James Ham, Ham, everybody, Kings Insider, thirteen twenty, ESPN, there Sacramento. America station. Who doesn't love ham, by the way? Ham's a damn good meat. I love ham. Oh, I love ham for, for Christmas. Easter. I love it for sandwiches. Oh, ham sandwich? Mm. Fantastic. You know what I mean? Oh. Canadian bacon. What's the difference between ham and Canadian bacon? Anybody? Ooh. I think Boy, it looks a great it t- question. Thank you. I would say that's Canadian bacon asked. might be have a little bit more a little bit less fat, maybe. That's what might be my guess. But, but my that's guess. a guess. You don't know. It looks very much like ham. It, it it is ham. It is ham. I mean, I, I can't, you know Slice what I mean? thinner. It's kind of like a, uh, a, a cougar and a mountain lion. You know, ham and Canadian bacon. It's the same damn thing. It just well, got two different names. Really? I don't know. No, I don't know that. But I it, think a mountain lion. I look lion, at it. I'm, no, no, that I know. Mountain lion, I think, could take a cougar. No, they're the same thing. Are you, you sure? Look it up. Look it up. Look it up. I, I don't know. Look I it saw- up. Saw a lot of cougars right. when I was in downtown you Danville. <laughs> you got to Google it. <laughs> Did you see any mountains? No, 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 don't that talk was, about that. That was too easy. Um, it's United Post game with John. Other London. names because I think a puma. Yes. Okay. Ready. The mountain lion, also known as the cougar, puma, panther, or catamount. All those years the I wanted, I wanted pumas. Thing. I really wanted mountain lions. Exactly. Mom, can you get, get me a pair of mountain lions? <laughs> Like knockoffs of Puma. Puma was. I get, Mom, Puma. I got cougars. You put cougars on your feet? <laughs> That's not nice. I don't know about that. Yeah, same thing, dude. Same thing. Damn. Just like ham and do, Canadian do you know bacon. All, do you know all the tigers? Uh, I do. Do you know I, all the cats? I, I know, you know all, all the, the cheeses. Cats. I do. do you know all the cheeses? I know all the cheetahs. I don't know all the cheeses. Um, so, anyway, James Canadian Bacon, uh, the insider for the Kings for ESPN 1320. 
Any um, relation to Mia? <laughs> no, she's got two M's. Okay. James only got one. All right. Point is now we know why. Like that 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 was like a that was like a Fox News point. <laughs> it was. It was uh, like what are you talking about? Will Sean Hannity have the Kings James Ham on have tonight? Achieved something that no Warrior offense ever have. Yeah, like let's not go political. They, well, sorry, yeah, was, yeah it's five fifty two. I'm gonna take a I shot mean, and get out on. the door. I mean, seriously. <laughs> No, let's, not, but, let's not do that to well, James. No, but it's just like, I mean, you really want to spin this thing any particular way you can to say that, that, that like... Carmichael th- Dave wouldn't have used that stat. This offense is like the best thing ever, and it's been proven, and they're such a finely oiled machine. They're a very, very good offense. But this is a completely different NBA. It's a completely different NBA. Jason Ross never would have gone with that. Grandy had the mic drop on this. It's a, That's a... We've debunked that one. What's next? What's next? We got to go to what's next. What is Raymond next? Green says the Warriors are going to sweep the Kings. No, he didn't. This is this. Here, here's what he said. It's going to be a tough matchup, but of course I got the Doves taking this one. Why would I not have the Doves taking this one? But it'll be tough. I'm looking forward to it. You know, you want to try to get these games done as fast as you can. I would love to get it done in four, maybe five. Very hard to do. I don't care who you playing, by the way, whether it's a great team or not so great team. Very hard to do that. Okay. Draymond Green says the Warriors are going to sweep the Kings. He also did he suggest he bet, did he suggest that he bet on it? He oh. definitely said, he said I've got the I've got the <laughs> why Warriors. Would, why would I, mean, I not? You've, what do you mean you've got? This would be a much better story if he had picked <laughs> the Kings. That would have been incredible. Oh, it would you imagine awesome. the Draymond new, Green show. The, the, Look, new tough media. Matchup. New media. I think the Kings are going to win this one. I really do. <laughs> now that would have been worth retweeting. <laughs> yes, yes. But the rest of this is a big old nothing burger. Well, it's, and it is. I'm, I'm betting the Warriors in game one just because of that that quote right there. Well, you better be careful because the Kings offense is the greatest offense in the history of the league. You better be careful. That's right. <laughs> the best offense ever. 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 Finely oiled machine. So I, that's all I notice. And by the way, it's Tuesday. Yes. So I would suggest just prepare yourselves for this because we're only going to get more of it as we approach Saturday. By Friday, we're going to be going viral with, I mean, Steph Curry has three legs and and, and Clay Thompson was rumored to, you know, pull the the uh, the fire alarm at the Kings Hotel. I mean, we're it's going to be absurd. What do you think of this? Game three, after the Warriors win game one and game two, let's say. Hmm. They go back to Chase for game three. Mm-hmm. Steal the beam. Go with a blue beam. Well, can you even... like Go with a blue beam. Steal, steal oh, the beam. Instead oh, of, you mean do it. Yeah, I mean... You know, what are you going to do? Cut a hole in the roof of Chase Center? There's like no gotta, hole at the, well, at the Golden a thing, One. There's a thing that the, there's a light up there. Get it going. Get, go get your D double you D batteries steal, and get one up when there. You said steal the beam. I thought you meant actually steal the beam. No, steal like the beam go idea. To Golden one and take the actual beam or take Joe, Joe Lakeup is is light years ahead. That includes the beam. Oh, okay. he's light years ahead. I see what you did. So maybe go with a bigger beam. Maybe take the person who lights the beam. What about that? Hire that guy. What if they disappear for family reasons for six weeks? I don't know. I don't know where this is going to go next. I'm just saying. All right. I think it's time for us to go. Should we go? Do you want to do it again tomorrow? Why not? 15 Why not? strikeouts? 15, 15 strikeouts from the, come on. from the ginger. What are we betting? I'll take under 14 and a half. Uh, ah, that's so right. So 13 and a half. Fine. Thir- under 13 and a half. Uh, do you, well, why but, do you always do you always do this? Because you, you I, wait until I talk big and be, then you undercut because me. Because you talk big. You make a big statement. It's a talk I, show. I say it's a freaking talk I show. I say let's bet on it and then you change the numbers. You have a long history of doing this with me. I never liked Mark you Willard. You do this I never all the liked time. him. Didn't like him at the other station. You are Don't where, like him at this station. Tune in tomorrow where Larry Kruger wears thong underwear to the show oh, because yeah. Dustin oh, May's oh, only... No, we're going to go there. Yeah. All right. If I got to go lentil uh, dip on you, I will. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Don't talk about that. All right. For Grandy with his mic drop and John and Lucas and uh, rule-changing Larry Kruger, uh, here's what's coming up on the game. Uh, best of the game. It's an hour of 95.7 The Game's best content from the day, and it's hosted by the mic dropper himself, James Ham. Grandy. <laughs>
Have a good night, everyone, and shoot your shot. It's all you got. Hey, Brad. I thought you had a date tonight. Hey, Mom. She just left. Using my phone for a Wi-Fi hotspot backfired again. I keep telling you to get Xfinity. What happened? Well, everything was great until the movie started buffering. Then she started asking questions like, why are you using bed sheets for curtains? Why is this hamster cage so dirty? Where is your hamster? Oh, honey, it might be time for real Wi-Fi. Yeah. In the meantime, can I come use the Wi-Fi at your place? Sorry, baby. Date night's still on for one of us. It's time for real home internet. Get fast home internet on the Xfinity 10G network. The future starts now. New customers can get 200 megabit Xfinity internet for just $25 a month for two years during our Xfinity 10G network launch celebration. Now through April 23rd. Go to Xfinity.com slash 10G, call 1-800-XFINITY or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay with stored bank account. Restriction supply, taxes and fees extra. After promo, regular rate supply to internet service and devices. Actual speeds vary. Complete your dream outdoor kitchen with a grill from Heston. Come see the Heston. Heston Living Suites, on display at Freedman's Appliance in Pleasant Hill, a Heston dealer for both indoor and outdoor. Each and every Heston grill is built from the ground up in California, and the pride and precision that goes into each grill truly puts the Heston product in a league of its own. And now, receive a free Aspire undercounter refrigerator valued at over $1,500 with qualifying purchase at Freedman's Appliance in Pleasant Hill or at freedmansappliance.com. Oh, 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 O'Reilly! Is your vehicle no longer stopping like it used to? Don't miss spring brake deals at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Our professional parts people will help you find the brake parts and supplies you need. Now through April 25th, get 15% off when you buy a set of Brake Best Select or Import Direct brake pads and two rotors. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts today or visit OReillyAuto.com. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC Terms and Conditions Apply. What if you could do business without busy work? With Ramp, you can. Ramp is the future of finance with smart automation, corporate cards, and spend management. Just imagine, no more expense reports or shuffling wrinkled receipts. No more slogging through invoices or getting surprised by unexpected charges. Just your business's big idea with smart spend controls, automation that crushes busy work, and real-time insights so you can make it happen. In other words, Ramp completely reimagined finance to make it work for your business. Get set up, issue corporate cards, and start making payments in less than 15 minutes. See how Ramp does finance. Join today and get $250 just for signing up. Just go to ramp.com slash offer. That's R-A-M-P dot com slash offer to get $250 for signing up. That's ramp.com slash offer. I thought learning a language would be too much work. Then I discovered Babbel. They make learning fun. J'aime Babel. Babbel's lessons only take 10 or 15 minutes. Quick and easy. And soon, you turn and realize, hey, I'm starting to speak another language. How'd that happen? My friend from Italy said my accent and pronunciation is perfect. It's because Babbel's lessons are designed by language teachers and voiced by real native speakers. Each lesson is like living in another country for 15 minutes. I love that there's all kinds of ways to learn. Babbel's podcast or games or videos. You can even join live classes with a language teacher. You learn words and phrases you actually use in real conversations. In three weeks, I was starting to speak in another language. So easy. If you want to learn a language, there's no faster, easier, better way than Babbel. Babbel. Go to Babbel.com to try for free. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Babbel.com. Wendy's $3 breakfast deal is a bacon or sausage egg croissant plus small seasoned potatoes for three bucks. It's the breakfast that don't miss. So if you did miss Wendy's breakfast, don't imagine fresh cracked eggs, sizzling sausage, crispy bacon, and blackout.